Your mind. 
And it's a very good morning to you. This is day two of round one of the VSRS here at Sandown International Raceway, about 30 kilometres southeast of the Melbourne CBD. My name's Callum Brannigan, and the man to my right is Darren Smith, the voice of the VSRS. Darren, how are you going? Good, Callum. Great to see you back in front of the camera, mate. You've had a fantastic <laughs> debut this year, as has everyone. A great day yesterday. Formula Fords did what Formula Fords do in round one. They have safety cars and they follow each other around. Uh, there's a bit of an incident at the front of sports sedans where our uh, championship winner from last year and... The previous champion came together with a bit of a nose-to-tail shunt, so there's a bit of controversy around that. But the big banger cars, there's always something that, that goes on there when you're working with 700-plus horsepower. The improved production, impressed with a massive field again. Formula V, awesome. Every category, the 944s rounded out the day pretty late yesterday with a fantastic race as well. So, you know, great to see everyone, officials, the, the, the TV people, everyone just working Post-COVID, I'm going to call it. It's got to be post-COVID, and we've got to treat it like that. 285 entries. Everyone is just so psyched and racing well. Like The racing yesterday, it, it's the best racing around, there's, bar any. The, it is, it's not sheep stations, but there's only six or eight laps or something, so every corner counts. So we've got a big day of action coming your way, 22 competitive races. We can't wait to bring it all to you. Please sit back and relax and enjoy the show coming your way right now. Far away, of course, Dan joins us uh, most rounds from Auto Action. Welcome to uh, Commentary, Dan. Great to have you back here. Thanks very much. Looking forward to today's action. It was a good start to proceedings yesterday. Not too many uh, safety cars. or a couple, but not too many. So we're looking forward to today's action. Hopefully some good, green, clean racing out there. Certainly the place looks fantastic. Sandown never lets us down as far as a, a venue and a property presentation. Green grass when the rest of Melbourne's gone brown without the, uh, the lack of rain. There's uh, the lake out in the middle of the facility here is all but drained and you can see that they've obviously been spraying that around on the, uh, the grass to keep it nice and green. Here is our program for round one, day two of the Victorian State Race Series presented this weekend by the MG Car Club and they've done a, a massive effort to get this uh, event up and running and again all in COVID safety. The saloon cars will lead us away at nine, at 10 minutes past nine, then we'll go straight into Formula Fords for an eight lapper and uh, speaking to the, the management and the admin behind the scene of Formula Fords, we're going to get a full eight laps and then a 10 lapper later on today, they guarantee us that right up until uh, the young guns try and prove a point but uh, I guess we're impressing on them that uh, you're not going to win the championship today but you can certainly lose it by throwing it all away early on in the uh, in the series so keep our eye on Formula Ford one of one of my favorite categories over many many years such a fun car to drive and uh, get out in there and get amongst it and there's actually a spattering of uh, let's say experienced race drivers out there it's not all about the young guns in Formula Fords we've got the you know some great contenders like uh, Mark Zellner who uh, continues to get out there. Unfortunately, Mark dinged it up on Friday and uh, is not taking any further part, but we look forward to him getting out there. Of course, uh, we look forward to Phil Marinon in the Galloway Racing outfit as well. These guys are making up the those important bits of the field in Formula Ford and certainly Brendan Jones trying to back up. I think it's his eighth 
championship in the Kent Engine Cars in Formula Ford here this year. A massively successful career to Brendan, and uh, let's hope he keeps going very, very well. Richard Davison also mixing it up in that part of the field. Historic Touring and BMW E30, one of our uh, combined fields yesterday. Uh, historic Touring Cars led them away, and then a, about a 30-second gap back to the E30s. They'll be on at 9.50 this morning. The Hyundai Excels. Uh, for uh, XLs, we've got a compact field. There's only about 40 of them this weekend. We've had uh, up to 62 here two seasons ago when Ben Grice was at the top of the game there. MG and Invited British Sports Cars, uh, and that is fantastic racing. Certainly some of the uh, the best racing out of last season where we only got the three rounds out of the five, but uh, certainly fought hard to get those three rounds out last year. Provided some great racing right through the field. I'm hoping Sean Hurley will be up here again to lend us a hand with all the uh, good things out of the MG Car Club as well. As I said, they're promoting here this weekend. They've done a wonderful job. You can see in that shot there how full the pit and paddock and car parks are already. If you're within, uh, I'm going to say, uh, the whole whole of the CBD, or not CBD, the whole of the Greater Melbourne area, get down to Sandown today. We are open to the public. We're live and 3D. Come and sit in the grandstand or over on Red Hill. Please come out and join us. We'd love to have everyone here. Check it out on Eventbrite before you get here and uh, get your ticket online before you arrive at the track. The Sports Sedans will be on at 10.50 and Invited Cars. Formula V on at 11.10. Improved production coming out there in the Triple Eight uh, Home Loans crew. The Tire Power HQ Holdens on at 11.50. The Porsche 944 is also for Triple Eight Home Loans this year as well. We'll be out on track. And then the uh, sports cars rounds out our first stanza of today. They have a 40-minute race, so they forego two races today to have one 40-minute race. So that's where we see the, the Porsche GT3s and the Lamborghinis and the uh, Ferraris. I don't think there's any Ferraris here this weekend, but certainly the Sin R1 GT with, uh, uh, with Schutze at the wheel is certainly one to watch. Had a great run yesterday, qualified on pole, won the race. Uh, let's see if those cup cars... Um, Andrew Hall and uh, Steve Sluger and the like can fight back and do what Porsche do best and do those sort of uh, mini enduros and endurance racing. And then we go into the afternoon's session and we do it all over again. There's the saloon cars down on the marshalling area being shown a sign saying one minute. So they will come out. Rebecca Drummond from uh, one of our photographers. She's got her shots in pit lane and now racing off in, in the marshalling area now racing off to get her vantage point to get the start of the race as we see a, a good field of saloon cars rolling out for the uh, sedan hotel the number 15 of sean jamison had a good run yesterday previous champion and national competitor as well simon tabiner who started from the second row yesterday dan is now on the front row yeah it was a good race yesterday with these guys some clean fair racing and as you say he certainly uh moved his way forwards in the race the uh, the big notable uh, thing yesterday was uh, Anthony Bear started from the front row of the grid, we'll start from the back after a mechanical issue on the opening lap, so watch for that red car the sedan hotel, car number 46, that Commodore, watch for that to make his way through throughout this 8 lap encounter he's certainly the one to watch over the last couple of seasons we've seen Travis Lindorf do very well at this opening round with multiple race wins. Also, Anthony Bear as well, qualifying with Sean Jamison. And uh, he's done very, very well also. And the saloon cars never, ever fail to deliver some action. Really uh, heartland, traditional type Australian motorsport. The Ford versus Holden, unfortunately, no longer part of our local manufacturing landscape. But uh, this is uh, going to be with us for some time saloon cars and uh, so it should be they've always provided great entertainment the the dial before you dig national series was always a, a good feature as in those years when they competed at the shannon's nationals and we just see the field pouring through probably should also point out uh, our volunteer officials trackside are doing a, a tremendous job as always like all of us they've all been starved of motorsport and are absolutely champion the bit to get going again and uh, get the get the sport back up and running and see what we can uh, get back out there. Let's have a, a quick look down through the grid sheet. It'll be Sean Jamison on pole position to Simon Tabner in the number 14. Daniel Johnson, the uh, first of the Fords and continues to represent very, very well. He's moved up a spot into 
P3 due to the progressive grid approach that this category does. Adam Lowndes, then we go to Scott Dornan, Angels Leoncini, Mark Sutherland, David Lyons, Nash Harris, Peter Tonks, Glenn Campbell, Andrew McSwain, Cooper Capillary, Ashley Lee. Then we go back to Jeff Thomas out of 15. He's up a couple of spots there, so Jeff's done well there. Brent, Brett Tate, Robert Knight, and Anthony Bear. I guess off all of that, Anthony Bear started off the front row of the grid yesterday. We'll be uh, casting our eyes to the rear of the grid to see how that red Stan Hotels car can uh, get off the line and get back through this field and see if he can progress sort of, I guess, further up into the first two or three rows to start the uh, the 10 lap of this afternoon. You mentioned there Jeffrey Thomas. He just missed out on uh, P14 as well. He would have been that uh, grip position up, but it just shows that the battling is good throughout the field, up the front and down the rear end of the field. Some big variety of cars. There's Fords, there's Holdens, but of course it goes back all the way back to the likes of the uh, VN Commodore all the way up to the VY. That was are, are you Falcons? And, that's uh, right, yes. Yeah, it's very, yeah, very popular landscape. It's um, it's traditional Aussie fare, this stuff, with uh, picking up the Ford versus Holden. I mean, just there we can see on, on our screens the, the difference in Commodores there, the, the mid-90s look, and then the more recent 2010 or late 2000, uh, 2000s look. It really is some great variety up and down the field. So, yellow flags out because we've got officials on track. We wait for the green flag to be waved down the back. There are uh, seeing it just yet so we'll wait there it is green flag waved over the top of the cars the five second board goes up and we're about to launch on day two of the victorian state race series saloon cars for eight laps the sedan hotel car of sean jamison on the front row simon tabiner right next to him in the older commodore but it's going to be a good start that's a great start off there adam lounge on the second row of the grid here he comes the number 46 keep your eye out for Anthony Bear, he's looking right up the outside of the track, but Tavener jumps in behind Sean Jamison, and that will not have been his plan of this race, to take it up. Three wide, there's Sutherland in the number nine. Very experienced saloon car racer, three wide. Dispatches uh, David Lyons, it is in the number 24, out over the ripple strip, but a really clean start there. Bit of a lock up there for the VN. The uh, Ashley Lee pushing through the field there. He's got Jeff Thomas right behind him. There is the charging bear, where's he up to? He's almost inside the top ten at yes. turn four. Yeah, superb start already. Got about eight positions in the opening sequence of turns as they head down the back straight. We can see that Lowndes has moved up into position number two, but he's forced to defend as Taverner comes around the outside, and he's got the move already before they make the turn. So a change of position once again. Taverner take, retaking position two. Mark Sutherland there in the number nine, the pen right emblazoned across the bonnet of that car. He comes the charging, 46 looks to the inside, doesn't quite get there. McSwain, the driver, Vince car gets out over the ripple strip. That's not going to help him. Even sparks up the lower control arm there as the BRE Motorsports car draws right alongside. Lights are blaze there. That's showing intent, isn't it? The number 24 locks it up there. David Lyons, the Evolution Crash Repairs car. Looks fantastic. Sedan Hotel emblazoned across the front of windscreens of both these cars. And Anthony Bear comes through. Where does he end up after lap one? P9 of <laughs> nine positions. Half of the field on the opening lap, and he's just about to take another. So that is position number eight. A superb start. Some ripper driving there and urgency to what he's doing. Not being silly about it, but just being, I guess, forceful to a point without making any uh, nuisance of himself. Couple in front now. It gets a bit harder the further you get up the field. Angels Lancini there. The number 23 of Scott Dawn, and they're not going to give it up. So the front of the field storms to the top of the hill. Jamison leading Tabiner. And it's again a massive lead for Sean Jamison. This is how he goes saloon car racing. Gets the start and then just runs away. Simon Tabiner won't like this. He is a uh, he's a fearsome competitor, Simon Tabiner, in and out of the car. He likes to talk it up where he goes. Great race driver, very entertaining to watch, and this will be really annoying him. I guess that the guys like Simon, this will provide him the ultimate in uh, motivation over the next four weeks to do just a little bit more of the car to make it just a little bit better when we get to uh, get to Winton. Indeed, and here we go, another move up the inside into the final sequence. He's got it in there, but he'll have the outside for the last corner. He'll try and get a good exit, cut back, but 
not quite able to do so. He'll get in the toe now down the pit straight. Certainly had a cleaner run onto the straight there, so you'll have a couple of kilometres an hour faster than the car in front of him. Off side by side here, Lowndes and Daniel Johnson's good run in the Cable Engines car. Under brakes the Ford and goes to the outside. Adam Lowndes is held in tight there. Daniel just eases the wheel oh. off. Oh, it's contact. And airborne in the 23. Had a good check of the diff oil underneath the back of that. Who was it that was behind uh, the 23? That was, was that Bear? It was, yes, it was, it was definitely Bear those too. two that made contact. So. Well, there's a, there's a suspension issue with that car, and they've certainly made contact. So opening stanza was very clean for Adam Bear, but got mixed up, tangled up with uh, Dornan, I think it was, the 24. No, Dave, was it David Lyons, was it? No, it's Dornan. Yep, it and uh, car went up in the air, checked the diff all for him. Probably didn't uh, check the front strut or whatever's happened there. That's not nice. As there's the number 23. That's a real shame for Dornan. He's going very, very nicely indeed. Started out of fifth, Scott did. There's Adam Lowndes in the Pro Plum, number 19. He's got Mark Sutherland behind him. Watch Mark Sutherland in the McKeon's Road Garage outfit. He's going to be all over the back of Lowndes. It's going to be a good battle here. Lowndes made a cracking start, didn't he? Uh, briefly sat in position number three, but now very much under attack, trying to hold on to position four. Look at this train, one, two, three, line astern. A good battle for fourth position, all Commodores. There's only the one Falcon in the top ten, uh, sorry, nine positions at this point in time. Yeah, Damien Johnson, uh, sorry, uh, Daniel Johnson has done a terrific job to drive away just in that one lap because it was only a lap ago that Adam Lowndes was challenging up the inside. Uh, Daniel took the, uh, a line which was quite wide. There was plenty of room allowed. There's a bit of a, a new rewrite or a new understanding, a new rule around how far a car has to be alongside to give them room, and it's pretty much when you arrive at the back bumper. The, uh, the car in front has to give room for that car to go through. So... The old slamming of the door and the don't argue might have, might not be as big a part of uh, racing as what it has been in the past, but I'm sure in the heat of battle, the, uh, the door will be slammed shut, that's for sure. Indeed, and the door is closed there, number 19, that is Lowndes holding back. Bear went round there, that was a big move, went round Lancini at the top of the hill, held out for the, the late turn in, floated nicely, in fact he's managed to float all the way down to Danny on the road. Just looking at the uh, lap board on the last lap, uh, race leader Jamison lap record. And we've got a, a replay coming of, of one of the incidents from earlier on in the race. Oh, look at this exit. Up the inside comes Sutherland, a great exit. He's got the run, he's got the momentum. As we I go reckon this is going to be a race straight. in three when we get to turn one because the number nine wants to get through. And here comes... The guy that started off the back of the grid, Anthony Bear, is now up to position six on oh, the road. Sutherland Lock up there for up. Sutherland. Runs wide. It allows number 19 back on the outside. Here he is. Here comes Bear. Slots up the inside and around the outside. Holds it around turn three. Well done. Great move. Great move there. Wow. Providing some excitement there is uh, Anthony Bear. And they start the haul up the hill to the famous left-hander. Great shot there. Da oh, Damien, uh, sorry, Daniel Johnson has gone through on uh, Tabena. Tabena back to P3. Here's the manoeuvre earlier on two laps ago. Bang, there it was. Big lift off the ground. And uh, number 23 has uh, gone back to the pit lane. That's a real shame. Tabena's There's Simon got Tabena. He, yeah, got an issue. He's gone wide. Some smoke coming out of the rear of the car there. I wouldn't have thought he would have had it coming together with anyone, but he's, uh, yeah, there's certainly an issue with that car. Interesting. It certainly won't be because due to a lack of preparation. Simon Tavener is meticulous with the way he presents his race cars in a mechanical sense. And uh, number 14 just slowly was in position two. Daniel Johnson now takes P2. Three laps left to go. And the number 14, Simon Tavener, retiring from this race. Well, well, coming to the lane, not sure whether he's retiring or not yet, but uh, certainly not taking any more part right here, right now. There goes the number five, Peter Tonks, Phillip Island Cottages entry. 
Got another slow car, number 57. That is Campbell who's dropping down the order and it doesn't sound right it, as it goes past our commentary box. That is an unwell Ford Falcon. Well, I guess at this point in time, if he thinks it's some sort of engine miss that not, it's going to be terminal, that you can continue on for another two laps, to just grab some points in the series. Here comes the, uh, the 73 of Ashley Lee, battling it out with, uh, is that Robert Knight? In the 28, yes, it is Robert Knight there. So a couple of cars that started sort of down towards the back of the field, having their own race. And uh, the night car looks magnificent, really. It's had that extra coat of polish on it, shines up nicely. And then the menacing matte black VN. Oh, some smoke pouring out of the, the number three of Angel's Lancini. What is that? That's a lot of smoke, isn't it? That looks or like judging coming. by the oversteer, I'd say that's uh, dropping some sort of fluid over the rear tyres, and that's another car off. The 84 of Tate. That's uh, Brett Tate there down at turn four. I'm going to suggest that that's a dip or gearbox or something like that because, uh, wow, yeah, that oh, that could be engine, actually, because we're coming out the exhaust halfway up the car. That's an interesting one. We can see it clearly see it's coming out from underneath the car. And uh, let's see if it's getting on the rear tyres as he comes around there. But uh, keeping it straight, whatever it is, the oil will run out eventually and the smoke will disappear. I was going to say, and it has now, and that car seems to be slowing down even more. Yeah, the smoke certainly dissipated a little bit compared to what it was when it passed us down pit straight in the commentary box. But that is not a healthy looking machine as we see the battle for position number uh, that is position number four between Sutherland and Lowndes. This battle's been going on for quite a few laps as Lowndes looks up the inside or oh, the door firmly closed there by Sutherland. He's um, yeah, very much closed the door there, Lowndes. Right, sorry, um, yeah, lands right on his tail, looking for a move up the inside, but no room through there. This is the fight for fourth place on the road. Sutherland and Lowndes, four and five. There's the number nine there. A very experienced saloon. In fact, both these car drivers, very ex experienced saloon car racers. They'll know the very best of their car. And we're coming up to one lap to go. Last board, last lap board out. And here comes that Commodore. Definitely the smoke is coming out from underneath the driver's side of the car towards the rear. So you've got to suggest differential or, uh, or an exhaust. An engine slowly uh, giving up with an exhaust leak or something like that. That's certainly not being picked up by the driver as an urgent thing to come to the pit lane with. Because we've already seen Simon Tabiner and Scott Dornan retire to the pit lane. This battle is for fourth and fifth. And uh, Sean Jamison, again, has just dominated this race. I think he's down in Daniel Road. Just had a lock-up all by himself as well. Here's the rest of the field. There goes, there goes uh, Daniel Johnson. And uh, Bear, Anthony Bear, who started out of 18th, now in P3. So he has made his way up to a couple of rows. Bit of a look there. Getting a little bit nervous in the commentary booth even there. The way they look up the inside there of uh, Lowndes. Can't have a half-hearted move up the inside there. Oh, Check no, it flag the goes. Line. There we have it. And it goes to Sean Jamison. Indeed, a dominant victory. 13.1 seconds it was last lap. I'm quite certain he'd have extended that margin further as we see Johnson fastest with the fours across the line. A superb victory there by Jamison. In the end, yeah, 12.2 seconds. Then we have Johnson. Bear, a great recovery. P18 all the way up the field to position number three. Sutherland fourth, Lowndes fifth. We see Leo Cini in the smoking Commodore come across the line in position six from McSwain. Lines and then the uh, last couple of finishes are now coming across. That was a, a certainly an interesting race. A few more mechanical failures than we'd like to see on a uh, Sunday morning with just a short turnaround until race number three, just three or four hours before they're out once again this afternoon. That coming together with uh, the number 23 of Scotty Dornan and uh, ultimately the 46 there with some smoke coming out of that car, which is Anthony Bear, started off the rear. Had it coming together with Dornan in the 23, and now he's got his own issues on the uh, warm down lap. There goes the number three, still smoking. So a couple of uh, a couple of Commodores with some damage of some sort that we really can't help 
diagnosed from our uh, position here at the track, but uh, certainly a, a very strong race there for Sean Jamison. Daniel Johnson out in hot pursuit. Great drive by the number 35 to hold his position and grab a, a P2. Anthony Bear off the back of the grid through home to P3. A good result. Mark Sutherland. Adam Lowndes into number five. Angels Lancini, Andrew McSwain, David Lyons, Nash Harris and Peter Tonks rounding out our ten with Cooper Capillaro, Robert Knight, Glenn Campbell, Ash Lee, Brett Tate, Jeffy Thomas, Simon Tabner and Scott Dornan not finishing the race back in the paddock early on after that one. Well, that is a fantastic bit of action to open up day two of the Victorian State Race Series here at Sandown International Motor Raceway. Big thanks to the MG Car Club for putting on such a uh, fantastic event. Ran like clockwork yesterday under some challenging conditions with some incidents and accidents around the place. Great weather for it too, actually. A really nice, uh, I guess, overcast Melbourne day, which we get pretty much around the 65 <laughs> days of the year. But uh, certainly a lovely day at the track here. Not too hot. You're always going to get sunburnt, so you're going to need some sunscreen, but uh, certainly we'd love to see everyone at the track. And if you're joining us from anywhere around the world, jump online on the, uh, the Victorian State Race Series Facebook page or uh, via the V8 Sleuth site that we're uh, telecasting through or putting the broadcast through today. And certainly jump online to the Blendline TV YouTube channel. That's where all the best pictures will be coming from. There's more about the series at vsrs.com. .au. We'll be back with more racing, the Formula Ford Race 2 for the weekend, up next. Facebook isn't the only place that you can support Australian grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. To see more real race cars, more live events and more of the racing you love, subscribe to the Blendline TV YouTube channel, sign up to our mailing list or bookmark and subscribe to our website at blendline.tv. Thanks for continuing to support Grassroots Motorsport with Blendline TV. Bosch Motorsport provides technology for racing. Worldwide experience from all major categories of motorsport is in your race car when you use Bosch Motorsport components. Ignition system, sensors, fuel delivery and high-end electronics. Bosch Motorsport brings race-proven quality and performance to your motorsport machine. Search for Bosch Motorsport Australia or find us at boschmotorsport.com.au. There's good, there's better and then there's Bosch. Bosch Motorsport when quality and performance matter. Welcome back, trackside here at Sandown International Motor Raceway. This is day two of round one of the VSRS, and we are very happy to be trackside once again uh, to for the resumption of uh, one of Australia's premier state series motorsport events. You can see on your screen the Formula Fords are currently making their way onto the dummy grid for their second race of the weekend. It'll be eight laps in duration around this 3.14 kilometre circuit nestled nicely in the southeastern suburbs of Melbourne. But an impressive field of Formula Fords on screen because it actually doubles as round one of the national, uh, national series as well for the Australian National Formula Ford Series, if you uh, would, if that, uh, for its proper name. But you can see on screen there, Jordan Sinney in the number five Dirty Diggers Spectrum starting on pole position. He took pole in yesterday morning's qualifying session and won the safety car affected race yesterday. He's alongside Kai Cavadon, who really took the battle up to him as well in the number 12 Spectrum as well. So it's a Spectrum 1-2. James, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Physic, I should say, in the number 93 CHI Racing prepared Miguel in third position. Xavier Kokai out of fifth position alongside Jack, uh, Zach Lobko in the number seven car. Clayton Richards starting in seventh position. Valentino Astuti in eighth position. It's great to have Valentino back. Cody Donald 
starting in ninth position alongside Jude Barguana. Uh, due to start out of 10th position, Tom McLennan in 11th position, Cameron McLeod in 12th position. He was uh, having a coming together with Jude Barguana yesterday. Jared Farrell steps up into Formula Ford. He starts out of 13th position. Winston Smith in 14th position. Matthew Holmes in 15th position. Joe Fawcett starting in 16th. Ryder Quinn, grandson of Tony, son of Clark Quinn, starting 17th position in the BF Motorsport. Miguel Kyle Evans alongside Harry Blanchard, 21st. Kobe Williams in 22nd position. Thomas Davies in 23rd position. Paul Ziddy starting in 24th. Daniel Frugus, who had a uh, wait day to forget yesterday, starts 25th alongside Peter Fitzgerald. Carly Fleming in 27th position in the number 42 car. And we've also got the Kent field as well. Richard Davison won yesterday's race ahead of James Meaden and Brendan Jones. So two classes of Formula Ford competition. My name's Callum Brannigan, and I'm joined alongside by Dan McCarthy, who has uh, become something of a super sub this weekend in the commentary box. He, of course, is a journalist from Auto Action. Keep an eye out for Auto Action on the on your all good resellers, where you, wherever you buy your magazines from. Auto Action is always a fantastic read. So thank you for joining us this morning, Daniel. Uh, pleasure to be here. Looking forward to this encounter. Hopefully a few more green flag laps after the safety car interrupted affair that was yesterday. Only two green laps on uh, yesterday's opening race. Yeah, yesterday we saw Bailey Collins, car number 96, struggle to get off the line. Uh, so we have one green lap there before the safety car was called. And then after one green lap of running, there was an incident between uh, Barguana and McLeod down at turn number three. So that then meant that the race finished under safety car conditions. So we are very much looking forward to hopefully some more green flag running this morning as we see the weather. Certainly a lot more overcast than it was yesterday. Clear blue skies, a few patchy bits of cloud around but certainly very different conditions today as you can see it's very overcast look at these guys weaving around just trying to get tire temperature and warmth into the tires there's enough blue sky on the horizon to make a pair of sailors pants so hopefully the the clouds do dissipate a little bit more and possible showers in 27 degrees is the forecast but it's feeling nice and mild this morning uh so and those conditions are uh, conducive to quicker lap times for the drivers as they make their way out onto the circuit. It's a five round calendar for season 2022 20, for the VSRS. Of course, this weekend we're here at Sandown. Fe uh, March 25 to 27, we make the trek to Ned Kelly Country uh, for round two. Round three is at Phillip Island, the 13th to the 15th of May. We're back here at Sandown in the middle of winter, 12th to the 14th of August, known as the Hot Dog Round and the 23rd to the 25th of September at Phillip Island. And we've got the number 34 car pulling off to drivers left. So that's uh, Kyle Evans who has pulled over. There is something uh, preventing that car. There's a, obviously a mechanical gremlin striking that spectrum this morning. So the team medical and the fire rescue teams are already on the scene, but they might need to dispatch a flatbed to pick up the car before the start of the race. So this is... Yet another unique challenge for our volunteer officials and all of the people working tirelessly behind the scenes to make sure that motorsport does uh, continue safely. He's given them the thumbs up, so it's obviously just a, a little uh, mechanical issue with the Spectrum. He hasn't undone the belts. He's just uh, watching and observing and waiting to get the all clear, and actually the, the PIA crews will give him a, uh, a tow. Um, that's approaching turn six as they come over the hill. Meanwhile, the cars are gridding up as well. So I dare say this won't spoil the start of the of race two of the Formula Fords this morning. And I absolutely love this camera angle. This is a great time to thank all of the sponsors, Speco VHT and the Formula Ford Association for, uh, for partnering up with Formula Ford for the uh, broadcast on Blendline TV and the VSRS this, uh, yesterday and today. And the commercial partners, Yokohama Tires with the uh, control... They are the control tyre supplier for with the AO48. Dick Johnson Racing, Norwell Motorplex, Castorol Oil, Ferrado Brakes, Freem Racewear, they kit out uh, all of the FFA team on the ground here. CHI Racing, which are the authorised engine builders, and Bali Red Top Batteries as well. We've got a delayed start notification from Race Control. At the back, I can see that they're starting to tow the car of Kyle Evans to the... Uh, yeah, the confirmation on your screen there. So the number 34 Easy Stone Bench Tops car is 
well and truly off the track now and out of harm's way. So we anticipate a start to this race very shortly, Dan. The five-second board has been shown to the grid. Hard cut, rev limit of 7,000 RPM with these 1.6-litre Duratec engines. Red light. And they are underway. It's even Stevens off the line for the two Spectrums. Kai Cabot on Jordan City. They'll be dragging as they go towards turn one side by side. Meanwhile, it's a great start by Richard Davison in the Kent Honours as well. But we've got Matthew Hillier. He's got his hands full of Jimmy Fizzik. He's having a look up the inside. They run side by side. And Xavier Koka is also making his way around the outside there, capitalising on that move there so that was a great effort there side by side Cody Donald and Cameron McLeod through turn two Cameron McLeod will be having shades uh, of horrors from yesterday's incident with June Bargwana but the drivers all through turns one through four safely a great start from the Formula Fords certainly is as we see them go down the back straight the two cars side by side that's Cavendon and Hillier can Hillier go around the outside he's certainly trying and he has done Fantastic start up from P4 to position number two on the opening lap of the race. Certainly some reshuffling from second down to fourth, and that's allowed Jordan Sinney out front to pull a little bit of a margin. A margin that he will look to keep for the remainder of the race. It's always good in these cars to get that initial launch because the slipstream is quite effective in Formula Ford. So if you can break away early, you can often hold that lead to the finish, and that's what he's tried to do. The margin as he crosses the line at the end of lap number one, seven tenths of a second as we hear the Formula Fours roar down pit straight. Fantastic sound on a Sunday morning. Where would you rather be, Dan? This is absolutely the best place in Melbourne to be right now. Jimmy Fizzik up the inside of Xavier Koko runs him wide. He's compromised on his exit. We've got Clayton Richards who's capitalising on this move as well. He's around the outside, but uh, Lobko's got that uh, got track position there in the number seven, Miguel. So as they exit turn four for the second time, you can see Cody Donald also doing a great job defending from Cameron McLeod. Also briefly featuring on that screen was the car of Matthew Holmes, who's made the trip up from Tasmania and has recently graduated uh, to become a paediatrician, working incredibly hard over the past decade and a half uh, to become a doctor. So great work from him and not a bad uh, hobby on the weekend to be steering a Formula Ford around the historic Sandown Motor Racing Circuit. Cody Donald up the inside of Clay Richards. They're side by side. They're incredibly close. They must have rubbed tyres briefly at that point, but Richards stays ahead of Cody Donald. This is a very spirited battle between these two young up-and-coming stars coming up to turns 10. And Valentino Astuti in the number two Sonic Motor Racing Services. Miguel, he's pulled off on driver's left. That's on the exit of turn four by the looks of it. So that's heartbreaking stuff for Astuti. Very happy to have him back racing in the National Series, but that's a heartbreaking start to his second race of the weekend, Dan. Up the inside there, we saw the battle earlier, and it's been completed. Donald up the inside. Lobko wide. Oh, he rejoins nice and safely. And McLeod's also having a look at, he's trying to make it, but it doesn't quite stick. Lobko stays ahead of we've got a Cameron spinner McLeod, and we've rubble. got a spinner. That's the number 29 car of uh, Davies. And it is bogged. So I dare say with the car of Valentino Astuti pulled over on driver's left at turn four. And Davies in the kitty litter at the exit of turn one. We have got our second safety car of the weekend. Well, a couple of guys. Oh, that's incredibly <laughs> spirited stuff there from Barguano. He had two tyres off on the grass. And we've also got another car. It's car number eight. Yes, yeah, stopped on the exit of turn number three to the inside. So we've got cars littered around around the circuit. Turn one, turn three, and turn four. So That's the car of McLennan. It's pulled over on driver's left as well. So there's uh, that, that flat tow truck's going to be looking a little bit full as they collect all of, uh, make, as they make their way around the circuit and gaining a collection of Formula Fords as they collect them. Fantastic effort from all the volunteer and officials here this weekend though to uh, clean up the mishaps from the on-track action, and they work to a very tight schedule as we touched on uh, the opening of this broadcast. We have 20, 22 scheduled races for today, so mishaps like this uh, never helps the schedule, but it's the tireless work from the, from the volunteers and the crews working on the side of the track 
uh, in varying weather conditions. It must be said they turn up rain, hail or shine. Do a fantastic job to uh, keep this massive race meet to schedule. Indeed, indeed they do. Uh, just looking down the leaderboard, we can see McLeod and Barguana, the uh, two gentlemen who collided yesterday, started from 22nd and 23rd on the grid. They have flown up the field on this uh, opening couple of laps. They're both within the top 10. McLeod in 9th and Barguana in 10th, so really made good progress early on in that race and back where they uh, really on speed need to be inside the top 10. We'll just see a replay of the spin at turn number one while we're under these safety car conditions. So Cody Donald having a look up the inside of Richards into turn one. That was a great late breaking move from the number 60, but you can see Lobko out wide on the apron, two drivers right hand side. And yeah, there you go. That's very scary move from Davies. He was out of control on the inside and very lucky not to collect anyone as he spun into the kitty litter. So very thankful that everyone is okay. Look how fast the, the crews are on the scene. So they've already pulled him out of the kitty litter. Just got to get rid of their equipment off the front left wishbone of that Miguel. Uh, but he'll get back up and running as well. So with the other two cars a little bit further down the grid, you've got... McLennan on the left-hand side exiting turn three, as well as uh, Valentino Astudi on the exit of turn four. So still two more cars to collect uh, before we can get this race back up and running with five laps remaining. It's a good time to remind everyone of the uh, website and the socials for Formula Ford. You can, of course, navigate to www.formulaford.org.au on your preferred internet browser, or you can go to Facebook search Facebook or go to uh, facebook.com forward slash Formula Ford. We should also point out that uh, this year's series winner will receive a plum drive in a supercar and not just any supercar. It's a Shell V-Power Mustang prepared by Dick Johnson Racing, no less. So last year's winner, Tom Sargent, who is here this weekend helping out with the, the Cameron Hill operation, a very impressive operation, it must be said. Cameron... Uh, Tom Sargent will be going to Queensland Raceway later this year to steer the Mustang. And that's a very cool prospect. And the exact same prize is on offer to this year's winner as well. Second place will win a training day at the Norwell Motorplex. That's the famous driving facility owned and run by Paul Morris up on the Gold Coast. He's a staunch Queenslander and a former Formula Ford alumni from season 1991. That's about my age, about <laughs> when I was a young tacker. Third place getter receives a Freem Racewear pack as well, and uh, Freem also kit out the Formula Ford Association administration staff who have got boots on the ground at every race meeting as well. There's also three rounds in this uh, seven-round schedule for the Formula Fords in season 2022. We're here at Sandown, obviously, this weekend, 19th to the 20th of March. Formula Ford will be going to the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit as part of the Shannon Nationals the 21st to the 22nd of May. They're at Winton for round three. 6th to the 7th of August, they're at Sydney Motorsport Park. 27th to the 28th for round 5. Morgan Park Raceway, the 17th to the 18th of September is round 6 at the Bend Motorsport Park. And the 29th to the 30th of, of October will be the closing round 7 of the year again at Sydney Motorsport Park. And on our screen, we should say another thank you to our officials and volunteers. You can see them on screen there. They'll be doing that in all weather conditions. There was really sunny yesterday, massively sunny. Uh, it was roasting and uh, the, sincerely hope they were applying uh, liberal amounts of sunscreen to uh, remain sun smart whilst seeking shade at the same time. You can just make out the Miguel of Valentino Astuti behind the Nissan Navara, which is being towed up the back straight. He might pull off to the left where we've already got the car of Kyle Evans, uh, who failed to make the start. So we might not be too far off a race resumption. There will be three laps remaining, assuming they get going this time around. You can see Jordan Sidney still leads the way from Matthew Hillier in the number four car in second position, who got ahead of Kai Cavadon. In third position, Jimmy Fizik out of fourth position. Xavier Kokai in fifth position. Cody Donald in sixth position in the number 60 spectrum, ahead of uh, Zach Lobko. 
Clay Richards climbing up to 8th position ahead of Cameron McLeod in ninth position. Jude Barguana in 10th position after having a race he would probably rather forget yesterday. Now, it looks quite cool and it's somewhat overcast at the moment, but you can see the heat haze. And uh, without the UV from the sun, the conditions really must be conducive to fast pace. And Matthew Hillier, he's done a 1 minute 15.9. It's actually not that far off pole, uh, pole setting pace. So there's definitely a lot of pace in the track this morning and Matthew Hillier has done, unlocked some speed out of that Miguel this morning. Jordan Sinney has become the effective safety car. It looks like we'll be back up and racing this time around, Dan. Absolutely, yeah. Hillier was a man on a mission in that, on that second lap. He was certainly keeping up and even catching Sinney. So uh, I don't think uh, if this race is over, this is going to be an interesting battle between the top two for the remainder of the race, we hope. And here we are, back to green. Formula Ford's back underway. Three laps to go. A short sprint to the finish. Hopefully all under green flag. Everybody following Sini to the inside, who's blocking the lead into turn number one. We see up the inside, car number seven, Lobko, defending Clay Richards, but Richards has the inside into turn number two. So Clay Richards there taking position number seven. That was a great restart by Jordan Sinney, so he was minimising the, the slipstream effect, leaving it to the last possible second before absolutely nailing the throttle in that number five spectrum and heading down the main straight here at Sandown, which is close to a kilometre. So, But you can see Hillier having a look around the outside as they come up over the hill at turn six, but yeah, he pulls back in behind Sinney. He might have another go later on in this race. You can actually see at the moment Ryder Quinn having a great... Uh, race as well. Meanwhile, back in the Kent field, the number 40 car on your screen right now, that's currently being driven by Richard Davison. That car used to belong to Garth Tander and he steered it to great success in 1997 when he won the Australian Championship. So there's a lot of history in that car, but it's been currently driven by Richard Davison, uh, who stepped out of the usual Van Diemen RF 86, the black car that we're so used to seeing him. Another look from Matthew Hillier. It looks like he's drawn a lot closer. He's alongside, he has already taken the position away going into turn one, but he's already got Sydney on the back of him. Slightly compromised exit as they come up to turn two. Kai Cavadon sitting back and observing in position three. Jimmy Fizzik in fourth position. So this is becoming a three-way battle for Boy. the lead. Boy. Massive Kai moment. Cavadon, <laughs> bit of a moment on corner exit there out of turn four there. You even saw the sparks come up as he sort of beached himself on the curb momentarily there. That'll certainly affect his momentum down the back straight and physical. Certainly have a look. But here we are, Sinny having a go back around the outside, trying to retake the lead. He's trying to swing it round, and oh, he does so. That is a fantastic move from Jordan Sinny. The Dirty Digger Spectrum back into the lead with a comfortable move around the outside. That took quite a bit of bravery. And it looks like Physic was having a look up the inside of Cavadon, who once again has sparks coming out from the undertray of his Spectrum on the exit of the, the, the high curbs here at Sandown. Xavier Kokai having a look up the inside of Physic as well. Physic is now up the inside of Cavadon. Cody Donald is also vying into this battle. And Clay Richards. This is a five-way battle for position three. It's on for young and old, mostly young. <laughs> Very much mostly young in this battle. Here we go. Donald now up the inside, I believe that is. Four wide as we head into turn number one. Who's going to give way here? Somebody has to. Two wide, two by two now. That's number 93. In fact, everybody's out wide. This is a fantastic battle. It's Xavier Coco. He comes out in the, in the lead. Cody Donald, or the lead of this battle, Cody Donald just behind. But Jimmy Fizzy, it looks like he had it all under control, but he ran wide on the corner exit. Unfortunate, uh, unfortunate stuff there for Jimmy Fizzy. And we've got a replay of this move as well. So this is Hillier up the inside of Jordan City into turn one. But then we had City already on the back of him. And the Lobco making contact with Cameron McLeod on the exit of turn one. So fantastic replay. Glenn Line TV working extremely hard to capture all the angles. Cody Donald has his mirrors full of Xavier Kokai. Kokai's actually got a, quite a handy engineer in the form of Angelo Mazuris, who of course won the championship in 2019 and is a current Super 2 competitor. So that's quite a handy person to have in your corner. You can see him on screen there in the number 10 spectrum, the green and white car, the high zero car coming across the line. It's a checkered flag as well. They've actually called the race. So Jordan City wins the race from Matthew Hillier, half a second margin. Cody Donald home in third position. Jim and 
So here, Hilly from Donald. Xavier Coker home in fourth position ahead of Jimmy Fisick. He's dropped down to fifth position. Clay Richards climbing up to sixth position. Great finish there from Clay Richards, son of Stephen Richards, of course, the uh, and grandson of Jim Richards. Uh, quite a handy uh, surname in motorsport. We've got on our screen now Cameron McLeod with what looks like a broken left wishbone. He's alongside Phil Marinon and in, his, in the historic cars they come across the line there. Kai Cavanaugh dropping down into seventh position. That was from the uh, contact down at turn one, the replay that we saw of the collision. So there's a couple of cars damaged from that one as we're about to see a replay once again of the accident. So as we see, there's the move for the lead and then behind. So it looked like the car of McLeod became a little bit unsettled as he was tipping it into the apex and collided with the car of Lobko to his right. And you can see Lobko, bit of a stroll back to the number seven, Miguel. And the recovery crew's immediately on the scene. The Cameron McLeod has finished the race, but he hasn't been able to make it back to the paddock just yet. So you can actually see the, uh, the front of that spectrum. That's not the correct ride height for these cars. It is a mandated minimum ride height of 40 millimetres in Formula Ford, but the uh, broken left wishbone has, uh, you can see it's dropped the front of that car. Cameron McLeod once again having a look at his car, looking a little bit displeased with this race. So he'll be hoping for a much stronger performance coming up for the final race for Formula Fords this weekend, which is coming your way at 20 minutes to 2, 1.40 p.m., and that is a 10-lap finale for Formula Ford, which is doubling as a national round here to get their season underway as well. So through all of that madness, Jordan Simi won the race, just Indeed. to confirm. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, didn't quite uh, catch it as uh, the checker flag was called a lap earlier than we were expecting. So yes, he did take the win. And uh, yeah, it was a, a good battle, but came out on top in that one. Uh, we'll be back shortly. Uh, uh, so that was a fantastic second race for the Formula Fords this morning. Coming up next, we've got the historic touring cars and the BMW E30s, and Donovan Mollerhagen will be making his way. He'll be running up the commentary tower to call all the action alongside Darren Smith, who will be stepping back into the hot seat. Got to say a big thank you to the corporate partners of Formula Ford, Dick Johnson Racing, Norwell Motorplex, Castrol Oil, Ferrado Brakes, Freem Racewear, CHI Racing. They are the authorised engine builders of the series. And Bali Red Top Batteries for performance batteries suited to all sorts of Formula Fords. As we said, coming up back later up, uh, coming up later on this afternoon for race three, scheduled at 1:40 p.m. Facebook isn't the only place that you can support Australian grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. To see more real race cars, more live events and more of the racing you love, subscribe to the Blendline TV YouTube channel, sign up to our mailing list or bookmark and subscribe to our website at blendline.tv. Thanks for continuing to support grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. Bosch Motorsport provides technology for racing. Worldwide experience from all major categories of motorsport is in your race car when you use Bosch Motorsport components. Ignition system, sensors, fuel delivery and high-end electronics. Bosch Motorsport brings race-proven quality and performance to your motorsport machine. Search for Bosch Motorsport Australia or find us at boschmotorsport.com.au. There's good, there's better and then there's Bosch. Bosch Motorsport when quality and performance matter.
Welcome back, trackside here at Sandown International Motor Raceway. Darren Smith here with Donovan Mulhagen right alongside me, who uh, was a commentator in training two years ago, and now he's vying for my job. So uh, welcome. Oh, I don't know about that, Darren. <laughs> I'm not there yet. Well, welcome, welcome to commentary. So this is our combined field in the introduction this morning. We've got we've got this. We've got the in, uh, British. Sorry, the MGs and invited British as well. So this is truly a, a blended, not a blended field as in they're all in together, but uh, two different categories on track. And uh, it's actually a victim of the series' own success in the two, two fields that are about 18 to 20 cars come together to make a 40 car field, albeit that a 35 second gap between the historic tourist starting and then the BMW. Yeah, yep, but too popular for our own good. Uh, yeah, so we, we had uh, quite a delay yesterday, but uh, yeah, as you mentioned, we're going to shorten that to 35 seconds today and hopefully get to see uh, some really good racing between or within the two groups, hopefully not too much between the two groups. It certainly will be. So there is, as you can see in the, in the far end of the shot, the one make BMW V30 category, and that's what uh, Donovan will be here to keep an eye on and the historic touring cars rolling out of the grid now and I'll be keeping an eye on that and we'll uh, hopefully it all makes sense in about 15 minutes time and we'll have had a great time. I'll do my best I've had a good teacher so I'll try not to embarrass you Darren. <laughs> no, not a problem, it's always good to bring all the action to you. There goes Robert Van Stockram in that beautiful number 23 BMW 2002 the uh, number 4 of Anthony Petrovic looks magnificent out there on the track really uh, good to see an old Holden like that uh, still coming to the track Quinton Ferry was an entrant as well. I haven't actually seen where Quinton has been out on track. Number 55, I don't think he went out there as well. So, pardon me, a couple of BHs uh, here this weekend. But great to see the number four of Anthony coming out of position number nine. Here's how they'll line up. Trevor Talbot right alongside with uh, Andrew Lane. Darren Collins in the second of the Camaros. And it's Darren Jones, Peter Milliman, Nathan Gordon, David Crabtree in the little Capri driven by uh, one of Australia's famous race drivers of uh, Laurie Nelson over many years and uh, now David Crabtree takes over that uh, great little Capri and we welcome Laurie to the track, he's here doing some driver standards observations so not lost to the sport, those decades of experience he now applies to uh, keeping the racing good and clean as well so it's really good to have uh, Laurie here this weekend. Go back to position 11 of Simon Browning to Michael Holloway in the number 39, actually, you can see the uh, Cooper S rolling out. But uh, there you go, Dominic Leo in the number 84 to Paul Dobson, Philip Pierman, and Quinton Ferry. There's the historic touring cars halfway up the back straight and the E30s. So uh, we've got uh, Alex Jury coming in uh, at our poll today, uh, Brian Burke uh, uh, coming in at second, uh, Jeff Bowles in 24 in third, and Simon Leach in number 51. Uh, Simon Schiff there is on the third row uh, next to Rory Plant in our only four-door in the category. Uh, Ryan Carter, uh, who's a, a debutante in the class this year, uh, next to Dean Coots, who's uh, coming back for his second year in the category. Uh, Paul Schiff, who happens to be Simon Schiff's father, uh, and beside him is Jess Bell, who was uh, qualified in third yesterday. Uh, Graham Bell, her father, uh, is running behind her. And uh, Ashley Rogers, another newcomer to the category. We've got three of them this year. Uh, Jesse Bryant's doing a you know, fill-in for us uh, this week. Uh, Mike is away, can't race this, this uh, weekend. Um, next to him is Stuart Clark. Uh, then we've got Rod Martin. Uh, and Tristan uh, is another debutante for us in the category. And uh, we've got Daryl there by himself on the last row of the grid. Of course, all these cars running the BMW E30, 325 coupe or sedan type of uh, type of body. The 2.5 litre six cylinder M20B25, the BMW G 260 gearbox. So pretty much everything that came out of the factory. And a lot like the 944s, a superiorly balanced car. The, the E30, again, sharing that 50-50 split of weight. And when you're looking at building a race car, if you can have that from the factory then you're about half the job done. It's a wonderful car to drive, you can steer it with the steering wheel or with the right foot, they're a very well balanced car um, just lovely to drive so. The historic touring cars making their way down onto the grid, yes I can confirm Michael Holloway is on the grid in the Mini, there he is, just bobbing out from the side of the field there, it's got his work cut out for him, what he really wants to see is a bit of uh, torrential rain to 
be the great equaliser and the minute comes storming on through. Great to see Michael there, certainly great to see him up on the, uh, the stage last night presenting all the trophies to the winners from last year, being a COVID safe uh, outdoor presentation last night, late here at the track, so uh, good to see him back in the car. Trevor Talbot on the front row, Andrew Lane alongside, watch for the white Camaro in the second row, the number 97. That's two a great Cam shot, that one, isn't it? Isn't it? Down. Two Camaros, line of stern, two Mustangs, line That's of stern. Sad. It just looks very tough. Looks like HQ got, bobbing its headlight out in yeah. row three. I wonder if uh, Mike's got uh, rid of that little aerodynamic aid that he had hanging off the side yesterday after race one. I didn't actually check that out, but we can pick it up. It was a very shiny chrome trim. He's either glued it back on or crimped it back on or he's just torn it off and said not to do that. Bailey. Uh, Jesse Bryant is coming uh, in for Jesse. Mike. Yep, he looks like he's come in. I wonder if they've refitted the exhaust to that Jag as well. Yes, that was found trackside, I dare say. They have and away we go. It's Talbot that gets away nicely. Andrew Lane disappears into his own tyre smoke. Darren Collins jumps away beautifully and we've got the number 33 left standing on the grid of Peter George. Hand goes up. We'll try and clear that before the 35 seconds are up but Collins Leads the field down into turn one, a storming start, and we've got a, uh, a red flag. Yeah, I don't think they're going to clear that. Red That's flag, so this moving. field will be brought back around, hopefully to line up. They've all acknowledged the red flag. There's David Crabtree in the number 35, I think uh, number 95. I think he was the first one to acknowledge it, and then Darren Collins as he arrived at turn one. I think they're going to have to release the that. E30s to come round as well. I don't know if we want to have the uh, historics yeah, filtering through. Their way through. <laughs> no, that's not the way to go. So we'll probably lose a lap out of this race, which is not ideal. Have a look at that. The behemoths of Australian motorsport, the GTHO and the Cooper S and then the Jag. They are All classics these different to watch, eras they? Of, yeah. of Australian touring cars. Bob Jane in the Jag was just massive. The Park Recovery Crew, the uh, the big crew, based themselves out of uh, out of Park at Phillip Island, the Phillip Island Auto Racing Club. Making the big trip down here to help us at Sandown. Yep, certainly. This uh, this particular car comes all of about five kilometres from Dingley <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> oh, okay. to come here to, to represent Pyark. But there they go. Getting rid of that car. So red flagged, I think, was the, the safest decision on that one. They weren't going to be putting any grid marshals out to try and push that car away with a 35-second gap. Let's see and hope that the officials down there... They will still be down the back of the grid there, so they might yeah. be able to just guide them through... Um, Reese Carlton oh Carlos, who uh, just recently was announced as the Victorian official of the year, leading the crew on the grid. And I can't quite see him. He's dispatched one of the uh, the other guys to run the front of the grid here. So they'll be down the back there, and I dare say they're going to try and funnel them straight yep, down the middle are, of the field the of yep, they're, no, they're not, definitely not moving. So we've, we have marshals on the track. So I don't know that they're going to let the E30s pass them. So let's just, uh, while we're getting these cars back on, the, the E30 calendar and series for 2022 following the uh, Victorian Championship. Yeah, so this year we're, we're uh, basically we're running all of the Vic State rounds this year. Uh, I think we uh, we had planned to run all bar one or two last year, but we're uh, we're on full time this year. So we're really looking forward to that with the uh, the three runs at Phillip Island, two here at Sandown and one at Winton, which is our next round. Have a look at that. The officials guiding them around the, the back of the field here. So going around the side there, they'll have... Um, Pulled off slightly as they come around. There's all our dates there. Obviously here this weekend, 25, 26, 27 of March up at Winton. Great to go to Winton. 14, 15 of May at Phillip Island. Always a beautiful time of year at Phillip Island. Back here in August. You'd have to say beautiful time of the year in August and yep. is, is kind of a, it's a big push, but we'll say it is. come to the racetrack anyway. Right, yep. And then, of course, the uh, my favourite weekend of the year, avoiding all of the Gasp around yeah, AFL, well, yep. head down the island, let's go <laughs> racing for the 23rd, 24th, 25th of September and really, uh, really enjoy that as our historic touring cars are gritting themselves back up. Um, I would suggest this is going to be drop the lap out of it because the historic touring cars run very, very close to their, uh, their fuel fill and uh, the car's just being brought back around. Andrew yeah, Lane taking his spot up. In the original qualifying they do. position or finishing so position. Position there. Great looking silhouettes, these these coupes, the Mustang and the, the Camaro. Touring cars of old with uh, definitely five seaters. They're quite a big seat across the back. You just gotta get in through the, the six foot swinging door <laughs> to get 
to get into them. I think Andrew Lane will be hoping for a better start this time. I reckon. He had a lot of wheel spin off the get line. Get a second man. chance at this, right, get yeah. the clutch bite at a different point. He will have been very happy to see that red flag come out, I think. Yes, uh, Peter Muleman in the number 43 got a good start. He's gone back, but Darren Collins was the one that led them into turn one, and I, I guess I flagged it when we had to look at this shot about two minutes ago and said, watch that uh, white and black car. Darren Collins, a fantastic racer. It's one of those ones when he's on track, watch him. He never upsets anyone. He just drives the wheels off this Camaro. I think we're just about ready to go here. He certainly has. So you've got the uh, the double S in front, and then you've got the Camaro with the uh, the touring lights on the front of it in the second row. So Trevor Talbot, who we've seen racing numerous different bits of kit in historic touring cars, loving his Camaro. Red light on. And away we go, and it's more wheel spin for Lane, but he manages to combine that with forward motion. David Crabtree in the Capri gets away brilliantly, as does Robert Stockram in the 2002. But have a look at the Capri's. Gazumped the HQ and stormed up beside uh, Nathan, uh, Nathan Gordon. But Lane chopped the nose off Trevor Talbot, so Darren Collins will be ruining that red flag. He's got into turn one last time around. The Monaro, uh, sorry, the Camaro and the Mustang right alongside. Two wheels over the grass for Lane. Four wheels on the grass for Talbot. Does a bit of autocross racing. Reaches down, tries to find another cog in the big old gearbox there. And the 76 applies the big boot, as does Collins, because it looks like the, uh, Lane missed the gear. And they go the E30s. Alex has got a, Alex Jury's got a good launch off the line there, taking uh, the lead from Brian Burke. Uh, oh, and we've got a slow. That looks like Simon Leach. Uh, sorry, uh, Simon Schiff has got a problem. I know he had some issues with uh, with a brake. We've got Daryl who's running around in a 1.8 litre engine at the moment, so he will be a little bit slower around the race, but Alex has taken a really good lead there off the start uh, from Brian Burke, who has managed to hold out Jeff Bowles into turn one uh, with Simon Leach following very closely behind there with Rory and Rory Plant coming in through fifth, uh, in fifth through two. Three. Clean start for the E30s there. All getting up to turn four now albeit uh, a couple of slower starters. There's David Crabtree, a massive start. He's got the 43 of Peter Muleman off the start and the 45 of Nathan Gordon. And the field comes streaming down the straight. The HQ just applying the, all of that horsepower, leaving number 11s on the track. And uh, the Capri already giving them, go, to, go past me on that side, boys. It must be down there. I know you're coming. And there we go. The QE ranging up alongside. Oh, looks like the 43 of Muleman. Going backwards there, but the 45, the HQ, Always wide. very much uh, driving it off the uh, the loud pedal there. And here comes Robert Van Stockram in the 2002. A couple of Mustangs getting together here. The black one there of, uh, of Muleman. Got the bit of the feel of the good old boys about that one. Absolutely everything blacked out. Does indeed, yep. Looks like he's trying to follow it in the dark. <laughs> it never charged up the hill. E30s. The E30s down that, around the final corner. Uh, we've got uh, we've got some good mid-pack racing there. We've got a couple of packs forming there. We've got the leaders out uh, in the lead, but uh, a pack uh, about three or four back, and then another pack forming towards the rear of the grid. So it's uh, we've, we've got a really close grid this uh, this round. Uh, some really close qualifying times, um, and that's where you that's the way you want it. You, it's oh. no fun. It sounds like tyres over the there. themselves there. No. It's uh, it's much more fun when you're uh, when you're close by racing somebody rather than being off out the front and uh, twiddling your thumbs being the fastest on the grid. So we uh, we do enjoy the pack racing here at E30. The cars are very equal uh, across the whole category, We're very controlled in what they're allowed to do and what they're allowed to modify. So it looks like Simon Schiff has sorted out his issue. No, he hasn't. Uh, he's pulling to the side. I'm hoping that he can continue around and maybe get off the track rather than uh, have to have a safety car maybe he can pull in there at the marshalling spot on the left hand side so but uh, some good racing going along in the mid pack there with the boys just and, getting uh, some and the young lady used, yes. the number 97 has had a time penalty that's darren collins in the white uh, uh camaro so not only did the red flag drag the, like, the race lead off him he's uh i think i did see him come roll on, the start a little yeah, bit there, come under so. the fire of the uh of uh, race control this is the lovely jag Mixing it up with BMWs could be on the uh, the highways of Europe somewhere, couldn't you? That's right, yep. Here we go now. There's some smoke there. That might be out of Andrew Lane's Mustang, is it? Because the uh, HQ is coming, yep. charging on through. Yep. No, it's the, the shift car. Simon Schiff car who's pulled off. I hope that's not terminal. He was uh, playing around with some braking stuff earlier. But certainly, uh, Andrew Lane is definitely snut slowing. It would have been a puff of smoke out of that Mustang. He was uh, in position uh, three. 
Yeah. Now Gordon has gone through in the Monaro. I think there's some smoke like... coming out the left rear of that car. So. Yeah, he's certainly picked it up again though, because uh, <laughs> albeit that uh, the Nathan Gordon's laying your number 11s everywhere in the Monaro. Well, it's not hard to. Hasn't left him. <laughs> yeah. Gee, look at that big frock tank hanging out of the back of the 45 there. You go a long way with that. You do? Well, three about laps. eight laps. Three laps. <laughs> 150 litres, about eight laps. Lane has got back underway again. So uh, no harm, no foul. Play on. But here's the Mulliman battle as well out the back there with, uh, with Darren Jones, is it? And off the back there's the 89 of uh, Andrew Lane, who's currently in position four again. So we've got... Uh, Darren Collins leading the race to Trevor Talbot, Gordon, Lane, Jones, Billman, Captree, and Stock from back to Petrovic in the EH. And uh, this battle here, the uh, the 89 of Andrew Lane, and uh, back to the, the HQ, the number 40. The boys would be a little bit gladder today, uh, happier today that it's a little cool. They were sitting in Dummy Grid yesterday uh, cooking in the sun, but. Uh, nice and cool there out there, out there this morning so uh, with a 10 lap race that'll be a little bit more comfortable for them at the end of this one some nice pack racing coming down the front straight there with uh, Paul Schiff uh, I think Dean Coots I couldn't see the other ones as they flew past so this is the, the 40 and the 43 so Darren Jones and Peter, uh, and Peter Mulliman this has been a, uh, a bit of a battle since we started. Half lap, half race distance now. Coming around to finish another lap through the S's. Past the, the tyre company sign there. And onto the straight. We go back down to Dandenong Road. Dean Coots Bell and right in the middle there. there. Yep, they're having a good little battle there. Uh, I can't quite make out who's following Jess there. But again, some, some good close racing with, uh, with everybody on the track, which is what we want to see. Out there having some fun. Michael so Holloway off to the uh, off to the left of screen there, just getting out of the way of the E30 field coming through. Looks like Simon Leach has gotten through on Jeff Bowles, and Rory uh, Plant is looking to have a go around the outside in the S's. That's a brave move. Darren Collins, the leader of the historic touring car race, coming down now, capturing I guess midfield now of the E30s. Oh, just Dean looking to come up the inside of Mike Holloway there. Everyone, it's a crowded bit of track oh. right now. There's. BMW's all lining up there. Darren Collins clears some space. Trevor Talbot and a spinner. The 44 goes round. Uh, and that's Rod Martin. Mar yep. Rod oh, Martin. right in the middle of the track. He's kept oh, it going, kept which it is going. good. Well done. That can be a tricky corner, that one. You yes. take too much. You take not enough of the kerb and you spin. You take more of it and you're much better off. So, so just getting back underway. There goes Trevor Talbot across the line with three laps remaining. The mid-pack of the E30 is being caught by the, the leaders of the historic touring cars and there's the, the mini of Michael Holloway in the middle of the uh, the group there, he'll be loving it, mixing it up in the pack there, he doesn't mind who's around him no, that's right, he's probably enjoying himself a little bit more rather than just watching the big bangers go fly, flying past all the time, big understeer there on the, the 83, so that's uh, Stuart Clark I think yeah, is Stuart 83, Clark. so he's, uh, he's new with us for a couple of years now, so he's starting to get the hang of things and uh, in front of him We've got uh, Ashley Rogers, who's another debutante into the category. So um, his first round this round. Darren Collins top. continues to sway his way through the uh, the second field amongst this uh, big group of cars out there. Trevor Talbot arriving on the scene as well. So Darren Collins has got, uh, got that hanging over his head that there's something coming his way. But uh, Trevor Talbot... Doing a nice job there into Lane, just a little bit further back. Here's the battle of the Jess race. Jess Bell is trying to come up the inside of Dean Coots there. She puts a nose in, but Dean holds it around the outside, gives us some space on the inside. Great racing there by the two of them. And uh, I'm not sure who is that. Uh, that's Ryan is, is coming in behind there. Here he goes. Jess is going to put the nose in again. Some great pack racing. This is what we love to see in the E30 category. Uh, again, as I said, there's close racing. The cars are very close. There's a lot of uh, respect between the drivers, so we can get pretty close and know that you're not going to get punted off. There's I tell you what, you're not contact. left wondering when Jess Bell's behind you. She puts it out left, she, she puts does. it out right. Yep. She's applying the pressure on left here, on right, there, on everywhere. Flying between the mirrors on there either side of the car. And I look down the inside. You reckon you might uh, want to get a tight line there? Because here I come. 
She just takes it a bit easy there because that weekend this time last year didn't end so well. That's well. Two, but have a look at this. Yeah, she, uh, she overcooked it a bit into one there, but can you believe it? It looks like that car's going to be resurrected and yeah. may well be back on the grid this season. So okay. that will be fantastic to see. So that was uh, as the, basically the sun had set and it was, uh, there was dying <laughs> right. on that hadn't set, but it was right at the end of the weekend and uh, we looked up and there she was on her lid. But great to see Jess back at the track and as I said providing this excitement oh, here comes oh, Jeff has come Talbot. back past Simon and uh, Talbot's coming here trying to get around the outside of the two E30s while they battle into Dandenong yeah got that so yep uh, Jeff Bowles has uh, gotten past Simon Leach there so Simon might be happy with that he's been doing really well but uh, Talbot they're trying to get up the inside of Jeff before the second to last corner, which he does well, and Simon is, Leach is taking advantage of that. Last he, lap board out now, going to Darren Collins as he storms up the straight. And where is Trevor Talbot there? So that's a decent old gap, just out over five seconds. It looks like Paul Schiff is trying to latch on the back of Rory Plant here on the last lap, but Paul will definitely be trying to have a go. Garagisti, Garag of course, yep. a big part of uh, E30 racing for a number of seasons now. Yeah, this is their uh, third or fourth season with us now. We're very grateful for their support uh, every season. Uh, BMW Specialist Supplier uh, from the States. We've got a number of uh, components that they supply to our to our drivers and obviously um, to, uh, to Australian customers as well. So we're happy to have them on board. Very glad that uh, they're supporting the category along with, uh, along with our other supporters. Um, such as budget rent a car and Manami uh, media production. So um, it's uh, it's difficult as a small grassroots club uh, to you know be able to do things for our members. But uh, you know when we get help from people like Traction Tires and um, BMW Drivers Club of Melbourne, uh, it's very helpful to us uh, as a category to, to do those things. So. Historic touring cars now. Darren Collins leading this race. Done a very good job. Didn't get the second race start he would have liked. Had an absolute ripping first uh, race, but that was all nullified with a, a red flag. But he has driven very, very well here. Darren Collins in the number 97 points. He is historic touring car Camaro at the chequered flag. And he's greeted with a very enthusiastically waved chequered flag. A round of applause from our flag in the, uh, the main straight there. We wait for all the other field, the rest of the field now. It's a bit of... Uh, bit of Bit of like shuffling a deck of cards here to see how this goes out. Yeah. Burke has won the E30 over Bowles. Trevor Talbot has come home in second place in historic touring. Pechkovic in uh, actually that's historic touring. Pechkovic so gone through. Andrew Lane picks up P3 in the historic tours. And I think we finished uh, Alex Jury, uh, Brian Burke, and Jeff Bowles as one, two, three in the E30 category there with some racing right up to the finish line. So, big round of applause, the cars streaming across the field. Well, that was, that was great. That, uh, that shortened gap uh, from yesterday's start made it a little bit easier for the, uh, the bigger bangers to make their way through the, uh, the E30 category there and didn't interrupt our racing either. So, great work from all the officials there to shorten that gap and uh, make it better for everybody. So, that sees the end of uh, our... Historic Touring Cars and BMW E30s for the time being and uh, XL's on track next but the Historic Touring Cars and BMW E30s will be on track at 2pm exactly and I can guarantee you the way the MV Car Club are running this weekend it will be 2pm. I will see you then. Thank you very much Donovan, really appreciate that. Thank you Darren. Thanks for joining us on Trackside everybody, we've got plenty still coming your way. XL's up next, Invited BMW, sorry, MG and Invited British Sports Cars Sports sedans, Formula B, improved production, HQs, all coming your way as we go to Claudia Lennox from the Formula Fords. Facebook isn't the only place that you can support Australian grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. 
To see more real race cars, more live events, and more of the racing you love, subscribe to the Blendline TV YouTube channel, sign up to our mailing list, or bookmark and subscribe to our website at blendline.tv. Thanks for continuing to support Grassroots Motorsport with Blendline TV. Bosch Motorsport provides technology for racing. Worldwide experience from all major categories of motorsport is in your race car when you use Bosch Motorsport components. Ignition system, sensors, fuel delivery and high-end electronics. Bosch Motorsport brings race-proven quality and performance to your motorsport machine. Search for Bosch Motorsport Australia or find us at boschmotorsport.com.au. There's good, there's better and then there's Bosch. Bosch Motorsport when quality and performance matter. Welcome back trackside as we see the XLs coming around and I do not like the fact that even on the warm-up lap they're led by the safety car. So is that a bit of an ominous sign? Well, I hope let's, not. Let's hope not. Let's hope we get uh, eight laps of great racing out of the Hyundai XLs. They uh, certainly do provide some excitement. There's a bit of pressure being applied to the recovery crews around the track after that last race. As the next field is sent out and they're still uh, trying to clear the track. But uh, here they come. Up the, uh, up the hill here, Darren Smith with you, and of course now being joined by Steve DeVries. Steve, welcome. You were at Phillip Island for, the, I guess, the opening race for the XLs uh, in the Victorian um, scene this year. What came out of Phillip Island? Well, some very good racing came out of Phillip Island. Uh, of course, they have the trophy in the Masters classes for the, uh, the club championship in the Victorian XL fraternity. So the Masters being the over 40s, the trophy class being for the drivers that are under 40. That's sort of putting a bit of an interesting differential on it all. There's none of that in the Victorian State Circuit Racing Championships. They're all in it together, but uh, across the six races on the Saturday afternoon, uh, very, very good, very, very highly entertaining racing. Unfortunately, didn't quite have the same effect yesterday. We had that unfortunate rollover for Abby Winget over at Turn 1. She is okay, thank goodness, uh, recovering in hospital just as precautionary measures. But she is uh, a bit filthy with herself after rolling that car. It's actually, it actually was meant to be her first race weekend this weekend. And she's, uh, you can see getting out of the car. She just didn't, wasn't happy with how it went. And we were told she was, quote unquote, not happy with her own self. And you could imagine why. Yeah, certainly, and, and um, yeah, brand new into the scene, had to get her dad to get the car here on the trailer, all Correct. that sort of thing, so a real shame, we never like to see that, and uh, let's hope we can get her back to the track and excited about it all over again like she has been over the last month of her life. Ethan Grigg Galt will line up on pole position with Hugo Simpson alongside, and uh, if that doesn't trouble the commentary team, I don't know what is, a triple seven and a double one seven on the front row of the grid, just making sure the numbers are made up there. Harry Tompkins to Ryan Phillips, Aaron Hindle to Dale Carpenter, Dave Musgrave, Jeff, back to James Lodge, Techstar McCoy out of number nine, Toby Waghorn out of 10, Will Longmore, 11, Billy Hamilton, Brad Verecker, Royce Lynn, Antonio Malossi, Brad James, Donovan Manjvac. I went down to the uh, crew this, this morning and made sure I got that surname uh, pronounced right. So I had a bit of a chat there. They're looking forward to a good result coming out at number 17. So the mid-pack mayhem will be all around it. So Glenn McKenzie, William Seal, Will Sala, Connor McLeod, Scott Appledore, Kerry Blight, Devin Nichols, Emma Clark, Mike Sinclair, Lockie Harvey, Dallas Harvey, Abby Wingett, not playing any further part, Norm Lee, John O'Keefe, Jerry Arnlett, Carly Fleming, Tim Yates, Kai Allen and Mason Kelly rounding out the field in the number 15. I reckon we're just about set for a start. To start we, are, Steve. we are pretty close to a start. The last three names you mentioned off that list have all been sent to rear of grid for various reasons or another. So the one that's dead last of all is going to, unfortunately going to be young Mason Kelly. Just waiting on our officials at the back. They're doing a fantastic job to grid up this 30 plus XL field. There is the green flag and the five second board goes up a few split seconds later and we're set for a start. 
some great success over the last couple of years with Ben Grice uh, having a bit of a, a Grice wash with the XLs. Moved on, obviously, to his Trans Am multiple car field with Les Small these days. The race is away. It's the double one seven of Hugo Simpson that gets away nicely. Grid Gold will go with him. It's going to be a drag race down to turn one, but it is the double one seven over the triple seven. Ranging right alongside now. Have a look out for the number eight in the background here. Could inherit the lead if these two don't get through cleanly, but they will do. Get through very nicely indeed. Very nicely covered off there by Ethan Grid Gold at turn number one. A couple of drivers in the race yesterday before it was red flagged started a bit deep in the field. Likes of Toby Waghorn starting out of position 15. He actually made his way up to 10th by the end of that red flag race. So look for him to keep going through the field. There he is, uh, car number 84. Whoop, we've got a wide one. It's uh, That's car number 21 of Billy Hamilton. Very nearly tagged the wall at turn four. Good catch there by Billy Hamilton too. Had the presence of mind to just ease the steering wheel off and then turn it back on instead of uh, taking a big wallop into the wall so nice driving kept it off the wall it would have been a pretty sorry result there the 33 of harry tompkins looking to get race here right around the outside at the top of the hill and does it they go side by side across the top and plunge down into dandenong road that will sort them out here it is i like the way the cameramen are picking up mid pack in an xl race is that uh, for any particular reason other than that's where the white all bust loose i think they've got to give everybody a bit of airtime. i think at the moment the field's so big that uh, they've got to see where all these battles are they're unfolding like right up and down the field as you've got to call here comes uh, the 96 of vareka up the inside going into the last chicane two wheels up over the ripple strip there for the mbt haulage car at the number 21 there so caught it at turn four and we've got one off there and it's the number 92 and that's adjusted the steering on the driver's side substantially to a massive amount of toe in and that's exactly what it is that's banjvac oh that's a real shame the jackpot racing i dare say we're quite a long way from the actual jackpot parking it up in front of the uh, the tire company signs down there what a shame there for the uh, 92 that started out of position number 17, Donovan Manjvac. There was a late dive happening there at turn one, too. We just cut away from it. I wasn't quite sure whether the car was going to pull up in time. It doesn't look like there's anything oh, major. Oh, there's a bit of contact. Tag. bit of contact. That was the 39 going through there. Beautiful Got a little bit catch. Of help. Again, another great catch. What a great catch. We're, not playing, we're not playing cricket here, but <laughs> yeah, it's a great catch. Oh, we've got safety car. Safety car, so... Um, We've got a couple Slowing of slow ones. cars down there at turn four. That is the number four machine of Norm Lee. So he started out of position 32. Actually, no, it's uh, sorry, 14, sorry. Uh, Royce Lynn. That's a uh, last-minute number adjustment, isn't it? A bit of uh, race tape, down, race tape. The, uh, down in front of the four. So the top Lynn concreting outfit has uh, ground to a halt. That's a real shame. That's a, now he's come to a halt on the inside of turn four. So we've got cars stranded. Uh, Donovan Mernjvac here at turn number 12. And yeah, that left-hand side uh, is pointing at a bit of a weird angle there, isn't it, relative to the right-hand side got, of the we've car? We've got toe in on both sides. It's almost like it's a cross-eyed car at the moment. Here's the replay that was, this coming was the, out of four. This was the sideways one with the 39. So it was a dive by Carpenter. Beautiful catch. A little oh. bit of contact. Play on. Good, good front-wheel driving. Just keep into it, and the front of the car will eventually uh, recenter itself and straighten up. Great bit of driving there by the number 39. Should uh, be an award for that one in the James Lodge. Yeah, that is the benefit of the front-wheel drive car, isn't it? You can yeah, just keep your foot planted, and then the, uh, the tail the will just follow. steering wheel there, and it yes. just goes to it. Certainly is uh, everything in front of you. It's the complete opposite to a rear-wheel drive car. I remember when we uh, the, they uh, launched the high-tech all Suzuki Swift series back about 10 years ago, and uh, there was a, a guy that won championships in New Zealand, and he crashed out early on the weekend and joined us in commentary, and he said, really, the rear wheels on these things are just to stop the back end of the car dragging on the ground. <laughs> everything else is going, all the business is up front. Yeah, it's almost like a party, all business up front. It's already a party in the back. That's it. Like put the T2 tree trays under it like you're in the McDonald's car park and hold the handbrake and away you go. Never done it. Don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I think a few people have done it over time. I've heard various stories about uh, a couple of McDonald's tea trays under the back of the uh, rear wheels of a front-wheel drive car. Mac is a pretty toe about those uh, trays going out the door these days because they know exactly how, what you're up to. Uh, they're going to have to go with the whole uh, sustainable uh, thing and they're going to be uh, paper by the time we next get to <laughs> like the Like a fibre one. Yeah, Absolutely. It's only get like, a couple of seconds of fun. The 14 has already been hooked up there by the Pyark recovery crew and I guess they're just waiting for a gap in the traffic to pull out at the moment so that they can uh, not cause any further damage to anyone out there. But uh, 
a big shout out to all of our volunteers around the track. Thanks for all of the efforts for volunteering your weekend. In fact, I was uh, just talking earlier today to, to Laurie Nelson. I've referred to him a couple of times already in the broadcast today. He was uh, he's, he's giving his uh, obviously giving his uh, touring car racing career uh, away now, getting uh, as he said more of a more of a veteran these days and. Um, he was saying that uh, he, he still gets blown away, uh, you know, 50 years after he started touring car racing, that uh, all these volunteers keep coming back. And he said, you'd be surprised how many were doing it when I started, and they're still doing it, and they're all my vintage, and uh, they just love it. So um, really good uh, testament from a, from a competitor of over 50 years, as uh, Laurie Nelson, you know, commending all these volunteer officials and the longevity. Of, of volunteering and you can you can forge your way to the top like any I guess any volunteering organisation or you can stay like the boots on the ground and we need more, we certainly need more and if anyone interested in getting involved in motorsport and uh, doing it in a manner that doesn't cost you thousands slash hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands of dollars, join the volunteer force that uh, keeps motorsport going, you can do everything from the most grassroots of motorcarnas in a paddock somewhere one weekend be here at the heady heights of the Victorian State Race Series in the other weekend and then work your way through to the Australian Grand Prix. There is so many, plenty of opportunities arise and uh, here comes the, uh, the, re the uh, recovery of the vehicle there. Safety car still on track. We're recovering a couple of these cars. And we go to a replay, check out to the, uh, the rear of shot here and we'll see that car, oh yeah, just clouding the wall there. I would say no contact there because the car just sort of appeared and then there was no one around it. Yep, now we're talking about that cross-eyed uh, XL with uh, about, I don't know, you can't even measure in the degrees anymore of uh, toe-in on that. Or no. millimetres, it's more like half a metre of uh, toe-in. So I read into that, the car was obviously in the process of turning left through turn 11 and has probably had some sort of failure on the right front and has hit the right-hand side wall. So the left hand... Uh, angle on the wheel is probably the correct angle the car was at the time that it had the accident and, and the right hand side is where the damage is going to be or where the failure is going to be on that well catch up with those guys in the, uh, the pit area there's still plenty of parts there goes the first of our recoveries back into pit lane and they've got a flatbed tow truck now down at turn 12 to, uh, to pick up that car uh, off Donovan Bergevac because there's a bit of trouble uh, getting it on the flat toe. Great to see Triple Eight Home Loans on board again. They've actually brought the uh, the sponsorship for a number of categories here this weekend. They've been on improved production uh, for the last couple of years. Good to see them up uh, sponsoring this Porsche 944 Challenge. It's on the door. The uh, Hyundai Excels as well. There's at least one other category I think that's uh, bearing Triple Eight Home Loan banners across the doors or the rear wings this weekend. Doing a tremendous job, aren't they, Triple Eight? I guess sharing the. Uh their uh, experience that they've noticed that they've been able to make a commercial go of it, um, getting you know at the state series level, and uh, of course you know going coming through into the sport via improved production, which is you know one of the biggest fields, some of the most entertaining racing, some pretty awesome race cars, and then uh, going well, we're, we're liking the exposure we're getting here with this, and of course the uh, the live streaming helps. We're getting out to more people than just those at the track, which reminds me if you. If you're in the uh, Melbourne, uh, Greater Melbourne area, make your way to the track. We'd love to see you all here. We're open for business again now. There's uh, grandstand viewing. There's uh, Red Hill viewing. The paddock is open. So we're into this. Uh, COVID is gone. New world. Let's go racing and invite everyone back to enjoy it again. And why not? Absolutely. Important to note, too, if you do want to come down to the track, you do need to purchase your tickets via Eventbrite. Uh, so you can go to the vsrs.com.au page and there'll be a link to where you can buy the Eventbrite tickets, not just for this event, but for the future events that are coming up when they are indeed released. Entries are actually already open for the Winton round in about four and a half, five weeks' time from now, such as the demand. I had a look yesterday as well. There's already about 84 to 90 cars or somewhere in that vicinity already, already registered for that event. It's uh, Actually, most of them are Formula Vs, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. There's at least 28 there going to be a national Formula V round as well, so we'll have some uh, interstate competitors down there for that, in the same sort of fashion that the Formula Fords this weekend have got their national competitors making up a really big uh, grid number, so we're looking forward to that weekend up at Winton, and it's actually not been too bad a condition up there when we went last year, the weather of course much, much improved compared to going there in May when it's bloody freezing. 
Yeah, and I've got to say, Winton is, a, is I'm going to say, one of Australia's most full-time racetracks, probably only because up by Sydney Motorsport Park. But Winton is open for business every day of the week. Like You go there and there's someone doing laps. Great, great facility in rural Victoria, and we really do appreciate that. And we'll be there on March 26, 27, and uh, we'll go to Phillip Island on May 14th and 15th. Here's our uh, proceeding calendar or proceeding program for today. MG invited British... Sports cars up next, the sports sedans, and invited the QP Lewis Victorian Sports Sedan Championship on track. A massive field of sports sedans to start this year off, so great to see them uh, here as well. Uh, Formula V, again, getting uh, great entries, and, and always that, that um, national round at Winton always has a great field and really is hotly contested. And it's great to see, I guess it's like feeling the pulse of how strong Formula V is nationally when you look at the size fields we get uh, along to that particular round, the Victorian round, if you like, of the, the National Formula V calendar. Improved production, the Triple Eight Home Loans improved production cars will be on board and celebrating not only the Triple Eight Home Loan sponsorship, but the massive New Line Home sponsorship that's been around for so long. Yeah, they've been around for a while and of course welcoming this year Prestige Hino on board as well, Australia's most awarded Hino dealer. Actually just down the road here in Dandenong South, not far from Sandown Motor Raceway. So, I mean, a number of drivers out the back got plenty of uh, transporters and plenty of trucks. I see plenty of Hino badges out there, I'll tell you what. What have Glenn Cameron got for uh, their uh, smaller size trucks? Oh, the last time, we actually bought a couple of trucks from Prestige Hino probably about five or so years ago. Actually, some of the hybrids, little 916 Pro Shift hybrids, are actually uh, quite a nice little truck to drive. A little six pallet with a torque liner on the back. I've had a drive of it, surprisingly quick, surprisingly torquey, and great for a little city runabout. So, they've got a huge range of uh, everything, right up from your smallest trucks, right up to your prime movers as well. So Great to see that. Obviously, the introduction came via Danny Timewell, who's uh, running in improved production, of course, was the production um, for Pan Sports Sedan Champion going back three years ago now. Had a massive shunt at the Supercar Supports Race at Sydney Motorsport Park, part of that four weekends of racing they had up there, and they've completely reshelled that car. Had a bit of a look over it this morning with Danny, and uh, he's pumped. Although we get was left standing on the grid, and you can sort of imagine That's the right. amount of work that they've done on that to get that car to the track. Lights are out on the safety car at the Penrite Bridge. So now Ethan Grigault's got control of this field. We're going to get another three laps, uh, I believe. We're on lap uh, five at the moment. So it was an eight-lap duration at this stage. Still showing we're going to get the full race distance in. And single-file restart is the order of the day, and away we go. Rick Gold got out of the last corner there, got onto it. The uh, green flags were woven, and he's uh, just feeling the tyres underneath him there as well, trying to shake the draft there. You got a, you're only allowed one move, left to right or right to left, whatever way you want to look at it, but the triple seven running right down the yellow line. That's as defensive as you'll go, and the double one seven right in behind there. So Rick Gold, Simpson... Phillips, Hindle, and there's already been a change there. Harry, Tom Harry Tompkins threw on Aaron Hindle there for fourth place. And a good move, I guess, by Greg Gordon. He knew that he couldn't leave, uh, couldn't move all the way over to the right-hand side of the track. He had to leave that car's width worth of space, and he did just that. Enough to open up that corner, enough to take his preferred line into one. Tremendous camera angle there that the Blendline TV crew have managed to set up here this weekend. Every category, you can just hear the tyres being tortured Protesting. through turn three and then up into four there. It really gives a, a, a graphic or an audio um, visual delight as to how much the tyres are under duress there. The what, double one seven now leading the way over Grig Galt. So it's Simpson to Galt, uh, uh, the number eight of uh, Phillips, and it's Tompkins. And uh, they stream on through. Bits of a look up the inside. The number eight trying to get the look up there. Let's see who makes a move here. They're all lined up. All getting Whoa, through there nicely. We've got Spinner at the back there. I'm not sure if there was a bit of assistance, but uh, that it's is not a good spot. the 64 machine of Connor McLeod. That's not a good spot to stop. Let's hope we can grab a gear and drive out of there. Yep. Yellow flags at the top of the hill, so that nullifies any passing down at Dandenong Road. The yellow flag, uh, sorry, the green flag's withdrawn. We have a race restarting. And I've uh, got a couple of cars that have come into the lane there as well. So let's see what happens as that car is still stricken up there. That's not going to be what race control wants to see at all, giving it plenty of time to refire and get going. They'll have to call it by the time they get to everyone gets to turn four, I think. Oh, and there's, will. oh, it's almost like uh, the Red Seas are part of there, and there's more contact just as the red flag was being shown. I think that's Tech Star McCoy in the 13. 
And, and 160, 184, is it, by Will Longmore? Possibly Will Longmore, who actually had just set the fastest uh, lap of the race on that flying lap. But uh, a little bit of an unusual coming together. The race has been red flagged, so the concept car's out of Geelong. Stop there. Tech Star McCoy, number 13, parked up on driver's right. So red flag. They won't be... Uh, won't be uh, they won't be doing uh, any further laps at this race and say it's called and we've got the medical Helps. crew and fire crew down there here's a replay yep, so there was a little bit of contact there we just couldn't quite catch the car number uh, there was a little bit of overlap and a bit of contact in the left rear there on the, yeah, tell you what, the upside of the car there on the on you know the driver's side facing uphill to the field coming around there's a nervous couple of moments there. We might be reaching for a clean driving suit after that one. I think so too. That was mid-pack and we still had the best part of 20 cars to come streaming on through. And that was the, uh, the picture of uh, the Will Longmore car as well. That was the other one involved in the incident. So we're going to have another bit of a look here at the Turn 6 replay here. So who's the car on the inside? Looks like it's car 15, which is actually Mason Kelly, who was up the inside of Connor McLeod there. Yeah, I'm not going to, I can't see any portion of blame there. That was um, two guys racing for a corner. But no, from my perspective, blow the whistle, play on sort of thing. They're that both was going uh, pretty hard. A great, there. good shot for a replay. Thank you very much uh, to Blendline for that, that great replay. They're really uh, on the ball here this weekend, getting us all of these replays very quickly and uh, really adding to the telecast here today. Great to see it. McLeod got out. I did like the uh, the sticker on the back of the driver's helmet saying, are you okay? So, uh, interesting uh, interesting little thing put on there. Obviously, a uh, bit of mental health um, knowledge coming out or awareness coming out of that car, but certainly the question we were asking and pretty much everyone as well, Steve, was, are you okay down yes, there? Yes, I uh, think so. Number 64, you uh, got out there. So, Connor McLeod did walk away from the car. Recovery crews just assessing the damage. Looks like a uh, about 80 metres away on Dandenong Road during uh, during during peak hour. So we're now going to get another look at what happened just as the red flag was coming out at Turn One. So there's the leaders and a couple of drivers going in a bit too deep. There's Star McCoy at the back, 13 car, and oh, got into the rear of Will Longmore. I think probably as Longmore maybe checked up, seeing the red flag, just the concertina effect, and uh, probably. A little bit of an accidental coming together there. Yeah, the, again, um, the cars were responding to signals from the flag crew and also moving on the track. So there's multiple inputs for the driver to be dealing with there. And you you see a red. See if we can drill down on this. Here they come around the corner now. Have a look Longmore where he is. Longmore jags to the right. And yeah. it looked like... The 13 went to go with him and then saw the red flag. So went, oh, there's a gap. I'll go with him into that gap. And they tagged each other up. A bit hard where sometimes the drivers can be a little bit blinded by the flag points as well, especially with one or two cars in front of you. It can sort of obscure it a bit. So you are reacting, I guess, to whatever's happening in front of you. I think Nick Higgins is the DSO for these guys. He's always kept very, very busy. But uh, certainly I think those two, from my perspective anyway, look like racing incidents. Let's go down to Callum Brannigan in pit lane. And welcome back to round one of the VSRS, the Vic State Race Series. I'm joined alongside by Claudia Lennox from the Formula Vs. Now, she's had a very busy weekend today, so she's very kindly uh, agreed to come along and have a bit of a chat with us because you've been uh, battling all sorts of mechanical gremlins this weekend, it should be said. Unfortunately so. It's uh, the way with the Vs sometimes. So what exactly was the issue that was uh, that was preventing you from... Uh, being able to come and have a chat with you, a chat with us yesterday, because we've been chasing you down all weekend. Oh well, I had a bit of an off uh, at the last race at Phillip Island, so the cars being apart, back together again, um, which is you can find things going wrong at that point, and went off, and my clutch went bang, unfortunately. So the gearbox came in and out twice in as many hours, uh, with a lot of sweating and frustration. But I got out for the last race or the first race um, yesterday. And we're good to go for today? We're good to go for today. It didn't finish yesterday, unfortunately. After all of that, then we had a very minor electrical issue that saw me off the track. Um, but I've got high hopes for today. How did you come to be involved in the VSRS? How, who introduced you to this series? Um, it was actually one of the drivers. So Lucas Kawam, who's still out these days, um, was selling his car on. I was looking to get into something 
approachable, um, as having no mechanical experience, a bit of driving experience, but limited. Um, and Formula V is just the most welcoming, um, kind club. Everyone's out to help each other. I've learned so much. I take care of that car myself now, well, with help of the, the Beecham Racing Team. Um, it's, yeah, it's a great club, and especially as a starter, it was just such a smooth way into driving. And the racing is really clean. Um, yeah, it's it's good for everyone. It, it's always super close as well, so you picked quite a uh, highly competitive uh, category to get yourself involved with. We say a big thank you to Claudia for joining us uh, this morning up here on top of the pit lane. We've got many more faces and characters to present to you throughout this afternoon. Facebook isn't the only place that you can support Australian grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. To see more real race cars, more live events and more of the racing you love, subscribe to the Blendline TV YouTube channel, sign up to our mailing list or bookmark and subscribe to our website at blendline.tv. Thanks for continuing to support grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. Bosch Motorsport provides technology for racing. Worldwide experience from all major categories of motorsport is in your race car when you use Bosch Motorsport components, ignition system, sensors, fuel delivery and high-end electronics. Bosch Motorsport brings race-proven quality and performance to your motorsport machine. Search for Bosch Motorsport Australia or find us at boschmotorsport.com.au. There's good, there's better and then there's Bosch. Bosch Motorsport when quality and performance matter. Welcome back trackside here at the Victorian State Race Series. We are enjoying a fantastic round one for 2020 and boy we've got some energy to get five rounds punched out throughout this year. Here at Sandown, our next round at uh, Winton on March 26th, 27th. We go to Phillip Island on the 14th and 15th of May. Back here at Sandown for uh, 12, 13, 14 of August and we round it out at a magnificent Phillip Island September. It'll be a little bit chilly, but you don't have to put up with all of the AFL that consumes Melbourne at that time of the year. Get down to Phillip Island and enjoy the last round of our magnificent championship. We will deliver five rounds this year, we hope, and we're getting used to living with this uh, international pandemic, and I think, again, the MG Car Club haven't missed the beat for the last couple of years. They've always got round one out. We've always uh, managed to do that, and it just gets difficult in the, the mid-season. I've got Paul Vernell right alongside me, yep, and uh, he is going to help us out with this race. Of course, we had Sean Hurler here yesterday who had some great insights, and I know Paul does as well. And the other thing that Paul brings to us in this telecast is, uh, mate, you've been working very, very hard behind the scenes on the telecast and everything that's trying to get this, what we're seeing, out of being broadcast around the world. Tell us just briefly what you've been up to. Look, it's uh, lots of work in the background just to try and improve the product. Most people know last year we brought Blend Line to state race and I think it brought a new element to the whole of state racing and we've seen the competitors embrace it, I think family and friends, which is fantastic. So we're really just, uh, we're just focused on trying to, at the moment, improve that, work really closely with the team at Blend Line. Uh, we've got a really good small little 
group of people working hard on improving this constantly and uh, taking on all the feedback we're getting from all the categories and competitors and it's getting there, it's getting better. We're, uh, we're working on some partnerships at the moment which just add that next element and, and we really want to make this the best state series in Australia. Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, all the all the groundwork's been done there over the last 30 years of uh, successful running of events. It's uh, not until you actually start to broadcast it and you really see some of those things that you you yeah. go, oh wow, we need to improve on that. That's uh, that's something that will will stand out. But certainly to to yourself and Phil Chester and Callum Brannigan and all the all the crew that you've got behind the scenes there that are uh, that are working very hard at get growing those commercial relationships and I guess we'll have some some things coming to the fore in the not too distant future on that level as well. Let's have a good look at this uh, Sorry, MG and invited British sports cars as Phil Chester leads the field around and uh, I've mentioned to anyone that wants to listen, the battles between Phil Chester and uh, Gucciardi last year were absolutely immense. Let's see if Robin Bailey can fill the void there in the number 50 and uh, take it up to Phil Chester. The number 40 of Keith Ondiaki, the stag. We love it. And then Michael Trathen in there as well on the second row of the grid. Rodney Gipp to Michael Wood. Barry Pritchard, Mark O'Neill, Alana Ondiaki in the 44, the second of the stags out there. Gary Bulmer, Henrik Zwartzen. Great to see back at the track as well. Greg White, David Anderson, Anthony Bolabrek, Chris Ralph, Peter Rose, James Dodd, Danny Siama, Jane Volabrek and uh, Dave Mottram, who we saw parked up on the side of the road at the end of the race yesterday. So a good, uh, a good smattering of all things British, basically out there on track, and some pretty immense-looking MGs like that uh, four-door there coming down. Is it ZT? Yeah, Rodney Gibbs, big ZT V8, um, probably as close to sort of yeah, supercar style. V8 supercar style uh, car that you'd see on the MG grid. Sounds good. Big V8. Um, rear drive, sequential. Obviously not a lot of aero, so really relies on mechanical and tyre grip. Which has been a job in getting so, but certainly yesterday anything to go by, it's really starting to work very, very well. We've got a field lined up on the grid set to go, but we do have a slight delay, I believe, in getting uh, some cars recovered, so We'll see the officials clear the track and uh, let's hope we can get this race underway without too many delays. I guess the, the nuances of MG Racing, Paul, for, for those out there at trackside and, and watching right around the world is, to me, a lot of these cars down the back of the grid, the red, the blue, the yellow, they all look like MGBs, but there, there's always something different. There's a, 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 a sprite or there's a, Something for everyone. Yes, correct. There's a, a different version of, a, of an MG out there for everyone. And we're underway. Big smoke off the start there. That looked like Phil Chester in the Monty Power car, and it is. He romps away at the start of this, the Yarabella, to Yarabella towing entry. Here comes Keith Ondiaki in the number 40 stag there as well. And a little open top, number 24, coming charging through there as well. That's Michael Trathen. Oh, a little bit of uh, contact there with the TR and the ZT. Yeah, we get nothing like tidy. friendly fire in MG in Invita British, so see a bit of that. But yeah, you can see Barry Pritchard, very, uh, he's campaigned that car for a long time, that little triumph. So he is, he'll throw it up the inside and, uh, and really make a menace of himself. So you can see that over an eight-lap journey, the ZT needs an absolute full tank of fuel because just a little bit coming out of the overflow yep. around the uh, the left-hander there. So Using the, the guys, horsepower up the back straight. So The guys at Race Fuel's giving it the good top up. And coming down into the right-hander at the top of the hill. A couple of MGB V8s. GT yeah, so V8s there. Mark O'Neill and um, Mike Wood both campaigned for quite a long time. Mark O'Neill came back last year after a little bit of a hiatus and... They have a ball. There's actually a third one that's very close to hitting the track as well. So we'll see those three um, shortly, and they are they are great. You know, just period style. They've got the little three and a half litre Rover V8. A um, little bit under tired and under braked, but a lot of fun. So just looking at the difference between the cars out in front with Phil Chester and Robin Bailey, that when you look at them, it still says MGV GC V8. There's a substantial uh, preparation of race vehicle difference, isn't there? Well, they still have a V8. So. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, they've still got the, they've still got eight pistons going at what sixty degrees, I guess, or ninety degrees in these ones. Maybe no, sixty. Uh, yeah, geez. So coming down the straight now. Here, this is more traditional fare, I guess, if you like, for MG racing. 
Yeah, this is this is really period style cars. This is sort of our mid-pack battle, uh, largely kind of period what they would have raced back in the 60s and 70s. Um, built historic regulations, so they can't run big brakes. They run a, a, a radial tyre, generally a Yokohama or something. Um, but a lot of fun, move around. They've got to run, you know, uh, period gearbox, four-speed box, a uh, little 1800cc engine. Great fun and uh, fairly cost-effective. This is a good way to go, MG Racing. So the number 24 of Trappen now coming up the top of the hill. Clearly our two uh, heavily modified GTs out in front with Phil Chester and Robin Bailey. Keith Ondiaki in the, uh, the Rover as well as Phil Chester just comes storming down the straight. A 116.54. Now let's have a look and see if that is going to threaten lap records for our uh, MGs. Well, he's definitely got it on his radar this weekend, and uh, Phil did have a set of tyres that were sitting in the, the pits that actually had super fast written on them. <laughs> Just letting the tyres know that there's no pressure, we're going to be going super fast in this, uh, That's right. this next session. So, a uh, lap record of 116.34, so we're not too far away from that, with only two laps gone down in this race. Yeah, he, and he only gets a couple of laps because obviously the speed difference, he does catch the back markers pretty quickly and uh, he's very good with the back markers. He plays, he won't throw it up the inside and really make a mess of anyone. So he only gets three or four laps at the start of a race to, to get clear track and then he hits the traffic. So if he's going to do it, it's in the, the next couple of laps. Even last year when him and Vince were uh, really battling it out and had some absolute massive affairs on track, uh, they were still kind to the backmarkers when they arrived. Absolutely, they, they they plucked their way through and were generous with their uh, with their room that they they gave. And the other, I'm going to say the other. Well, there it is, a 116 dead for Phil Chester. He can uh, stamp his authority on that lap record. Car number one, 116.05. That is a ripping lap, and uh, he doesn't look to have got out of it. Actually, it looks like he's going to continue on with this. Yeah, he's, uh, the good thing Phil's done is since last year with those battles with Vince, he's really got his head down. He's worked a lot on his race craft and his driving and uh, put a lot into it, and he's getting the results, which is a huge testament to him. I think last year both of them lifted to their own to, to oh, keep yeah. up with each other. They both lifted. They realised that uh, uh, we're going to have some red-hot goes here, and uh, the dark green car and the bright blue car provided some, some massive entertainment. In fact, we were asked well, just this week what were your... Uh, greatest memories and I think the Saturday afternoon race between Vince and Phil at Winton last year yeah. was, no, they finished like half a second, not even half a second between them but it was just a ripping battle at the front of the field Yeah, a bit of a shame there's not a green GB <laughs> galvanising car just up the back there but... Uh, I tell you what though, it's open for anyone now isn't it? It's it on is the market. on the market ready to go, ready to race and uh, let me tell you, the dollar figure on it the sum of its parts gets nowhere near what he wants for it and I think that's the, the beauty of it. He's, he's keen for somebody to get into it and go racing. He's not looking to make a million dollars out of it. He wants someone to get out there and give Phil a run if they can. Um, not, to, not to discount Robin here. Robin doesn't get, not getting a fair credit here. Robin does, uh, agree, does sports yeah. cars as well. That car, uh, most people call MG, is unreliable. But Robin uh, dual enters this car he's and runs. Found, he's found the spot, hasn't he? Oh, this, hasn't thing, he? this thing does some Ks. It'll do a 40 minute race uh, in about an hour. Yeah, I think uh, it's it's at that point where he's got the car sorted. It's it's now probably going to be up to Robin. So yeah, so Phil Chester's back right out of it, and this you're just seeing the gap between these two come down. A one thirty last time round, so he's dropped fifteen seconds out of that that lap time. Maybe he's just resting the tyre and uh, has got another four laps to recover, or is he going to say, "Here you go, Robin, let's have a bit of a run for this"? Yeah, maybe they'll have a bit of a drag race and see who's got uh, more mumbo. So here it is coming up onto the back mark as Robin Bailey draws alongside Phil Chester. Doesn't look like he's got it. He has got it, actually. Just moves across the Panda Racing sticker and blazing across the front of the 50, which is uh, the sponsor for the sports cars here this weekend. And uh, the MG Cranbourne sticker and blazing over the front of Phil Chester's car, the Monty Power Wolf Chester outfit. But Robin Bailey takes the lead of the race off Phil Chester. Phil Chester just the logs in beside behind him. Big wide wings right out to the extent of the bodywork on both these cars. The 50 and the 1 will come onto the straight. Robin Bailey leads. Does that sound right coming through? Yep, sounds awesome. 
give you a little bit of uh, feedback through the, uh, the microphone in the camera there. So catching up onto the back of the field here and we'll uh, next catch the number 93 of Danny Siama. Yeah, Danny's a relative newcomer, gorgeous little MGB there, uh, having a ball learning, uh, wants to go a lot faster, so he's got the bit between his teeth to develop that car, but great to have him part of the field. Or use that car at Rob Roy on the odd weekend and get uh, the Gucciati car, <laughs> come out and run at the front. Yeah, well, that's actually a good idea. I was going to say, who doesn't want to go faster? What are you trying to talk him out of it? But yeah, maybe that's an idea. We'll yeah, go use the, the use the B use the B for Rob Roy and some of those yeah. you know those nice picnic type of weekends when you go racing with the big car. Absolutely. And here's these two V8s. They're just uh, tied together. Mark O'Neill's got a little bit of the upper hand, but it's great to see two two of these cars so close together uh, after a few laps. You know, the um, it's one of the beauties of these cars. They're good to drive. Got a bit of mumbo up the straights. And you've got the little Triumph uh, right at their heels, like the Terrier, just biting away. Barry will uh, probably have a bit of a go at Mark, Mike Wood anytime soon. He's uh, not afraid to have a go, and that car's very well sorted, that Triumph. Of course, the six-cylinder here up against these two V8s here, but the uh, the Triumph were certainly a weapon of choice there for, well, the same time in history as these MGB V8s were, GT V8s were as well. So they, uh, they, they know each other well, that's for sure. They do, just probably lacking a little bit of horsepower up the straight, so he's got to try and make it up elsewhere, but it makes good racing. It does, the TR, you can see his head, open top vehicle, bobbling around on the, uh, the now sand down famous bumps as you come up the back straight there. A little bit of ripple strip, just uh, shortening the track a little bit. No harm, no foul there, you're allowed to do that. And drive the car out. I do like the fact that these cars keep off that ripple strip, because then... Inevitably, sparks start to fly off the bottom of as they, uh, they go up on those, nice and nice and low. Not to forget, these are most of these guys, this is their pride and joy, so they're, Absolutely. they're not looking to uh, do anything crazy. You can tell that by the shine coming off the, yeah. uh, the bonnet of them as they come around. Or the wolf chester polish on all these cars. Yeah, yes. Product placement right there. Robin Bailey now has been uh, caught again by Phil Chester as uh, we come through. Very... Uh, Bright LED headlights. Haven't even gone the uh, Lucas Prince of Darkness uh, headlights anymore. Uh, well, nice they wouldn't work. LED. No, they don't. They're like Robin Bailey's. They're just, they're just <laughs> sitting there holding the bonnet up, holding the side guards up. Here comes the ZT as well. Pushing through. Still Keith Ondiaki in uh, the number 40. Yeah, big call out to Mike Tratton as well, sitting in fourth. Uh, really good result from the little midget. We've, there's another midget on the way shortly to run with us, so um, it'll be interesting when we get to Winton maybe to see how the little midget goes. Doesn't need the horsepower there, but the cornering ability might come into play. It's kind of like Mike Holloway and his Cooper S in the historic touring cars. All we need is an inclement day. That's and, right. And uh, they start to push through to the field. Yeah, the great leveller. And uh, then horsepower is not so much of an issue. Great head on shot, uh, we can see right underneath the Lana on Diaki's stag. He's our race leader, car number one. Tremendous uh, championship last year, albeit only over a couple of rounds, and Phil did beat the green car home at the end of the uh, end of those three rounds, but uh, you had the, I, I was absolutely looking forward to Phil Bolan with those two last year, just to see who, you know, with a full series where it was going to take us, but oh, yeah. not taking anything away from what Phil Chester. You can only run what the world's allowed us to run over the last two years. That's right, absolutely. Phil Chester will drive it all the way to the line. The MG Cranburn, Monty Power, Wolf Chester outfit, and Robin Bailey never saying die and ranging up right behind him, 0.3 of a second at the end of the day. As the entire field comes streaming to the line, it'll be Keith and Diaki in the stag, albeit a fair way adrift of those two out in front. James Dodd on screen there in the 66. Danny's going to have a look up the inside here. Had a good look. Just when I said they won't use the curbs because I love them. Yeah, Danny over the two, over the curb, two wheels in the air, and there's Mike Trathan in fourth, just going past them. <laughs> We're just hearing that uh, the 93 has tried to get through on the 66 three laps in a row out there, so that's why we've picked up on that. Great drive there by Trafford. 
bring it home in the little midget there. And all we need is the great leveller. He comes uh, Gibb in the number 32 to get to the line there as well. So a really strong race there. O'Neill will uh, be the next one. Then Wood and the checkered flag has fallen on our MGs and invited British cars. Great to have them all out there. Big, Big thank you to our, uh, our sponsors this weekend as well. Uh, Splats, uh, Wolfchester, and Bura Motors. We've got Daniel on Cranbourne MG. They've got the uh, couple of MGs out the back here. Uh, great to have them on board this year, all contributing to help keep MG and Invita British Racing alive. So fantastic to have them on board. Yeah, fantastic. Well done to, to Bura. They were also involved uh, last year as well. So great to see them returning. There's the result for MG and Invited British Sports Cars. Race number two. Phil Chester takes the W over Robin Bailey. The number 40 of Keith Ondiaki, Michael Trathan, Rodney Gibb, Gary Bulmer, Mark O'Neill, Michael Wood, Barry Pritchard, Alain Ondiaki in the second of the Triumph Stags. Hendrix Warden, great to have him back at the track in the number 36. Greg White, Dave Anderson, Anthony Volbrecht, Chris Ralph, James Dodd, Danny Siama, Jane Volbrecht, Peter Rose and David Mottram coming through now. And we will be back with more. Trackside, Paul, thank you very much for your time. Hopefully we'll see, see you for the race this afternoon. We'll be back with more Trackside in just a couple of moments. The Sports Sedans, the QP Loop Sports Sedans on track. So the QP Lubes, without too much further ado, we go straight into it. No recoveries from the MG race. Fantastic. Great to see that. Um, Formula Fords have certainly done what they've done over their opening round, and it's sort of something we come to expect. Safety cars, and bits and pieces, and XLs, though. But the MGs have acquitted themselves magnificently, and I dare say we're going to see some massive race here with the sports sedans. Um, great to have a little bit of niggling aggro in a category as well. Just niggling, not big, just niggling. Just a little bit, not too much. We'll all be friends at the end of this weekend. But certainly a very entertaining race and uh, not without its controversy yesterday with the QP Loops Victorian Sports Sedan Championship. And we're looking forward to a big race. I'm Darren Smith and I've been joined by Brett Dickey who has been on the front row of this at the grid many, many times in his Honda. Brett, um, it's not the best place for you to be in the commentary booth, but thanks, mate, for coming out and joining us. It's still a great view, mate, so I can see the front row from here, so it's not all bad. Um, yeah, it is a better down. view down there, though, isn't it? <laughs> it's a great view down there, especially when you look at Turn 1, there's no one in front of you, so obviously Dean Cam's got that view today, and um, Tony Grove's next to him, so they'll be looking down at Turn 1, working out uh, what's going to happen. Hopefully we haven't got any blood noses like yesterday. It, uh, the Mark car definitely looks nice and shiny, and um, Liam and the boys down there at Mill Dunn have done a fantastic job getting that thing to, to look like it did, and typical showroom condition that those guys produce cars down there. Yeah, it's been a, a tremendous run yesterday. Of course, Dean Cam and, uh, and uh, the Mark car came together with uh, Tony Groves. Of course, Tony could run number one if he wanted to. Took out last year's championship, and I've lost count of how many Victorian titles Dean Cam has won. So let's see. Those two guys cover the front row of the grid. Position number three will be Johnny Pilotto in the uh, in the Commodore. Francois Habib in the Falcon. The ex-championship winning car that Bob Gill drove to the win. Bit of a change of car there for, for Francois this weekend. So it looks like he has gone back to the Dodo Commodore. The Commodore. Yeah, that did catch that. me out yesterday. So we're talking about it. Friday he was in the Falcon. Uh, I'm Correct me if I'm wrong, qualifying who was in the Falcon yes. and uh, done the old switcheroo with the Dodo colours now and um, into a Commodore. Well, there you go. I didn't quite pick that up. Greg Lynch, the uh, the dentist out of the eastern suburbs, the number 22 and the number 5. Great to see Greg at the track and really doing so well. He's really uh, enjoying the input that Dean Lilly and his crew are helping him out down there with that car. Andrew Parker, evergreen racer, won many trophies as well. He will start out of position 6. Cameron McKee. 
goes through in the number 44, Brian Finn. And we just hear Graham Gilliland's uh, 13B rotary just wrapping past down there on the warm-up lap. Looks and, and just sounds the goods. Looks even better than that. Chas Talbot out of 10th. That's a long way back for Chas in the, uh, in the Camaro. And uh, he's got Laurie doing the spanner work on it again this weekend. And they've been kept pretty busy. Mark Kakuri, great to see the 39 out there. Arthur Mann also, Dave Radcliffe, Alan Argento. Magnificent looking car, the number 10, Graham Gilliland. We've already touched on that, the 21, the G and G, I said G and A racing. Big shout out to Anne. Great to have her at the track and all of the work she's put in to not only the state series but into sports and Anne's over many years. And we love you. You're doing a tremendous job and uh, we, we love seeing you at the racetrack. Gordon Lovegrove out of 15, Craig Eddy out of 16, Stephen Backer, Gary Vella, Gary Finnamore, Greg Taylor. Ran McGlurkin, I meant to catch up on this yesterday, which was the, who, who was in which car, the 56 and the 54. We will get that. And this Disco Stewie used us off the back with Kevy Stoopman in the four-wheel drive Evo off the back of the grid as well. Watch Kev Stoopman. He's uh, been a racer of uh, every category just about out there, and he's got a car to suit all of them. The guy from Tyre Power in Sale, and he'll have his old mate Chris Lewis-Williams joining the fray at Tyre Power in Benalla this week. We've... Uh, Wish Chris all the very best up there in Benalla when he opens his new tyre power. I dare say supporting, uh, he'll be open on a Saturday to support all the race cars and I stuff going it. on up there. Definitely don't doubt that. Andrew Parker just jacked the door open trying to get some air in the car there in the number 14. Oh, he's shaking his hands. So I reckon we've got a bit of an issue there. Yeah, it looks like we have the yellow flags waving. We may have a start delayed. Yes, we do. And Andrew's got his tape message on the back across. of the, the camera bill there. So obviously there's a little bit of a uh, bit of Mazda still wedged in the back of that Corvette. Yeah, and they I went and had a bit of a look at Dean's car and had a quick chat with him. He, he was not happy, as you'd imagine, after getting a nerf up the back like that. And there has been some damage to some small rods and bits and pieces in the back of that car. So um, this has been a, an amazing weapon of Dean Cam's, this car, over such a long time. He had the Honda Prelude there for a while as well and was, you know, near on unbeatable in that. He got this uh, this car, I'm going to say a decade ago, but someone will correct me, it's probably more than that. But boy, it served him well. He's done a great job and there's a, there's a whole bunch of very knowledgeable people down in that garage and um, they do an amazing job. They've kept that car running and, and look at it, from the day it turned up, it's been at the front. It's still at the front today and it's yep. definitely a contender. And Dino knows how to start a race too. He's one of the best... Uh, Reaction times. He probably should be a drag racer, actually. In, in fact, all of his cars have been kind of... They kind of start like a pro stock. They just land on the back wheels and just it's jet away. One, one thing you will say, it, it, um, it jumps back on its back legs and off it goes. And it's always been, if you can beat Dean Cam to, to turn one, you're doing an amazing job. Yeah, it's like um, a kangaroo, isn't it? It gets a, all it the is, power on it the is. tail. It's uh, something I aspire to, anyway. <laughs> so uh, it's really good to see the field out there. Unfortunately, Andrew Parker uh, not being able to get off the line in the Sentinel car. But the number 14 will live to fight another day. He's an avid competitor, a fearsome competitor, actually. He takes no quarter, that guy. So... Hopefully get that car rectified. There's uh, Francois Habib in his uh, ex-supercar. Uh, and uh, certainly that was involved in a pretty big incident. Phillip Island has been uh, all fixed back up again. And uh, doing a tremendous job. Big thanks to the V8 Sleuths for all their support this weekend. Linking us onto the, the social medias. Aaron Noonan and all his crew down there do a tremendous job. Thanks, Noons. V8sleuth.com.au. Check it out for all the socials. They've, they're on everything, across everything books and uh, all of their memorabilia that they've got, some of the best books going around and podcasts that they've got going out there at the, the V8 Sleuth. So we thank them from uh, the bottom of our heart from the Victorian State Race Series to V8 Sleuth, Aaron Noonan and all his team, the growing team down there at V8 Sleuth for all of their help this weekend and uh, historically with all of the all of the great work they do, matching chassis numbers and stories with XV8 supercars and uh, all of that sort of thing. So thanks to the crew at V8 Sleuth. Check them out before the end of today, v8sleuth.com.au. On your socials, check out V8 Sleuth. Really do a tremendous job, and we thank them. You'll see this car in, uh, in their annals of history as well as we see Francois Habib. I guess giving it the respect it deserves, racing it. Racing it, yeah, don't leave it in your shed. Get it out there, get it racing. And look, it's at the, the pointy end, that's for sure. So one, um, one I've noticed that isn't going to be uh, lining up for the second attempt at this is, um, is Ram McClurkin. So um, a couple of Rodneys come out to play on that engine, so he won't be, uh, won't be lining up today, which is a shame. He's um, definitely becoming a man of, man of sports sedans and um, 
definitely looking around to to see how he can grow sports and end in the future. He certainly has. He's got a huge um, social media presence out there as well. Does a great job covering the QP Loops Victorian State Series, also the Precision Automotive uh, Sports and End National Series, which we'll have at Phillip Island at the end of the year. And Andrew Parker's got the thing going again now. So let's see if he joins the back of the QP Loops grid as our pole sitter takes his spot. Dean Cam, the number 80. Could be number one if he wanted to. Tony Groves, after his championship last year, he's sticking with the number 80. Valvoline right alongside European auto finishes alongside the car there as well. Tony Groves, a man of the Mornington Peninsula. He loves his local area and does a tremendous job. Andrew Parker coming around to the back of the grid. Let's see. I'm not sure whether he'll be guided to the pit lane. I'll... I, w- I would be thinking that he would, um, just due to that. He had but to be I- towed off the start. Yeah, I- I'm thinking he might have to have a bit of a bit lane start on that. So hopefully they don't hold these guys um, on the start line for too long. I know what it's like. None of these cars run thermo fans. So looking at Dean Cam, he's fairly well into that box. So he doesn't want to be sitting there too long and definitely doesn't want to roll. Yeah, certainly Greg Lynch down there in the tradi- the uh, the uh, livery of the Holden Racing Team, a bit of a traditional livery, and he's actually picked one of the nicer ones that they've had over the years. Yes, uh, Parker comes to the lane, so uh, we'll see whether he trundled down. There he goes now, the green flag at the back of the field. Let's get this underway. These sports sedans won't be liking it. Graham Gilliland will be sitting there, and it'll be like 10,000 degrees with that little uh, 13B idling next to him. And the temperature on the gauge will be not healthy looking either. So let's hope we all get away nicely. Dean Cam selects the cog. The car launches about a millimetre into the air as Parker comes down in the tradie wrap Sentinel outfit. But the Mark car gets away nicely. We grab second gear and the Corvette romps away down the straight. Have a look at Stupin charging from the rear in the four-wheel drive. Uh, Evo, and he has made his way up from the mid-pack out of the back of the field, but the 66 leads the way down there. Ippolotto looks to uh, want to take P2 off our champion from last year. But have a look at Tony Groves. He's just going to say to Dean Cam, I'm here, I'm there, I'm everywhere. Fixed nose and all. Yes, Ready that's right. Again. Motor one emblazoned right across the front there. And Ippolotto has just let that gap escape from him a little bit. So uh, Francois Habib joins in the game there and there's Graham Gilliland in the orange RX-7 can you believe it at a state series this is the sole representing rotary powered race car out there how's I been you look at believe it looking at the field so you've got three completely different cars leading them down the back straight for the first time you've got Dean Cam in his sequential then you've got a paddle shift then you've got a H bat and this shows how diverse sports sedans really are so there's Graham Gilliland tucked in behind there, the magnificently prepared car as it comes around the corner. As good as it looks there, as good as it sits in the uh, garage as well. That crew really do work feverishly. I walked past them yesterday and there was nothing left to do on the car, but the couple of guys in the team shirts are just polishing a little bit here and a little bit of polish over there and just making sure Very everything well, looks well good. Well dressed and well Have a look at Stoopy. Here he comes. That is application of power. And away he goes. What is the boost running on that Evo? It's um, definitely time attack form there, isn't it? It is very time attack. To swing the whole side off the car to get into it. And down he goes. Big high wing there on Kev Stupin's tyre power sail entry. Looks to the left. Looks to the right of the 84 there. Uh, Sorry, the 44 there. And goes on through. So gets Cam McKee. Fair job at this, hasn't he? Massive run at it. Massive run at it, that's for sure. And it gets away nicely. That is powering on. I wonder how many laps you can run that sort of boost for. I've got the guy right next to me. How many laps can you run that boost for? I'm hoping you can run it for seven. <laughs> um, yeah, look, it's all a matter of um, the people you've got in his little corner there controlling it all. But, look, there's, it's um, definitely not out of the question. You can do the whole race. It's, it's definitely wheeling it well and makes an, um, paddle shift makes it a little bit easier for the old boy in there. Yeah, Kevin Stupin, massive experience. HQ's historic touring cars, improved production. He's loving it. He's got a race car for every day of the week, just about, and uh, doing a good job. Cam McKee getting pretty aggressive there. There's Chaz Talbot in the uh, the Camaro there as well, guy who was uh, president of the association going back a couple of years ago now and needs absolutely no introduction. Raced here in Formula 5000 in the 70s, and uh, he was an old man then, so uh, I have no idea how many definitely, cut him in half, how many uh, rings there yeah, is. Yeah, definitely there. hasn't got younger. That's right, the number 10. Coming, charging on through that fantastic Argento car, the big Falcon. Have a look at it, ranging up in this field. Really good addition. 
chucking it down the inside there. So Disco Stu's making his way back through the field. It's probably not as quick as Stutman, but he's definitely working towards the right end of the grid. Certainly is the number 23 of uh, Francois Habib pushing through there as well. Here's a couple of the, uh, there he is right there, Disco Stu. Oh, there's some great social media around Disco Stu this week coming into this one. But uh, Disco Stu tells Gotham City what's going to happen, apparently. Oh, I reckon he, uh, he sorts it out down there. There's the Camaro of uh, Chas Talbot. Very much an American silhouette. Have a look at that Aussie silhouette there, the big orange number 10. Doesn't that just hark your mind back to a, like a Hang 10 500 or yeah, something like um, that? Definitely in the right place, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It is being driven well. Two magnificent looking car, and uh, what better color than orange to spend about 80 litres of uh, paint on? <laughs> Talk about litres of orange paint, two cars back there is uh, Graham Gilliland and that magnificent looking uh, skyline right smack bang in between those two cars, which is uh, that's Backer in the uh, in the Nissan. Oh, Habib goes around. Big evasive action taken by Ippolotto there. Maybe a big charge at that because he was behind Ippolotto. And there's Stupin. He's gone through on Chas Talbot now as we just watch the the Dodo X supercar come around the corner. And I mean that with the greatest respect. It's got Dodo written on the yeah, side it of does, it. I'm not does. passing out personality uh, appraisals. And there is our Andrew Parker who started from pit lane. So he's managed to get his way up to 19. Francois Habib just trying to get a little bit more room to get some lock on so he doesn't get beached on that ripple strip. Yep. There Throw it, it over it. You'll yep. get over there. Airborne. Yeah, Wheels up on the ground. It's True. definitely a nervous weight sitting there. You know, oh, everyone's horrible. coming head on at you and um, you got to find the right moment. The, our, um, our flag marshals here, all volunteers, do an amazing job giving us some guidance and um, when you need to turn around. So those guys are out there and making sure today's running perfectly. Gordon Lovegrove in that fantastic Datsun 260Z. Doesn't that look so cool? It's got the you know the red, blue and white livery of the, the distant works sort of thing. And uh, it looks so cool. It's a real, I'm going to say, traditional type of early sports sedan type of uh, iteration. I guess it sort of leads to what yours is, the Honda Prelude. Uh, it definitely looks a little bit wider than the come out standard, but um, <laughs> definitely liking the look of it, that's for sure. So, a big one, big run onto the straight, the 144 of Arthur Van also. It's a good battle, actually. There's Andrew Parker ranging in behind him as well. Here's a replay at our uh, race leaders. as uh, Dean Cam, who still leads this race. Oh, there's one off in the background there. That's the Dodo car we're talking about at Francois Habib. Ooh. All by himself and pointed straight back at Green. Well, that was definitely committed. Yeah. So you can't give him, um, you can't take any points away from that. But he was definitely committed. But look at Grove, still working away on the back of Cam. Let's have a good look at these two race leaders. Three laps remaining. Let's see what they've got. Dean Cam in the number 66 has done many laps of many circuits. Joined the back in the day at the Kerrick National Sports Sedan Series. Did that very seriously for a couple of years. Got some minor results and uh, has carried oh. it on. Ah, he's Kev Stupin. This was charging through the field. In fact, got up to fifth place and now just dropping back. A we may have answered that question. We may it's have. Probably so. about five. I dare say Kev's still smiling. Goes, all right, now he's the kind of guy that will dial it up and go, now we need to dial it back yep. again. That yep. didn't work. 100%. He's an uh, old mate Cam. He's definitely throwing it through. So he's Blowing the big flames out the side of it, trying to get away from Grove. Definitely doesn't want um, any blood noses in this battle again. Morning to Mazda and blazing across the back of Tony Grove's car. Great place to get your next Mazda when you're looking for a new car. The QP Lubes Victorian Sports Sedan Championship. Here's our race leader, Dean Cam, to last year's champion in P2, Tony Groves. Greg Lynch right down in the uh, far distance there. So you got to say, Brett, if you were out there, mate, you'd be mixing it up with these two, I would suggest. Thanks for rubbing that in, Darren. Thank you very much for bringing that up. <laughs> Judging by the lap times there, we've got Dean Cam doing 13. So, yes, right in there. Right so in thank the... you uh, for bringing that up again. Right in the mix there. But uh, you've got plenty of things on your plate. There's enough coming towards you. There's always another day. So uh, Tony Groves just getting a little bit desperate there coming onto the straight. Went over the back of the ripple strip again. Gives Dean Cam a little bit of breathing room as they come through on that. Is that number 11 or 21? Couldn't quite pick up which that one was. Kev Stupin, by the way, has just made his way into pit lane. So that's a shame. We were enjoying watching Stoopy out there charging through the field. Drove really well, actually, to do what he did. Got through the field nicely. Dean Cam 
just wallowing a little bit through this um, from one, two, three, and four, isn't he? It's certainly where the mark car manages to gain uh, gain some time. It's definitely interesting to see the different lines that they both use. Obviously, two completely different platforms there, two completely different driving styles, completely different engine packages, gearbox, but everything's completely different between these two. But they make their speed up in different areas, and they're both doing an amazing job to be wheeling out 14 fives on that lap. So they're both done nearly identical lap times. Great shot of the side of the Valvoline. Mornington Mazda, Mark Carr as the Vic Welding car, five-star fencing outfit of Dean Cam drives away. And Triple Eight uh, home loans on the rear wing of Dino's car there as well. So they're uh, making their presence felt. Checkered flag goes to Dean Cam and he takes race at number two for the weekend. Terrific drive and a really good, I guess, safe battle coming up for everyone this year with these two out in front of this field. Let's have a look at uh, who comes through for the minor placing. So a massive result there. There's uh, some 20 seconds back to Greg Lynch. Well done, Greg. That's his first podium, I think, in sports Amazing fans. job, yeah. Terrific um, result. It's keeping out of trouble, driving nicely, driving to the line. The good thing that we're seeing, Darren, is that it could be anyone's championship. You've, yes. you've got two guys definitely at the front. Oh, Parker's uh, not quite making it to the checkered flag just yet, but it's anyone's year. I know we're early on, but it only takes Grove or, or Cam or, or Lynch or um, or anyone. Could be Francois as well that drops one round and anyone can be back up the top. Francois's got a good thing, though, hasn't he? He... he, he, he... It's one car, not quite happy with that. We're going to get the other car, roll that out of the uh, of the shed. We can do that. They're based in Lillydale, so not too far away from here. So Dean Camp takes the W in number two and the fastest lap at a 113.89. Tony Groves didn't even dip into the 13s as he brings home second place. Greg Lynch, fantastic land, landmark moment for him in his career. A podium in the uh, QB Leaves Victorian Sports and Ends. Johnny Blotto, Chas Talbot, great run there, coming home into... P5, Chaz was uh, sort of halfway down through the field. Brian Finn coming home. Stewie Eustace up the back of the grid. Holds on for a P7. That's a good drive. Cam McKee, Alan Argento in the big XC Falcon. Mark Kakuri in the uh, the VH Commodore. And that's our top 10. Steve Backer in the GDR Skyline. Craig Eddy in the uh, Commodore. Graham Gilliland home in 13th. Graham won't be exactly happy with that. He'd like to be inside the top 10, and he probably should be. But after a bit of time off, just getting the... Uh, Getting the yeah, joints all ready to go again is uh, proving a little bit uh, a little bit difficult for him, but he'll get there. Francois Habib, then we have Arthur Mann also, Gordon Lovegrove, Dave Ratcliffe, Andrew Parker, Gary Finnamore and Greg Taylor. To Kevy Stoopman, who uh, finished in the pits, Vela and the two McGlurkins not taking any part in that race. Brett Dickey, thank you very much for your time and expert opinion on the category. Really appreciate your time, and uh, hopefully we can have you up here again later on the Saturday. Shall do. We'll be back with more trackside here. It's the Formula V's coming up next. You're at the Victorian State Race Series across the Blendline TV networks on YouTube and, of course, all the social media channels as well via the www.vsrs.com.au. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Facebook isn't the only place that you can support Australian grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. To see more real race cars, more live events and more of the racing you love, subscribe to the Blendline TV YouTube channel, sign up to our mailing list or bookmark and subscribe to our website at blendline.tv. Thanks for continuing to support grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. Bosch Motorsport provides technology for racing. Worldwide experience from all major categories of motorsport is in your race car when you use Bosch Motorsport components. Ignition system, sensors, fuel delivery and high-end electronics. Bosch Motorsport brings race-proven quality and performance to your motorsport machine. Search for Bosch Motorsport Australia or find us at boschmotorsport.com.au. There's good, there's better and then there's Bosch. Bosch Motorsport when quality and performance matter.
seeing Australian royalty in the form of Richard Davison, who's very kindly uh, agreed to join us up here and have a bit of a chat. Richard, welcome to uh, the uh, chat sanctum, I guess we'll call it. Awesome to be here, Callum. I'm uh, living the dream every time I go racing and uh, really enjoying the weekend. Having a good weekend so far in the, in the uh, Van Diemen in the Formula Ford category. Could you uh, tell us or give us a bit of an honest appraisal on your own performance? Uh, pretty happy, really. You know, I'm a big critic of myself, but uh, I've kept it clean, managed to get pole and got down to the sort of lap time I thought I needed to do. And uh, I've had a couple of race wins, so can't be too upset with that, can I? And the car itself's got quite a history in your own family, uh, as I understand it. Yeah, look, it's a special, special car for us. Uh, I bought it from Brett Lupton, as, who owned it when Garth Tander won the championship, literally collected it off the track at Oran Park in the final round of the 97 championship, which Garth won. Then Alex raced it in his first year of National Formula Ford in 98. And then Will ran it in the Victorian State Series and did three rounds, I think, in 2000 and dominated in it. And then my nephew James, who races in America and Indy cars and stuff, he had his start in it in 2003 or thereabouts. And then it's pretty much sat since then. Now it's back out here and racing this weekend and what is actually the opening round of the Australian National Formula Ford Series. We're very thankful to have people like Richard Davison, surnames like Richard's, Barguanas. It's, there's heaps of stars up and down the pit lane everywhere you look. We'll be back later on this afternoon with some more interviews as soon as we can find it. But we'll say a big thank you to Richard for joining us. Great. Great to be here. Thanks. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to what is now becoming a little bit of a sunny morning here at Sandown Motor Raceway here in southeastern Melbourne. Formula V's just making their way out of marshalling and onto the track. We've had a bit of overcast here, Dan McCarthy, for the last couple of hours, but uh, all of a sudden, some pokes its head out, and maybe the race might change a little bit just with the track temperature just starting to go up just a little bit. Absolutely, it's only just come out of the sunlight during that sports sedans race just before, so yeah, as you say, tyre pressures might be a big factor. Who saw this weather coming? Yeah, certainly UV and sunlight has a big effect on tyre te uh, tie temperature and tyre pressure. So let's see who's got their pressures right for this one. As we see, a great field of Formula Bs roll out for this second race of their weekend first for their day. A yeah, good strong number of Formula Vs this weekend at 26 on the entry list. Of course, we mentioned yesterday there's uh, no less than six drivers making their maiden race debut here this weekend, which is a fantastic number uh, for a category in uh, sort of in the last 10 or so years. Had struggled with numbers for a good period of time, and over the last few years it just started to rebuild slowly uh, and culminating now with probably one of the biggest grids we've seen for couple of years outside of course of the combined rounds where we have the national formula v's come and play here at sandown and also at our next round at winton they've made appearances before as well we're going to get a good strong field of v's with a national round at winton in four or so weeks time and as you mentioned tire pressure you see already a few people may realize that they need to get a little bit more heat into these tires or they might have the tire pressure slightly wrong and trying to bring those up to temperature rather quickly. Yeah, as you say, some people weaving around, others not. So it'd be interesting to see how that plays out throughout the race. Not as blustery as it was this time yesterday. The wind really picked up just as we uh, got to lunchtime and in the afternoon. And that really affected the racing with a strong headwind down the back straight and a really strong tailwind down the front straight. So a lot more neutral conditions here now. So it'll be interesting as well to see whether that plays into effect as the race goes on. Absolutely. Makes the toe a little bit, uh, I guess, less important going up the back straight considering that the car in front's not going to be doing a huge amount of work. Let's have a look at the grid as they're going to line up for this one. So Reef McCarthy, Jake Rowe off the front row of the grid. That sensational finish yesterday with Reef McCarthy with two wheels in the grass on the uh, final lap on the run up to the very, very infamous turn six. Then behind them, Heath Collins in position three. John Casamati, great run from John Casamati, who started P8 yesterday. has found himself inside top ten in position four. Very, very good run for him. Lee Partridge and Ash Clifford on the, the third row of the grid. Phil Gardner, great to see Phil Gardner having a really good run in the, in the VC Formula V car there. Car 73 in position seven. Adam Nicholson, great first outing for him in the Vic State Race Series in the first of the Acura cars in car 95, position 8. Lucas Kwam, Brian Buttigieg rounding out the top 10. And for 
Australian V-Dub Performance Centre. We are just about set for start of race two. Yes, they've all lined up. They're all in position at the back. We see the green flag waved now at the back of the shot. Here we go. We are ready for a start. The usual fast men off the front row, but they've got John Casamati in the GMC Products Car for Company. Who can get a good launch out of this one? Yesterday, the initial launches went to Jake Rowe, who's on the right-hand side of the grid. Can he repeat this time around? Pretty even, pretty even start between the top two. Actually, both the top two rows pretty much side-by-side side on the launch sequence and on the run down to turn number one. Now, a couple of drivers a little bit slow away from the back of the field. Uh, looks like Ed Felipe may have dropped a position or two off the back. So too Kelly Egan looked like she was going backwards at the start there as well. As they pour into the first turn, top five as they stand where, from where they started. Indeed, we see four and five car number nine holding on there to position number four. That's Casamati holding off. Partridge, you had a little look on the outside there at turn two, but to no avail. As they head on to the back straight for the first time, all the cars evenly spread out. Phil Gardner's made a spot there as well on Ash Clifford, so a good strong start for Phil Gardner in the BC. Moves ahead of Ash Clifford in the StarRes.com car. So that's a change of position between 6th and 7th as they head up the back straight for the first time. Everybody just quite happy to be sort of tucked in behind everybody else. One or two drivers just feeling like they need to pop out a little bit, maybe play a little bit of defence. Here's Rob Vile in the 7, just playing a little bit of defence with Brian Buttigieg in the 85. And then a little bit further back, but Nick Grigg just holding off one of the, uh, the debutants here in the state race series with Adam Nicholson, who's gone a little, had a bit of a tardy start again, and then picks that spot back up at turn nine. Good move, a little lockup, but managed to get it stopped quite comfortably into Dandenong Road, although there may be a retaliation here around the outside into the final sequence of turns. As we look behind to the, the second class in Formula Vs, I'll let Stephen talk you through the different classes. We have got the two different classes uh, in Formula V, but most of these ones here, actually all of them, are in the 1600 class. It's just, I guess, in terms of class, it's, from the driver's point of view, it's just about also who they're actually paired off to be racing against as we look a bit further down the order. Looking to see Nick Kerr coming through the order. There he is in the number 25 Beecham, just in front of shot there, going into turn one. Of course, had that massive accident over at turn seven and eight yesterday. A bit of front end damage to be repaired. Rear gearbox was changed as well. There was a little bit of a crack, uh, which had a bit of an oil fire underneath it when the car was off the road. So he's flying through the order, already up to position 16. And then much further back in the field, here's another car that was off the circuit yesterday, in Josh Munro in a car 76. He actually pulled over just to the left of the circuit on approach to turn six with uh, some brake issues. It's good to see they got that uh, Logic Carlos car back out for the second race this afternoon, or so this morning, and hopefully for the third race this afternoon. We've seen the change for the lead. Rowe now out in front for the first time. Must have made that move on the back straight. Didn't quite see that on the uh, live coverage. But yes, there we are, a new race leader. And once again, it's the same three as yesterday. We've and they've got, got Rowe, a... McCarthy, and Collinson pulling away from the field. And they've got a really good handy margin at the moment as well. Casamati's pretty much running uh, on his own behind in P4. There he is. Just in shot. He's actually dropped a little bit of time on this lap as well. Lee Partridge just trying to tag onto the back of him and pick up another spot. Ash Clifford still dragging Phil Gardner along for the ride. As McCarthy goes back to the lead of the race. Collinson just content to sit there for the moment. Not really looking to pull any move. Just looking to stay with the top two. As they're both a little bit out of shape and well over the backside of the curb for Jake Rowe at turn one. More than a little bit out of shape. There was a big moment there from Rowe getting crossed up for the kerb and over it. A bit of a moment there for McCarthy going into turn number four as well. So that'll give Rowe an opportunity as they go down the back stretch. You can hear the tyres and the Dunlop protesting uh, as they go through some of the, the turns, especially at turn four. A couple of the drivers I've noticed have liked to go for a slightly higher tyre pressure. They'd like the car to be a little bit more skatey and sort of prefer to sort of turn it in and just sort of feel it and then just sort of manage their way through the turn. It sort of gives a bit more confidence to their way of the way they like to drive versus a number of drivers a bit further down the grid that sort of want to play it a little bit safer. You can see the kind of car behaviour, especially coming down the hill here. A little bit of a puff of smoke there for Partridge, who's now picked up a spot 
moves up to P4 ahead of Casamati. Just looking a bit further down the order, you mentioned Kerr, of course, had that incident down heading into Dandenong Road corner yesterday, hitting the wall, lost the, lost the rear of the car over the crest at turn six, and then upon re ran wide and upon rejoining, uh, lost the car and cleared to the wall, but making good progress up to 15th at the end of the first lap and has continued to make progress on this lap as we see another change. No, Collinson decides to pull out of that slot back into position number three. Maybe he just wanted a bit of fresh air through his, uh, through his bottom of his visor there. I think he maybe got a bit sick of sitting behind the hot car exhaust for Jake Rowe for a little bit. Just wanted to pull out and get a little bit of fresh air through to the uh, through to the face. Again, you can hear Dunlop CR82 is just protesting as they try and put maximum attack, try and maximise their speed out of turn four for the long drag up the back straight here at Sandown. Have a bit of a look through the order if we can. As we said, there's a number of debutants uh, in the field uh, in the state race series today and uh, indeed this weekend. The, uh, the first of those at the moment is, uh, I think, the number 95, Adam Nicholson, who's in position 11 um, for the Acura Motorsport Stable. He's lost a couple of spots uh, from the start. He's gone backwards three spots, but still holding his own fairly well. Actually, the team boss here, Lucas Kawam in the 23, actually towing Nicholson along here for a little bit. And these guys have got a pretty strong outfit this weekend. They've got five cars in the garage for the first time. Of course, they've welcomed on a new sponsors uh, this year to go with the existing sponsors. Dave Pittman and the crew of Pittman Trucks and the uh, Euro Truck Spares got their logos on the sides of the car this week. And we've got an incident to come together. It's Mick Fisher and Nick Grigg. Looks like coming down the hill towards Dandenong Road. And there's a nose cone missing on the Nick Grigg car. And can't see what the damage is to Mick Fisher's car, but uh, he's caught up in this as well. Yeah, certainly... Definitely these two have made contact. I think he's going to have to see if Grieg's all right. Hopefully he is. Looks like, yes, yeah, some, some nose damage there, that's for sure, and I think uh, a little bit of wall damage. So I think both cars clearly hitting the wall there as uh, we see the race continue under green flag at this point in time. It's uh, McCarthy that leads from Rowe and Collinson down the back straight. Yeah, just getting confirmation that's over on the back side of the circuit at the moment, sort of towards, you know, turn six, seven, and eight. As, all Brian Buttigieg a little bit loose and a bit out of control there. Puts himself well wide between three and four. He's going to be a bit of a sitting duck down here. Now, the problem is with where these drivers are positioned down here, if it is indeed at this part of the circuit as it appears, then there won't be any passing down here. So, Kawam leading a five or six car freight train here, heading up the back, and safety car bin has been called for. So, that'll neutralise the race. Second time in as many races for the weekend the safety car makes an appearance for formula v that's a shame but i think a necessary decision as we see greek getting out of the car a little bit gingerly but uh, clearly uh, well enough to to get out by himself which is great to see that's what we like to see importantly they're well off the track there as well so the marshal should have a pretty quick job of recovering those cars hopefully getting them behind the fence and getting back underway here Looks a little bit winded there, Nick Grigg. He's the, the man on the left-hand side there. Mick Fisher, the one on the right. Both look very similar in the uh, white helmets and the overalls. A bit hard to tell them apart. I can tell them apart because of the height difference. Yes, I know yes. how much how high they are when I'm standing next to them in the pit lane. A couple of the uh, Pyark recovery crew down there just getting ready to, to do their thing. But good to see both of them are out. Just, uh, I did... I echo your sentiments. It looked like Nick was maybe a little bit ginger just getting out of that car, so it might have been a fairly hard hit. Yeah, it's, you don't normally see too many uh, small accidents at that section of the road. Um, clearly the cars are swung around to the left quite sharply, so it's, a, it's an interesting place for both cars to come to rest. Normally if you collide, you end up going out wide at that corner, so it would be interesting to see if uh, the magnificent team at Blenline do have a replay of that incident. They're looking for it now, I'd imagine. Then I'm just having another second look at that Nick Grigg car. Not only is there the front end damage, I can see the rear exhaust is missing as well. So it's had two wallops, either with the wall or with uh, the wall in Mick Fisher's car. I think the, uh, the nose cone's a little bit further back, just behind the timing tree on our screen. You can see the remnants of it when we had the long shot. Uh, but there's going to be a fairly hefty amount of repair work going to be done by the JRD crew after this race is over. And, of course, with the precautionary checks, it's going to be the drivers will have to jump into the team medical cars there inside the track. And at least, thankfully, 
the uh, they're not a rollover. That's the the one thing yes. we often worry about with the open wheel cars is the the rollover because they've only just got that roll hoop. Uh, the regulations actually have them set that there's got to be a, a minimum 50 millimetre clearance between the top of the driver's helmet and the actual top of the roll hoop, which doesn't actually sound like a lot uh, when you think about it. But that whole 50 metre, millimetre clearance has got to extend all the way down to just above the steering wheel, uh, where the other part of the roll cage structure is as well. Um, we did see that frightening rollover for Brett Burden last year at Winton. Um, 50 millimetres, well, surprise, surprise, it's actually enough to do the job. And even I was a bit sort of gobsmacked when I read how much or how little clearance it actually needs to be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're talking about rollovers. We should stress that, you know, V rollovers are very, very rare. A very, very rare, rare occurrence to see these cars roll over. It's very, very hard to, to get them tipped. You definitely need assistance to do that. But uh, we see uh, both drivers uh, now in the uh, medical cars and being whisked away, but they seem seem okay anyway. So let's have a look at the order as it stands uh, while we are under safety car. It's a good opportunity to have a look at the, uh, the movers and shakers up and down the order after the first handful of laps. Uh, at the moment, it looks like uh, we're about to tick over to lap six uh, with the safety car bringing the field across the line. So we might actually be... Uh, about to call this race over with only uh, two laps left officially on the board. So it's Reef McCarthy and Jake Rowe and Heath Collinson. So the top three, as they stood uh, at the start of the race, are where they're currently on track. John Casamati had actually started P4, dropped back behind Lee Partridge, and has actually managed to get back past before the safety car was called. So he's now back up to P4. Here's actually a replay, potentially. We're looking here at what happened. So that's not a great angle there, but it's just the aftermath of, uh, of what happened. So not a huge, I guess, amount we can read into that just for the moment. Back to the order. So Partridge, P5. Ash Clifford had made his way back up to P6, which is where he started. Again, he'd fallen behind Phil Gardner at the start and has managed to repass him uh, to get back up into P6. P7 for Phil Gardner. Adam Nicholson, uh, down one spot from P8 to P9, and he swapped that with Lucas Kawam. So that's an exchange of position between the two Acura Motorsport stable mates. And then Isaac Woodhouse, so another man, one of the drivers who's on debut this weekend in car 12. He's actually found his way into the top 10. So, or by, by judging the timing, here he comes just into shot here. There he is, the sign print car going through there, ahead of Brian Budigig in 11th, who's lost one. And then Andre Kieran in car number five has moved into a 12th place. He actually started 11th, so he's lost a spot there as well. The rest of the drivers you can see on your screen there, we keep a bit of an eye on the remainder of the debutants uh, that are here this weekend. We just mentioned uh, Adam Nicholson, Isaac Woodhouse, Andre Kieran are three of them. You've got uh, Ed and Felipe uh, out of Bendigo, car 64. He's moved up to position 18 by virtue of the uh, two drivers that have had that accident down at uh, turns six, seven, and eight. You've got uh, Charlie, Tracy Richardson's another great to see. We've got uh, some more ladies coming into the fold. Uh, she's 21st in the running order. Josh Munro, who's 19th, it's his uh, debut in the Vic State Race Series as well. Uh, he's 19th. And Samuk Rudrapatna, who's the, uh, the last of the Acura cars uh, that's out there at the moment, just at the very back of the shot there. Uh, he is also on debut this weekend. By all accounts, all the drivers that are on debut uh, this weekend have had a fairly clean race, the own, or fairly clean weekend, rather. The only sort of minor gremlin that's been around was there was an accident in practice for, for one of the JRD drivers. I believe it was Isaac Woodhouse, um, who just backed it into a wall um, and had to facilitate a gearbox change. But apart from that, um, all the debutants have had a really good, solid weekend. Yeah, it's, it's good. You always want a good, clean weekend first time out, don't you? And it's good to see that those guys have done so. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get this one back underway. No final lap. So this will conclude the uh, second Formula V race of the weekend, unfortunately, under safety car conditions. Uh, but as we saw, there were a little bit of barrier repairs going on yeah. on the outside. Uh, sorry, from the run down to the hill. As we see the cars come to the chequered flag, it's a race victory for Rowe, taking the win ahead of McCarthy and Collinson. OK, so that's actually, uh, they've been put back in order. So originally it was McCarthy ahead of Rowe when they crossed the timing beam. So officials have uh, dictated that Rowe was ahead when the safety car was called for. 
and that changes the order at the end of this race. Under safety car, sadly, and uh, one lap short of the full eight lap distance. So row from McCarthy from Collinson. That will put both Rowe and McCarthy tied on points for the round. So setting up a, uh, a winner take all for the round uh, in the third race this afternoon, scheduled to be around about half past three. There's confirmation of your top ten there. So McCarthy back to second, behind the race winner Jake Rowe, Heath Collinson in third place. John Casamati, Lee Partridge, Ash Clifford in the Star Race Car, Phil Gardner, Lucas Kwam, the first of the Acura cars, home ahead of Adam Nicholson, and good to see Isaac Woodhouse get to top ten under his belt on his first race weekend. I can see there as well, Dan McCarthy, that there's three Sabres hitting one, two, three. Very, very important milestone, a couple of milestones this year. 30th anniversary of Sabre race cars here in Australia. So it's a uh, Sabres have been the, the dominant car in Formula V in Victoria for a number of years now. And, uh, well, you can see there, no surprise, they're at the head of the field. Yeah, indeed, absolutely. Good anniversary, that one. Yeah, as you say, Sabre been around for, for many, many years now at the punch end of Formula V. So, yeah, great result for them in that one. All right, well, we'll take a short break while the safety car leads the Formula V field back into pit lane. It'll be myself, Steve DeVries, and uh, I'm wondering if Darren Smith might be back up here in a very, very short amount of time. It'll be improved production coming up in a few moments' time. Facebook isn't the only place that you can support Australian grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. To see more real race cars, more live events and more of the racing you love, subscribe to the Blendline TV YouTube channel, sign up to our mailing list or bookmark and subscribe to our website at blendline.tv. Thanks for continuing to support Grassroots Motorsport with Blendline TV. Bosch Motorsport provides technology for racing. Worldwide experience from all major categories of motorsport is in your race car when you use Bosch Motorsport components. Ignition system, sensors, fuel delivery and high-end electronics. Bosch Motorsport brings race-proven quality and performance to your motorsport machine. Search for Bosch Motorsport Australia or find us at boschmotorsport.com.au. There's good, there's better and then there's Bosch. Bosch Motorsport when quality and performance matter. Thanks to Prestige Hino, Melbourne's most awarded Hino dealer, just down the road here from Sandown Motor Raceway in Dandenong South. Here come the improved production field, led, of course, by a, a dominant top ten full of General's men. There's uh, one Falcon in there, as uh, the man behind the wheel of that Falcon, Craig Pierre Gross, says, it's time to go lion hunting, Dan McCarthy. <laughs> Yes, certainly line hunts, as you say, so many Holdens up the front of this field, but certainly good variety further down. As we look at the grid for this second improved production encounter, we've got Adam Poole on the first position, pole position for this one, head of Luke Gretsch Combo. Ian McClellan in position number three, and Jared Tonks out of number four. Run through the rest of the field, birthday boy from yesterday, Cade Lehman, good strong result for him from P5. Craig Pierre Gross in the XE Falcon started off the rear of the grid. A little slap on the wrist from the stewards from a qualifying instant. Tore through the field, got up to position six. Likewise, Damien Milano, after some gremlins in qualifying, he also tore through the field 
from the back of the grid into position number seven. So there's still a little bit of fight left in car 88. And Peter Dixon's had a fantastic run this weekend. Some new gear ratios in that car is certainly helping his performance here in Sandown. Very, very strong in P8. Michael Hart in the Commodore in position number nine. David Bone, that little Datsun still clinging on to that last spot inside the top ten. What a fantastic result for David Bone. Probably one of the best races he's had here in some time. And then also bringing up the Holden Brigade, John Dawson in the HQ, Danny Timewell in car number 11 in the VF Commodore. Adrian Sarando and Mark Defana, some uh, old sparring partners, getting it on again and more than likely going to be uh, side by side a few too many times here at Sandown in this particular race off the seventh row. Grant Ogle in the XR5 along with Anthony Johnson in his BMW. Wayne Twist in a little BMW as well, Dallas Brooks. Steve Zorkas is the lead of the under two leader cars here this weekend. There's only a couple of them, and he's doing a fine job there in position number 19 as we roll through the rest. Bryce Peter Budge, Marco Timperio's got a new car this weekend. We'll have a little bit of a look at that as well. And a couple of debutants that are in here in a big state race series, again in improved production. Brett Harris and, and Roscoe down there in the EA Falcon. Uh, they are on debut this weekend uh, for the first time in Big State. Certainly a good field of cars all the way down to Sinclair at... Uh, sorry, not Sinclair, at uh, uh, Sinclair at the River Field. Yeah, the two XLs. <laughs> yes, I was going to say, a great variety of categories from, you know, the Monaros at the front of the grid all the way to the back with the Suzuki Swifts and, yeah, XLs at the rear. So here we are seeing them line up on... The grid should be a good encounter. Eight laps for the second race of the weekend. We see Poole starting from position number one. The reigning champion took the title last year. And, uh, yeah, we'll be looking to beat Luke Gretsch Combo alongside him in the new livery 25 machine. Now, unlike yesterday, they will roll forward all the way to grid boxes number one and two. We did have a little tribute yesterday for uh, Chris Pateri, long-time club member and sponsor uh, in honour of uh, his recent passing. So you can see there all the way up to the start-finish line, Go, Pool and Gretsch Combo. A little bit of a different front row compared to yesterday. Jared Tonks had uh, a little bit of a, an incident where he needed to let off the throttle uh, to let some of the lap traffic through and uh, a couple of the guys behind him just took advantage of that So that's why he's moved back a couple of spots on the grid only by one So back to position number four on the outside of row two Holding him for a little while here and looks like we are set to go for prestige Hino Triple Eight Home Loans, Pro Cut Tree Services, Yokohama Motorsport and DLL Photography and Design Let's boogie for eight laps of improved production. Bit of a long hold. Very long hold, actually. It's a long five seconds here. And away we go. Paul initially with a good reaction time. And Luke Gretsch come alongside him. Very, very similar. And they'll probably run side by side for the first part of the straight. Then look at the Monaro just take off. Have a look at the Falcon of Craig Piergross. Great start for him. Moves up over the right rear quarter panel. Luke Gretsch combo on the run to one. We see McClellan trying to take second position. Oh, oh this contact. Around goes McClellan. So he's trying to get second and then trying to slot in behind, trying to retake or hold third and then contact with the Falcon there. So spins around, good recovery, manages to get back on. He's about mid-pack, so a lot of work to make his way back through the field. Come back on behind John Dawson in the HQ. So he's fallen back probably to around about 11th or 12th uh, place in the running order, Ian McClellan. So just a little bit too far wide, I think. They've uh, had to allow a little bit of overlap, and the, it wasn't quite there. So we'll leave that one for uh, upstairs to sort out. But a uh, fantastic start from Craig Piergross. He was right in the fight there. And I wonder if Mac has got a little bit of damage here, but he's, uh, he's just gone a little bit too deep into turn six and seven there. Just struggling just to get his bearings and just get back uh, into the order here. As we have a look at a replay of this great angle, on the replay there from turn uh, back from turn four, looking back towards turn one. What do you call on that, Dan McCarthy? That's an awkward one, isn't it? As say, he was trying to slot back in, 
behind Luke Gretsch combo and didn't know that the Falcon was there. The Falcon was running out of room on the outside and had to slot back in himself. And two into one just simply doesn't go. Yep. Oh, oh, that's on off. For Adam Paul having a massive excursion at turn one. What's happened there? Is he just outbraked himself on the bumps or that's very, very awkward. There goes Gretsch combo. There goes Tonks and Paul comes on behind them. That's very unusual. How about Tonks? You know, made a clean start. Everybody else around him firing off, and he holds second position. A uh, front lockup we're hearing for Paul. Just a just a mistake. Massive lockup and fires off the road down at turn one. Getting a big word. It was a lockup. Big front lockup. It's uh, a number of drivers were talking to them yesterday, saying it was actually it feels bumpier than it has been in years gone past here. So maybe just caught out a little bit on the run to one. We have seen a few drivers just taking an unusual line down the front straight to avoid some of the unusual bumps uh, before the braking zone. So maybe just caught out a little bit there. It's Michael Hart, a little bit uh, too hot. Likewise, David Bone, a bit too hot into turn number six and seven and having to shortcut across the back of the track. Here's a good little battle. The uh, 2.5-litre turbocharged XR5 Grand Ogle. Mixing it up there with Jamie Augustine for a little bit. And here's the Datsun of David Bone having to really fight tooth and nail to keep the 33 of Mark Tafanis at bay. Sadly, there's a straight coming up. Yeah, sadly, there is Datsun. a straight coming up. And there goes the Commodore. Yeah, a change of position there. So that's a, uh, another position for the number 33 machine as we look to the front of the field now. So Luke Gretsch combo leading after Paul's mistake at turn one on the last lap. Tonks in P2. Paul remains in position number three. Three seconds, just under three seconds off the lead. So he'll be hoping to recover and make his way back towards the front. That'll be interesting as we uh, see that in the final six laps. Absolutely. Good shot here from turn four, seeing all the cars come through the lane. Oh, we've got another car that's off the road at turn. Another thing, that's Marco Timperio in his new car for the weekend. That's the uh, the BA Falcon. And, oh, he's had a, that's a front lock-up. That yeah. front right's completely seized. That's why we saw it turning hard right as well, because, of course, the truck, if you go straight ahead, you'd have rejoined the circuit. So the car not rotating in that front right wheel drags him round to the right, and he's had to stop down there at turn number one. That's a bit of a shame, too. There's uh, he had a little bit of a, an airlock, I think, in the uh, in the engine room with the, uh, the radiator and the cooling system. This morning he was trying to get his head around as well, and maybe that's sort of another issue that he's uh, got to tick off the list now and he gets back to pit lane. Have a look at that front right uh, brake caliper. Looks like we're going to have a bit of an idea of uh, what happened here in the, uh, the even mate corner. No, straight on. And that is... Ooh. Yep, the front left's going okay. And yeah, the front right definitely... Yeah, that's been dragging for some time there. That, uh, I'm not sure if that's a flat or if that... Uh, is definitely just a hard jam and a break, but that's a, a bit of an unusual one too. It certainly so is. There's your top three going through. Paul just settling back into the groove in fourth at the moment. Craig Piergross in fourth place. Damien Milano in fifth. So both of them have managed to get past Kay Lehman. Piergross at the start. Milano shortly afterwards. And they're setting off in pursuit of this trio that we've just gone through. Here's Callum Jensen, who's uh, now taken the lead of under twos in the Asgard 31. The, uh, the little uh, Peugeot there. Stevie Zork is tucked right under the rear boot wing of the Peugeot. Famous Honda, of course, that one. Uh, famously driven by Jordan Cox for a number of years. Famous for that outside Bathurst move at Skyline. It's not the same engine that's in the car, though, at the moment. I do know that uh, the race engine for that car still undergoing a bit of uh, redevelopment. They actually blew it up on the dyno uh, not too long ago, and it's just fairly a fairly stout stock motor that's in that car at the moment. He's doing pretty well to drive the car as uh, as well as he is and as quickly as he is, Steve Zorkas, albeit without that race motor under the hood. That when improved production were at Bathurst that year and also the Adelaide 500, it really got improved production, a little you know, local category in various states around the country, onto a bigger stage, didn't it? Absolutely did. And it's, it's been that way for a while. I think the Adelaide 500 had, had, had quite a number of years of improved production Indeed. as a support act. Even, in, in, even from the very, very early hours of the morning, I think it was 7, 8 a.m. Uh, local Adelaide time, you could tune in and uh, see improved production going around. So full was the support card uh, for that particular event. 
it certainly was. As you say, they were they were first out on on most days and fans really enjoyed the, the difference in, in cars as we've seen anything from Monaro at the front to these cars a little further back but they're all got their strengths and their weaknesses in different areas this Sandown being such a you know a fast track in terms of big long straights it really does lend itself to the V8 machines absolutely does well, speaking of the V8 machines just noticing as the timing's ticking around uh, Adam Poole has now made his way past Jarrah Tonks on the front straight here at Sandown with the three laps to go and uh, is currently holding the fastest lap of the race. It's not the one that's on the bottom of your screen there. It's a uh, 17.1 is the quickest lap so far, but uh, now deciding it's time to try and make his move once he's uh, gathered himself back up. Tyres have come back up and uh, cleaned up and gripped up after his off-track excursion and setting his sights on another race win as we continue to have a look at this great battle between uh, the under two litre cars at the moment as the, uh, the race leaders, I think, are just starting to come down the, uh, the hill towards Danny Nong Road. Yeah, Paul had a bit of a look uh, at turn number six then, but pulled out of the move, thought better of it as they're approaching uh, back markers uh, further back towards uh, Danny Nong Road. So as they come into the final sequence of turns, we can see these top three now very much lying astern. And in fact, it's Tonks into the final sequence that's closing on Paul. He's much better under brakes, I think, Jared Tonks. A slightly lighter car compared to the Monaro and uh, definitely has a little bit more braking performance, a bit more confidence under brakes as they've got to round up some lap traffic. You've got Wayne Deck up, you've got Stuart Dearden uh, in the EA Falcon that they've got to get past. So there's your gap from third all the way back to fourth. And uh, Kate Lim is into fifth, so Milano's off the circuit somewhere. So we'll have to keep an eye for what's happened to uh, Damien Milano. I hope there's not another uh, mechanical gremlin. He has absolutely zero luck with that engine from time to time, Milano, as uh, all this lap traffic has sort of hindered Jared Tonks' run at uh, improving his position. And just did the right thing, though, bided his time, and now makes the, the pass cleanly. But uh, up the back straight here, here comes a Monaro. Powers his way by before they even get to the turn. So there we are, change of the lead. Adam Poole, the reigning champion, takes the lead with just a lap and a half left to go. Yeah, very smart move, very wise move, I think, just to use the slipstream as best as you could, pull out precisely the right time and get the move done. Just got to negotiate the uh, the A or the AU Falcon of Brett Harris, one of the debutants in IP this weekend, and safely done into the final chicane, and one more lap to go. Really good drive from Paul. Yes, he made the mistake early on, but he regathered himself. He didn't let that put himself off the... Regained his composure, put in some good solid laps, got through on Tonks quite nicely, and now back into the lead. Slow moving car, Jamie Augustine in the, the distant one, number 155. Might have been off the circuit there. Looks like he's gathering back up speed. We've got a smoker there as well, which I think might be the, the BMW of Bryce Peter Budge, just a bit further ahead as we go back a bit further in the order. This uh, is the battle over uh, 12th and 13th. Uh, this is. John Dawson and David Bone. Now, I was talking to John Dawson a bit earlier in the paddock this morning. Uh, he's got a new TMX gearbox in, or TKX gearbox, I believe, in the Monaro and believes he was uh, going to be sort of looking to battle with David Bone for most of the season. So his prediction has actually come to fruition and is pretty much spot on. They found each other. Indeed, and here we go. The Datsun having a look, but he just doesn't have the straight line speed at the end of the straight certainly have the brakes but yeah just the top end speed at the end of the main straight makes it hard for him to make the move here at Sandown but he's going to have a look into the twiddly stuff turns two and three yep no room here and they've also got the uh, little Suzuki Swift of uh, Smith to uh, negotiate as well as the uh, leaders are coming around the, uh, the final corner and Adam Poole with another win so two from two for the weekend for Poole Luke Gretsch Gumbo home in second, Jared Tonks home in third. So that's a gain of one spot for him after uh, the incident with Ian McLennan and Craig Piergross uh, on the opening lap. Piergross incidentally home in fourth place ahead of Cade Lehman in fifth. Danny Timewell's had a good run through the order as well. He's uh, now registering home as sixth on our screen. So that's a really good run for him. A couple more spots picked up as we keep focusing in on the, uh, the Datsun versus HQ battle all the way to the flag. Is there a little bit of a bodywork or something just came flying off that car? I think, I think it was already there and they ran over it. There you go. So, Do so Dawson through the final corner now. He's just going to hold off David Bone. 
on the run to the line as we go back to the under twos as hey, they've got a bit of traffic to negotiate as well the uh, XL of Sinclair now here's the last opportunity for Zork has had a good strong run out of turn nine side by side almost side by side with Callum Jensen who covers the line off into turn one sunlight playing a little bit of havoc with the pitches as it's starting to get a bit brighter here over and under treatment to the line Steve Zorkas going to take that win very very smart move at the last corner great move did the crisscross sacrifice the penultimate turn to get a good run out the last corner and yes taking that position as we see bit of a replay a here we're going to replay Callum Jensen's bumper coming off at the uh, turn two and three there so not sure if there's maybe been a bit of gnawing on the back bumper from Steve Zorkas in that last lap or two but uh, there goes the bumper of the number 31 Big thank you to Prestige Hino, Triple Eight Home Loans, Pro Cut Tree Services, who have done a fantastic amount of work up in the Dandenongs with all the, uh, the weather conditions and stuff we had late last year as well, uh, getting people back up and running again. Yokohama Motorsport and DLL Photography and Design, that was improved production race number two with pool home by a little under two seconds from Luke Rich Combo. Jarrah Tonks, not too far behind that as well. The Falcon of Craig Piergross, Home in fourth. Cade Lehman, Danny Timewell, Ian McLennan recovers to seventh. Michael Hart makes a couple of spots to eighth. Mark DeFarnas started from outside the 10, about 13th or 14th. He gets home for a top 10 finish in ninth ahead of Peter Dixon in the second Monaro. So great run from a couple of drivers there that were outside the 10, finding their way uh, into the 10. I'm still going to be interested to see what's happened to Damien Milano. He was very strong in position number five for a good part of that race and then just disappeared. Yeah, not sure what happened there. Didn't see him on the circuit, didn't see him in the pit lane, so not quite sure what's happened there. But he'll certainly be recovering in the third and final 10 lap encounter this afternoon. He certainly will be. They'll uh, be out around about 4 p.m. this afternoon for final race of uh, their program, 10 laps. And, uh, well, speaking of 10 laps, I think it's time for us to go and have 10 sips of a water bottle so we can rest our lungs for a bit. But uh, we'll be back very, very soon because you can see it there. The HQ Holdens are making their way out. Welcome back trackside here. We see improved production for Prestige Hino in Dandenong disappear off stage left and welcome stage right. The HQs and the grid looks like this. Andrew McLeod over the Jilton and we go back to Perry Beckers. Ken Wright, uh, Jardin, then we're back to Banks. Gavin Ross on return to Kiwis in position number seven. Glenn McDonald in the Ready Roasts outfit and we've got Tony Maloney in the number 99 out of Ninth place there, Michael Magilton back in number 10. And up Mick Magilton, then we have Eric Hill, Ben Riches, Andrew Lordsley, James McKenna, Michael Ling, and Andrew Lawton. Dan McCartney stays right alongside me, Darren Smith, for this HQ race. Just a couple of quick updates as the cars take their way to the grid. Car number 36, Andrew Lawton, broke a tail shaft in race one, a brand new one. Brand new car in his B&B Master Blasters car after breaking a, a, a gear shift in qualifying as well. Ben Richards did a head gasket in the last lap and I think Ben's made his way out onto track as well. 
And uh, we're looking forward to getting this one underway. Just looking for where Ray Jardin is. He's out of P5. He had a pretty much trouble-free run yesterday in his uh, QE. But tyre power, the HQs are, look like they're all set. There's the green flag this weekend. GMG Automotive in Box Hill for road and race servicing and repairs. And Vision 2, the Rylock windows and doors. So GMG, great place to send your car for any work. That's Gavin Ross's business in Lexton. Caught in Box Hill and away we go. A little bit of an easy idle off of the front row of the grid. But they've managed to uh, get the clutch bite absolutely perfect. And they drive off right alongside each other. It's going to be the second row car there that's ranging up. That's the 76 of Banks drawing alongside, but it's going to be a good run down into turn one for the 82, and that's Andrew McLeod. It's going to be three wide there. Perry Beckers forces his way into P2, and uh, a little bit of a wobble and uh, shake through turn one there. The single headlight cars take the first five spots in this race. The 13 getting a little bit uh, rough and tumble there. That's Kenny Wright. That's his style. And then we go back to the 76 of Stephen Banks. Uh, Gavin Ross right there in the back of that pack there as well. Then it's the green and black car as they make their way up the hill for the first time of eight laps. Right, an aggressive move there, wasn't it, to uh, retake that fourth position and did so very nicely. So he'll be looking to make ground up, but he's having to go defensive into turn number six with the number 76 machine of Banks and the number eight machine of Jardine, both getting him around the outside on the run to turn number six. Cars getting up over the ripple strip. This is what HQs can do all day long. They don't mind a bit of ripple strip action. In fact, it's just a gutter to them with a nice little launching ramp on the front edge of it. So nice chamfer of a, of a gutter there. So the QEs will use it to their distinct advantage. It's Andrew McLeod who's driving very nicely here this weekend. The number 14 to Majilton. Perry Beckers has weighed pretty heavily straight away in on this one. There's the 91 of Hill getting through there as well, Eric Hill good looking uh, car that one the uh, the lime green with the, the GTS stripes over the top the two black GTS stripes over the top as the field streams on down, the first lap is led by McLeod, standing start at 143.33 there's the 99 we just talked about Tony Maloney also there so that's uh, Tony just a tad further back in the field there Keeping it all neat and tidy. The HQs have kept themselves very, very uh, gentlemanly right throughout this weekend. But you start to get to feel the 10 lap of this afternoon. It might start to all bust loose. The 91 going through in position number 12. That's Eric Hill. I noticed uh, just before the start of the race that uh, Andrew Lordsley came through the lane. So he started from the end of pit lane. Not quite sure why that is. So that's why he's uh, quite a bit further back. He's 20 seconds off the lead and a good 17 seconds off uh, the second last position person. So that's a bit of a shame there. But uh, up the head of the field, certainly remaining a line astern, the top half dozen cars at least as we see the battle here between Tony Maloney and McDonald car number 99 and car number 87 this is the battle for position number eight they're just off that leading seven they'll be hoping with a bit of slipstreaming that they might be able to catch up with the group ahead Kevin and I on the number 36 of uh, Andrew Lawton as he said broken tail shaft in his uh, brand new b and Master Blasters car, so a brand new HQ sort of sounds a little bit suspect to me, but brand new race car I would say, a new build on there, and uh, broke a tail shaft, so back out there, and also Ben Richards did a head gasket, Ben Richards currently in 13th place there, he'll be pushing on pretty hard there, Gavin Ross just off the back of the this battle pack in the tyre power HQ race, there he goes, Ray Jard in the number 8, it's getting pretty willing here with the number 76 of Banks. Ray gets it sideways there. You don't often see a HQ go sideways. He's going to pay the price for that. And he's given some sort of gesticulation to the guy behind him there as well. So is that Gavin Ross. Now, Gavin was one or two spots further back there. So jarred into Kenny Wright, of course. Gavin Ross, then Tony Maloney. Some heavy hitters in this pack. Have a look at these two side by side. McLeod, Matt Jilton, McLeod, Matt Jilton. Going across the top of the hill. G'day, Dave Amor. Hope you're loving it from uh, Sandown. 
and plunged down into Dandenong Road. There's Ray Jardin again. Kenny Wright logs right in behind there as well. Banks, sorry, in the mix then, Wright. And around they come out of Dandenong Road. Saw Ross run a little bit wide and cut across the kerb there at turn number seven that time through. It's so hard in these HQs to try and sight that kerb when you're in such a close battle pack because these cars run so close. You don't see too many categories run this close nose to tail and we can see it on the front straight. One, two, there's nothing between them. Two tenths across the line. But as they get to turn one, that'll be even closer. Here he goes up the inside. Magilton pulls to the right, uh, left, sorry, at turn number one. Oh, oh Magilton up the inside there at McLeod. Magilton, it's Magilton, Peridakas. Goes out over the back of the ripple strip there. Yes, locked up, couldn't get it stopped and ran wide. He's lost a fair bit of ground and he'll have to try and hold position number three. Unfortunately for Magilton, he was unable to make that move stick at turn number one. So it's as they were into turn number one at the end of the last lap. Apologise to Andrew Magilton, just doing my best David Amor impersonation there. We'll leave that to one side. For now, the uh, the regular commentator on HQs is up at uh, Wakefield Park working up there this weekend. So trying to do my best to make everyone feel at home in the HQ field by shouting out some names, ladies and gentlemen. So the number 82 now under massive fire from the 14 of Magilton. Round the outside he goes. He loves that outside line. It's the toughest line to hold here at Sandown. Made it stick. A terrific job there for the driver of the Midi's electrical car and puts Andrew McLeod's steel fabrication back one spot. Perry Becker's right in the mix there as well. If something just goes slightly awry, there's Ray Jardin, or Perry Becker's Ray Jardin, and Banks, and then Gavin Ross in this, uh, this front group. That turn six now around the outside, it's a move that never used to, you never used to see when there was grass out there. But now with that tarmac runoff, drivers are willing to take a bit more of a risk because they know if they do make a mistake, it's just tarmac and they can come back onto the circuit without having a big accident. That was the idea of it. We saw a lot of wrecked cars, particularly in supercars. Todd Hazelwood famously flipping there. <laughs> yeah. Many, or a number of years ago. As we the hear tire has been torched. The it's the leader. Tires. It's the leader. It's it Magilton out wide through the grass, really, really wide. So I'm we gonna might do even it. see Becker's I'm gonna do it. I'm going to do it. Magilton wide at turn one. Joins him behind Perry Becker's. Gives him a bit of Morse code on the back bumper. Yes. All right, I'll put it away again, David Amor. Back in your box. <laughs> so, yes, we now see McLeod out front from Becker's. Have a look at Gavin Ross, though, on his return to the category now into P5. Staying out of trouble, ticking the boxes. He looks like he's just, whatever Ray Jardin's going to do, the president of the, uh, the HQs, he's going to do as well. Keep out of trouble. Just uh, go nicely about your work. And uh, we now see that uh, Magilton has gone back a couple of spots. Perry Becker's getting willing for the uh, round the outside in the night. He puts the front wheel just off in the dirt there. Was being pushed out there a little bit by, Magil uh, by uh, the 82 there of Andrew McLeod. And have a look at this, though. This is a good group of, what, six six cars here. And uh, Magilton out over, they're all out over the ripple strip. One goes, they all go. Ray Jardin in the black car. Gavin Ross just in behind him. The twin headlight car of uh, Ray Jardin. And uh, the twin headlight front car of, of Gavin Ross there as well. You mentioned Ross on his return. Actually, the fastest lap of the race and quite comfortably. Uh, six tenths of a second faster than the guys ahead of him. So he, he's definitely a man on a charge at this halfway stage of the race. Three laps to go as they cross the line. And Becker's now. Becker's having a look for the lead as he pulls to the inside of McLeod into turn number one. He's got it, he's got it done. If he can get it stopped, which he has, he takes the lead. Perry Becker's nice run up the inside there. Got great drive out of the final stanza of corners. And that's what you've got to do with the HQ. You've almost got to think half a lap ahead of yourself so you can flow the car and not get disturbed when someone tries to jump into your bit of track. But tyre power, the HQs continue to deliver decades on from when they made their way over Bass Strait from their happy home of one make racing in Tasmania. The rest of Australia embraced this category and we still love it years and years later. And here we go, six, seven cars, all line astern. What we do know from that shot is the tyre power is the naming rights sponsor of this category. <laughs> Very much so. You can see it at the uh, top left of the screen on top of the timing board, but also on top of all of the windscreens, as you say. A great partner with the HQs for this year. Why wouldn't you? The Kenda HQ Racing Tyres, a specific tyre out there, and uh, we've 
touched on how durable that is. And it uh, depends on how much you go through the rubber as to how much you need. They certainly put up with a lot of torture, these big uh, HQs, famous for their lurching and their uh, long braking zones. The 85 going through now. We're just looking at position 12, and that's Francis. Doing a, uh, a nice job, Graham Francis, there. And uh, this is a, a pretty good battle with uh, Mick McJilton. And uh, back there in the 91, which is Eric Hill. So they're fighting it out for 10, 11, and 12 on the road. So essentially, the last spot in the top 10. Here we go. Back at the front. Becker's under pressure. Now as Andy McLeod looks down the inside, what it's going to do is it's going to fall into McJilton's lap. Ah, oh, McJilton! He's going to be out, hung out wide. Couldn't uh, make hay while the sun shine. Jardin's up the, uh, looking up there as well. Gavin Ross has gone, you know what? I've been holding station here long enough. Off you go, Ray. I'll follow you through. See what you can do with the Midi's electrical car. Out over the ripple strip. The world opens up for Gav Ross and then closes just as quick as it opened up. He's going to be pushed wide out there. And that is Mick Majilton in the uh, number 75 Majilton electrical car. Was running in 10th place. This is his opening group again. Of course, it is a tyre power commercial. That's what we're doing. Have a look how durable the tyres are from tyre power. They can be punished under a HQ. Of course, celebrating over 50 years of HQs. And here this weekend, believe it or not, 60 years of Sandown as well. This is uh, in March, the first weekend of March, 60 years ago. The Sandown track essentially as it is now, essentially. I say there's some, quite a few modifications that we don't have the pits inside turn one anymore but uh, the facility as far as a full-time racetrack did start right back in the dawn of time but uh, that weekend they had a hundred thousand people here 60 years ago this racetrack opened as a commercial entity so we really celebrate that and why not celebrate it with hqs i was going to say these have been here more than most category seven they the hqs for many many years that and probably formula ford i'd say the most as we see the leading three now have pulled away because jardine and the number 38 of Ross have been fighting away in their own little battle. And it's allowed those leading three to pull away, although we see Becker's out front running slightly wide and two wheels through the grass. Oh. This is the last lap too, so this is where if anyone's got anything left in their firepower, I think we're starting to see uh, Gavin Ross getting a little bit uh, toey to get past Ray Jardin. He's been happy to follow him and let him carve his way through the field. But Gav Ross wants a way through now. Perry Becker's in the lead. Andrew McLeod, what have we got here? This is uh, just that, uh, oh, the Mick Bajilton spin. Wow, he was under some pressure, but that ended up uh, right out over in the uh, in the boonies. Here's our race leader. Perry Becker's, Andy McLeod, Magilton, Andrew Magilton in P3 there. Back to Ray Jardin, Gavin Ross, the GMG uh, of course, sponsoring this round. A big thanks to Gav. Their workshops in Lexton Road, Box Hill. Need a car service or some work done or a race car prepared. Go down and see Gavin Ross. Great bloke. Really nice fella in the pit and paddock area. So uh, you'd get a good result with your race car or your road car taking it down to his workshop. Perry Beckers is going to lead them through the S's. And you're going to have to suggest bar any spinning by the number 90. He's got this one sewn up as Andrew McLeod finishes one spot further back than what he did yesterday. And Perry Beckers takes the W out of race two. That's the big win there. Very happy trackside officials. Jardin leads home. Gavin Ross. So Perry Beckers, McLeod, McJilt, Jardin, Ross, Banks, Kenny Wright. Down there in seventh. Glenn McDonald in the ready roasts outfit. Get yourself one of them. Great race in the HQs there. Great battles up and down the field. But as we say, it was Beckers that took the win from McLeod by half a second. Top three separated by less than a second. And here are those results. Beckers, McLeod, Magilton. I can't do it as well. Magilton oh, yeah. in the V3. You have to give it then. No, you do. you got to wind up to it. You've got to get <laughs> the, big, the big 130 kilos behind it. Play in on it. I'm sorry, uh, Jardine, Ross, Banks, Wright, McDonald, Tony Maloney and Francis rounding out the top ten in that one. Eric Hill to uh, Mick McJilton, Riches, Kenna, Ling and Lawton bringing it to the line now as we go down to Callum Brannigan. Welcome back to the top of the pits and I'm joined alongside by a driver of the number 15 Hyundai XL. It's Mason Kelly. It's also his birthday, so he should expect a flurry of birthday message following 
this little uh, video. But Mason, thank you so much for joining us up here. Quickly tell us about your racing journey to the point where you are now. Um, well, I started in the XL last year and did a few races sort of on and off and then races getting cancelled and everything. So I was all a bit, um, yeah, nothing. I haven't done a full season yet. But this year I'm planning on doing all the races and I had a new engine in yesterday which... Um, let go down the straight and then so we had to put a new one in yesterday but um yeah so just having a bit of fun here at Sandown and that's yeah that's about it so far that's cool man and your dad obviously Todd Kelly uh big supercar star of the past and uh the up until very recently team owner of Kelly Racing but at which point in your life did you know you wanted to be a racing car driver well I started in karts fairly late when I was 12 or 13 and we sort of did that on and off as well because with Dad being away all the time and I enjoyed that for a few years but we never got that seriously into it. And then um, we went and bought the XL and I just have a lot of fun in that. Still, we're not taking it too seriously but just having a bit of fun and yeah, probably about then is just what I like to do. There you have it. That's the birthday boy, Mason Kelly, joining us up here on top of Pit Lane. We'll be back later with more interviews coming up soon. Thanks very much, Callum. Great to see uh, the next generation of Kellys getting uh, out there and uh, nice to see. Not taking it all too seriously, just uh, finding his feet. Did a little bit of little bit of karting and, um, yeah, you'd have to say that uh, Todd been a busy boy going around racetracks and particularly over the last two years driving the trucks and the buses and getting the team uh, covidly safe around the planet to uh, run in the, the supercar scene. So uh, great to see Mason and uh, joining in with, uh, with the... Uh, the with the XLs, really enjoying himself. Up on the grid, Del, up on the program next, uh, we have no rest here at all. We continue on with the Triple Eight Home Loans Porsche 944 Challenge, or the 944 Challenge. Great to have Triple Eight Home Loans on board with this crew as well. Advanced Fitness Gyms, Poolmaster Bayside, Seat Time Race Solution Simulator Hire, ABI Technology, and Smith's TMP. As we look to the grid sheet now, Cameron Bella off the front row of the grid with James Westaway right next to him. Absolutely. Adam Brewer coming out of position number three ahead of Torbitz. Uh, if we look onto row number three, Richard Howe, another Westaway. Anthony Westaway out of position number six. Andrew Jackman, position number seven ahead of Mark Vadino. Jack Atley has uh, done a terrific job to get himself up a couple of rows after qualifying and found himself sort of mid-pack out of position 10. Andrew Jones next to him out of 9. 11 is Carter Fox. Had some uh, some troubles yesterday getting off the line. First race meeting ever in a uh, in an open event. Certainly done some karting and they've done their research and they like the look of getting some experience in 944 racing. Certainly the, the first step on the Porsche Pyramid and we've seen Jackson Evans and we've seen Jordan Love and we've certainly seen Matty Campbell work their way through these steps to uh, to get you know, to what is a, now a professional racing career with uh, with Porsche, contracted factory Porsche races going all around the world doing their work. So uh, Porsche certainly offer a fantastic way through motorsport to get there. And of course we're seeing uh, Formula Ford, I think it was last year, offered a Porsche drive to the winner of the, the championship. Of course, that's moved over to a DJR drive this year. But uh, certainly the, the Porsche Pyramid, the first step is the uh, the club sprints, if you like, the Porsche clubs. The next step, the Porsche 911s. The next step is the Michelin Sprint Challenge for uh, the GT3 equipment. And uh, obviously Carrera Cup with all their brand new cars. Can't wait to see that championship jump away. Carrera Cup has always been a, a favourite on the Australian motorsport calendar. Certainly the, uh, the second race uh, behind supercars on the on the big tour the uh, Carrera Cup is always second billing behind supercars on those events and uh, often will offer the best sort of racing at an event as well there's the 944s do exactly the same Bella and Westaway this is the question green flag at the back of the field Andrew Bloor and Mark Torbett's stand poised hoping that these cars will get off nicely but they can stay with them Richard Howe, smack bang centre in the picture there in the, I'm going to say, German colours. The Porsche colours there, white, black, red, yellow. And he gets away very nicely indeed, as he has done right throughout his career. But it's Bella. Gets the second gear grabbed nicely. What has Jamie Westaway got for him? He's got everything. 
third gear. It just pulls a little bit back on him. The triple eight home loan cars go side by side through turn one. Westerway hangs tough on the outside. Gets up on that ripple strip. Gets just gazumped a little bit by Bella. He's got that pole start down absolutely brilliantly. Jag to the right. Jag back to the left. Grab a little bit of ripple strip on the way through. Jack Atley does exactly that. And the seat time car there, the number 64, pushes on through there as well. So Keith Mariner has pushed in after a uh, rear of grid start there. Getting on with it as they come up the hill. It'll be the very familiar sight of Cameron Bella in the Aqua. Triple Eight Home Loans, Porsche 944 Challenge leading the way. Jamie Westway, what's he got? What has the 31 of Adam Brewer got? Mark Torbitz is definitely in there as well. And here comes the green uh, 50, sorry, 41, I think it was, of Vlad Kennedy. We saw a great battle yesterday between the leading pair, Bella and Westaway. And in the end, it was Westaway that looked like he was going to prevail with a penultimate lap overtake. We've got a spinner. We've got a spinner down at Dandenong Road. I think that was car number 46. I think you're right. James Mitchell did it yesterday as well in the, uh, the Martini uh, tribute livery. And... There goes the seat time car, the number 56 in there as well. That's Brisbane, uh, Josh Brisbane, who's done a good job to, to push up through, to get a couple of spots off the start. Here we go, Jamie Westaway gets a good run onto the straight. Storms on by on driver's left. He's very tight to turn one, and that does not work out well for him at all. What it does do is it sees Adam Brewer jam himself into P2. That's a good drive. It's, it can be a bit of a sit and wait in these situations where you don't just have that outright speed that the two leaders have got. But Jamie Westway had to try it. Absolutely commend him for his effort to try and get through. What I was going to say before the uh, spin down the you know, road was that, yeah, Westaway had the pace yesterday, finally made it, but then a uh, mechanical issue on the last lap, an exhaust problem, saw him uh, drop back to P2 behind Bella on the final lap. So he's certainly got the pace. He didn't drop down to third yesterday, so he's got even more work to do this time around. But certainly Westaway has the pace to take the victory once again. Jones and Jackman on screen there, the Pullmaster Jackman outfit. He's watching uh, the 44 off the back there. That's Medino as well. So this could uh, go either way with these three. So they're battling it out for uh, seven, eight, nine, and ten on the road. Jack Atley just a little bit off in the back of that shop there as well. Not being able to weigh in, there's Jack just around the back there. Loves his Porsche brand. Loves going 944 racing. It's, uh, just sitting on that bubble of the top 10. It could burst at any time. We spoke, or you mentioned about the Martini livery. That one is a golf livery, isn't it, on that machine? As we see it is further up, Westaway trying to take position number two. And once again, runs a little bit wide at turn one. But I think he might hold the position as they head towards turn two. He'll have the inside. But if uh, Brewer can hold it round, he'll have the inside for turn number three, which he does. He'll also have the inside of turn number four, but Westaway won't allow that. Holds it around the outside and takes position number two. Great bit of driving between the pair of them. Breathe, everybody, breathe. That was a good run from uh, entering the turn two. Another good push by Jamie Westaway, and I've got to say, a gentlemanly allowed some room for him to come back on on the run down to two there by Adam Brewer. So Adam should be congratulated for that uh, sportsmanship-like uh, approach to it. Very nicely done. Would have only ended up in a, uh, a contact unnecessarily so. Richard Howe, four wheels over the back of the ripple strip. He's getting... Very aggressive now. Here comes this battle pack, as you touched on, Dan, the uh, the golf type of livery, which is synonymous with Porsches of old. Jack Atley in the background there with pit lane clothing emblazoned down the side of his car. I had a look at that website last night after leaving the track. Yeah, they've got some nice stuff, some good slogans and stuff like that. So check it out, pit lane clothing supporting Jack Atley. And uh, in his 944 Assault in the uh, 888 Home Loans outfit, a green car. Didn't quite pick that one, just going slow there. No, I didn't pick who it was either, but certainly pulled over off the racing line and slowed down just at uh, the top of the uh, camera shot coming out of Dandenong Road. As we see the battle packs a little further back, Cameron Bella there, fastest lap of the race. Uh, eight tenths of a second faster than Westaway, so Westaway into P2. He's got the clear air now, of course, eight tenths slower. That was including the pass on Brewer last time around, so now Westaway's got the clear space. Can he catch up? Interestingly enough, Cameron Bella has the lap record here, which was sent in 2015, a 124.00, so a best part of a second and a half off that 
here today. So Bella, certainly uh, that's an old lap record that's been floating around now for 27 years. So that's a good run. It's a good run to hold a lap record in a one-mate class. They tend to top them, even though by the thousands or hundreds of a second. Alongside now, this is a great battle. Fighting it out, the number 33 of Jones and the 44 of Medina goes through wide. He's going to have to try and straighten it up. Straight lines it over the ripple strip. No harm, no foul. Play on. Dip it in to the uh, Dandenong Road and start the run underneath the Penride Bridge to the final lot of S's. Flow the car well. A uh, bit of a bad exit. I think a wrong gear selection there by number 33 Jones there, although he has continued to drop back. So hopefully not a problem for that Gulf liveried Porsche. Certainly drop back quickly, though, there out of Dandenong Road. We'll listen as it comes by the pit straight camera, see if we can hear it. Sounds, Sounds good. Right. Sounds good. There goes Jack Atley in the pit lane clothing car. Driving pretty good out there, just, just inside the top door in 10th place. And uh, there's two behind him in Mariner and Fox, two, well, two differently experienced racers. Carter Fox, brand new to the game. And Keith Mariner, a veteran, literally, of uh, 944 Racing. Number seven goes off the track there. That's Carter Fox. That's one thing he's got to learn after this weekend. Try and keep it on the black stuff as much as he can. Otherwise, you'll lose a spot. Oh, Torbert. Uh, sorry, um, uh, Westaway now looking at the inside of Bella. Sorry, Mark Torbert. Here back a little bit further, mate. We'll catch up with you in a minute and get a good look at the, uh, the Mark Torbert's car. But this is our race leaders. They're on their uh, fourth lap. And come around to the uh, the pit straight now. Flow the car. Keep the revs up. Just crack it down a cog. Keep the revs high and drive it over the ripple strip and line it up for a run up the straight. Both of them line astern each other of each other there. So Jamie Westerway won't have any advantage slash disadvantage because he's done exactly the same line as Bella. What he does have is this hole in the air. He goes to the right hand side under brakes. Got the, uh, the driving lights on there, swings it in, Jamie Westerway. He keeps trying it, he keeps trying it, and goes out over the ripple strip. He's there, he's got it. He's going, oh, Cameron Bell has gone. You want it that much, mate? Do you want to come back on? There you go, I'll catch up with you. Yeah, good move. Good Slid move by Jamie Westerway. Nice. in sideways around the outside, yes, to retake um, the lead, which is to say he held yesterday. Uh, in the closing stages so just two and a half laps to go it's a case now of can Bella stick with him can he stick with the reigning champion well can the battle in front of him slow these two cars down it's actually not uh, they've both done 25s as has the car behind them but Brewer would like to be starting to think you guys need to mix it up a bit more so I can gain back into it we can make it a race in three it's essentially a race in two at the moment but if Brewer could just get maybe one or two more car lengths up, it would range up into Bella's rear vision mirror, and then we'd, uh, we'd have a race on our hand for three. Brewer's within striking distance today, which was not the case yesterday. If uh, one of these two do run wide, run through the grass, make a mistake, or have a mechanical issue, Brewer's certainly there to pick up the pieces and take at least second position. So they're not off the hook just yet. Atley, Mariner, Fox here on the... Uh the S's down into Dandenong Road. There's Jack Atley there, the red and white car. Pit Lane Clothing Company emblazoned on the side. It's Mariner, and then it's Carter Fox. Welcome to uh, welcome to Motor Racing, Carter. Left standing on the grid yesterday. He won't do that again. He'll get the clutch bite up nicely, and uh, will take away. Did a great job this in this race. The 64 seat time car of Keith Mariner, veteran of 944 Racing. Which sir? Oh, sorry, uh, Fox, as we saw, he ran, ran wide down at Turn 1, but he's caught back up again, and he's going to have another go at Mariner. This time, hopefully, he'll be able to pull it up into Turn number 1. Here we go. Certainly on the brakes a little earlier. Gets it into the apex. Nice move there. Oh, what was Atley doing then? He got himself all mixed up all by himself as he watches the rear vision mirror. He's watching the show going on behind him. Yes, I think he must uh, have been. Well, he ended up nasty there. Looked like a little brain fade. Pit lane clothing outfit. He's going to come under pressure here from the hard charging Fox, as you can see the B plate showing that he is a relative rookie in the series. As they head down the back straight, yes, the fight is certainly on for position number 10, the end or the back end of the top 10 on offer here. 
Christmas. Yeah, I wonder how good the uh, the commentary crew would look in a, uh, some pit lane clothing uh, uniforms come the next round. That's, uh, that's a uh, good suggestion. We've just had a change of place <laughs> there. Atley goes back one spot there as we're just talking about the sponsor on the side of the car there. That's the number seven of, uh, of Fox, Mariner. who's just gone through it's the gone gravel. Through. So made the move, did all the hard work, but big lockup down at Dandenong Road and just about manages to get it out. I love the number seven on the side of the car too, done in the Seven Network uh, logo. So Mariner now with uh, Jack Attlee. Oh, no, sorry, that's our race leader, ja- Jamie Westaway with Cameron Ballup. They're coming around on their last time up the back straight. They'll have a 10 lapper later on this afternoon. Their last race of the day at 4.45. Lock up there. This is the replay with Fox. Got the spot and then threw it all away. Got to control that rush of blood. But uh, look, I tell you what, Carter hasn't hasn't damaged the car in any way, shape or form yet. Running through the gravel trap will make it a bit hard for the crew to clean it up. As he's gone into the lane just to... Uh, Retire from this race and check it all out for the final race of the day. Have a look at this for Osfield Oil Supplies. Car number one, Jamie Westaway, driving brilliantly here today. Can't take it away from Cambella either. He didn't gift it to anybody. He had to fight for it, Jamie Westaway. And Cambella's a hard guy to snatch the lead of a 944 race off as Adam Brewer comes home a good four seconds later. Here comes Richard Howe. He leads home... The Anthony Westaway and Mark Torbett. So Mark Torbett has gone down a spot on that last lap. That's a real shame for Mark. Tirelessly uh, works away in the background of this category to make sure it's got all the uh, all the right bells and whistles, and certainly has. It's a great uh, great series. The the nine four fours, and of course this weekend the nine four fours brought to us by Triple Eight Home Loans. New signing for the year. Here comes the battle of the race. Another change of position there as the two drivers make to the line. Mariner getting Atley on the final lap of the race for 10th position. As we said, Fox, who briefly held 10th, ran off at Dandenong Road and didn't end up finishing that one. Good race in the Porsches once again, uh, with James Westaway prevailing. It's one apiece as they head into the final encounter. They will be equal on points. Adam Brewer rounding out the top three. Richard Howe in fourth. Anthony Westaway, P5. Torbett's dropping down on that last lap to P6. Andrew Jackman, 7. Mark Vadino in 8th. Andrew Jones, ninth, And Keith Mariner, as we say, rounding out the top 10. So, running a little bit behind time at the moment. The sports cars are up next for their 40-minute race. So, it'll be a quick turnaround to get those out. Triple A 8 Home Loans. The 944 Challenge for 2022 is brought to us by Triple Eight Home Loans. Advanced Fitness Gyms, Poolmaster Bayside, Seat Time Race Solutions, Simulator High, AVI Technologies and Smith's TMP. We look forward to seeing the 944s, our last race at 4.45 today as our sports cars start to make their way around onto the grid. I'm going to take a quick moment just to grab a drink and be back with the sports cars. Welcome back, trackside, as we see the 944s just disappearing into the back of the grid. We uh, thank Triple Eight Home Loans for supporting those uh, races for them this season, doing a tremendous job over numerous categories. Sports cars on track now as we have a 40-minute race, the longest race over the weekend throughout 2021 and again through 2022. They do forego another race during the day, so they use the time for both races to make one 40-minute race set up and uh, Ben shoots 
will be on pole position for this 40-minute race as a result of his great qualifying session and win in race one. Andrew Hall in the 130 for Cup Car Engineering. Right alongside, we've been joined by Dave Stilwell, as we do for these 40-minute races for sports cars. Dave, welcome back to the uh, the broadcast and, of course, the telecast going out over the Blendline TV YouTube networks. Thank you very much. Yes, Andrew Hall elevated to position two after Jamie Lovett. A rocket ship start yesterday, but deemed to have been moving at the start whilst under starter's orders. So he's demoted to position three. Michael Kokonos for Melbourne Performance Centre in the launch racing Audi R8 GT3 out of position five. Stephen Kepper, another of our Porsche contenders in position six. Richard Green and Stephen Sluger, Rodney Gordon uh, all in Porsche Cup cars of varying varieties and Michael Stilwell in the Mustang FR500 CS. Robin Bailey in the MGB GT V8 uh, bookending the field uh, currently running. Uh, we've got the tyre war again in sports car racing. Yokohama Advan A005 Slicks locking out the front row for race one yesterday. It'll be uh, Porsche with Michelin versus Sin with Yokohama off the front row. Uh, Porsche with Yokohama, position three. And then a smattering of Pirelli's, Michelin's, Dunlops and Hankooks throughout the field. Uh, great to see a battle. We've also got a battle of the fuel sponsors. Of course, Panther Racing Fuels coming on board this year as a uh, sponsor of production, Sports Car Racing Victoria. And of course, Race Fuels. Uh, Mark Tierney and the team, they're very diligent at supplying fuel in the paddock. So we've got a tyre war. We've got a brand war, we've got a fuel war. Um, probably not the best thing to be talking about at the moment, given what's going on in Eastern Europe. But uh, looking forward to 40 minutes. There's the Team Medical Australia chase car alongside fire, uh, the Victorian Fire and Rescue Service and Pyark Recovery. Great to see our officials having a, uh, a wonderful weekend out on circuit. And uh, our, th our thanks very much to all the volunteer officials around the circuit as we get set for the 40-minute feature race for sports cars. The Sin R1, driven by Ben Schutz. Last year's champion did a tremendous job. We've got a couple of cars. In fact, the Sin should get off the line nicely here with the Porsches. The Porsches do, in cup car trim, do standing starts. It's the Audi on the third row of the grid that might just have a bit of a drama with Michael Kokonos off the wheel. We can see it. It gets away. Good clutch bite. The Porsches dive away and nicely. And a rocket start Hall. again from Jamie Lovett. It's Lovett's. an absolute ripper, but it's going to be down the inside. The bigger cubic inches at Sandown always come out as uh, there's a bit of a don't argue handed out by Ben Schutz as before they even arrive at turn one. Up the inside and continue goes to argue. Hall. Very nicely done there. Good front bite. But Jamie Lovett now. We saw these guys go ding-dong at it at Phillip Island in round three last year. And I did speak to both of them and said, hey, can we have 40 minutes of that again, please? And nice to see Andy Hall and Jamie Lovett delivering like Jamie Lovett resuming his position as he finished race one yesterday in position two. It is always tough for these guys. These are definitely not professional racing car drivers. And we get sort of 25 to 30 minutes into it, the, the fitness and the ability to maintain that concentration that is required. When you're doing well over 240 kilometres an hour in one of these Porsches, you've got the best part of uh, $200,000 plus of car underneath you and uh, you're getting your, your fitness is being extended massively. Well, that was one of the, uh, of the hallmarks of the decision. Uh, and our thanks very much out to the Victorian State Race Series, the, uh, the organisation that promotes the five rounds in conjunction with the car clubs. Of course, thank you to the MG Car Club for uh, organising great weather here today at Sandown. So the first three cars separated by just over two seconds as they exit the final corner. A good battle for fourth, fifth and sixth amongst the Porsche runners. Christian uh, Fitzgerald in there in the uh, EMA Racing uh, Porsche 991 Series 2 Cup car. And uh, Michael Stilwell looking to start monstering Robin Bailey there, V8 versus V8. They'll certainly have a great battle down towards the uh, the minor placings there. Out over the ripple strip goes the 266 of Jacob Lee or Jacob Lee. Jacob Lee, Lee. yep. And uh, Christian Fitzgerald goes to look up the inside of it. We saw Christian Fitzgerald struggle a little bit in the race yesterday. Turns out that's a 991 Series 2 Cup car. Came factory fitted with ABS, but you do have to make sure it's switched on. So when he stood on the brakes into Turn 4, um, got a bit of a front lock-up going on. Effort, yep. Had Andrew Hall give him a love tap up behind. Uh, all's fair in love and war. They played on. And uh, Christian might need to replace a couple of front Michelins, but other than that, all good. Certainly torched them there yesterday. The Evolved Technique brand blazed across the front of this car over the ripple strips. You don't want to be doing that too much in this race. Do it when you need to, but try and keep on the uh, off the ripple strips and in this R8 as well because the low, low very side... Very low side skirts on those cars tend to get torn up when you go across. And even on the Porsches, they've got that very important little rubber lip 
on the lower oh, side uh, of the, the car. The all important plastic. The front sacrificial front, lamb. The sacri <laughs> yes, the consumable item. Yes. No, I have. Uh, I've driven a cup car with that on, and I've driven a cup car with that removed, and uh, it's diabolical. Once you take that again, massive rear arrow on the Porsches. Not a lot of weight over the front axle, so. Needs every Getting bit of it. Front down was a little bit of debris, it looks like, on the front straight. Maybe someone has lost some sort of underbody panel. We see the two 997 Generation 1 Cup cars. There's Sluger up the inside of Gordon, so that's a great move there. Fastest lap so far, 1 minute 12.2 from Benjamin Schutz in the Sin, who's out to a 1.1 second lead. Uh, Jamie Lovett, a 1.2 seconds over Andrew Hall. Again, great Dyson throughout the field, and that's the one of the, the key... Um, key elements of sports car racing, particularly at the, the grassroots of the club racing level. Um, regardless of where you are in the field, there's someone to race with. So Christian Fitzgerald racing uh, with uh, Jacob Lee, Michael Kokonos there in the Audi R8 for launch racing. Again, really good training ground with these 40 minute races to prepare a lot of the drivers for what it's going to be like if they step up to something like the GT World Challenge Australia powered by AWS, you know, where they're doing 50 minute, 60 minute races. Even if you do it with a co-driver, you've got to do at least 30 to 35 minutes in the car. So really critical to spend that long period of time, get the tyres up to temperature, feel what they evolve like over the course of an event, and also see what your concentration levels are like after about 30 minutes when it's hot. And, and the other the other hard. aspect that weighs into it, deal with uh, 10 of your mates trying to uh, have you offered every other corner as well. So no, this, this, there's this a lot is of gentleman inputs. racing, Darren. There's a lot racing. of inputs that come out of race driving when you start to do push out over a 30-minute race, and that one of the most important things and one thing that irritates me sometimes about the upper level of racing is the, the degradation of the vehicle around you. Tire degradation, yeah, in this sort of length race, not really going to go into it. Steven Sluger goes off in the number 68. That looks to be turn one to me. I think that might be turn, uh, it's either turn nine or turn one. Just waiting to see where that is. So uh, here comes Christian looking up the inside. It's turn one down there where he's parked up. So Steven Sluger, there'll be yellow flags down there. And I wouldn't be surprised if we get uh, some heavy yellow flags down the straight so that they can get that car out of there. It will certainly have bottomed out. It's done the job as Christian just gets a little bit of a wobble off the back end of that ripple strip. Probably stay off them a little bit, Christian. We're not uh, we're not in the last lap or two of the race here, so just let it come to you. Unfortunately, those flat bottom girls uh, are a bit hard for Pyro Recovery go. to Steven take Sluger. out of the uh, gravel trap. All by try, himself. Try to keep it going. Keep it going and just came to a stop. And of course, uh, these vehicles very low ride height clearance. Once they are beached, and we see we've gone, got a yellow flag waving down to turn one. So they did say in drivers' briefing that uh, they expect drivers to uh, observe the yellow flag and drive accordingly. The catch up flag. I mean, the yellow flag. The yellow flag. It's not a catch up flag. Scapey, settle down. Uh, and they would try to recover cars out of the gravel if possible under yellow. The other thing that race control has to be very careful of, and the officials do a fantastic job right around the track, and that's looking after each other. You don't want to be putting yourself out there in harm's way because if one went in there, the reason we're removing it is because another one could quickly come into the exact same spot. This is a good run here with uh, Lee and Fitzy, and off the back there, Kokonos just ranging up a little bit there, and he's bringing uh, Kepler along as well, or Kepa along as well. So uh, this could end up a bit of a race in four in the mid-pack. The launch R8 had some updates from what it was originally uh, brought out as. Looking looking really good in there, menacing in that uh, matte black livery. Well, that's been one of the um, one of the, the true features of the Audi Sport customer racing program is that once you buy a car, you don't immediately have to buy a new car two years later. The original Audi R8 debuted, I think, in 2007, 2008 on that chassis, and there were several upgrade packages along the way. So the car remained competitive, on the same base chassis all the way through uh, for a six or seven year homologation window until the second generation car debuted in 2015. We're now in 2022. That car's just had its second evolution package released. Yeah. And of course, uh, didn't get to run at the Asian Le Mans series in Abu Dhabi uh, or in the Dubai 24 hour, but uh, they were, uh, we are looking forward to seeing them in the IMSA series and in the, uh, uh, the um, Fanatec World Challenge. I uh, just want to be watching yourself there, Lee. Mr. Lee, you can only take that change of direction once in a straight line. Christian Fitzgerald just following him there as well. So trying to shake him out of the slipstream. You're allowed to do one move, not multiple moves like that. And the one straight down the inside goes Kokonos. Caught napping. Fitzy was uh, watching the car in front. Safety car. And Kokonos ranges right up the inside there. Did Fitzy see the safety car and boards and signs come out before that? Was that move done under? The initial phases of the safety car being launched. So, 
Jacob Lee needs to just arrest that uh, left and right swerving on the straight there. That will be certainly looked at. The Formula Fords were definitely being looked at for that this morning. They didn't uh, get caught out for it, but they were very much onto that changing of direction or what you would say, trying to shake someone off your uh, slipstream in a straight line. It is a challenging thing to, to manage, particularly when you're in the heat of a battle. Um, and uh, I think our, our production team is going to is working on a replay in the background, so we may be able to uh, figure out what's going on there. So no the yellow, yellow flag, flag out, the... no yellow flag out at the back. And is there makes a... the move? None there either. None at nine, and then Gets the yellow done. flag comes out. So uh, just by the skin of his teeth, yeah, well uh, Mr. done, Kokonos, um, But again, really good uh, practice and training. So the safety cars managed to grab car one thirty, Andrew Hall. So, car 65 and car 16 may have continued on. Um, so, I think perhaps the safety car hasn't quite grabbed the leader there. No, and uh, that should be starting to wave them through so that they can get the cars around and pick up the leader. There's the race leader in the Sin GT, Ben Schutz, who has driven this car beautifully over a couple of seasons now. Does a tremendous job every time he gets in the car and certainly well worth some commercial support if someone's looking to get involved in... Supporting a, a race team, Ben Shoots will deliver if it's race wins that you uh, ultimately want to get. And, of course, driving the, the sin and uh, doing a tremendous job and gets chased down by, you know, royalty of sports car brands there in Porsches on a regular basis. But do they get past him? Get they get past him? No, not on a regular basis. So the halftime breaks come a little bit early this time, Darren. So uh, if you're out there in the audience, make sure you crap over, crack open a cold, frosty beverage. Uh, Park Recovery will be dragging this one uh, off the circuit fairly quickly and hopefully getting them back underway. So Stephen Slug will have a little bit of a mission to uh, make back up the three laps or four laps it is. He's now fallen behind the leader. Yeah, the recovery crews try and do it in a, uh, in a very ginger manner. They don't want to cause any further damage than the driver has already caused going off the track. But uh, sometimes when you're trying to rescue a car, it's bottomed out. You really do have to give it a, a bit of a nudge with the, uh, the snatch and strap to get it moving again. And then you bring half the beach back onto the track with you as well. So it's like, uh, it's like leaving the beach and getting the, uh, the, the tap that the council uh, supplies for you to wash the sand off your feet. But there's no, no council tap there to wash the sand off your feet. You bring all the sand back onto the track. So... Let's see what the recovery crew could do. Vastly experienced recovery crew. Michael Stilwell there in the uh, the Shiraz coloured uh, Mustang. It's Ron Burgundy. It's Ron Burgundy. Burgundy. So that's uh, that's Michael Stilwell and Rich uh, Robin Bailey uh, finishing 11th and 12th at the moment. So snatch strap. Don't want to get uh, don't want to get the four wheel drive bog in the gravel trap. So they'll get it dragged out of the beach. And Is that a good 100 metres of snatch trap there? Have they got three or four joined together to do that? Darren, I'm not going to talk about the size, quality or shape or colour of that snatch strap uh, because I need to make sure that this, uh, this broadcast is appropriate for all ages. Exactly. A great job down there. Look, like they already had the car moving. As I said, the recovery crew do not want to add any further damage and they try their very hardest not to. They really do work very close they look at it they have full respect for the outfit that they're trying to pull out of the uh, out of the sand as our race leaders are slowing down so this could be something we've not seen before and that is that the safety car catches the leaders and puts them behind it the uh the old territory that's got to be about 20 years old of uh automotive australian brilliance trying to accelerate up the hill but our race leader at number two here we go this is going to be good well sometimes you uh sometimes you, the safety car waves you passed and uh, hopefully this time uh we can help the officials out and wave the safety car yeah past. yeah this would be good if you're watching on the dashboard tv ben you're doing a great job mate just uh, bring it down and here comes uh the territory and it'll, it's under some duress too accelerating up the hill like that it's be interesting Ben shoots and... So, Jamie Lovett and uh, Ben Jamie shoots sticking Lovett to one side. Over. There we go. Safety car moves past. See, just like it should be. Just like it should be. Seamless. Yeah, absolutely. So, thank you very much to Ben shoots and Jamie Lovett there for the assistance for the V8 race safety car. So, now Stephen Sluger away with uh, some extra stones for his driveway. Yes, so it doesn't uh, look like... Well, there certainly was. It was a gentle off, if you like, arrested by the sand trap. And here comes our whole field. I'm going to say that uh, 
Uh, it's just a lap too late. We could have gone again on this one because uh, Stephen Sluger is back under his own steam going up the back straight now, but we will have a further lap under safety car control. Probably a good time just to catch up on uh, the calendar for uh, the rest of the Victorian State Race Series for 2022. Round two will be at March at Winton on the 26th and 27th of March. So not too long a wait before we get up to round number two. May 14 and 15 at Phillip Island. will be a great event down there. It's uh, not boiling hot summer and it's not freezing cold winter. It's that lovely transition of autumn at Phillip Island in May. So we look forward to getting down to Phillip Island. The one that is a bit chilly is the August round, 12, 13, 14. Of course, the Friday isn't actually part of the, uh, the race meeting. It is uh, a practice day, so if you're not racing in that event, you want some practice laps around uh, Sandown, get uh, out here on the 12th, 13th and 14th of August. Then we round it out at, uh, down at Phillip Island on 23rd, 24th of September. On your screen for those watching on the uh, Blend Tri- Blendline TV YouTube channel or via V8 Sleuth or, by, or via the uh, State Series website, Stephen Sluger into the lane. And all of those races, as it says on screen there, will be uh, live and free on Blendline TV via YouTube. And we thank all of the uh, promoting clubs. MG Car Club here this weekend. The Phillip Island Auto Racing Club, or Pyark to its friends, at the uh, the next round on the in, Ma- in, in May. The Victorian Mini Club. And, of course, they all combine together for the Winton round in March. And then Australian Sports Sedan Association as well that run that uh, event in the middle of winter here in Melbourne. It's always a rug-up event, but uh, great racing because race cars love cold weather. They perform their absolute best uh, in the cold weather. And there it is. Lights are off on the safety car. The Territory lurches its way away from the front of the field here. The Sin idling, just trying to let the safety car get away. So now... Very short notice to Ben Shoots. He knows how to control a race start under safety car. The number 16 of Jamie Lovett wants to go with him. Andrew Hall giving him a little bit of the hurry, hurry up as well. Lee also in there. Have a look at that. Kokonos looking out. Fitzgerald wants to get going. And we're going to leave it as long as possible for Ben Shoots because he wants to put the cubic inches down and drive away from this field. And he does exactly that. Have a look at Kokonos. Look to the inside in the Audi. Wants to get up the inside of Lee. It looks like he's going to do it. But it looks also like Andrew Hall's going to get through. The two Porsches go side by side. The 16 and the 130. The 16 hangs in there. Gets it done. Andrew Hall allows... The gap to widen so they can get through all nicely. Good driving, gents. Well done. Jamie Lovett, very strong on that out, on that around the outside holding manoeuvre to then fire back up the inside at turn two through turn three. So great dice in there between the two. Uh, in fact, Michael Kokonos not able to get that move done on Jacob Lee. He's actually lost that spot again to Christian Fitzgerald. That move we were praising him for at Dandenong Road has just come unstuck. So uh, Jamie Lovett running in P2, Andy Hall P3, Jacob Lee P4. So a little bit of resumption of service. And look at the look at the action coming in behind from Kokonos. Uh, that's Kepper in the 58 there. That's one of the 997 Series 2 Cup cars. So the 3.8 litre variety. Not quite as much power as Christian Fitzgerald in the 4 litre car. Both these cars out of the third row of the grid, so they've held station, albeit that both of them have gone up and then back to uh, original positions in this race as well. So they hold station, and uh, just watching Christian Fitzgerald now, ranging alongside Lee and He's drives very on good by. Out of the last corner. Oh, Lee's Jacob. not giving up. The switch back. Is it overcooked it? Yes, it has. Christian Fitzgerald gets through. Kokonos nearly follows him through. Bottoms out the R8, and that's what happens when you go over Ripple Ships in GT cars. So Kokonos there didn't know what was going to happen with Jacob Lee. Desperately didn't want to have an incident with anyone, and in doing so has caused an incident for himself. So hopefully he spent enough time in that MPC uh, Audi R8 that he's familiar with the restart procedure. Of course, once you spin the car, you've got to make sure you get the clutch in so you don't spin the engine backwards, because that'll ruin the alternator. And certainly throw the alternator right off the side of the engine with something helping it out, that's for sure. Looking down, just going, got the manual out now. I've got to go uh, hold my left eye half open, yeah, rub, kick rub, the floorboard. Rub your tummy, pat your head. I tell you what would have been uh, all, all well and truly in there would have been the scraping underneath the middle of the car as he's gone through there as well. So, so uh, yeah, that would have been a horrible noise that scraped on. Here we go. There so Jacob goes. Lee with the massive send up the inside, ran out of traction and tracked it simultaneously. 
Kokonos off the curb, a little bit too much opposite lock, overcorrected, and spun off. Doing a railie. Doing a railie. <laughs> doing a railie in the Audi. Should have stuck to doing an ollie and the grind. <laughs> he is it. back underway in the launch racing Audi. So that's dropped him back down to position 12, I think. For those wakeboarders out there, doing a rail in your R8. So awesome fun. There goes Kepper up the inside of Gordon. So Kepper and Gordon having a really good dice. Actually, that's Kepper and Green, I should say. So they're ranging up on Sven Burkhardt, who's running that 996 RSR, which, of course, is the Le Mans specification ah. Porsche predating the FIA GD3 level category. Looks cool, though. It's, it it's does. Got the, it's They're, got that extra bit. Yeah, it's like, what is it? Well, it's a, it's a 911, but it's thicker. <laughs> extra. Yeah. Yes. With what an extra. I took the wheels and I put them outwards. It, it gets turned up to 11. Yes. This one goes to 11. That's it. Look at yeah. him, though. Turns it in to uh, run down to Dandenong Road. Just grabs a little bit of the ripple strip under the uh, right side of the car, a little bit under the left. Now, the number 58 ranging up hard. Wants to get on with it, Steve Kepper. And I think at the moment Steve Kepper might have a better car under him than uh, what Sven Boykarts has got there. So he looks to the inside, coming into the S's there, goes past the tyre company sign and points it up onto the straight and drives away nicely. Gets through. A nice pass indeed there by Kepper. Very well executed. That's a very nice sports car linkage of two. The Dunlop chicane or the Dunlop curves, synonymous with sports car racing at Le Mans. Le Mans. And of course there we've got a Le Mans Racing 996 Porsche in the middle of the field as well. So Sven, very experienced with a number of different Porsche models. He's had a couple of different cup cars. Uh, he's now found a home in this X not X Le Mans spec uh, GD3 RSR. A little bit of uh, debris hanging off the back of the car there. We'll see if we can swing in the behind. I think it's a that tow rope or the, the tow um, it Might be loop. a tow strap or possibly some, uh, some wrapping around the exhaust. Nothing too Could serious be. to worry about there. And here's the, uh, the battle that we like. So this is a 991 Generation 1 Cup driven by Andy Hall in the number 130, Hills and Cup Car Engineering. The EMA Racing 991 Series 2. You can see the different tail lights, different front bar. That's a 3.8 litre versus a 4 litre car. Yeah, and being driven well, nicely by Andrew at the moment. In fact, he's done a great job since he emerged into the Victorian sports car scene. Drives very well. Runs a pretty stout preparation business there as well. Got Jason Dunstan working with him here this weekend. Jason's been up at uh, Celtic Racing preparing all things Porsche and Mustang for... Tony Quinn, and uh, back down here for the weekend with Andrew Hall. Loves his Victorian State Series. Can't wait to see Racy out in his little Honda Civic in improved production at some time in the near future. It's one of the ones I'm lining up for a seat fitting in. And, uh, folks, you can cue the, uh, is it Aerosmith or Meatloaf? Because, whoa, we're halfway there. 20 minutes elapsed, 20 minutes remaining in this 40-minute Mini Enduro. Certainly rips by when we've got some brilliant pieces of kit out on track. There are short stands are under safety car but what it's done is it gives Ben shoot 6.7 seconds of a lead I don't think Ben wants to see another safety car I think he'd like to run away and hide set the pace that he wants to that the sin is happy to, to run at Ben can certainly drive the car at whatever uh, pace it needs to be done whether it be absolutely wringing the neck of it or just ticking the boxes to get the laps done and drag a, a maximum amount of points out of the weekend so it's coming up onto the back of the R8 now. So Michael Kokonos, not a situation he was expecting to be in. So he's actually being lapped by the sin. Now, normally this would not have been something he'd have to worry about until very late in the race, but of course, lost about 45 seconds with that spin and getting the car refired. So he's a little over, uh, what's that, about 15, uh, 25 seconds to the next car in front, and then another uh, 35 seconds to the car in front of that. So... Unfortunately, that uh, spin for Michael, and uh, looks like a little bit of exhaust muffler packing or some sound deadening has popped out there on the grid around about grid spot 10, 10 or 12 there. Does look like the uh, the Jeks uh, cleaning up had your stuff in your the, exhaust yeah, for Phillip the, the, Island, Phillip Island spec. The Phillip Island spec exhaust, where you uh, count the muffler over one side and poke the uh, poke the exhaust tip out the other way. It certainly is. That's what it is out there. Of course, uh, line of stern with each other here. This is a good run. So it's and interesting to watching see that, it, that uh, Lovett wants to stay out of this. Doesn't want to fall back into the clutches of this battle. Well, at the moment, so Lovett's fastest lap time so far has been a 12.9, and his last lap was a 13.3. But the two cars behind him are now dropping down into the 12. So it's almost as if Christian and Andy are actually working with each other to keep those lap times up. Again, the, uh, the 991s run slightly bigger tyres on the front end of the car versus the 997. Oh, so there's debris all down the straight. There's uh, little bits of debris 
But the good thing is we know where the Debris is. We do. It's on the straight. Shout out to our good mate, uh, Gerald McDornan, who, uh, who produced uh, quite a range of interesting merchandise after Bathurst 2019 uh, because he definitely knew where the Debris was. So Christian looking for a way around the outside at two. Doesn't quite have it. You'll see the four-litre car a little bit quicker up the straight, providing he can get a good run off the final Ooh, Christian's lost a substantial amount there between one and four. He's missed a cog or something along the way there because now Lee ranges up in the background. That gap has certainly opened up in that last lot of corners there between one and four. Gets it back underway again and just closes the gap a little bit on the climb up the hill. But that gives uh, that gives Andy Hall a little bit of breathing space as Christian's getting a little bit desperate there. Four wheels over the ripple strips. Unfortunately, we don't have sector timing available at State Race. But interestingly, the last three laps of the la of the the second, third, and fourth place competitors on their last lap. Christian Fitzgerald, actually the fastest with a 1 minute 12.6. He's actually fastest, set a faster best lap than the two cars in front of Andy Hall and Jamie Lovett. So, again, the, the teams all have access to the live timing. Thank you to the Melbourne University Car Club for the timing support they've offered to the MG Car Club this weekend. And what uh, the teams will be reviewing the, the timing live on Natsoft, so natsoft.com. You want a stressful job? That's it. Timekeeping at a race meeting. Because what do we do here? We count time. We count <laughs> That's all time. what we do. And great to have the uni guys uh, involved up there. There's, there's some great timing crews around this country. Well, we can see how's that for a turnaround. It'll go, Christian Fitzgerald, uh, his lap dropped from a 112.6 all the way out to a 14.3. So nearly 1.7 seconds slower uh, that time by. So the field now coming up to at the back of uh, Robin Bailey to put him a lap down as well. So Robin Bailey, no slouch in the uh, in the MG and invited British field, and certainly no slouch in this field. But this is a, a technology amassed sort of 45, 50 years up the road compared to the the technology that the MGB GTV GT V8s have. These cars are uh, one make series specialist bits of motorsport kit coming out of arguably one of the finest sports car companies in the world. And uh, they do a tremendous job, and we see that this year the Ferrara Cup Australia will go to the new, newer car again. And there's already been an update issued for those Porsches before they've even turned a lap. Well, the 992 generation car, usually when Porsches debuted a new generation Cup car, they sell 24, 25, 26 cars. This year, they've sold over 30. They have a fully subscribed grid for the uh, Carrera Cup series, in, sorry, Carrera Cup Championship because, of course, one of the other things that's happened in the last year is that cha national championship status has been uh, restored to the Carrera Cup. That, of course, means that there will be a, a larger uh, payment of uh, super licence points towards a uh, V8, super, sorry, towards a supercar licence. And entry fees follow that uh, as well. <laughs> there may be an adjustment to the championship, uh, lo championship, entry championship fee. <laughs> management fee to Porsche Cars Australia. There we but go. But also it means that the, the, uh, the championship now has a higher status, so uh, it can run different starting points. As we see a lot of dust coming up from Turn 9, there appears to be... Is that just the remnants of a car making the fence, or did it manage to... The car escape? has driven away. It looks like it's uh, Lee, maybe. The no, blue. no, it's Robin Bailey. Robin Bailey in the MGB. We were singing his praises before. So that's that's a car that's been very substantially modified from its original equipment. So even though it's not What gives it away? The bonnet bulge? Um, partly. The bonnet bulge, partly. So originally that car would have uh, rolled out the door with a 3.5-litre uh, Rover, Rover V8. Um, it's now making uh, somewhere around 200 horsepower. Now it's making somewhere north of 500 running on E85, a 14 to 1 compression ratio. It's quite a lot of power in a car that weighs only 11 to 1,200 kilos. Have a look at this heat haze as we've seen for many years. And there's two Porsches side by side. And it's going to be Fitzgerald drives on by. There was nothing that Andy Hall could do then. He just had to watch Christian Fitzgerald apply the four litres. And when you've got 3.8 behind him, that's half a can of Coke in capacity difference. But Hall's not going to give up. Power down nicely in the cup car engineering car. And looks to the back of Christian Fitzgerald, 
the EMA Motorsport car is not over. This is certainly not over. With 12, just over, just under 13 minutes left to go in this race. This is going to rage all the way through. Now, I'm going to suggest that they're not working together, and this is uh, where the race will start to come alive. And this is for P3. So the last spot on the podium at the moment, Ben Schutz and Jamie Lovett driving very nicely within themselves, not being challenged by other competitors, albeit that Jamie would like to be 12.7 seconds further up the road and onto the back of Ben Schutz. Well, as, uh, as Ben Schutz is pointing out to everyone, and as, as is Christian Fitzgerald pointing out to Andy Hall, there's no substitute for cubic inches. That's exactly right. Hence the reason, and, and hence this, the reason why we've got a 5-litre V8 in our car. And this is the racetrack. You want all of them. Absolutely. There it is right there, 5-litre V8. You want all the horsepowers. You want all the horsepowers. Every one of them. Every one of them. Grab one off everyone in pit lane if you can Absolutely. on the way through. It's so, a very, very different kind of horsepower to what they sometimes have around the infield here at Sandown. So. That's true. Yeah, I, get, I don't get that one horsepower. How much fun can that be? And they, and they, they, they drop poo everywhere and they eat. You think race cars are expensive? Try owning yeah, a horse. Yeah. I tell you what, you want to park your race car, you park it in the shed and you don't spend any money on it. A horse still needs to eat and have well, vet I, fees and all of that. I, I did have this discussion with someone who did a lot of eventing and dressage. We basically worked out that for a season of uh, improved production racing versus her doing a season of dressage, it was basically the same expenditure. Fancy uniforms, specialist clothing, trailers, transporters, accommodation, event fees, vet bills, mechanical bills, feed, fuel. But we had one key advantage, and, and you need to make sure that you tell this to anyone in your family that thinks about playing with horses. If it all gets too hard, you can roll it into the shed and throw a cover over it. Do that with a horse, it gets very thin. It does, and you get the, the RSPCA knocking at your door as well. Yeah. That's for sure. I like your analogy there, but certainly we love Sandown and the horse racing. They present such a great facility for they us do. to go racing at. It, it is always a bit weird when we're here on on Fridays and they're, water- racing at well, well, they're, they're watering the track and it looks like someone's got a massive tyre failure going on. It does. There you go. Christian Fitzgerald has stamped his authority on uh, position number three. And you've got to say, with uh, ten and a half minutes left to go, he's actually now out after Jamie Lovett with a, uh, a 1.12 last lap round, exactly a second faster than Jamie Lovett. So he's catching him, it's 2.2 seconds away, so he's catching him a second a lap. There's plenty of time for uh, for this to really liven up for the second step on the podium. Well, that's one of the, the big differences between the cars is that the, the 991 generation car, a much longer wheelbase, much more stable in the high-speed stuff. Round about the same size rear tyre on the car, but the 991 runs a, a wider front wheel with a bigger front tyre. Also, he's got the advantage of ABS, so he can stand on the brakes very hard and not be too concerned about locking up the tyres. So in terms of the technology, it's uh, it's definitely advantage Christian Fitzgerald, but in terms of experience running at the front and defending in a 40-minute race and looking after tyres, I'd certainly have to say it's advantage Jamie Lovett. Oh, absolutely, and we, it was displayed all through 2021 when he raced with Andrew Hall very, very hard, and particularly... Um, I think you joined me in that, Dave, that uh, one of the highlights of last year was that Saturday afternoon race at Phillip Island, albeit won by Ben Schutz in the sin. The race with those two Porsches of Hall and Lovett for, for second on the road was intense. 0.3 or 3.4 of a second at the end of that race between them, and uh, it really didn't matter who got the, the positions in the race. It was so entertaining. And really, a couple of drivers, amateur race drivers, performing like pros. Absolutely. They really did. They lifted right to the level. And we uh, we can't we can't mention the Saturday, the Sunday afternoon race at uh, at Phillip Island without mentioning Michael Kokonos's uh, inadvertent uh, failure to file a flight plan with uh, with Casa. Oh, in, with the bla- the black McLaren. Yes. Yes. It, literally, it was a case of launch racing being launched off the embankment at turn yeah, two. Turn two. Yes, course, that was a big one. Of course, he's upgraded to an Audi R8 now, so he's gone from a GT4 specification car to a GT3 specification car. So it's gone from about 400, 420 horsepower all the way up to the full 550 available from the 5.2 litre V10 in the back of that Audi. Gee, I wonder if an Audi is an upgrade from a McLaren or it's the other way around. You know, I guess you have to walk down Swan Street and talk to some salesmen and work that one out. Well, it depends how much of a, how much of a flex you want to have, Darren. That's right. You know, I know that you, you know, Chapel Street, you cruising down there in your RX3 with the flames coming out of the exhaust, you know, Sublaki in one hand, can of Coke in the other. You know, that was the way you did things back in the 90s, wasn't it? It's what yeah. the kids did. It's what the kids did. You're right. So Michael Kokonos now in the battle with the leaders, as he wanted to be, but unfortunately it's being lapped. So not causing too much of a problem for Jamie Lovett getting past. So Christian Fitzgerald looking to go up the inside. Not quite close enough yet. 
Michael is entitled to, to keep racing, but we'll see, hopefully, Christian move past him down the front straight. By the will, I will, I will correct you on your facts. Uh, it was never the race car that went down. It was always the, the tow car, which was the Sandman panel van that went oh, down there. The race car right. was always locked away. Yeah, kids, you definitely... The tow car. That's, that's right, parents. You definitely don't need to worry about your kids around Darren because he had a Sandman, of course. All reputable, completely trustworthy characters uh, from that vintage all drove panel vans. Isn't that right? Yeah. yeah. If you had a race car to tow, it was the weapon of choice, that's for sure. Yeah. And you could camp in it as well. So Christian Fitzgerald losing a little bit more time than Jamie Lovett here. He's looking for a way past. Uh, Michael might need a little bit of a and uh, might need a little bit of a message from Eric Pender on the radio saying, "Hey, you can let those guys go. You're not in the same race anymore." Blue flags being waved by the Victorian flag marshalling team. So thank you to those guys. This also might help play uh, Andy Hall back into the game for uh, position three as well. So the good thing that, uh, about these drivers is they recognise that the throttle pedal does go both ways. Yeah, that's right. And uh, it's been worked very, very well. We've seen yesterday this car right on screen now, which you've, you've straightened us all out on that. The uh, ABS was off. He torched the tyre into turn four on the opening lap. But I tell you what, when you get rid of that torched tyre and you put a, uh, a fresh one on or a less used one or a less abused one, Christian Fitz, uh, Fitzgerald is doing his uh, name and his family very, very proud indeed. Porsche races, born into the brand basically with his uh, dad, Peter Fitzgerald, long, long time Porsche racer. And of course, uh, my favourite was the 968 CS that he uh, raced here in enduro formats. So the original specification for the Bathurst 12 hour. It was, of yeah. The, uh, yeah, the, the RX 7s were very strong then too. 3E e production cars, of course, running on slicks back in the day, not uh, the treaded. Uh, the treaded uh, street legal tyres that we see normally as we see that's the 266 of Jacob Lee so he's rolling around the back of the uh, the back of the runoff there at turn one so I think he may have uh, experienced another extreme braking event down into turn one again of course Mars performance on Clayton Road Clayton providing uh, lots of uh, bolt on bling and flare around cars oh what's this here the 97 going slowly of Gordon uh, he's got the wipers on, so I think he's had uh, has, he's had quite a bit of a, uh, as um, as Martin Brunner would say, I think he's been wrestling with an octopus. I reckon in, you're in right there, car. hands flapping around there, just got the wipers on just to make sure. Send the signal to the crew that, yes, I've had an off. I'm just clearing the dust out well, of maybe, my vision. Maybe he's got the problem, maybe his tow car is Japanese and his, his race car is European. So oh, the, uh, oh, that's not nice. That's well caught, actually, and there we go, reach for the... Uh, the new driving suit for yeah, later on. I, I'd say there's definitely no dry patches inside the fuel tank now because that is a definition of the tank slapper. Splashing the, around. The 98 Ron, whether it's pans or it's race fuels, that's gone all the way up one side of the tank, all the way up the other side of the tank. It's hit the roof, it's hit the floor. It'll have a nice damp fuel tank all the way around. Ooh, in the front Fitzy of the just getting a little bit loose there, a little bit aggressive over the ripple strips. It's not what you want to do with exactly five minutes left remaining in this race. He probably... He's certainly out after Jamie Lovett, but he, he also wants to protect what he's got, and that's a P3 in the feature race for the weekend. Here we go. Here's a replay. This is going to be Steven Sluger again. No, there's the Mars performance outfit all by himself. Not sure what happened there, uh, well, but we are at the 35-minute mark. Maybe it's a bit of that fatigue we were talking about earlier on in the race. It's Sven Boycott's slows down on the main straight as well. Actually, I think that might be the uh, 997 Cup car of Gordon there that... Uh, was continuing on. I think it might okay. have a little bit of something hanging down off underneath it after it uh, disappeared over the turn eight curb. So Andy Hall in 130. So we can see no, that's it, that is, it is Sven Burkhardt's pulling over to the left hand side. So something gone on there. Jacob Lee, of course, a self inflicted uh, uh, pirouette down at turn one. We're still waiting for the score from the uh, East German judges. Uh, they, they've, nice been, they've been missing since 1989. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> um, the ban on anabolic steroids, yeah, maybe. something like that. Yeah. So Christian Fitzgerald uh, in position three. He's uh, he's gap. Gaining. He's gap to Jamie Lovett down to 1.5 seconds. So not too much time lost passing Michael Kokonos there. Andy Hall a further 2.4 seconds behind. And as we said, because the cars don't tend to run for this long period of time, a lot of drivers don't have exposure to which end of the car goes off first. You're going to lose the front end of the car, so you lose your braking performance. You can't steer the car in. Or you're going to lose the rear end of the car. Is the car going to get too pointy? You're not going to get the throttle down. Sven out and over the wall. And uh, glad to see he's okay. 
But Looks so, like he's breathing in some big ones too. Hands on hips, catching uh, his breath, I, getting out of the Porsche. I think he's just trying to calculate uh, how many more victories uh, Cameron Waters, uh, Jake Kostecki, uh, uh, James Courtney and Tom Randall are going to have to get this year so he's got enough prize money to fix his 996 RSR. Uh, <laughs> Here big, we go. Big, big <laughs> shout out to, uh, to, to Sven if you can hear us. We love you and we love your car. Um, hopefully it's not nothing as simple as not putting enough fuel in it for 40 minutes. Yeah, and Dave still, you can catch him at your local friendly car dealer anyway, any day of the week, Monday to Friday, to deliver a letter. Yeah, absolutely. So we can see Fitzy right up behind Lovett. So this is the battle, 997 Series 2 versus 991 Series 2. 3.8 litre, 4.6 horsepower, 4.460 horsepower uh, versus the, oh, ooh, a bit of a bit of weaving going down the straight, trying to break the toe. Starting to feel it, are you, Jamie? Four litre engine, 500 horsepower in the car behind. Look how much wider it is at the front axle. Look how much longer it is in the wheelbase. You know, it's an evolution. A, a Here it is. There evolution. it is. Show the nose. More than show the nose. Stuff it up the inside there. Take the corner. Drive cleanly out. The opposition goes over the ripple strip. And Christian Fitzgerald arrests P2 in this race. He's now got 18.91 seconds and 1 minute and 59 seconds to do it in. But again, this is what we often see with the most FC. I was saying, I think, and, and I can speak from experience, it is the rear tyre that tends to go away first in the 997 Series 2. Even though it's a massive 12-inch wide rim and a 315mm wide rear tyre, just not quite enough. It's so aggressive. No traction control on these cars either. Yeah, and we just saw that, and that's what the number 16 is experiencing there. Putting the, uh, the number 16, laying some number 11s coming onto the main straight here at Sandown. And if he, if he lays down too many number 11s, he'll have his, his mate number 130, Andrew Hall, who's now only 1.7 seconds behind. So great battle for second, third and fourth. Maybe we need to have a chat to uh, Richard Bendell and see if we can put a V6 into the sin instead of a V8. Or maybe we'll put a 5 litre V8 instead of a 7 litre V8. Let's just let the sin do what it's doing. <laughs> They've worked hard enough on that car to get it to, to finish races. Let them have their time in the spotlight. Ben Shoots driving beautifully. He's got his brother and his dad. But uh, Richard Bendel let them articulate their artistry all over that sin. And uh, they have a terrific relationship between the uh, the Shoots and the ben the Bendels. Ben drives it, doesn't smash it, looks after the tyres and wins races. So Richard supplies it. Does what he's told. <laughs> yes. Or as uh, it does what it says on the box. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the Bulgarian supercar, it's got a uh, nine, well, 19, nearly 20 second lead now. As I'm going to say, uh, it's going to elapse on this, so it'll be one more, one and a half more laps, and we'll have a uh, race completion at the moment. It is the Sin that is screaming up the back straight. It just looks so menacing. Disappears behind the guardrail, dips it into the left hander, but this is where the battle is, and this is four, two, three, four on the road. So Andy, it's a massive lead, isn't it? Andy Hall and Jamie Lovett going at it again for a spot on the podium. Surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. It was second or third place uh, last time out. And now it's third versus fourth place. Yeah. Look at Andy Hall. He's been looking after that car. He's got it brought on nicely indeed. Check it Check flag. flag. He's coming ready. out. So Let's see where Ben shoots. He comes onto the straight. There's the checkered flag. We pick him up just in time. A great victory for Ben shoots. And the family team, and Richard Bendel, the car owner, the Sin R1 GT, as we look back to Stuttgart's finest, three of them. Christian Fitzgerald's driven a ripping race here today. Get himself right back up on the podium into P2. Jamie Lovett and Andy Hall, welcome home to the chequered flag. And I dare say by the time we get to Winton, those three uh, white Porsches want to reverse the form and give it a go. And I'm pretty sure they're at Winton. They will give it a red-hot go because the Sin doesn't quite get around Winton as well as a Porsche does. So it's Yokohama on P1, Michelin P2, Yokohama P3, Michelin P4. And unfortunately, uh, Richard Bailey, sorry, uh, Robin Bailey and Stephen Sluger retired from the race. Sven Burkhart's coming to a halt on the main straight. Jacob Lee getting home. Uh, in front of uh, Richard Green there in the 63. Kepper. Stephen Kepper getting home Stephen there. The Started out of six, finishing six. And that is the field. Darren, thank you so much for having me. And speaking of thanks, I want to say a big shout out to all of our volunteer officials around the circuit and, of course, around the world. Motorsport doesn't happen without the volunteers. So a huge shout out to the Victorian Flag Marshalling Team, Team Medical Australia, Pyak Recovery, Victorian Fire and Rescue Service the MG Car Club, and I think we're going to throw to an interview, Darren. 
I think we are. I didn't quite get who that was, but I think it's going to be Callum with uh, someone down in pit lane. Back down here in the paddock track side at Sandown International Raceway. This is round one of the VSRS, the Vic State Race Series. And we're joined by David Bellinger, who is the assistant clerk of course. David, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, and it's really great to be back racing again. We're very happy to be back here, and it's absolutely phenomenal. The weather's certainly turned it on, and we've got 285 or nearabouts entrance this week, Ken. But tell us a little bit about your background in uh, officiating and being behind the scenes in motorsport. Uh, well, i am uh, been officiating for I don't know how many years, but an awful lot. Uh, I uh, sit on state council, and I'm heavily involved with all the motorsport uh, stuff through Motorsport Australia. And I got involved in officially because I really can't afford to go racing and so officially is a really great way to get close to a sport that I love and admire and uh, and love my spending my time at. So being uh, assistant clerk of course I'd say or dare I suggest it would present its own unique set of challenges too? Absolutely you uh, any race meeting is a is a, a recipe that you can't write beforehand everything is unknown when it happens and uh, it's very much a thinking on your feet being alert and uh, handling the situations as it occurs so keeps us busy and and uh, and young i suppose for a bloke <laughs> my age to say that keeps us young at heart too so we say a big thank you to david for joining us this afternoon if you do find yourself sitting on a couch watching this from home and you want to get a little bit closer to motorsport there are many avenues to do that so we encourage you to go to vsrs.com.au on your favorite or preferred browser and there should be some more information on uh, officials and how you might be able to volunteer and get just a little bit closer to motorsport like david has here thank you very much callum and uh, great to see david bellinger down there a long time uh, volunteer official and yes he does compete from time to time was competing in his honda civic only a few weeks ago, so uh, he puts that uh, to one side. But uh, most of the uh, officials at some point have done some sort of competition, whether it be a hill climb or a, a motor car or, uh, or some form of competing in the sport. But certainly through Motorsport Australia and the Victorian State Race Series, through Pyark, MG, Mini Club, all the, uh, all the other promoters around, there is plenty of opportunity to join us all trackside, come and uh, spend the weekend with like-minded people, that's what I've done, and right alongside me, Dan McCarthy from Auto Action. That's what you do too, mate. But you do it on a on a commercial basis. You'll have Auto Action out with a, at least a one-page spread of this weekend very soon, won't you? Absolutely, page dedicated to this fantastic Victorian State Circuit Racing Championship round here at Sandown. Great way to commence the year. Local to everybody, just down the road from the Melbourne CBD, only about half an hour's drive so it's just so convenient for teams to kick off the year and as is round two at winter it's only three hours up the road from here and uh we all get to go away and spend a weekend in rural victoria absolutely it's always a good one winton always throws up a bit of different results being such a tight and twisty circuit compared to the fast flowing Phillip Island and the uh, drag strips that we have here at Sandown. Winton always produces a few different results, so you were talking about it in that last race. The sin isn't quite so suited to a track such as Winton. Yeah, it's not doesn't like that sort of rapid change of direction, although the, the crew down there, the, the Shoots family and Richard Bendel, and they all try and make it work, but certainly the Porsches will roll out of the truck um, and they'll be set to go for Winton, whereas the sin crew will have to work pretty hard at getting their set up nailed before uh, for that race next card next up on the card we start our afternoon program which looks pretty much like the uh the fir first part of our program for the day we've got uh, saloon cars out on track then formula ford historic touring cars and e30 xls mg and invited british sports cars sports sedans formula v improved production hqs and we'll round out the day with the triple eight home loans porsche 944 challenge looking forward to 
seeing what this afternoon's racing brings us. Ten lap journeys this afternoon, so just that little bit more of physical exertion from uh, the drivers as the uh, cars make their way around out of the marshalling area onto the grid, led by Sean Jamison, who's had a really good weekend so far, two from two, dragging a nice uh, amount of points out of it. And uh, he is right next to him. For the first time in some time, a Falcon on the front row of the grid in the uh, saloon cars. So Daniel Johnson lands there. Anthony Bout in uh, number 46, who drove from the rear of the field. A terrific race last time out. Came up to P3. Mark Sutherland in the number nine, also up a couple of spots. Andy Lowndes starting out of the same spot he did. Andrews Lancini up a spot. Andrew McSwain, David Lyons, Nat Nash Harris, Peter Tonks, Cooper Capillary, Robert Knight, Glenn Campbell, Ashley Lee, Brett Tate, Simon Taverner, who was off the front row of the grid and had uh, some issues and uh, just popped his head in the door of the commentary booth, like Jeffy Thomas did, who's just behind him. So the 14 of Taverner, then back to Scotty Dornan and uh, Jeffy Thomas in the number 22 out of 18. Let's see what 10 laps in a saloon car can turn around here at uh, Sandown International Motor Raceway as we just see Sean Jamison a very clean set of heels getting to the grid. I uh, wonder if that's going to be uh, what, how it ends up at the end of these 10 laps. Yeah, certainly a big gap to uh, Daniel Johnson in the Falcon behind. So he's really gone out there on that warm-up lap trying to get temperature into the tyres by just driving that bit quicker, whereas the others appear to have weaved their way to the grid in the more traditional style. So it'll be interesting because, of course, Jamison will have to wait there now for... A little bit longer. He's probably been there already 15 or 20 seconds before any other car pulls up on the grid. So he'll certainly have slightly colder tyres. We can see Jamison there with the thumbs up across to Daniel Johnson. Good camaraderie between the saloon car competitors. Um, yeah, we see the cars further back lining up. Big field of saloon cars this weekend. 18 cars. So on the front row, Jamison in the Commodore alongside him. Daniel Johnson in the Falcon. The second row, we've got a car missing. That's Bear. No Bear on position number three. Not quite sure why that is, but everybody else is in position where they should be. As we see Jeffrey Thomas just coming to a stop at the back of the field. And the green flag waves. We're getting ready for a start here. The final race for Saloon Cars. Race number three. Ten laps. Five seconds, sand down the home of horsepower. Ten laps, the journey for our saloon cars. Team Johnson racing on the second spot next to the saloon hotel entry of Sean Jamison, his teammate, not on the second row. Number nine of Mark Sutherland, Lecking looking good to get away. Lee Cheney in the RJ Batteries car disappears into wheel spin. But have a look at the Falcon drive off the line. Straight line, six cylinder versus bent six. And they're going to go side by side up to turn one. Grab third gear, the Commodore drives away. Dan Johnson gives it the, uh, the don't argue. Back to Adam Lowndes, I'm here. And I'm going to hang on to this. He gives it as we watch the Leoncini car go around there as well. David Lyons in the mix here as well. Very aggressive as he has been early on in this. Have a look at Simon Taberner. He's already got six cars up before he's got to turn one. Up on the ripple strips in the 14. Up the inside of the 25. Let's his presence known. The Bridgestones protesting on all of the cars as they come up to turn four for the first time. They start to climb the hill. There it is, Johnson. Headlights ablaze, just letting Sean Jamison know we're all still here. Lowndes looks to the outside. Is he going to go around the outside? No. Lowndes just gets back in behind Daniel Johnson. Great driving there by the uh, the Blue Oval pilot down under pressure. Extreme pressure being applied by the 19. Now is Johnson up on the ripple strip. The pro plum car of Adam Lowndes also up on the... Ripper strip, the number nine of Mark Sutherland. He will always be there. And here comes Taberner. He's got the headlights ablaze. Looks to the inside of the VN. And they come onto the straight for the first time. Can you believe they're going to do this for 10 laps? Good, clean first lap. That's what we like to see. Get everybody underway. No dramas at all. So at the end of lap number one, it is Jamison who leads Johnson by 1.7 seconds. Great first lap by Lowndes moving up from fifth on the grid to position number three. Tabner up eight spots on the opening lap and finds himself into position number eight. So he's halved the field in one lap. David Lyons now getting loose into turn one. Jeez, he's had a torrid old time with turn one here this weekend. Lyons again sliding the car through, really torturing it over the ripple strips. 
the Bridgestones knowing they're alive on number 24, giving it a good old uh, shake-up. Yeah, you mentioned that uh, in the last race, a few uh, lock-ups, and he went straight through the tyre. So uh, the um, a lot of lock-ups in that last race, and, yeah, he's got a, a new one for sure this time. As I say, you were worn through that tyre in the last race. As we see him uh, in position number six, just head of Leon Cini in seventh position. A bit of a lock-up further forwards, not sure who... Mark Sutherland was. there, pinched one up into Dandenong Road. David Lyons now, he's going to come under fire there, Simon Tavener. He is absolutely sending a message to this field. Tab's back. And here he comes in the number 14. Southeast Euro, the home of number 14. They'll, be have, they'll have this car up on jack stands before the sun sets tonight. And they'll be starting to prep for Winton on March 26 and 27. And Simon Tavner will be trying to extract every bit of performance he possibly can out of that car. Stand Hotel emblazoned across David Lyons' front window. Does he get through turn one clean? He arrives clean and gets through clean. Nicely done. Does the uh, classic Jack Brabham type of line there. Late break, late turn in. Let it fly. Oh, now we've got smoke billowing off the front tyre. Another lock-up there again. That's not a lock-up. That's something no, a lot more that substantial. certainly is with oil coming out under there. The car's behind not finding that oil, but... Uh, that is absolutely pluming out as we look down to turn one. It's above the Pertec oil sign. Happily above the Pertec, not oil, Pertec hose sign. Let's hope it wasn't an oil line. White but flag. I'm going to say it's a tyre. No, I don't think so. The way that he fired off wide sideways says to me there's some fluid underneath the car. Uh, yeah, again, yeah, there it is, oil pluming out from under the car. Moves over. Let's hope he just parks it up. Doesn't try and continue all the way around. Anyway, we go back. Here's the 14 and the 3. This is uh, number 7 and 8 on the road. <clears throat> In fact, we'll get that updated as Simon Tavener comes across the line. In the uh, number 14, Sean Jamison leads the way. So Tavener now up two more spots on that lap into 6. Lee Cheney, Scott Dornan. Uh, Harris Lines has gone back a spot. In fact, Lines has gone back a couple of spots. Um, of course, that's because we had it, saw it smoking. So that will uh, piece all that together. Adam Lowndes now. Have a look at this. Mark Sutherland, the number nine. Gives it a couple of laps to settle down, Mark Sutherland. I like the way he goes about it. Let's everyone settle down. And then he starts his assault in the McKeon's Road Garage outfit. No surprise, but Lyons has come into the pit, so that uh, that smoke that we saw certainly uh, terminal for this race anyway. He had to bring that back to the lane. Also a little bit of smoke. I saw a couple of areas he drove past the commentary box window, so hopefully he can bring it back. We see that the bonnet's slightly loose there on Sutherland's car in the, in the breeze and the toe of the car ahead lounge. That bonnet's just moving a little bit. Hopefully uh, the other bonnet pin is done up nicely and that does not come up on the windscreen. That's certainly uh, not something... You Active like bonnet. Frank uh, Williams never thought of that, did he? <laughs> no, certainly did. Mark took Mark Sutherland in the Victorian uh, State Race Series to come up with that idea. A little bit of extra cooling at certain points of the track when you're following the car behind very closely. Yeah, there it is. A little bit of flex in there. Not Frank Williams' design. Fortunately, though, appearing not to affect performance in any way, shape or form. He is right on the back of Lowndes, the battle for position number three, the final step on the podium. As they go into turn number one, Sutherland sideways, grabs the car, manages to hold it. But that does not, uh, that's not quick. That's certainly going to cost you time. Andy McSwain just in the back of this shot here in the uh, AU Falcon there, and then it's Simon Tabner, uh, uh, Leoncini, Dornan, Harris, Tonks, Capillary. And Jeffy Thomas up to P12. Jeff started out of 18, so he's one of the big moves. That's six spots in this race. But Sean Jamison is driving away with this. Great to see Daniel Johnson being able to keep a gap to, uh, to Adam Lowndes. Really good to see Daniel. He works very, very hard at this category behind the scenes to, to make sure everything's all right. And good to see him getting a result here today. Running wide there. Is that McSwain? Yes, it is. Bounces across, here comes Tab, down in he goes. It's a puncture, it's a puncture it on the number 34 machine, right front. 
So he's going to have to bring it back to the lane. What a shame. The Stay Bridgestone there. offers up the ultimate protest, doesn't it? it no, I've had enough. <laughs> you lean on me, you lean on me, you lean on me. I've had enough. Such a shame. P played uh, had a brilliant weekend, staying out of trouble, found himself in the top five in the final race of the weekend. And just with a few laps to go, halfway through the final race, the tie letting go. Real disappointing. But nevertheless, a, a good weekend overall. Simon Tabiner now t comes up another spot. He's into P5. He's trying to drag some points out of this race. Here's a great battle going on behind Lincini and Dornan. Up the inside goes Dornan. Will they make it stick? They allow room for each other. Great racing, gentlemen. Very, very good racing. Albeit that there was an overtake made there. The, uh, the 23 set it up from quite a long way back. In fact, exiting the S's coming onto the straight there. Nice driving. That's how it should be. When you've got nothing more to give, the guy has made a good move, opened the corner up, and everyone gets through. No harm, no foul. Play on and catch him on the next bend. Is that number 19? It is. It is number 19 going slowly. Adam Lowndes just taken uh, position, sorry, was in position number three, but coming to a halt, pulls over to the inside of the circuit. That was where Sandown, the full sand down layout was for a number the World of years Endurance in the mid Championship yes. track, yeah. Uh, sad old uh, demise that track led to. Uh, well, a bit of state government money misspent there. Boy, that would never happen. He was, uh, yeah, as you say, used a number of times in the uh, World Endurance Championship when they came down here and also uh, the Australian Touring Car Championship used it on a number of occasions but that's a shame bringing the car to rest there as we see a battle further down the field there Tonks in the uh, white, blue and red machine following car number 85 that's Harris so Harris and Tonks two Commodores from very different eras line astern good to see a bit of a wave there from Harris not sure what that's about as they come down to cross the line one more time Clearly Tonks with the pace advantage. Oh, Capillary behind. Smoke coming. Is there an issue there right front? Yeah. Or our right front? Certainly looks like there's uh, been a coming together there. And, um, yeah, that, that doesn't look like it's affecting performance that much. But one of the nice-looking cars here at the racetrack this weekend with damage on, we didn't want to see that, did we? We commented yesterday on the, yeah, the great livery that they've got on that vehicle. It certainly is. Phillip Island Cottages on the side of Tonks's car there, number five. A good, uh, a good sponsor to have on the side of your race car. We raced Phillip Island in the middle of May. There's another one stopped an AU Falcon. Gee, the unstoppable, the unbreakable AU. We had a couple of them break down. Not Jeffy Thomas. He ranges into the back. He's up for a top ten finish today in P10. Jeff Thomas at the back of shot there. I think that was Campbell, uh, car number 57, if I'm not mistaken, who was there uh, to rest on the approach to the final sequence of turns. Hopefully everybody can see that we're able to keep the race under green flag with just over two laps remaining. Nash Harris up a couple of spots from the starting position there in the, uh, in the older VN there. Long history, that car, the number 85, the number five right in behind of Tonks. And uh, Tonks started out of uh, 10. So these guys have pushed each other back through the field. They've both made up a couple of spots and will go side by side with two laps remaining in this race. It's the, uh, the newer model. VZ coming on through there. The VN just being shown a clean set of heels. A little bit slicker through the air you would expect with the, uh, the later model vehicle. Lower coefficient of drag. Not sure by how much, but just enough to get through, they're both allowed the same sort of power plant on board. So the number five gets through, a very tidy livery there. Very simple message on the side, Phillip Island Cottages, check it out. Harris does a great job, I think, in such an old model Commodore to keep up with the other machines, as you say, certainly not got the uh, aero performance that the other Commodores in front and behind him were health. Not the, the, not the capillary one in this particular race. Not yeah, the 25 aero. has got front and rear damage by the looks of things on the left-hand side of that car. More rear there. Jeff Thomas is now starting to range up. We'll have a look at that gap. It's 2.2 seconds last time around. Jeff Thomas could get himself out of P10 into P9 and cement himself a top 10 points finish for this round. There's the 25. This is the clean side of the car of the Alpine building 
applications. There's the rear bumper. Fairly standard saloon car, sort of knock in the rear at some point there, or even slide off and grab a bit of landscape. Sutherland now has got Tavano going through. We've missed that one. Tab's really having a red hot go here this afternoon. We know he can do it. In fact, he's an expat pom, and he used to do mud racing. So you want to see this guy in the red, in the wet, sorry, mud racing. He sat down and explained it to me at the Royal Hotel at Winton one night. Fascinating stuff. After about 35 seconds, I said, yeah, that's great, Tabs. Yeah, next subject. <laughs> you know, you get mud and you race through it. Yep. Done. Yeah, we can see he's, he's made a great recovery from the back of the field to be position number three in only eight laps. But that next position is another seven seconds up the road. So going to be hard to progress from here with just a lap to go. But nevertheless, a, a great recovery drive to say. The uh, green-eyed monster tribute livery just ahead there uh, lapping. Good to see some tribute liveries on some of these cars in the various different categories, not just this, as we see car number 23. Scott Dornan. From the top five. Ah, gee, we've had some attrition in this one. Cars parked up all over the place. Oh, nice. Well, I guess the Formula Fords will get start to get a feeling what it's like to race after Formula Fords have been on track. <laughs> Recoveries <laughs> akimbo. Very nicely parked, though, out of harm's way there behind Good the spot. black wall. So, absolutely, we can continue racing, no problem. On Last lap order has been hung out. There goes Jeffy Thomas. So, uh, he will uh, submit himself. Actually, he will come home in uh, ninth because Dornan was out. So, that will bring Jeff Thomas into P9. Great drive there. You've got to be there at the end, and that's what he's done. Here comes our dominant Sean Jamison. Will it be three from three? There's only a handful of corners between Whoa. him and a certain whitewash in, in round one. He's still giving it his all. A big bit of a tang slapper there over the crest of the hill. These kind of race drivers that operate you know, right up in the upper echelon of each of these categories, they never back off when they're out in front because you lose concentration. Just keep up it, keep up it, keep up it. Look after the look after the goods under you. You got seven second lead over Damien Johnson, uh, sorry Daniel Johnson and Simon Tabiner. Just eases it to the line. The Sedan Hotel car. There it is. The checkered flag. Flag. What a celebration for the crew from Sedan Hotel. They have taken three from three, and there is Daniel Johnson. Very very proud moment for Daniel. A ripping drive. Well done this weekend. And right behind him, another ripping drive of Simon Tabiner from rear of grid to P3. Still battling further back down the field. We saw a change of position with Tonks overtaking the number 85 machine of Harris. But Harris is not letting him out of his sights. This is the battle for position number six. And in fact, he's having a bit of a look here. This is certainly not over as they head into the final couple of corners. Green flag waving for the final sequence, but Tonks holds on. Har Harris not able to slot up the inside. Close fought battle, but in the end it is Tonks who prevails. Position number six, Harris in seventh, and the smoking capillary across the line to round out the top eight positions in that one. Cracking encounter, some attrition as you say, but uh, many drivers making it to the finish, such as Jeffrey Thomas. There we are, P9. To be first, first, first you must finish, as the famous saying goes, and that Certainly was a prime is. example in that race. Scott Dornan just getting the car back underway, so we don't have to wait for that recovery. There it is, the results. Sean Jamison, what a great race meeting, what a great way to open the account for the year. A clean sweep of three races. Daniel Johnson, got to say, super proud of the number 35. A great effort there for Daniel Really good on him to get that Ford up there amongst all of these Commodores. Simon Tabata, terrific drive for the number 14. Welcome back, Tabs. Really cool to watch you go racing and how you do it. Very, very good stuff there. Mark Sutherland put up a bit of a defence for Simon Tabata, but he got on through. Angels Lancini, Peter Tonks, Nash Harris, Cooper Kepleri. Have a look who's in the 10. Jeffy Thomas, P9, car number 22, the Ford Falcon AU. The third of the AUs across the line, so essentially third in the Ford race he has come today. So great job for Jeff Thomas. Ashley Lee there. Brett Tate, Scott Dornan, who parked it up for the last little bit of that race. Glenn Campbell, Andrew McSwain, Robert Knight, David Lyons and Anthony Bear. Can't wait to see David Lyons and Anthony Bear at round two when we head up to Winton on the 26th and 27th of March. We're going to take a quick break here on the Blendline TV YouTube channel and, of course... 
Crackside here at Sandown International. We'll be back ne next with Formula Ford. Be back in a moment. Facebook isn't the only place that you can support Australian grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. To see more real race cars, more live events and more of the racing you love, subscribe to the Blendline TV YouTube channel, sign up to our mailing list or bookmark and subscribe to our website at blendline.tv. Thanks for continuing to support grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. Bosch Motorsport provides technology for racing. Worldwide experience from all major categories of motorsport is in your race car when you use Bosch Motorsport components, ignition system, sensors, fuel delivery and high-end electronics. Bosch Motorsport brings race-proven quality and performance to your motorsport machine. Search for Bosch Motorsport Australia or find us at boschmotorsport.com.au. There's good, there's better and then there's Bosch. Bosch Motorsport when quality and performance matter. And welcome back, Trackside. This is round one of the VSRS here at the picturesque, the historic Sandown International Raceway. Crews working hard to clean up the, uh, all the calamities from the last race, the saloon cars. But this is Formula Ford, the Australian National Formula Ford Series for their third and final race of the weekend. Ten laps in total as they get their season underway. My name is Callum Brannigan, and I'm joined alongside by Dan McCarthy from Auto Action, who has given his tonsils a bit of a flogging this weekend by chatting so much next to Darren. It's no mean feat trying to talk up over that man, Darren, stepping into the hot seat here, and it's very warm indeed. No, it's... Formula Ford's making their way out onto the field now, and it's a, it's a massive field. We've got 37 cars entered this weekend, split across both the Duratec and the Kent fields. Just give some love to the corporate partners of the Formula Ford Association. Speco VHT for sponsoring the coverage this weekend. And the ongoing partners in Yokohama Tyres. They are the control tyre supplier for the Formula Fords with the durable Yokohama AO48 semi-slick all-weather tyre. Dick Johnson Racing. They supply a plum test drive in one of their Shell V-Power Ford Mustangs of Queensland Raceway to the eventual winner of the 2022 series, last year's winner from 2021, Tom Sargent, eagerly awaiting his drive later this year up at Queensland Raceway. Norwell Motorplex, Castorol Oil, Ferrodo Brakes, Freem Racewear, CHI, the authorised engine builder, and Bali Red Top Batteries. Performance batteries imported out to Australia from the UK by the team down at Ellery Motorsport Enterprises. We'll go through the grid, Dan. So from pole position, we have Jordan Sinney taking uh, the victory in the last one. Head of Matthew Hillier, those two will have a good battle in this one, I'm quite sure. Cody Donald drove well in the last one, made his way up to position number three, ahead of Xavier Kokai in car number 10. As we look to row number three, James Fizik, position number five. He dropped back a little bit compared to his starting position from uh, in race two. A uh, very famous name, Richards, third generation Clayton, out of position number six. Seven, we have Caverdon, eighth, Smith, ninth, Ferrell, uh, Jude Bargwiner, another very famous name, out of position number 10, ahead of Matthew Holmes and Joe Fawcett. Ryder Quinn, again, second generation, uh, Quinn, third generation, sorry. Uh, then we have Bailey Collins, who made his way up nicely from uh, a issue in race number one, couldn't get it off the line, but managed to make his way up to 14th, a great drive in that second race this morning. Jack Clifford in 15th, Daniel Frugus in position 16, ahead of Harrison Blanchard, Paul Ziddy, Peter Fitzgerald, Carly Fleming in position 20, Thomas Davies, Zach Lobko, Tom McClellan, 
Kobe Williams out of 24, Valentino Studi, Kyle Evans and Cameron McLeod rounding out to the field. A couple of DNFs for McLeod in the first two races. He'll be looking for a nice clean race in this 10 lap. We also have on the Kent pole position, we've got Richard Davison driving the car that earned Garth Tander his Australian Championship win in 1997 from that very race meeting as Richard touched on earlier this afternoon. Uh, his two sons, Will and Alex Davison, uh, used that car to great success to get their racing berth, circuit racing berth in Australian Formula Ford. And on the screen there you've got Richard Davison starting on pole position in that very car, the number 40. He's in 33rd overall. James Meaden pulling up alongside in the number 86. Gavin Dumas having a great weekend in that Miguel. Mark Sampson starting at a 37th overall alongside Jason McGrath in the 39 car and Philip Marinon in the historic Galloway car starting at the back of the field. Phil is also one of the category administrators for the Formula Ford Association. So I really like this camera view. This camera view looking straight down the barrel at the starting line for the Formula Ford field. 37 cars starting this race. You can see the heat haze is absolutely baking out there at the moment. And we've got a bit of a disparity between the two cars on the start line as well. So you can't actually see from that camera angle. But Jordan Sinney's almost a quarter of a car length uh, further ahead uh, than the car of Matthew Hillier alongside in the number four, Miguel. But the revs are rising. They'll be hard against the 7,000 RPM rev cut. And they are underway. Jordan Sinney getting a great start initially. He will have the slight advantage as they rush down towards turn one side by side. James Meaden, meanwhile, he's also made a fantastic start a little bit further back. He's drawing alongside Richard Davison. Snaking left and right, under brakes in the turn one. Cody Donald up the inside of Xavier Kokai, runs Xavier to the outside uh, outside apron on driver's right. Kai Cavan now, now having a look around the outside. He's got Winston Smith for company as well in the Holland. Glenn McGale. Yeah, really Super costly. tight going through turn four, but nice and clean. Fantastic start from the Formula 4 cohort. Yeah, really costly that for Coco running out wide. Lost three positions there and on the exit of turn number one. So he's down the field as we see a move for the lead. Sinny going defensive. Number four, Hillier around the outside. And further back, we see two, two line of stern. Oh, here we are. He got the lead. There we go. Made the move and made it stick, did Hillier. Number 93, that is Fizik, looking up the inside. Jude Barguana up the inside of Jared Farrell. So Farrell's very recently stepped up to Formula Ford competition. That is a brand new Spectrum chassis that he is currently driving. On screen at the moment, it's Jimmy Fizik all over the back of Clay Richards in the number 14 Spectrum. He's doing a fantastic job this weekend. He's steadily been making his way through the field as the weekend has unfolded. But nose to tail stuff side by side. They're getting the dust from the unused part of the track being thrown up into the air and it's Jordan City who's already made his way into the lead before turn one and he's got Hillier covered on the exit so he'll hold on to the lead going into the turns three and four complex and then around turn four and up the back, uh, the long back straight which is close to a kilometre in length and it looked like Richards just grabbing a bit of a break there as well Super clean stuff from the Formula Ford field as well. We've also got Cameron McLeod and Valentino Astuti making their way back through the field after their calamities in the last race as well. But Matthew Hillier pulls out of the slipstream once again. They're drawing side by side coming up over the hill into turn six. It's a super fast sweeping left-hander. And again, a very comfortable move around the outside. Jordan City tucking back in behind. And discretion is the better part of Valor. He sticks to his gearbox. How good is the start of this race? Only a lap and a half in, and we've already seen three changes for position up the front of the field. Looking just a little bit further back, Clay Richards up to position number four. He's also made a strong start, and somebody off at Dandenong Road. Can't see with all the dust at this point. It is. He's had a shocking weekend, hasn't he? He'll be ruining this weekend so far in the Gulf Western Oils spectrum. That looks like turn nine down at Dandenong. I dare say there's a dust cloud down there at the moment as well as we look down towards that part of the circuit. It's still Matthew Hillier who leads the race in the number four. Miguel, he's doing a fantastic job ahead of Sinny. Cody Donald still holding down third position. Clayton Richards up in the fourth position as well. He claimed his maiden victory in the Formula Ford, uh, Formula Ford class in round three of the VSRS last year at Phillip Island in sodden wet conditions. And that was a very popular victory. Replay on our screen now of what poor Jim Bargwiner out and he had the whole thing. It looks like he's got a maybe a failure. It looks like maybe one of the, the front left upright might have failed 
on that spectrum and it speared him into the kitty lit up and we've got a safety car out for the third time this weekend. Yeah, safety car necessary. It's very easy to end up down in the gravel trap at Dandenong Road, so absolutely the right decision there from race control. Sinny was right on the back of Hillier again and would have been looking to line up a move on the back straight, but nevertheless, safety car conditions. So it is Hillier that leads. He'll be trying to stop the clean sweep from Sinny, who has won the first two races this weekend. Donald in third ahead of Clay Richards, Physic and Kokai, the top six. First lap of the race at this point in time is actually Holmes, position number nine, won 16.9 seconds. As we see the field begin to catch up to the safety car further back, there's quite a disparity in speed, as we say, the two different classes in Formula Ford this weekend. So. Yep. And they devised a rather a pragmatic approach for these safety car periods in the fact that if there were Kent cars mixed in with the Duratec uh, class, they, the, the Kent cars would move to the left or the right, allow all the Duratec cars back through, and then the Kent cars would start or during a safety car restart. Uh, the slower Kent cars would, in theory, be out of the way of the Juratec cars. So it's been a lot of uh, thought that has gone into this massive field this weekend. 37 cars, as we touched on earlier. It's just an unbelievable turnout. And it's an unbelievable turnout uh, for round one of the BSRS on a much broader spectrum. You've got 285 entries across 12 different categories. And uh, it's great to see that the competitors have definitely voted with their feet. And it's good to see so many out this weekend. And it's great to see so many Kent cars, as we can see on the screen at the moment. Phil Marinon's getting some crucial practice in before the Phillip Island Classic coming up later on this year. It's coming up on the 11th and 12th of March, and they've got 58 entries. An oversubscribed grid for the Classic Formula Ford meeting there as well. So very much looking forward to seeing that many uh, Classic Formula Fords uh, racing around Phillip Island. It's always a, uh, a popular class. You've got people like Tim Blanchard, you've got Jonathan Miles, you've also got Richard Davison who steps back into the Van Diemen RF89. That car is beautifully presented and we love the super close racing uh, that Formula Ford provides down at the Islands Classic. Yeah, always. Also, I'll just, sorry, I'll, I'll let you start in a second, sorry. Uh, 17 Spectrums uh, competing uh, here in the Formula Fords, but we've also got, uh, if you add the amount of Sabres you've got competing in Formula V, you've actually got 10% of the total entries for the VSRS across the board. Those cars have been constructed by Michael Ball and, and the team down at Ball and Racing Developments in Brayside. So it's no mean feat to have around 10% of the total race cars at a race meeting made by one man in Brayside. Big thanks to our officials and volunteers here this weekend. They've done a magnificent job as always. I mean, coming out of the you know, pandemic, or hopefully we are this year, coming out of the pandemic, um, we can get five Victorian State Circuit Racing Championship rounds in. We got two away in 2020. We got three away last year, but we really would like to get all five done and in the books this year. Be really good. And I think that's contributed, hasn't it, to the, the big fields this weekend. Everybody just wants to get back out there, get racing, and uh, hit the track once more. So it's also worth pointing out qualifying for the two classes, the Juratec class and the Kent class. Uh, enjoyed split qualifying sessions on Saturday morning and that really enabled um, you know, the younger drivers, the hard chargers in the Juratec class to go out and absolutely uh, set the timing screens alight without having to worry about slower traffic or approaching slower traffic because it is a little bit more mixed up uh, during a qualifying session. So uh, the FFA were able to organise a split qualifying scenario for the two classes, which was fantastic. What that meant was that we actually had two effective pole position winners and Freem, who are the uh, raceware suppliers of the Formula Ford Association uh, admin team on the ground, they actually provided $250 in gold hard cash to uh, either to both of those winners, which was Jordan Sinney and Richard Davison. And we've got on our screen uh, just a good shot of the broken front left suspension on the Gulf Western Oils number 79 Spectrum, driven by Jude Barglana. He's had a bit of a shocking weekend, by his, probably by his own standards. I'd like to know with that one, was that caused by contact or was that just a failure? Because that's a, a really odd one to see just going down into the braking zone of Dandenong on the road. I'd, have, I'd expect that contact's been made at some point, whether or not it was down the road into Dandenong or, or whether it was a bit earlier on in the lap. But yeah, very, very strange failure that one on a former Ford machine. As we see the cars continue under safety car, we can see the recovery truck from our commentary boxes just arrived at Dandenong. Car is being 
pulled onto that as we speak. So hopefully we'll be able to get back underway in a couple of laps and get three or four green laps in the book. There's also a prize on offer uh, from CHI Racing, which is the authorised Formula Ford engine builder for the Duratec engines, which is a 1.6 litre Ford Fiesta engine plucked straight out of a, an older model Formula Ford, but uh, part of the Duratec class of engines, hence the name. Uh, a very durable, uh, low-stressed engine. You can sometimes get, uh, or you can expect to get somewhere in the region between 10 to 15,000 k's of competition in some cases, which is uh, unbelievable for race engines, an incredibly resilient unit. But uh, CHI, the authorised engine build-up, they provide $250 cash prize for the hard charger of the meeting as well, which it has, it has it a guess will be awarded to the driver who makes up the most positions uh, over possibly race, but probably more likely the weekend. So it's great to see so many incentives on offer for these drivers. And as we touched on earlier, Dick Johnson Racing offering a drive in a Shell V-Power Ford Mustang is pretty cool. That is an amazing prize on offer, of which Tom Sargent will be enjoying that later on this year. Second place in the series at the end of the year will be awarded a training day at the Norwell Motorplex, the facility run up in on the sunny Gold Coast by Paul Morris, Formula Ford alumni. And the third place getter will receive a free racewear pack as well. Um, so there's prizes, uh, prizes, prizes, prizes on the board uh, on offer for all of the Formula 4 competitors. And we've got another lap of safety car that I can see just underneath the Penrite Bridge. It looks remarkably like a tow truck with a Spectrum on the back of it making its way off the circuit. So race control will probably be putting out a message any time now to let us know that we'll be back under green conditions very shortly. It's also good to see a healthy turnout of fans uh, at the track this week, Kent. You can actually see where the Red Hill has been opened up. So if you're watching this on the screen and you think, uh, I'd like to smell some of the fumes as well, why not make your way down to the circuit? Make a quick dash down to the Sandown International Raceway. Go to vsrs.com.au for more information on how to purchase tickets, as well as find out more information about our future rounds coming up soon. Yeah, it's good to see Sandown used as a racetrack again, not just a COVID tested, uh, contested yes. site and vaccine site, which it has been for the last few months. I've had my COVID vaccines here the last couple of times late last year, so yeah, looking forward to seeing more racing here in months, weeks and months to come. And it's a historic uh, track for Formula Ford as well because the very first Formula Ford race in Australia took place here at Sandown in 1969. That race was won by Richard Knight in an Elfin 600. That was back when they mandated an Australian built and developed chassis for competition uh, in Formula Ford. I will see as the, as the rules and regulations evolved over the decades, we've seen more international chassis being introduced to this domestic market to great success as well. And on the screen there, you can also see more information about the Victorian State Race Series using your favourite or preferred internet browsing software. Navigate to vsrs.com.au. I was going to say, uh, Formula Ford this weekend, it's not just a state series, though. It's a national round of the championship. So these names that you see, Ilya, Sinny, Donald, Richards, Physic, these names will be around for many years to come, whether that be in supercars or maybe following the Porsche route and going overseas and trying to make a living internationally. These are the names that you will get used to seeing on your screens for many years to come. The likes of Chas Moster, Anton Di Pasquale, Cam Waters, Nick Perkett, even the likes a few years earlier than that, Craig Lowndes, Stephen Richards, they've all come through this magnificent open wheel category. And we are looking for a green flag. Here are the cars coming into the final sequence of turns. It's Hillier that will lead us away from Cine. As we say, Cine looking to go for the clean sweep, three races out of three, but he's got to get past car number four in the final four laps. He's holding station, not going too early. Doesn't want to give Sinny the toe into turn one. A great restart. And he's pulled a slight bit of a margin. Quite close further back. That's Physic looking at the inside of Richards, but not able to do so. As we go into turn number one, Hillier forced to the defensive. Sinny will try and swing it around the outside. Clay Richards defending from Xavier Kokai as well, and Cavanon vying onto the back of that battle. Jimmy Physic. Having a look around the outside of Cavadon as they come into turn three. 
Sinny is ahead of Hillier, as you touched on before. So a great restart there. He tried a repeat of what Sinny was successfully able to pull off in the race previous where He left it to the last possible moment to minimise that slipstream effect on the restart because you're just so vulnerable in these cars along the main straights. Or sorry, along the, the long straights, I should say at Sandown, close to a kilometre length each way. Cody Donald also making his way up onto the back of the Dirty Diggers spectrum as well. Matthew Hillier doing a fantastic job defending over the kerb. Looks like we've got Ryder Quinn, who's uh, had a little bit of a shortcut there as well in the local legends, the number 95, Miguel. Beautifully presented day glow yellow car. Joey Fawcett oh, hanging on to the back of him as well. Jordan Sinney back up the inside. They're side by side going through turn 12, coming up to the turn 13 kink. Jordan Sinney is vulnerable. Cody Donald capitalises and he's in the toe as they go down towards turn one. Now we've got Clay Richards as well vying into this battle. Xavier Kokai is also in the toe for this one. Kai Cavanaugh's also vying into this battle. They're almost three wide going into turn one. Cody Donald takes the lead away. <laughs> Cody Donald has made his way into the lead ahead of Matthew Hillier. Fantastic move there. Jordan Sinney sideways on the apron on the exit of turn one. These cars don't have a lot of ride height. They're only 40 mils off the ground, so these high curves at Sandown International Raceway do not, uh, they're not conducive to uh, for Formula Ford's running over them quite a lot. You've also got uh, Winston Smith backing onto the back of, uh, it looks like Jimmy Physics. There's a, Jimmy Physics, there's a lot going on at the moment, Dan. How good's this? I mean, Sydney, this time last lap, 3.1 k's ago, was in the lead. Now he's in position five, as we see up the front once again. A battle, Donald defending. Sinny, I think, just took position four. No, not quite. Had a very good look there, though. So, Donald just about holds on. This is great stuff up and down the field. We see the Studi there up the inside of the orange machine car. Jack Clifford. 61. Jack Clifford, that's his debut weekend in the Juratech car. It's a beautifully presented orange and white car, and he's a very smart, very polite young man taking his motorsport very seriously, the high school student based out of the Melbourne Eastern Suburbs, doing a fantastic job. Cody Donald coming under attack once again from Matthew Hillier across the start-finish line. Barely a towel's width between the two. Under breaks going into turn one. Donald was the fastest man of the race on that last lap as well. But Clay Richards is all over the back of Donald now. Clay Richards has turned up the dial to 11 in this final race of the weekend. He's found more and more pace as the three races have unfolded. Confirmation on their screen as well, the Holland Glen car of Winston Smith, prepared by the Sonic Motor Racing Services team. Based out of, uh, oh, we've got a spinner as well on the exit of turn four as well, so we didn't quite make out who that was, uh, but a great battle. Oh, that's Harry Blanchard. Can you get it turned around? Oh, as we look here to the front of the field, Donald looking back to retake the lead up the inside. Not quite enough room there. He'll have another look into Dandenong Road, but our leader, Hillier, defends that one. Sinny finds himself back up into position number three. In half a lap, he's gone from fifth back up to third. That was incredibly close between Sinny and Donald. You could see that the nose cone was actually sort of inside the boundaries of the, of the Donald car ahead of him. So Sinny's making a late comeback here to get past Richards. Richards is still in this battle, though. Hillier still leads the way. Last lap forward being shown to the drivers as well. So they've got 3.14 kilometres left to negotiate and to battle it out. And it's incredibly close between Donald and Hillier. Donald ahead once again. So he takes the lead. There's a spin oh, of throw the back, number 12. What a shame, he was right in the leading battle for most of the weekend, but that's a really costly last lap of the race. Here we go, this is not over. Half a lap still to go, any one of these top four can lead. They're so can win. So we've got Hillier, Donald, Sinian, Richards all in this group. Here we go, Donald goes defensive. we got number four. Hillier to the outside, Sinny just sitting in behind in that yellow machine, and Clay Richards is there to pick up the pieces. Oh, that's incredibly close there, side by side, going through turn six, seven, eight, deep under brakes going into turn nine, and Danny Nong, uh, Donald's got him covered, the number 60 car still holds the lead with just three corners left of the Sandown International Raceway, left to negotiate, Cody Donald holding on to the lead, Jordan Sinney sneaking up in the P2 as well, Hillier around the outside, left out to dry. We've got Clay Richards through into third position. Hillier slightly compromised on exit as well, but it's Cody Donald who will take victory, holding up the number one to the chequered flag as he takes out race three of the Formula Fords here at round one of the VSRS at Sandown Raceway. Jordan Sinney, two first place finishes and a second 
Clay Richards onto the podium in the Spectrum as well, doing a fantastic job. Less than three seconds separating the top eight. Incredibly close action there as well. Hillier dropping down in the fourth position. Xavier Kokai finishing in fifth position. Wow. Yeah, Hillier, just a costly mistake. Exiting Dandenong Road, just got it a little bit sideways and lost two positions in the final couple of corners. Just going to see a replay here of Turn 1 on the final lap, that overtaking manoeuvre and the spin further behind. So there we are, number 12 all by himself, spinning out of contention. A real shame there, but fortunately crossing the line with no damage. Great way to finish off the Formula Ford weekend. We'll just run through the results once again. So Cody Donald taking a fantastic Formula Ford victory by three-tenths of a second from Jordan Sinney. Fortunately for Sinney, he takes the round honours. Clayton Richards in position number three. Hillier position four. Kokai, Physic, Smith, Holmes, Ferrell and Quinn. Look at that. Ten drivers within 4.2 seconds. That's some close, fantastic quality action in Formula Ford action all the way through the field. Daniel Frug is finishing 21st overall ahead of Peter Fitzgerald, the 55-year-old just uh, from just outside of Geelong, a wonderful part of the world. And uh, it's great to see uh, Fitzgerald still out there and competing, having started in Formula Ford all the way back in 1991 when it was known as the Driver to Europe Series and he uh, competed in it all the way through till 1997. Uh, and then more recently made a return to Formula Ford competition. But as you can see, it really does cater uh, for all sorts of drivers uh, in Australia. So that about does it for Formula Ford action here at round one of the VSRS at Sandown International Raceway. This, was, this has been round one of the Australian National Formula Ford series, and we have to thank our partners, Yokohama Tyres, Dick Johnson Racing, Norwell Motorplex, Castrol Oil, Ferrodo, Freem Racewear, CHI Racing, and Varley Red Top Batteries. I've been Callum Brannigan, and it's a big thank you to Dan McCarthy. Cheers. Facebook isn't the only place that you can support Australian grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. To see more real race cars, more live events, and more of the racing you love, subscribe to the Blendline TV YouTube channel, sign up to our mailing list, or bookmark and subscribe to our website at blendline.tv. Thanks for continuing to support grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. Bosch Motorsport provides technology for racing. Worldwide experience from all major categories of motorsport is in your race car when you use Bosch Motorsport components. Ignition system, sensors, fuel delivery and high-end electronics. Bosch Motorsport brings race-proven quality and performance to your motorsport machine. Search for Bosch Motorsport Australia or find us at boschmotorsport.com.au. There's good, there's better and then there's Bosch. Bosch Motorsport when quality and performance matter. Cars on track now for uh, one of our combined fields and it's certainly been an entertaining weekend from both of these categories and how they end up combining eventually on track throughout this uh, this weekend. Of course, I know the historic touring cars and BMW E30s. Let's have a quick look at the historic touring cars grid and how they will line up for their final 10 lapper for the day. Darren Collins off P1 in his Camaro Trev Talbot. Yellow Camaro off P2 in the number 76. Andrew Lane in one of the very rapid Mustangs around town. Nathan Gordon in there as well. Darren Jones in the number 40. Peter Mulleman. David Crabtree in the Capri. Robert Van Stockram in 8 in the BMW 2002. Anthony Pedrick in the EH Holden. Simon Browning. Michael Holloway made up a couple of uh, rows in the last race in the uh, Mini Cooper. 
Then we have Bill Pierman, Paul Dobson, Peter George, Dominic Leo, and Quinton Ferry. Now, Quinton Ferry didn't join us in the last race in his EH, and I'm pretty sure it wasn't going to be joining us in this one. But certainly the Jag joins in there, Dominic Leo there. And we look at the E30 field. Of course, Donovan on Hagen right alongside me with the E30. Thank you, Darren. We've got uh, Alex Jory coming off from pole position in number 22 with Brian Burke sitting next to him in number 27. Jeff Bowles and Simon Leach make up the second row of the grid with, with uh, Rory Plant and Simon Schiff right behind them. Dean Coots and Ryan Carter, one of our debutants, uh, on row four with Jessica Bell, uh, whose birthday it was yesterday, uh, and Alex, uh, sorry, Ashley Rogers beside her, Stuart Clark in number 83, and Graham Bell in number 90, uh, Tristan and Rod, Marsh, uh, Rod Martin, Daryl O'Neill and Simon Shift and Jesse Bryant making up the uh, the grid for us. Lights on for the historic touring cars. Trevor Talbot, Darren Collins just slightly moving there at the line. It'll be the 45 that gets away nicely with Nathan Gordon in the blue Monaro and Andrew Lane looks up the inside in his Mustang. But it's a drag race and it's Camaro's. It's the General's product out in front exactly side by side. Andrew Lane looks up to the inside now as Trevor Talbot goes for the brakes very early. Nathan Gordon just logs in behind Trevor Talbot there. So great start by Darren Collins. He does it again. Unfortunately, earlier on today, there was a safety car that brought the field right back to him. But Darren Collins in the number 97, driving brilliantly. He always has, actually. It's great to watch Darren race. I love watching the way he goes about it, particularly in this... Camaro, he does a ripping job. The BMWs are away. And here, Alex has got another good start. He's had some good starts this weekend. Uh, Brian Burke coming along right beside him. Looks like Simon might be able to get into set into third position there off. No, he hasn't actually. He's dropped behind Jeff now. So uh, maybe he's missed a gear because Rory's up alongside him as well. Uh, here we're coming to turn one with uh, Brian, with Jeff on the outside of him. Uh, Brian a little bit later on the brakes there. Maintains his second position. With uh, Simon Leach going a little bit wide, as a couple of them do around one on a regular basis. Good to see all clean off the start there, all getting through. There goes Leach in the uh, tribute livery car. We did have a little bit of contact in race two with uh, with Rod Martin uh, looping around down at Dandenong Road and a little bit of contact between uh, Paul Schiff and Dean Coots. I think Rory Plants made up a couple of spots off the start there as well in his car. He did indeed. That's a strong motor in that in a straight line and uh, Rory's... Coming along with the only four-door in the grid. But nothing like straight-line handling. Absolutely. <laughs> if you can get it, it's good to have. It is. Trevor Talbot now in the historics, historic touring cars. Andrew Lane just locking up a break, trying to avoid contact there. What that does is brings Nathan Gordon right back into it for Andrew Lane. It looks like Darren Collins is going to run away and hide with this one. But Trevor Talbot never... Never, ever say a die to Trevor Talbot. Andrew Lane in this shiny, gloss black, chrome bumper Mustang. Very well presented car, as is Nathan Gordon, right behind him in the HQ. Just loses a little bit where the, the pony car gets away up the hill. Certainly the two Camaros are very, very quick up the hill here at Sandown. The drag strips really suiting the, the, uh, the bent eights in historic touring of all forms and brands and makes. We've got Chev, Ford, Holden, back to another Ford, and it's the uh, the black, all black menacing Mustang out there in fifth place. Well, if you're going to have horsepower in a car, it's probably a Mustang's the one to have it in, right? Yeah, I guess there's uh, a bit of column B, a bit of column, <laughs> column A, isn't there? Really, it depends where you uh, where you land. Here we go with uh, Rory's uh, hassling the back of Jeff there, going through four, I believe there is. Simon uh, Simon Schiff is making up some ground after uh, having to pull off two drivers left on the back straight there in race two he um the throttle cable popped off the back of his accelerator pedal so uh, no more straight line handling for that car <laughs> that's like asking someone no uh, do, do you do you prefer the bmw or do you do you prefer the three point star it's the same <laughs> domestic battle but it's the european one versus the aussie one isn't it very very true so he's uh, he's up behind dean coots there uh, going through the s's at the at the end of the back straight there it'll be interesting to see if he tries to put it up the inside no he doesn't Maintains his line and through goes Dean and Simon, followed by Ryan. I think that is in the number 19. Good return for Simon in the 56. Started off uh, rear and uh, is doing good drive to be uh, back up the field where he is now. 58 there, Dean Coots, half field, so he's done a ripping job in the 56. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh Ryan, a little the wiggle 19. there. Lost the rear in, uh, in that last corner. Wow. 
Now here we go. We'll, let, we'll see if we can uh, see if there's any drafting that is effective down the front straight. The very long front straight here at Sandown. A little bit of a wait for uh, for white round for uh, corner two to come one to come up. Sorry. Rory Plant really under fire now. That's uh, not what he wants to see. He wants to really get away with uh, Leach, yeah, uh, Leach. Sorry. Yep. I think he's. Uh, I think um, something happened on the, off the start there for Simon. I'm not sure what that exactly, but uh, there's a good gaggle there with uh, Jeff Bowles and Rory Plant, followed by Simon Leach, Paul Schiff, and I can't quite make out who that is at the end of that five car. Oh, oh no. there's someone in the wall there. Who is that? Is that 19? That oh, is 19. That's, that's Ryan. That is Ryan. Um, that is a solid hit. The front of that car is not pointing in the direction it's supposed to. Yeah, that's going to bring out, I would suggest, yeah. a safety car, a fully deflated right front tyre. I think that might nice even... That's hit the yeah, K. It might, it might even be a flat spot. toe, that one, I think. So Not what we wanted to see. No. So the field continues on around as race control will be getting messages from their uh, officials on the ground there as to how the what the plan will look like. Certainly covered locally by yellows there, which can be a bit of a dive up the inside there. So yeah. we'll nullify one of the uh, the passing points around Sandown, which uh, there are many, like some tracks. This track offers many passing opportunities. Just about every corner is a dive up under brakes or uh, a get out of out of jail card exiting the corner. It looks like Simon's going to get up the inside of Dean here before they get to the yellow flag zone. So he might make up a position just in time wait and see what what uh, arrives at turn one just seeing the jags in the, the middle tail field of the uh, historic touring cars of Indiana jag i think simon uh, simon has taken advantage of that to get past rory and jeff so well done now being caught up they'll be in the yellow flag zone now in behind the mini so it'll be follow my leader until uh, they get out of that i, I think they're going to have to flat toe that car it looks rather crooked the uh, jag 3.4 mark one driven by philip pierman Doing a nice job too. Three litre, I guess fairly similar in capacity to the BMWs that are now uh, dragging around it. Maybe uh, a little bit heavier, in maybe. <laughs> yes, uh, 2.5 in the BMWs, three litre in the Jag there. A little bit more weight probably in the Jag than us. Just uh, I'll tell you what, with Bob Chain at the wheel, they really were a weapon of choice. Here comes the safety car now. So as we suspected, that car's not going to be left there for another lap at all. No. And we will get it rescued. We're all but half race distance so uh, it will bring nullify the field to a uh, safety speed let's hope they can tow it rather than having to get yeah, the flat bit out there because they can get it okay agreed so uh, we're not going to see that one there but uh, gee our camera down at turn four has been showed us some great shots here this weekend we have not missed out on any of the action so well done to the production crew for putting that together at uh, Blendline TV. We'll see what we can do uh, maybe later on. All of our, all of the cars in the E30 class are by regulation required to have in-car cameras, so hopefully if there's, uh, if there's someone behind him or maybe with a rear-facing camera, we can get something at a later stage and put that up for people okay, to see. Okay, the safety car's picking up the front of the E30 field, not the historic touring car field, so... We must be leading. Well, they've, they've <laughs> done well. They've got right through around on... Uh, Six. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of tire warming there. I'm not sure that's necessary in this heat, but uh, it keeps you awake in the. Uh, it's in more the about car. keeping your it hands is, and yep. feet busy, isn't yep. it? Yep. Than it is about getting about keeping the tire warm. That's On and off the brake, flexing the sidewall is what keeps the uh, the tires warm. But, Keep the grey uh, matter alive, awake. We've got a very alive production crew here today. They're working very hard. Yeah, the safety car has stopped, so will he pick up? No, he's missed the uh, leader in Darren Collins, so the safety car has remained still there, so they'll go around again. There's our actual race leader right there, front and centre and screen, the number 97. So again, in this race, he's got away, had himself a good 10-second lead. And safety then, car has come out and brought it back. Well, the thing now is that there is going to be actually two E30s between him Stuff. That's right, and they, they don't allow those lapped cars through, unlike some, uh, well, we some other so. categories in the world. So. <laughs> well. Oh, poor old Michael Massey. Sending our love to you, mate. Yes, absolutely. Hard done by, I think, absolutely. a little bit. Absolutely, yeah. If there's ever been a void between uh, motorsport in Australia and the rest of the world, that was it. We are at it, I'm yes. out to dry. Absolutely. So, 
cars coming around under safety car. We'll see the E30s and the historic touring cars at each of our rounds of the state series. BMW E30s choosing to do the entire series this year, which is great. We get to get to see the story as it unfolds right over the, the whole season. And we'll be at Winton on March 26 and 27, Phillip Island on May 14 and 15. Well and truly worth getting to all of these rounds. When you look at 285 cars entered here today, um, Winton will be equally as good. Phillip Island might even get a few more. It's, you know, it's, um, we, we, we. It is arguably the best track in Australia, but I'm not sure what the argument is. Um, I will say permanent facility, but because Bathurst isn't a permanent That's true, yes. facility. But, it's a special uh, place, that one. It, it is it's, a special it's, place. It's elevated yes. above, but you're right. Uh, it, Phillip Island is probably, of the permanent permanent uh, uh, facilities, it, it is the one most people I'll, want I'll to go I'll go so to. far as to say, as far as permanent facilities go internationally, Phillip Island is in that Certainly top five. Certainly up there, absolutely, sure. yeah. A brilliant circuit. Our four, we owe it, our forefathers a debt of gratitude for pouring that uh, layout, don't we? Well maintained, always in really good condition when we get out there, and regardless of whether it's rain, hail, often, <laughs> or shine, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, <laughs> that's right, it's a fantastic place to go hey, We're supposed to be selling summer. tickets to the well, round we in are, May. So that's right. It's always it's, beautiful in May. It, it is. It Autumn absolutely. is lovely yep. at Phillip Island. Yep. It's always those, those cool, crisp days with the blue skies. Gets a bit chilly, sort of around about 10 past 5 when everyone's leaving the track. A little bit of love for Winton too. It's a great little technical track. It's it's, it's the opposite of, of, of Phillip Island to a certain extent. There's, there's a, you've got a lot more left and right close together, but it's a real technical track and it's a challenge. And, it's and an amazing it asset is for that great. part of Victoria. Absolutely. There's yeah. hardly a day all year round where it's not being used for something. Yep. And uh, the, 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 the crew up there do a tremendous job to present the circuit very well. They chip away at, at improvements here and there, and that, that link, or that, that, I guess, relining of the track between three and four has been fantastic. It's, it's, certainly it's stopped a lot character. of comings together. Yep. It's allowed the cars to flow faster and even opened up some moves, probably two or three metres, 400 metres further down the track if you get a good flow out of there, you can get some good drive and pass uh, someone. Yeah, I mean, even into the sweeper now, yeah, is, has, yeah. Has, all, has become an almost overtaking if you can get that nose up the inside and, and we... Okay, so we've gone red flag and that will bring the cars back. I'm not sure whether they're going to bring them into pit lane or onto the grid, I would suggest they're coming into pit lane. That's probably going to be the end of it for us. I think so. Yeah, I'm not sure what time we've got, but I don't think they'll be restarting that race at all, unfortunately. That's, yeah, uh, they're being uh, angled to go to uh, the back of the paddock. So uh, that is really unfortunate that the historic touring cars and BMW E30s have finished in that manner. There's a very big thank you to uh, all of the support for the, uh, the E30s. Of course, traction tyres providing the great Yokohamas, the durable race rubber that uh, not only the E30s run on, Formula Ford. Improved production. Improved production and 944. That's right, yep. A great tyre uh, supplied by uh, a really great uh, crew out there at Traction Tyres who support us. Uh, and have done for many years. Um, uh, BMW Drivers Club of Melbourne have been on board for a few years now, and uh, we have a couple of members uh, in, their, in our amongst makes in amongst us out there. So it definitely makes sense. Absolutely, it? yeah. Um, we've got budget uh, rent a car on board this year as well, and uh... so Minimai Media and Production also there as we uh, take a break here and thank Don Donovan Mullenhagen very much and hopefully see you at Winton Donovan and uh, we'll throw it down to Callum Brannigan. Thank you very much. Welcome back. It's an absolute flurry of activity down here at a sunny Sandown International Raceway and I'm joined alongside by David Ratcliffe who's a competitor in the Vic V8 category which is joining alongside the uh, sports sedans this weekend. Welcome David. Tell us a little bit about your car. Well it's a 99 VT Commodore running an LS2 uh, engine. Um, I've owned the car for about four years now, been in the category for four years. Um, I was a sprinter prior to that and just a general car enthusiast. So what brought you to car racing? And like, I always like hearing stories about how race cars become race cars. Was it initially a road car or anything like uh, that? This one wasn't, but my previous car was. Um, I've got an SLR 5000 which I was doing track days in and just decided that that car was probably a little bit valuable now to bring out on the track. So then uh, bought a uh, dedicated race car. Well, the VT will no doubt be a future classic at some point. So what about Vic V8s makes it unique? What separates it from the other categories in the VSRS? I, th I think it's just the guys that we race with. They're just a really good bunch of guys. Um, there's, there's no animosity. There's no, you know, what you get in other classes. So, yeah, we just, just great bunch of guys to race with. 
Uh, how, what's a form guide for your season so far? How do you measure your performance? Oh, look, I think um, I think I'll just end up third all the way through the year. Um, the cars that are in front of me are quicker, and the cars that are behind me are slower. So I think I've already found my place for the year. <laughs> we say a big thank you to David for joining us down here in the hot pit garages. Keep your eyes peeled for the sports events coming up later on this afternoon. Facebook isn't the only place that you can support Australian grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. To see more real race cars, more live events and more of the racing you love, subscribe to the Blendline TV YouTube channel, sign up to our mailing list or bookmark and subscribe to our website at blendline.tv. Thanks for continuing to support grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. Bosch Motorsport provides technology for racing. Worldwide experience from all major categories of motorsport is in your race car when you use Bosch Motorsport components, ignition system, sensors, fuel delivery and high-end electronics. Bosch Motorsport brings race-proven quality and performance to your motorsport machine. Search for Bosch Motorsport Australia or find us at boschmotorsport.com.au. There's good, there's better and then there's Bosch. Bosch Motorsport when quality and performance matter. Welcome back. We have got uh, Excels on track talking about grassroots. You want to get started. This is the category to get started in. It's probably going to keep you at grassroots if you're looking to travel on through. And we've seen a number of drivers do that now. Um, certainly this is a, a place to do it, but there's certainly plenty of drivers finding a happy home, spending uh, as little money as they possibly can and getting laps. Although uh, Steve DeVries right alongside me just before we come on, we were just making mention not a hell of a lot of laps here today. We've had a lot of safety cars and races called and et cetera, et cetera. So uh, not right now, not right here this weekend is at the uh, category you're going to get lots of laps in, but uh, certainly the action, the training ground, and uh, that's where you can, you know, you can really cut your teeth. And whether you want to invest more into it or try and bring on some sponsors so you can take them and make the next step through in your, in your racing career, or find a happy home to spend the next 20 years of doing laps around racetracks. I'm Darren Smith, Steve DeVries right alongside me. Steve, you called the last race, the last round at Phillip Island with the XLs. I did, and it's gone from a little bit of a really, really good event down there a couple of weeks ago to a little bit of a different type of feel this time around, it's unfortunately. Scrappy, it's a it? little bit scrappy, there's been Look, there's been a little bit of contact between some of them uh, this yeah. weekend. Some of it's been fairly minor. There's unfortunately been a two, or both races rather, have unfortunately fallen under the control of either the red flag or a safety car at some point or another in time. And there's hope, I think, and fingers crossed, I think, amongst a lot of people in the field that we're going to get some clean running to, uh, to close out the third and final race of the XLs for the weekend. Hugo Simpson on pole with Ryan Phillips, Aaron Hindle, Harry Tompkins, David Musgrave, Dale Carpenter, Tex Star McCoy, Will Longmore, James Lodge, Toby Waghorn rounds out the top ten, Ethan Grigg Galt will come through, Antonio Meloso, Brad Verecker will push hard, Billy Hamilton, Bradley James, William Searle, Larry Merrifield, Glenn McKenzie, Connor McLeod, Kerry Bright, back to Scott Appledore, Kai Allen, Mason Kelly out of 23, William Sala, then it's a Mick Sinclair, Lachlan Harvey, Devin McNichols, Dallas Harvey, and we are away. Everyone driving away like they're trying to get out of the work car park at uh, <laughs> 5 o'clock on a Friday afternoon. It's like the bar's open at the end of the street, and we're all very, very thirsty. As we get down there, it's the 117, our pole sitter leading the way. Where is the 777? Buried down there in 11th is Ethan Grigg Gold. Here he comes. Here he comes, there in the Logic Car entry, right there. Through the screen he goes. Neat and tidy. Our top 10 gets through turn one. What about the top 20? They're through. 
And let's just count the next couple of corners oh. into the side of each other. The triple one into the 34 and into the Musgrave. barriers goes the 34. Dave Musgrave started oh, out no. of 11th. Another one, a big come in there. And we managed to keep everyone off the walls, but it's all banking up like the M1. On about, a Friday afternoon. Yeah, on a Friday afternoon when you just want to get to Phillip Island. That's it. Yeah, a little bit of ugly contact there. Dale Carpenter involved in both occasions. He was also involved in a scrap at that uh, last corner turn four in the second race this morning. So he's been in a little bit of the wars. Where's Ethan Griggall? Here he is. He's three wide almost as they head towards turn six. Looks like he was given a jump start penalty post-race from race number two. He had five seconds applied. He was up the top end and caused that race finished under safety car. Of course, it dropped him like a stone through the field. So he's got a lot of work to do, but he's making short work of it. He's already made several spots on race uh, the race start here. Looks like we're about to have a little bit of a look at what happened down at turn three and four. Here we go. So there's Musgrave with the Penrite logo aboard the car. And Carpenter, I don't think probably far enough up the inside a little bit uh, or early enough to really command position. And then it was Lodge who looked to try to do exactly the same thing to Carpenter and some great evasive action in there from Waghorn and Ethan Grigg to pull the, brake, uh, pull the brakes up and avoid making it even worse. We head down to turn one again. Whoops. The car's running very, very wide. It's the number eight there, Brian. Phillips gets pushed wide. Well, we've got an operation out in front of four cars only, and they've shown a clean set of heels to the next group. I tell you what, you don't want to be in that next group as the 34 car has removed itself well. Up on two wheels, in fact, three wheels halfway through that there as well, landing the car back down, gets back on with it. There's been some bit of biff and barge early on in this race, but they've all managed to keep on going. No need to nullify the race with safety cars or anything like that, so... Clever stuff. I'm going to say more luck than good fortune right there for those guys to keep it uh, as they were getting into each other there. But this group out in front doing a tremendous job. Just oh, driving car. away, trying to get uh, this safety car, trying to get away from the field. And all to no avail as on uh, lap number two, we get a, a safety car called. I'm not exactly sure what that one is for because we had the 34 removed from turn four or entry to turn four. Beyond yeah, Looks like we're getting word. It's uh, down the final corner. There it is. Bonnet gone. Is that uh, Kerry Bright, I think, in the 45? Yep. Yep, it is Kerry Bright. So that's been turned, and that's probably walloped the wall, too. That bonnet missing, that would be a pretty substantial hit. Well, there we go. We have safety car intervention in all three races for XLs here this weekend. There'll be a bit of talk about this, I would suggest, after this weekend. We need to get to where we were I think last season where the by, by round two and round three that really really got sorted out this is not the way we want to go racing with this category we want to get all the laps we possibly can to give everyone a big amount of experience at going racing grassroots racing is going laps not about sitting behind safety cars just getting some word through, it may have been Mason Kelly potentially involved in uh, a little bit of contact here down at this final corner at, uh, with Kerry Bright. But uh, looking to see, I think Kelly might still be going uh, at on track at the moment, albeit maybe a little bit down the order. Uh, just looking on our timing screen to see where he's uh, registered up. Uh, it looks like he's still running around about the 20th place or so. Uh, yeah, 18th is uh, where he currently was as they crossed the line last Started time. Started out at 23, he so he's come up the up the field. There's a little bit of uh, scuff mark, yeah, on yeah. the right front. That's certainly oh, and, and into the, the side of him as well. That's someone uh, giving him a bit of an autograph on the on the uh, driver's door as well. There you go. Looks like uh, usually the witness marks are the obvious uh, telltale signs of who was where on the track, and um, not so much who hit who, but at least who hit where they came together. Um, to give you a bit of an idea of probably what may how have happened and how the far car up they, they were. Yeah, that's for sure. So it's, a, it's an autograph down the side of that car. Here oh, we here go. We go. I think we're going to uh, get another look at this. I think we're going to get a look at an angry driver here just waiting there. It looks like Kerry Bright on the side of the circuit here. This will be... Uh, is this going to be another one of them Russell Ingle and Mark Scaife things from uh, all those years ago? Yep. Yep. There, there we is. go. Pointed him out. I'm pretty sure... Uh, Second generation Kelly Racer will uh, just dip the visor and we'll catch you later, buddy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Keep going. And uh, that's the way XL Racing is going to be. It's, uh, it's going to be sorted out elsewhere.
Well, that was a bit sad too because the group of four cars out in front had broken away and were having quite a nice little scrap there. There was that uh, move at turn number one. I think uh, Aaron Hindle looked like he got underneath both uh, Harry Tompkins and Hugo Simpson. I think actually it was Ryan Phillips was in there as well. And uh, they went a bit deep into the corner and they all gave each other plenty of room. So that was really good to see. They'd actually had a nice little margin on the field back to Toby Waghorn, who was heading the, uh, the next group of about half a dozen cars uh, before the safety car has called a halt to proceedings here. Having a look through the field, Ethan Grigg Gould, who uh, started back in 11th, had made up two spots. So he was fairly well buried in the top part of the mid pack and had managed to pick up a couple. Most of those uh, just by virtue of a little bit of the contact that happened on the opening lap down at uh, turns two and three and four. And uh, Techstar McCoy, who was uh, involved in that little uh, odd red flag collision toward the end of the uh, second race uh, earlier this morning. Surprised they've actually made that the car doesn't have too much damage on it. Actually sitting up in 10th place, he's actually lost a couple spots, started in 7th uh, as the red flag would have backdated the results to where they were uh, the lap prior. And uh, he's lost a couple spots at the start there. So not a huge amount of up and down throughout the grid, but uh, mainly just through couple of incidental contacts at opening lap and of course the uh, the incident we've just seen. I'd certainly encourage all of our competitors in all of our classes to uh, jump onto YouTube and watch the replay of this weekend's racing and uh, see what you might be able to learn out of your own category. You know, watch some of the races of the other categories, see what you can learn and, and bring to it. The more you expose yourself to the racing that you're actually involved with and, and analyse it, you'll be able to pick up the people that you know you can race fair and well with and others to maybe just give a a bit of a wide berth to so uh, well and truly get onto the uh, BLTV and uh, check it out on YouTube from all of this racing from this weekend and send links to friends and families and sponsors and get the word out there because the Triple Eight Home Loans XL Racing uh, when we're racing is tremendous stuff entertaining great racing um, this is not racing this is sitting behind a safety car swerving from side to side trying to keep your concentration levels up so I uh, would certainly recommend to everyone in all of our categories, get links of this racing, send them off to friends and family and let them know uh, what the Victorian State Race Series is all about. The more people we let know, and that's the good thing about doing this live streaming, we can watch it back whenever we want. You know, absolutely. Live and free. YouTube it up. Yep, absolutely live and free. And I guess the hard part of when a lot of drivers watch it back is to, you know, Self, I guess, criticism and you know, self improvement is always a very difficult thing. What I like to see in the paddock um, with a number of the competitors, especially IP, Formula V, they all like to go and get around each other. And if they've had a bit of contact, they have a little bit of a discussion um, and it's all amicable. Uh, they sit down, they look through the footage, okay, I could have done something a little bit better, you could have done something a little bit better. And then both parties walk away from it and feel like they've actually learned and evolved uh, overall, got and their, uh, got the next their, time got their airs and graces out, and uh, discussed it, and uh... and a little bit of rubbing's not too bad. Like a little bit of rubbing is racing, especially when it comes to maybe a little bit of room here or there. I guess it's the really the major stuff that we don't really want people getting heated about, and you know, getting together, and then it ends up becoming a really difficult situation to manage. It's all right for cars to make light contact with each other. It's when walls get into the argument and barriers and all those sorts of things and sand traps that the argument's gone just a little bit too far. Spot on. Spot on. We've all seen brothers and sisters have those arguments. It's all right, right up until someone's crying. That's correct. I think I think I went through that uh, too long ago now, oh, what, 20, 25 years ago when, you know, you're, you're, I'm two and a half years older than my younger brother and I'm sure we very nearly came to blows a few many, too many times. <laughs> yeah, you're right. When tears get involved, that there's always going to be uh, trouble. Well, let's call motorsport like brothers and sisters. sisters. <laughs> it's a sibling rivalry. No, to a degree it is. Well, there have, there have been a couple of siblings actually go racing at some point or another in That's local been. state racing. So uh, it's been a little while. I'm sure we'll see it down the track. Certainly has been. XL's on track now. Up next, the uh, MG and invited British sports cars will have uh, Paul Vernell in here for that. So between Simon Hurley and Paul Vernell, they've really given us a, uh, a good insight into that sort of racing, entertaining social affair when it comes to all that sort of thing. But when the flag drops, the uh, red mist comes along and, and they all get right into it. Formula V at 3.35 is when they're supposed to be on. A little bit behind that now, being that we're following the safety car yet again. Improved production is next up. That HQs and 944s are uh, on track as well. So uh, really enjoying round one of the 2022 Victorian State Race Series as we've done in the last couple of years. We've tried to get the full season on, uh, on live streaming, but uh, the world has 
sent us down a hole and unfortunately the last couple of years we haven't been able to complete the five rounds. I guarantee you we're going to give it the very best opportunity and something I've got to say in reflection to everyone involved in this series, all of the clubs and all of the race secretaries and all of the committees that make all of these things up, the last two years everyone has gone to the very last minute before they've had to cancel a race meeting. It has been an amazing bit of human um, human perseverance to uh, try and get racing on. And I think that's why everyone's having such a great weekend here this weekend because you can really see in some of the press releases that are sent out of organisers when they've had to call a race meeting off that it's just, they're gutted. They've just given everything to try and get it to work. The government's provided us with too many twists and turns. And, uh, you know, these, these race organisers have just gone, you know what, we can't do it. And it's, it's, you know, sometimes it's a little bit too late and it doesn't all work out for us. But the last people that want to call off a race meeting are the people that are organising it. That's right. And I remember all the way back in 2020 after we, uh, it started to, to happen, we managed to get through the first round here at Sandown. And even for the second round at Winston, uh, Michael Holloway and all the crew up there, they were trying to find ways to make it work within the regulations. They were even looking at potentially, you know, one, you know, rate, one round race meetings, you know, like splitting the categories, having yes, some on Saturday and some on Sunday, Sunday, just to try and reduce the numbers on site, you know, and it would have worked. And as you said, they tried to get it happening right up until the very last minute before they pulled the pin. Basically and, before trailers went on, or cars went on trailers. Correct. And yeah. I mean, even today, um, I believe the, you know, the government uh, people have been around the paddock and just making sure that every all every checkbox is being ticked. And I mean, it's not over. The amount of work that uh, MG Car Club, Phillip Island Auto Racing Club, um, Vic Mini Club, uh, and of course the Sports Sedan uh, Association of Victoria who put on the Vic State Race Series, they've still got to continue to tick those boxes for some time yet. So I mean, the best thing we can do is get around them and support them because I mean, motorsport family is huge and they're our family when we're here at a race weekend. Yep, and they put in so much time to get an event like this. Uh, we saw Mrs Hurley this afternoon, the president of the MG Car Club, get up in front of all the officials and just thank them for getting this up and uh, certainly their own committee. They, you know, She said it's almost like one race meeting finishes, there's a wash-up meeting and then the next month they're right back into it. So it's, a, it's an absolute 12-month cycle and at the end of every 12 months is a race meeting and it all starts all over again. So huge. When you think of 285 entries, they all have to be processed, they all have to be parked up in the garages or in the paddock area and they all have to be emails to and from it just goes on and on they really should be congratulated all of the the car clubs for putting them on now the Pyark recovery and repair crews were down at the wall where the uh, the 45 went in just before turn 12 and uh, or 11 and 12 rather they were having a substantial look at the armco barrier they've now moved away so i'm hopeful that uh, we might be able to go back to some green flag running for at least what uh, what it looks like. We're going to get probably another four laps in if we're going the race distance. We're on lap six now. So as long as the lights on the top of the Ford Territory safety car out in front there go out around about the Penrite Bridge, we'll be going back to a green flag. So it's uh, for all intents and purposes from our vantage point here, and it's a, a flawed vantage point. It's not... Uh, yeah, we don't have great vision around the track here, but we do have the Blendline TV cameras that can pick up these uh, intricate details for us. But uh, for all intents and purposes, lights should go out in the next four or five seconds as that uh, Ford Territory from V8 Race accelerates and out of the road. So here we go. Now, it says five, four, well, five laps, four laps when they hit the line. It'll be interesting to see if it does go the full four laps. Um, we have wasted a serious amount of time under safety car here again in this race. So the 117 of uh, Ryan Simpson will lead the field around. Oh, sorry, not Ryan Simpson. Hugo Simpson. Um, Hugo Simpson. It's Ryan Phillips right uh, back a couple of spots behind him. Hindle, Ooh. Tompkins, Phillips and Waghorn. A little bit of bumping as they all try and get into a really tight line for this restart here. This is fantastic. Look at them all. Good nice stuff. and close. Good no, stuff, there's a couple Hugo. at the back that are sleeping. And uh, they're going to be sort of the second pack of cars as they head down toward turn one. There's going to be about a dozen cars that you can probably throw oh, a blanket over them. there's a few them. cars overlapping to the line here. They're going to get uh, pinged pretty hard for that. Yeah, that'll be a post-race thing. And there's quite too many cars there, I think, to ping in a short space of time. But here we go. Harry Tompkins down the inside. He's moved up a spot here ahead of Hindle. He's had a little bit of a poor restart. Just shuffles him out. Just be careful there. Don't want to go too wide. You're going to expose yourself to the grass. 
And off we go. Oh, hang on. We've got uh, – so actually, safety car balls are still being waved. That's very quickly withdrawn. And Hindle goes back through into P2. Wow, there's uh, Waghorn there just escaping again. That car there, the uh, Cichlids car, getting tangled up, exiting turn four. And here comes the field, streaming their way up onto the back straight there. A little bit of getting together as they come around that right hand up and start to climb the mountain. There's the Appledore car, that fantastic-looking livery that we've discussed numerous times. A battle on here side-by-side, side, the 33 and the 79. It's Hindle and Tompkins. They sort it out, and it'll be the 79 of Hindle that holds onto it, and they all bounce over the ripple strips, wriggling their way down to Dandenong Road, a plunge up the inside to the number 15 of Kelly. Yep, late Gets dive. through online. Very, very nicely done. Well timed. Through goes Mason Kelly on Royce Lynn as that makes, uh, moves him up a spot. Oh, he's actually seated that position back, so he didn't quite get the drive off of turn nine to really hold it, but he was up the inside quite handsomely and just couldn't consolidate the move. So he got through and uh, didn't get the drive out of that right angle down in on the road corner, but he's got the car under him, so we'll see what the number 15 can do. 117 of Simpson to Hindle to Tompkins. Brad Verecker's moved up the order here as well, up Massive to P5. Move, yeah. Very, very nice job. Ethan Griggult's moved up another spot. He's now pick another one off here. Is uh, that Carpenter in the 11? I think he's just battling with there. He's just made and consolidated that pass. And a couple of things, Phillips and Tompkins just having a little bit of an argument through turn two and three. And then you've got Toby Waghorn, who's just making his way through as well, right on the rear bumper of Brad Verecker. But on uh, his outside, have a look at this. The start-finish line is uh, feverishly trying to let get all the numbers out. They're getting time penalties <laughs> before the end of this race. So the uh, the white board is out. Sorry, the black board is out. The white numbers are going onto it, and they're letting uh, the field know who's getting time penalties at the end of this race. They're not showing up on our timing screen. They'll normally show a dot next to the cars that are getting them, so we haven't had that updated yet. Oh. Big move up the inside there. It's a wide run, like off the BMX berm. Rejoins, albeit safely-ish. Yep. No, I think that's a fairly good rejoin there from Waghorn. He was hung out to dry in the weeds a little bit and was a little bit too deep and uh, took the wise approach and just released the brake pedal and just straight across the back of turn seven. Yeah, and that could have been, uh, without that bit of uh, bitumen up there, could have been a different result completely. But up the inside and into the side of the 26 goes Waghorn in the number 84. Yeah, that's a little bit naughty there. Just a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit late. Yeah, that's not what we want to see. No, definitely not. So uh, they'll probably sell, again, two of them will probably get together after this and have a little discussion. How's uh, Greg Gook going? He's down the inside here of the 39 of James Lodge. Hasn't really advanced too far up the order. And then there's another little group of four back here. Waghorn's now found himself caught in uh, with Meluso. And there's another couple of cars in there. The, uh, the 21 belonging to Billy Hamilton stuck in there as well. So that little uh, indiscretion going across the back of turn seven has cost him about three or four spots. So numerous time penalties being handed out there. I've seen at least six different numbers go out over the last two times over the, uh, the strike. Look, looks like we're going to get the full race distance in here yeah. too. There's only two laps to go, which is really, really good to see. And yeah, the board going out again with uh, another long list of numbers. Simpson's got a nice little margin here. Over Aaron Hindle and Harry Tompkins. Brad Verecker now seeds position to Griggle, takes the long way around turn six. And have a look at that. Already made a good little couple of, of uh, car lengths. As a carpenter sticks his nose down the inside of Lodge at turn number nine. That's how you get it done. That's how you consolidate the pass. But it then lets Techstar McCoy through the other side as well. So you, may, you gain one spot, lose another. It opens it up when the uh, field is so tight like it is here at the moment. This is the kind of thing we oh, want to see. Oh, no, it's Sinclair. Into the, into the gravel right in front of the camera. The person garage. Entry, Scarcella designs emblazoned across the rear flanks. Their car looks great, albeit in the gravel trap. Oh, yeah, not, not the angle of the uh, camera that I think he'd be preferring to see that car. So that'll be uh, just waved yellows or double waved yellows down there at turn nine. So no passing. This is the final lap with Simpson out in front of Aaron Hindle and Harry Tompkins. The three of these gentlemen were out in front for a good portion of the, the racing down at Phillip Island a couple of weeks ago. So they're all no strangers to themselves. Of course, they had Ethan Griggle 
uh, who's just back there in P5, having a little uh, a bit of a recovery drive. All and by himself, Mike That looks Sinclair. like it's a failure, yeah, unfortunately. Uh, on the left front, by the look of it. I think he just locked it up, getting uh, deep into the corner. Look, the uh, wheel was a little bit of a weird angle, but yeah, he is still parked down there. You can see the officials waving the flags feverishly uh, on the approach to that part of the course. So if you've got to get the move done, you have to get it done by now, or you're going to have to get it done at the last corner. Last couple of opportunities. Under yellow, do not even draw alongside. So that nullifies one of the great opportunities to get through. There's another couple of corners if you can draw alongside and go side by side. Under brakes here, but you're not going to have to say Hugo Simpson's got this one. He's got this car set up very stiff every uh, from turns two, three, and four. He hangs in a, a wheel in the air, as does the 79 behind him. Under brakes there shows you how heavily they're loading up the front of the car to try and turn it in. There's the checkered flag, and that rounds out the XLs for the weekend. And I'm going to say there is some combatants going home with blood noses here today. Blood noses, bruised egos and battered cars, I think, is the way we put that one. You're coming back to the uh, how stiffly sprung some of those cars are. They have actually got a, a control suspension package, uh, which is the Super Shocks, uh, which I think are about 850 um, kilo springs. So they are a fairly different uh, type of package compared to the, uh, the XYZs and the MCAs that they've been using for the last couple of years. Uh, a few drivers that used to be able to use the kerbs uh, can no longer use the kerbs uh, because of that exact reason. Heavier they just bounce the heavy springs yeah. and the car just bounces up in the air, which obviously we saw yesterday with the rollover has that can have a detrimental effect if you get it wrong. Yes, you are right there, Steve DeVries, and that sees our uh, XLs. Hugo Simpson takes the win there to Aaron Hindle, Harry Tompkins, Ryan Phillips, Ethan Brick Gold home in fifth. Bradley Vereka, big moving this weekend. Great to see the 96 in six there. Tex Star McCoy, Dale Carpenter, James Lodge, Antonio Meluso there in 10th. Toby Waghorn, Bradley James, Royce Lynn, Billy Hamilton, Kai Allen, Larry Merrifield, Mason Kelly home for a 17th there. William Seal, Glenn McKenzie and Dave Musgrove rounds out our top 20. The next cars on track will be the MG and invited British sports cars. We look forward to seeing a 10-lapper with uh, those magnificent bits of kit from the UK. And our uh, XLs just disappear off the track for the time being. Still up today after the MGs is Sports Sedans in the QP Lou's Victorian Sports Sedan Championship. Formula B improved production, HQs and Porsche 944s still to go. We'll catch a break. Be back in a moment. Facebook isn't the only place that you can support Australian grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. To see more real race cars, more live events and more of the racing you love, subscribe to the Blendline TV YouTube channel, sign up to our mailing list or bookmark and subscribe to our website at blendline.tv. Thanks for continuing to support grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. Bosch Motorsport provides technology for racing. Worldwide experience from all major categories of motorsport is in your race car when you use Bosch Motorsport components, ignition system, sensors, fuel delivery and high-end electronics. Bosch Motorsport brings race-proven quality and performance to your motorsport machine. Search for Bosch Motorsport Australia or find us at boschmotorsport.com.au. There's good, there's better and then there's Bosch. Bosch Motorsport when quality and performance matter.
Welcome back. This is what we love about state series racing is, uh, just in case you didn't like the neat last category, there's another one not too far behind it. It's like Melbourne weather, except for today. Beautiful one minute, but wait. Hang on, they're not saying anything. We've still got a couple of hours of racing still to go, haven't we? Clouds on the horizon. MG and Invited, British sports cars uh, on track now. That's not them. They're our services and crews, uh, rescue crews, fire and rescue and uh, recovery crew. Paul Vanell, right alongside me. I'm Darren Smith for the final race, the 10-lapper for the weekend of the MG and Invited British Sports Cars. And uh, I guess a bit of bad news out of the paddock is that uh, Phil Chester's not going to take any part in this race. Peter Rose or David Mottram. Uh, welcome, Paul. Thanks, Darren. Yeah, so Phil Chester's uh, probably at home watching the live stream now. He's uh, not too far away, only in Lilydale. But uh, fortunately, a couple of mechanical issues in the opening race this morning. He's decided to uh, save the car for the next day. Decided to take home the uh, new lap record setting car and uh, park it up, and we'll see him at Winton, I dare say. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. In the meantime, we've got Robin Bailey. He'll be on the front row by himself, and uh, he'll be looking forward to it. He's certainly at his... His money's worth this weekend, hasn't yes, he? Yeah, he's had uh, some, a lot of laps here this weekend. And good on him, too. The opportunity's there to do it. So uh, cross-enter and get get laps. You're at the racetrack, pour some more fuel in it, just bring another set of brake pads and tyres and clutches. And, you know, all the consumables get uh, poured into any race car. Keith Ondiaki in uh, position number three. Like his happy home, isn't it? <laughs> P3 it for, is. the, uh, for the stag. Michael Trathan, who uh, drove a great race last time out, really... Uh, came home hard and I guess without Phil on the front row of the grid gives him a good opportunity to take a step onto the, the podium if he can bring it home at the end of these 10 laps. Rodney Gibb we're really enjoying watching what Rodney does with that car. It's certainly something different and it's fun to watch him going about it. Gary Bulmer, Mark O'Neill, Michael Wood, Barry Pritchett, Alana Ondiaki, Henrik Zwart, Zwartvin. No. Say that 10 times faster. Yeah, go on. No, I can't. No, nah, good. Okay. Car number 36, that is. Then we're back to Greg White, David Anderson in the triple six. Gee, that's wishing some bad luck on yourself, isn't it? The number it of the devil. We raced with that with the Lamborghini for a little while there, and then it's exactly what it did to us. <laughs> James Dodd, Chris Ralph, James, Jane Volabrek, and Danny Siama will round out the rear of the grid. Revs are up, and Robin Bailey. Have a look at that. We're going to give it a bit of dandy drags off the uh, line there. Just only having a couple hundred metres over the way from here. And away he goes. It gets chased down, too, by the stag. Have a look at the number 40. He applies the right boot and gets right into it. Driving right up into turn one there. Here's a move down the inside. Yeah. I did say to him just before the race, you need to get your opening laps better, and it looks like he's tried to do that. Have a look at that. He's uh, got it uh, got it nailed as uh, as Rodney Gibb tries to stay with him there. The, uh, the big saloon-type car. Really does look like something out of like the British Trans Am Championship or something like that, doesn't it? Yeah, big black beam car. It wasn't for the green stripes, like some Batman might drive. But uh, yeah, we'll see if he can uh, bring back to Gary Bulmer up the back straight. See if the big legs of the V8 can can overcome him. I know Gary's got just starting to get to grips with this car. There's a lot more to come out of it, so he's really looking forward to Winton. 24 there, Michael Tratham, who we said drove a ripping race this morning. Got himself up into P4, obviously, uh, with the uh, demise of uh, Phil Chester. It gives him basically P3 up the inside. Now, I feel we're going to see the 91 and the 32 spend some time together over the next uh, 10 minutes or so. David and Goliath. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's kind of what this sort of racing is, really. It's it like, is. Although like Rodney's slowing now, it, it looks is. like. So. Uh, no. Common, commentary curse. Yeah, someone brings a big stick to the game and wants to smack everyone on the head with it, don't they? Yep. It's just how good you dodge the uh, the smacking on the head. With That's the right. Absolutely. Uh, he's going to the lane, unfortunately. That's a shame. Okay, so we've got a couple of those, as you said earlier today, the period type of MGV GTV8s out there as well. And there they are on screen, broken up there by Alana. Yeah, so Mark O'Neill had the, the better this morning, but Mike Wood's actually uh, a bit further up the road than Mark this afternoon, so Mark will have to get his head down. He was the uh, class winner this morning uh, in our trophy race, so maybe he's got the silverware and he's just going to look to bring it home. Wow, here's three different uh, generations of MG, four different generations on screen of V8. Trans uh, transverse type of uh, setup, probably drive. 
Yeah, a little zerad. Tony Volabred didn't have the best of races this morning, but he's come through and picked a few spots up early in this one. Uh, and then you've got uh, Henk Zwartevien behind, who uh, he's returning after last year had nothing but engine problems, and uh, this weekend he's looking to get through the get through the weekend and head to Winton. So. He's having a good run, just keeping up with the, the ZR here, and a bit of mix. He got V8, modern front wheel drive, and then uh, and then four cylinder roadster. He comes Barry Pritchard as well in the six cylinder TR. Starts the way in on it, the TR6. Just in the back of this shot. Yeah, there and the is. big call out this morning. He did fastest uh, lap he's ever done in that car this morning, just under a 30, 129, so high 129. So best he's ever done in that car, so he was absolutely wrapped. That's really good this morning. There's a number of lap records or personal best being set in this field. It, it really was ideal conditions this morning. It was a low overcast, still only about 20 degrees. There's certainly a little bit of um, a little bit of heat starting to regenerate around or generate around the place at the moment. And heat's always the enemy of any race car. The cooler the weather, the denser the air, the more horsepower and it easier it is on all the gear, really. And this round's always hot, isn't it? This, yeah. this round every year, it's always hot. Yeah car killer weekend. It is interesting it's going to be, uh, I, I look to the Bathurst 12 hour in May, it's going to be very much a different race start in the dark, finish in the dark, it's going to be a, a long old day at Mount Panorama for the 12 hour. You won't see an MG in a 12 hour race. <laughs> oh, maybe some stage soon, who knows. Maybe an electric they said, one. They said, that you, they said you wouldn't see a um, a um, oh, the one that won it two years ago. The Bentley. They said you wouldn't see a Bentley there oh, either, yeah. and they won it. So, uh, you know, never say never. Never say never. See Barry here on the outside of Mark O'Neill over the top. He's got his eyes on after not a great start. Made two spots up this lap. I do like the, um, the that Roadster type of look where it's just got a little little Roadster screen, and you can see the hands and everything going on. It's... It's, um, they're more open than even than a Formula V and a Formula Ford these days, which uh, tend to sort of shield the hands of the driver. These more period cars, there wasn't any of that going on. And we can just see all the wheel inputs in the TR there as it comes onto the straight. Even a little bit of tilting head forward, trying to go faster, wheeling everything in the one direction. Seven laps remaining. There's Robin Bailey. A 122.79 for Robin. And uh, he's trying to tick off personal bests there as well. Keith Ondiaki into uh, Ondiachi into P2. Yeah, Robin will be looking to hopefully bring it home and bank some good points because he's with Phil on the sidelines, good chance state championship this year, have a good shot at it. So um, good way to finish the round one with a not quite maximum points, but three finishes would be a really good start to his year. <laughs> Listen to that. Uh, it's going that Your fast, car, even, isn't it? <laughs> even it's going that fast. Even the boots starting to wobble around. There's getting a bit of air underneath the back of it. I just, I just like the fact that he's walked along and he's gone. Yeah, I'm going to build a stag, and it's going to go really, really fast. Of all things, a stag. Yeah, of all things, they, they do a terrific job with it. It's reliable. Oh, it's they a managed to get a lot of racing in with it. Good piece of kit, and he drives it well, and he's. Started to come to grips with it over the last probably 12 months, a bit more. And um, more importantly, Paul, he's super enthusiastic about oh, all of it. Yeah. Not just his car, but the front gate, the back gate, and everything in between. And obviously, you know, most people don't know his, his daughter, Alana's out there as well. So uh, Even it's, better. That's cool. It's a father-daughter combination. They have an absolute ball, and his brother's usually on the tools. So, family affair. Yeah, that's really cool. You go racing with your, with your kids. Nice stuff. Right up until... Uh, <laughs> right up to Alana, puts her nose in front of him and says, uh, now let's go racing, Dad. Yeah. She gets close and closer. You never know one day. She's up to six in this one, so she's doing really well. Here she is. Here she is. Cue. Right there. So a couple of V8s going for it. Yeah, Mike, Mike Wood's probably going to have a little bit of a battle on his hands. Uh, generally runs out of brakes and, and tyres on the, on the little V there. Um, and Alana may not have quite the same battle later in the race, so... She might just want to size him up here, and she might have a, a good spot for fifth. And the uh, the Triumph just in the background there as well. So he's had a good run. Got through on a couple of cars over the last two laps. Half race distance. This is, I guess, where the test starts to come for some of these older cars. They've done you know, the best part of 20 racing laps now, maybe five or six in qualifying. And uh, 
more so the uh, the space between the headrest and the steering wheel starts to get a little bit scattered about now too. That commentator's curse might come in, so I hope you've got some wood there because there'll be a few people hunting you. But <laughs> yeah, the uh, a lot of these guys, you know, been been a big weekend, hot weekend. Uh, the British cars aren't built for the heat, so they'll all be starting to fatigue a little bit. But uh, that's why I say it's good to see the V8s have, have really survived this weekend, all, all bar Phil. They've, they've got through the weekend, and these guys like Mike Wood are absolutely uh, doing a stellar job. This is the stag go by. <laughs> the crackle coming out the exhaust pipe there. Getting right into it, the TR. The uh, stag. Front wheel drive, TR in the distance, the front the wheel TR drive six. behind, yep. And the TR6 just starting to close the gap a little bit there. He's, uh, if he can just break Volabretti, he might have a chance that uh, the little lightweight, bit more nimble, might uh, be a little bit nicer on his tyres and brakes late in the race. I reckon you might be right there. It's a good battle here. 44 of Alana. Working pretty hard and uh, Wood just in front. This is the advantage of the stag. A little bit more capacity on board there so it can start to hunt in a straight line. Pulls out from behind there. Maybe could have stayed in behind a little bit longer as uh, the V8 MG pulls over in front of the 44. And uh, they turn it into the left-hander and drive it all the way down to Dandenong Road. And as you said, Paul, that uh, the MG GT there, the pedal will start to get a bit long and... Uh, I guess the willingness to get the brakes while the car's still turning, you don't want to do that because you'll end up pinching up a brake and tearing a, a tyre off sliding into the corner. But uh, try and get it straight and do all the braking you possibly can in a straight line without too much wheel input. Yeah, as we see, uh, Robin Bailey's now started lapping cars. Now, Danny Siama was not impressed at our our uh, selling tactics to get him into the Gucciardo car earlier. He had a bit of a word and said, you've, you've hurt my negotiating skills, so... I'm just going to we'll leave that it, out again. We'll leave it for alone. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, there's a call from a family member watching this at home and saying, "Hang on, what's going on? Yeah. You're doing deals at the track." Yeah, <laughs> maybe that's what happened. You got the phone call. <laughs> what have you bought? Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> You're not coming home with another car. <laughs> are you? That is that is an affliction of MG Car Club members, though. Absolutely, they bring another one home. Oh, absolutely. Are you going to get rid of one? No, it's another addition to the family. And get Gary Bulmer is fourth at the moment that's exactly his problem he, he started racing with us and then and then he he didn't he thought he'd done too good a job building his car so he bought another one and uh now that other one is too good to race <laughs> <laughs> gotta get another one he might need a third one well there's one for sale there's a green one <laughs> a real fast it's a good one. price <laughs> it's a good lot of equipment at the price it's at, that's for sure yeah, so if anyone is watching this and wants to go racing, there's a couple of really good cars for sale. Give me a call. <laughs> so seeing uh, Barry Pritchett's getting pretty close to Alana here. So this could be... Uh, Alana's just dropped off the back of Mike Wood slightly, but Barry's closing in. So uh, while the old Fox Barry could be on for something at the end here. And Paul Vernell is serious about that, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you can ring your local Shannons and they'll, uh, they'll find Paul for you. And he can, uh, he can find a nice bit of kid for you. Don't you worry about that. Make me sound like a used car salesman now. Well, <laughs> that fits. Robin Bailey leading the way. Here he is. This is doing a uh, tremendous job. Big V8. Just tears through the air, doesn't it? It sounds like it's ripping a hole through the air. It actually sounds it. like the Bentleys. It does a bit, you're right. It's got that uh, that sort of note to it. The 122.56 on lap four. We've got two laps to go for this car on screen now, car number 50. And uh, this is ever reliable. This is a real super sort of effort. And, uh, and uh, this is a well put together car. It's done a 40 minute race in um, sports cars around lunchtime today. And I've got to say, it's rivaling in uh, reliability the Maud Fitzgerald car as well. That used to just get out in front and win races. And I, I couldn't tell you a time I ever saw it come to a halt on the side of a racetrack, that's for sure. I think it's testament to Robin as well to, to do all that time, that it would be a very hot sauna he'd be sitting in right now. Yeah, and he, he likes the big helmet too. He's got the full protection and everything in there, which is very, very wise. I was talking to Dave Cox, who had a nasty crash at Isle of Magic in improved production, and he... he basically points to the fact that he's still got feet on the ground 
um, to the, the wraparound seat and the hands device that had in his car because he said the, the forces went through his body when he whacked the wall a couple of times was just amazing. So if you're thinking about investing in a new seat, don't think for too long. Just go and actually do it. Absolutely. Here comes the stag, car number 40, second on the road. It's a pretty decent old gap back to the lead of 12 seconds. And then a further 30 seconds back to uh, Trathan. Haven't quite seen the charge that Trathan did to get into is the spot he's in now. But uh, certainly there's some decent old gaps with cars out there. It's almost a little bit like a, a sprint now where there's some big gaps. Here he is. He's done really well this weekend. He's uh, been out of the seat for quite a while. Done a couple of odd rounds over the last few years, but uh, looking to do a few rounds this year, and he's he's come out swinging. He's, at the moment, going to finish this weekend with a podium at the end, which is pretty impressive for the little old midget. It reminds me of uh, Jeff Smith's car in the yeah. 90s. Is that yeah, still around? It is. Is it? There's a whole lot of these cars in sheds. Yeah. Got to find a way to get them out of sheds. Yeah, yeah. Is Jeff still got that car? I think that it's was... been sold. Okay. Multi-colours. It had Correct. all the colours over Correct. it. Yeah. I raced it in a, like a butcher's picnic race oh, at yeah. the island once. We had a ball. Good fun. So uh, here we go. The number 50 coming down now. The last lap board has been shown to him. He's got a couple of quarters to go. This will feel good. This is feel good. You can only beat the people that you start in the race up against. And uh, he's done a good job. Fast lap early on on lap four. Ticks the boxes. And I'm going to suggest wheeling this out of the trailer and getting home tonight. It's going to be some yawns along the way. It's the old saying, to finish first. First, you've got to finish, That's right? That's right. Yeah. And there it is. Congratulations, Robin Bailey. That's terrific stuff really sort of warms your heart that victory right there that's uh, that's good stuff a big thank you this weekend to our sponsors aussie pools wolfchester splats engineering and uh Buren motors with cranbourne and dandenong mg they've uh, been on board all weekend and big thank you to all of them yeah let's hope they hang in there with the category there's some relevance there and certainly some people see the value of being involved and here it comes still driving the wheels off it into p3 albeit some um, 30 seconds a stern of the car in front. Rego's still on the car. Still got Rego, mate. Still got Rego. And I've got to say, these are a fun little thing to drive. It's been some 28 years since I drove one, but, gee, there's some good fun. Every wheel input has a result. They are so good at responding to the, the inputs. Onto the straight and taking out a podium there in the uh, car number 24, Trathan Bulmer, following in uh, hot pursuit there, so... The cars close together there in the uh, MG and invited British sports cars. Top result. Here we go. Two triumphs finding their way together and a V8 in front. They need to combine to chase those two V8s down, or that one V8 down. Yeah, Mike Wood looks like he's just going to hold on to this, so uh, well done to Mike there. Um, and a big call out to Alana there. She started 10th and she's up to 6th, so yeah, really good driving. Yeah. In fact, the two stags have driven very well each and every time they hit the track. They qualify well, they race well, and uh, put them on the trailer and go home at the end of the weekend, which is always very important. And uh, I guess in the MG Car Club, if there is a coming together, you've got a whole car club behind you to, to answer to, really. It's like, no, you don't need to do that. That's yeah. right, absolutely. There's plenty of MGB parts around. Well, the other thing is that next week again, there's probably a concourse, so you've got to have the thing looking mint for That's it. That's right. All the Wolfchester polish. <laughs> That's it. That's what I was leading to. <laughs> Robin Bailey takes the W there for MG and Invited British Sports Cars. Keith Undiaki in the stag there into position number two. Michael Trathan, Gary Bulmer, Michael Wood beats home Alana Undiaki and Barry Pritchett there. Anthony Volabrek, Hendrix Vart, Eben, Eben, uh, David Anderson in the triple six there, bringing the devil along for the ride and uh, doing a very, very good job. We'll go down to the lane now with uh, the winner of the XL race. down here behind the pit paddock at Sandown International Raceway and joined alongside by Hugo Simpson who has just taken out uh, the final race of the weekend in the Hyundai XLs and we're stoked to have him here to basically talk about his success so far this weekend. Hugo, welcome. Uh, it's great to be here, you know, just coming straight off the track. Um, yeah, it's really hot out there. Good to get the victory in that last race. Um, yeah. So with the uh, win in XL Racing today, obviously that's been a long time coming. How much work, effort have you been putting into your racing to get to this moment now? Oh, a lot of hours of training and practice days. Um, well, as I just started last year, it's really great to have this much progress. And um, 
like a lot of supporters, or the like the engine builder Les Small, he's great working on the car, like Chris Bell, Ben Grice as well for me, borrow his car this weekend. And um, yeah, it's great to have all the help and support. So, what's the future for you? Where in motorsport do you want to be? Where do you want to go? Where do you want to race? Tin tops, open wheelers, what's the, what's the plan? Oh, I'm a big fan of tin tops, like V8 Super Cars, a big fan of those, but really like to get my hands behind a Porsche. So, a lot of sponsors will need to be to get me there. Um, but the way that's going, hopefully soon enough. But yeah, Porsche is the dream. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Hugo, for joining us. He's definitely a star of the future. We've got more racing coming your way and more interviews coming up hopefully later on today. Facebook isn't the only place that you can support Australian grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. To see more real race cars, more live events and more of the racing you love, subscribe to the Blendline TV YouTube channel, sign up to our mailing list or bookmark and subscribe to our website at blendline.tv. Thanks for continuing to support Grassroots Motorsport with Blendline TV. Bosch Motorsport provides technology for racing. Worldwide experience from all major categories of motorsport is in your race car when you use Bosch Motorsport components, ignition system, sensors, fuel delivery and high-end electronics. Bosch Motorsport brings race-proven quality and performance to your motorsport machine. Search for Bosch Motorsport Australia or find us at boschmotorsport.com.au. There's good, there's better and then there's Bosch. Bosch Motorsport when quality and performance matter. Welcome back the QP Lubes sports sedans and invited cars. I'm not sure that we've got any other invited. They're all sports sedans. We have had like pulsars and things running at the back of the field of sports sedans in years gone by, but this is a pure sports sedan field, the QP Lubes uh, championship. If uh, you don't get your pulse up during this stuff, you need to get yourself off to the doctor and have a pulse check. I would suggest this to that. It's the hard racing, this sort of stuff. It's pretty much the car or the silhouette you like the most, take it, strip everything out of it, throw it all away, send it off to the, the fiberglass uh, uh, mould maker and build a space frame. Is that about it? Fred Dickey, right alongside me here? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a pretty uh, simplified it's, process. It's, yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head. I don't know much more I can say to that. So yeah, obviously resembling the silhouette of the original uh, vehicle, but as you can see, there's some very aerodynamic looking um, house bricks out there at the moment so definitely a good thing the rules well, they were aerodynamic now they're <laughs> yeah yeah so some of them have gone the right way some of them have gone the opposite but each to their own but um yeah just a credit to everyone that's got a car out there at the moment and um i must say there's a very nice looking cars rolling around here for for race three you have one in your shed a very nice one and the the, the beauty and the beast part of this category is that they're all bespoke you know, they're, they're, One you don't just go to a shop and go, I'll have a widget and get to put on my sports there. And you go to the lathe and you go, now what do I do? How do I make this yeah, work? Yeah. Have um, we got the right metal and yeah. is it going to last? How can I make this fit and how long will it last? Yeah. Now, and then you make it and then grind it for a little bit longer to make it lighter. Yeah, and then uh, when it breaks, it's too light. Oh, you're don't grind that again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> put that bit back. Yeah. So, trust me, you've seen my wing failure at Phillip Island. Yeah. Um, taking weight out of things, you just got to be careful. I tell you what, Steve Tomasi, he had a wing failure at uh, Island Magic last year. That was uh, scary. About the same spot. Yeah, so um, yeah, scary. I know so that's the load point. Yeah, so, so that's, um, that's where we need to add more material. <laughs> right so the field comes out it'll be Dean Cam and uh, Tony Groves right alongside each other Greg Lynch lands into position number three wow what a great weekend for Greg really needs a good pat on the back everyone around him get around him and really encourage him because this is a, a tremendous result for him here this weekend John Ippolotto 
Chaz Talbot, P5. That's a good result too for Chaz. Keep it on the black stuff, Chaz. Motor on and bring it home in one piece. We look forward to seeing the Camaro maybe even move up a spot or two there. Brian Finn out of position number six there. Stewie Eustace who started out rear of grid this morning up into seventh. Great to see the, uh, the white Mark Mazda into position number seven. Liam Dunn doing a lot of work on both those Mark cars and doing a tremendous job with it indeed. Cam McKee to Alan Argento in the number 10 all orange XE Falcon and that is a monster looking machine. Mark Curry to David Ratcliffe, Stephen Backer in the Nissan Skyline GTR number 91, Craig Eddy, Graham Gilliland in the number 21 all orange, there he is just taking up the spot, Steve Backer just pulls the uh, GTR just in front of him, that orange car right down the back of the field, the wing high up in the air, magnificently prepared car and should do pretty well with these temperatures starting to get up a little bit more this afternoon. Francois Habib has put the uh, Bob Gill Sports sedan away. He's bought out the Dodo Supercar. Uh, Arthur Ann also. Gordon Lovegrove, Gary Finnamore, Greg Taylor, Andrew Parker, rear of grid with Kevy Stoopman. Uh, Kev was getting called up to uh, speak to the clerk, of course, after the last race, but he was a DNF, so I'm not sure what that was about. Gary Bella, and I don't think we've got either of the McLurkins off the back in there, a black Nissan's. Revs rise now. How will Dean Cam get away? He has a little bit of an itch of the nose and pulls the visor down. Fidgeting in the uh, Corvette there. The 80 mark car. Valvoline European Auto finishes. And there goes the Corvette. Catch you later. Greg Lynch goes with him, as does Brian Finn. And there goes Backer as well in the Nissan GDR. He jumps away magnificently from the back of the grid now. Right down the inside goes Andrew Parker as well. He wants to get back up into the field here. There is the Camaro of Chas Talbot. He's got Stu Eustace in behind, and uh, he's got a very, very wide Camaro as uh, three, two Commodores and a Mark car line up to try and get behind him. And he dives into P4 in the wood engineering car out of America. Done a fair bit of engineering on that car himself, Chas Talbot, to get it up to speed. And uh, he's got Laurie working very, very hardy this weekend to make sure that car keeps uh, going in the right direction. They're working as hard as the kettle in that pit facility, so they're, <laughs> they're definitely working hard, and you can see it's a credit to him. Look, look where Chaz is. He's probably um, probably six times my age, but he's doing well. He's going well. He hasn't missed an event in... He hasn't. Well, this is 60 years, This, uh, this in a couple of weeks. This he's probably been at every one. He was here for the first one. It's, um, it's so good to see some of the Vic V8s there. So, look at it. I think we've got... Four out of the top five. Four yep. out of the top six, which is pretty good. good. Yep, there's Graham Gilliland. Flames on the gear change out the exhaust of that rotary-powered RX-7. And Dean Cam drives away from the front of this field. A standing start at 121.81. There's many categories that would like that to be their lap record as Dino drives away. There's Graham again, the number 21. Great to have the Gillilands back at the racetrack, back in sports sedans. There's the number 10. That is a monster of a machine. It's a big thing when you look at the size of it compared to like Backer's uh, GDR there. It's, um, I reckon there's two. It's a, there's a fair old postcode involved in it. There, there is. You're there locating is. it on Google Maps. And I reckon there's postcode. a fair bit of weight. Yeah. Allocated postcode. They draw, it's being driven well though. David and Gente taking a marvellous job of it. And really adds just, uh, like sports sedans need some more colour and spice. It just adds some more colour and I spice. I think it adds all of them. Yeah. It certainly does. Terry dips the gears. Proudly emblazoned across the back of that RX-7 has been for quite a long time. Here comes the Camaro, Chas Talbot, Francois Habib right in behind. Then it's the uh, the 97 of Johnny Bellotto in the mix there. Francois is definitely uh, making sure that curb's used across the top there. So uh, it's one positive of a supercar, can launch it straight across. I was going to say, he would have picked it up in historical yeah, data. I reckon if I've ever tried that, I would have ended up in, uh, in the old Bunnings across the road. <laughs> Yes, Pogo sticks straight yeah, over. Yeah, straight the over. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Camaro comes onto the straight, points it up nicely, applies the right boot, the big old boot too. It's done it in five thousands. It's done it in Formula Holdens. He knows his way around here. Just just clocks onto the property, and uh, Chaz Talbot runs with it. Have a look at this up the inside. Goes Francois Bib. He's going to do it too. Stands on the picks. A little bit of black dust oh. puffs out the front. A little bit of white uh, smoke following on there. So I think there was a bit of red mist from both of them then. I reckon they were both probably about 50 metres too late. Um, but Chaz has come off uh, the underdog there. He certainly has. Chaz keeps on with it at the moment. What Chaz is doing is he's keeping everyone away from attacking Greg Lynch, Tony Groves and Dean Cam at the moment. Applies the boot 
Gives a bit of that straight line handling. Bit of straight line handling down the back straight. It looks like um, poor for, for form there for Lynch. He's um, got a bit of a penalty added to his time. So he'll be just consolidating what he's got there and just enjoying his Sunday drive now, knowing that he's got five seconds added to the end. Yeah, so he's got a decent old gap too, back to what uh, his old mate Chaz is doing for him here. And uh, there's two X supercars in the line there, so they come with a pile of data. All you've got to do is apply all that data from the previous owners and uh, then drive the car like a professional. The previous owner, yep. yep. Exactly. There's the, there's the uh, disconnect right there. So now we come up the straight now. The aerodynamic Camaro does very, very well. Like Shane Bradford in the uh, the Kerrick National Series drives that thing very, very well. That's an absolute weapon. Amazing turned out car as well. It is. Down into turn one again. A couple of Commodores range alongside each other there. A couple of different eras as well being represented. Over the bumps in the QP loop, sports sedan race goes the Dodo car and the form car 97 of Johnny Pilotto. Look forward to seeing John really start to impress in qualifying so he can get out of this part of the race where he uh, he has to deal with some traffic and yeah, start think, to apply some some of his I think if work. He, he, like you're saying, if he focuses um, and just sorts out that little bit of qualifying pace, he'll be a little bit further up and he's not going to spend two races of the weekend working his way to the end, um, working his way to the pointy end. So that's um, that's obviously, from my point of view, if he, if he just sets that thing, he's, um, he's going to cut out a lot of hard work for himself. Andrew Parker is doing a tremendous drive out of uh, 20. He's made his way up to ninth, so that's a good, uh, good drive there. Never any doubt that Andrew can do the work behind the wheel, just uh, making things a little bit difficult for himself when you've got to drive through the field Ooh. like that. As there's a lock up there of uh, one of the the black car. Was that Ippolotto? Or have I we got think we've off? got the Red Falcon. Dan McKee, yes, he's he joined is. back on. There is dirt all over the front of that car. He gets back on with it, joins in front of the red Commodore and the orange Falcon there of Argento. Doing a nice job. A couple of uh, ex-Commodore Cup cars finding their way with the big V8s in the sports sedans there as well. Great to have them as part of the QP Loops sports sedans. It's definitely up, definitely getting warm out there. So humidity um, has risen and, and there's a... Obviously, a lot of UV on the track, so you'll notice a lot of these guys are starting to slide around. We're three races in. We've used all our tyres. We're, we're not really a class that's going to be throwing green sets of tyres for every race, so these guys are pretty much going to be racing with what they've got and trying to deal with the best as they can. Safety car is out on track, so we haven't seen any reason that that would be required. Um, oh, there we have 39 at turn one. That's not good. Uh, one goes in there, another one can certainly go, and that's Mark Kukuri in the QP Loop Sports Sedans race, number 39, parked up there. Yeah, that's not a good spot. Park recovery straight onto it. Okay, so we're hearing that uh, maybe David Radcliffe was involved in that incident. It wasn't an all-on-his-own type of situation. Should be a long safety car though. Yeah. So the Pyart recovery crew do an amazing job. As you saw then, they're straight onto it. Hook it up. There's a escape road just there so they can um, and pull it across the road um, and get this back racing for what would be the last four laps. Dean Cam had himself a handy lead. In fact, uh, that's now come back to, as you can see it, it was uh, just over two seconds to Tony Grove. Tony Grove going straight into uh, concentration mode. Swerve left to right. Shows how um, how small and how low a sports sedan is behind a territory, doesn't it? It does, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're, uh, the territory is a behemoth compared to it. But I tell you what, when uh, when Dean Camp puts the right boot in, the behemoth changes around. I reckon it would, yes. Quite, I reckon he'll quite abruptly, straight underneath it. Yeah, quite abruptly it uh, changes very, very quickly. So we've got half race distance left here in the sports sedan. And here's a replay. Oh, yes, no, directly. Certainly off at the same point in time. What led up to that, we don't know, but that's the very best of the shots we've got. Got to send a big thank you to uh, our production crew down at the BLTV van. Doing a tremendous job being these, bringing these replays to us. And uh, I know that uh, it's one of the harder things to do in the technical land. Don't ask me what it is that they do, but you always hear the tech saying, oh, these replays, we've got to... I reckon there's lots of buttons. Yeah, there'd be yeah, buttons lots and of levers buttons. And, and there'd be programming. 
No, they do an amazing job. Um, the whole Blend Line team have been doing it for some time now and, and all over the state and all over the country. So yeah. it's a credit to those guys. Amazing footage and, um, yeah. A great partnership with My105, the, uh, the, uh, the for sale side, if you like, for race cars as well, both heavily involved in what is grassroots motorsport. Dean Cam now getting a restart Ooh, underway. Oh, that's going to be a little tricky. Yeah, and there's the green flag, and away they go. It looked like Tony Groves wanted to go before they entered that corner as well. He gave it a big boot pull as well. But uh, Dean Cam gets it away, applies the big right boot, and that is an issue. He has got an issue slowing on the inside of that corner. And I'm not sure what happened there. He has slowed into the corner and got Tony Groves has gone through. Maybe Dean just wants to blow him by in the straight line. I'm not sure that's going to happen. Might be uh, rubbing salt to the wound, or he's realised it was definitely a close call on the safety car. We'll leave that for um, the higher paid people. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, definitely definitely, definitely close. Yes, one story above. So Dean Can drops back to P2 over Tony Groves, Greg Lintz, Francois Habib, Ippolotto. And Francois Abib has actually jumped past Greg Lynch on the restart there as well on the number 22. So Greg will be spewing about this because he had himself pretty much as a nice little bit of track to himself. Do 10 laps, bring home a trophy. Yes. And he now was, he's um, under fire all over the joint. He was in the box seat, but now he's um, having to fight for it. Yes, he is. Ippolotto is in there as well. Got to say, if you're out there and have a race, have a race with someone. It is nice to sit there and gather points with no one around you, but it is a whole lot more fun when you're uh, trying to catch someone. Or That'll be the longest through. 10 laps of your life if it's you're by yourself. It is. It is. We've just seen uh, for Chester in the MGs uh, set a lap record this morning because he pretty much had the track to himself and then broke the car, so um, didn't take any further part in the longer race this afternoon. If Lotto looks to the inside of this HRT tribute car, this is not a supercar. This is actually a build. That, oh, and he goes off too. And the pressure cooker got it. It does. And that, it, it's a GTS. It was a road car. And uh, it's been converted into now what essentially looks like an XHRT race car. And they've done a, such a good job with the various people involved in the build. Darren Breeden and, and Dean Lilly have certainly polished it and made it, turned it into a podium getting car. Cam McKee went off down at uh, Dandenong Road, gets to get together with some of his mates from the big V8s crew. And there's the uh, well, there's the postcode of the XE. It's postcode ten. It's got a grip it's on its the own front postcode. Window. It's own it's postcode. Own postcode. An absolute beast of a car. Love it. It's such a cool thing out there. They're all cool. They're all they're all ace. They all make right noises. V eights, turbos, rotaries. Doesn't matter what it is. Sixes, fours, whatever. They uh, they certainly do a ripping job. Here it is up the back straight. They're going to go side by side. They're going to even get a bit of grass up there. As uh, the number 10 tries to look past the 34 of Craig Eddy, inside and outside. So Dean, Dean Cam sitting back into P2 and uh, last lap round said his fastest lap, in fact the fastest lap of the race. And uh, two laps to go. Groves got through on him, looked like there to be an issue. Looks like Graham Gilliland slowed down coming down the back straight, so he's uh, he's dropping like a fly at the moment. So hopefully, and Cam's around. I have not seen that out of Dean Cam. I'm going to say ever. I I would back you up on that one. I think um, ever he doesn't spin cars. There's, there's got to be an issue there that has seen Dean find that car. <laughs> Point the right way. And there's Dean Cam. There goes Dean Cam. I'm on the right, scene right away. And, uh, yeah, that's... Very rare mistake. Exceptionally rare. I, I, don't, I don't even know. I'd have to ask him when the last time was he spun a car. Um, he just doesn't do it. And he uh, clearly got a little bit upset with trying to get back out in that there. But what it's going to do is it's going to give uh, Tony Groves... The last lap board has just gone to Tony. He's gone across the line. And, uh, well, Francois Habib... Lynch, Lynch has nearly got another shot at this podium. Yeah, he has. He has the Pilotto. Uh, it's still P4, so there's, a, there's enough of a gap there. Andrew Park is pushing on hard. He's got Stuart Eustace just in front of him. Here comes, uh, here comes, <laughs> here comes, uh, Chaz oh, Delbert. Chaz. Where Greg Lynch went off a lap ago, Chaz has gone off. Oh, oh. Oh. Solve it with horsepower. Oh. Wrong horsepower. And back on. Beautiful. 
It's like a motor car next weekend down there. Actually. It's, it's just it's his entry. practicing. Practice. So I've just had uh, just had sent in that uh, Graham Gilliland's actually heard a motor. So there's Graham's assault for um, 2022 hasn't really uh, gone the right way, but um, I know those guys and they'll be pushing hard and they'll be back for Winton in a not too long actually. Yeah, drop the rotor out. You can have them apart tonight and back together by midweek on the dyno for the next three. On the kitchen bench. That's it, yeah. Uh, that's not good. That's not what we wanted to hear. Certainly uh, returning to the sport. And here comes uh, car number 80. Could be car number one. As he gets to the line and takes the victory there, Tony Groves driving very well again this season. Francois Habib not too far behind. 4.9 seconds adrift. And then here come the rest of the field. Ippolotto, great drive there into P3. Really happy to see Francois and John Ippolotto in there as well. That's a, a ripping result to see those two guys are getting a podium. Here's a replay down at Turn 1 with uh, Chas Talbot. I, I think in the highlights reel we need just a little bit of Benny Hill music in the back oh, of that. I think it's, um, it's a necessity. Here we go again. No, we're, we're front out. Yep, there it is. Very deep. An A for effort. He had that committed. He um, he wasn't going to back out of that. He was full send the whole way in, and even on the grass, he was still committed to that throttle pedal. He was. That's what I said. Get into it. You'll, <laughs> you'll solve it with the loud pedal here, Chaz. Uh, well, a little bit of entertainment down there for Chaz. Ten laps is a long way, and Tony Groves has come through with the victory. Great uh, QP loop sports sedan race. And there are the results. Tony Groves brings it home. He'll drag great points out of this weekend. Francois Habib, Johnny Pilotto, Greg Lynch, Brian Finn, Stewie Eustace, Andrew Parker, Dean Cam ultimately home in eighth position. Stephen Backer, Chas Talbot, even after uh, a little bit of uh, a pirouette. And uh, Graham Gilliland parked that pit exit there. So I'm not too sure what that's about. Cameron McKee, Gary Avala, Craig Giddy, Alan Argento in that great number 10 Ford XE. Gordon Lovegrove, Arthur Van Orso, Gary Finnamore, Greg Taylor, Graham Gilliland parked up there at the pit exit. Mark Curry, Stutman and the two McLaughlins not taking any part in that race here this afternoon. Thank you so much, Brett Dickey, although it was a little bit uh, entertaining towards the end there. Another sports sedan race you never know till the checker flag drops, do you? No, you don't. And, and I think that's one, um, one thing about this class is... The goods and the bads. You never know what's going to come out on top. Um, just because you got the most horsepower on day one and you've set the fastest time on day one doesn't mean that you're still going to be at the top at the end. Um, like you said, very surprised about Dean Cam. Um, very rare mistake from that outfit. And I know Gary Roberts sitting on the couch at home is probably having a bit of a giggle. Um, so big shout out to everyone and, and everyone um, from the Sports Sedan Association that couldn't make it out. Everyone on the committee. And obviously, everyone here at the Vic State Championship for putting on an amazing event. And thank you, Darren, for having me up here. No problems. Big shout out to Gary Roberts. Took his two miniature cars up to Sydney and gave him a run last week. So, uh, good on you, Gaz. We'll uh, see you back at the uh, QP Lee's Victorian Championships at some stage in the future. Uh, we'll be back. We'll just have a, a quick break. And welcome back to the paddock. I'm joined alongside by Molly Taylor, who is the 2016 Australian Rally Champion and current uh, Extreme E Champion as well. And you've just signed on to compete in the 2022 uh, Extreme E Championship as well with Jensen Button's team, JBXE. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic to have you here in the VSRS paddock. Welcome, Molly. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, it's nice to, to be out here out at Sandown and um, yeah, see, see all different types of racing and just be around motorsport. Could you tell us a little bit why you're here? We love having you here, but we just want to know a little bit more, a little bit more about why you're here. Yeah, we're just helping out uh, Mason Kelly, who's racing in the Excel Series. I uh, got to know Todd and, and the Kelly family through TCR a few years ago, and yeah, we've just been good friends ever since, and it's great to be able to help out, and um, I'm not sure how useful I am on the spanners, but I give it a go, and yeah, it's just nice to be around, and he's doing such a fantastic job as well, so nice to, to help him with his journey. Are you still riding a massive wave of energy off the back of that uh, 2021 championship win? And, oh, sorry, the win in Extreme E? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I definitely feel like I need to sleep for a, <laughs> for a week. It's been, you know, going off the back of that to Dakar and then just uh, got back from Saudi four days ago. So, um, yeah, it's definitely, it's a lot's been happening. It's been an amazing experience. Um, yeah, due, due for a, a week of sleep, I think. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's just been... Amazing to be part of this this new series and have all these incredible experiences, be able to you know travel, particularly in the last few years. Um, so yeah, I'm very very grateful. 
We are super spoiled to have Molly Taylor, Australian Racing Royalty, join us back here in the paddock at round one of the VSRS here at Sandown International Raceway. Facebook isn't the only place that you can support Australian grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. To see more real race cars, more live events and more of the racing you love, subscribe to the Blendline TV YouTube channel, sign up to our mailing list or bookmark and subscribe to our website at blendline.tv. Thanks for continuing to support grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. Bosch Motorsport provides technology for racing. Worldwide experience from all major categories of motorsport is in your race car when you use Bosch Motorsport components. Ignition system, sensors, fuel delivery and high-end electronics. Bosch Motorsport brings race-proven quality and performance to your motorsport machine. Search for Bosch Motorsport Australia or find us at boschmotorsport.com.au. There's good, there's better and then there's Bosch. Bosch Motorsport when quality and performance matter. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the first round of the 2022 Victorian State Circuit Racing Series. A little bit of a track inspection going on down here. You've got the Pyuk officials from the recovery crew, the MG Car Club down there as well. Just having a look at the area of turns 8 and 9 just before we get the third race of the weekend out for Formula V with thanks to Australian V-Dub Performance Centre. Steve DeVries and Auto Action's own Dan McCarthy here in the box. Dan, Auto Action... Edition for uh, February and March has just dropped. Give us a quick rundown on uh, all the the main points, I think, about uh, why people should pick this fine magazine up since 1971. Been one of the leading publications of auto action in the country. Oh, thanks, mate. Good to be here. Yeah, as you say, new edition of AA just gone on to the shelves. Yeah, we've got plenty in this one. Looking ahead to the supercar season, a uh, big preview in there. Looking ahead to that at Sydney Motorsport Park, of course, commences uh, next weekend. So... Very much looking forward to that. Had a chat uh, with uh, Garth Tander. Uh, he's given his views, his thoughts and opinions on what he thinks is going to happen and play out over the season. A great chat in there as well with uh, one of the leading contenders, Anton Di Pasquale, Shelby Power Racing Team driver, of course. He'll be looking to challenge SVG throughout the year. Of course, he was one of the contenders last year, did very well at SMP late last year. He'll be looking to start the season strongly. Uh, of course, we've also got a few deliveries. The new Formula One cars rolled out. We've seen them in uh, pre-season testing, so we've got those uh, machines as well. And then, of course, all the coverage from Race Tasmania a couple of weeks ago. Really good weekend down at Simmons Plains. I was lucky enough to be there. TCR, S5000, Trans Am, all the news from that weekend. So, yeah, looking forward to this. Uh, this Vic State Realm will also be covered in the next edition on sale in a couple of weeks' time, so you'll be able to find out all the latest news and everything that came out the back of this event. So tune in for that one. As I say, that's on sale in a couple of weeks, and that'll have the likes of, yeah, the F1 preview looking ahead to round one in Bahrain. Thank you very much for the quick summary there. And uh, just getting some word through, it looks like there's a little bit of oil that's been left behind at uh, turn, well, actually the start, you can see it there from turn seven all the way right through to turn eight and turn nine. So just getting the, the track cleanup crew in there just to make sure that that's uh, completely off the track as, or as much as they can get off the track uh, before the Formula Vs come out. And the last thing we want to see is a couple of cars go spinning off at that part of the course. There's been a few too many of them down there across all the categories this weekend. And uh, the volunteers and the officials getting... Uh, that done as efficiently as they can, as they always do at uh, all of the state rounds. And you can see there to become an official, if you want to get close to the action, but uh, you don't have the budget to go racing, you can uh, get uh, 
into being an official. It's all free, and a lot of volunteers uh, give their time to uh, take people under their wings and uh, teach them what they need to know. So you go to motorsport.org.au forward slash officials. Here's your starting point there. Cost you nothing to, uh, to join one of these clubs and uh, start learning all the basics about uh, how to wave a flag, how to do things safely, how to recover vehicles. Uh, and you can start at the very bottom, work your way all the right up through into uh, the likes of race control, scrutineering, uh, and all sorts of uh, different roles. There's, I, I think I can't remember how many I counted in the uh, officials' briefings this morning. Probably well over 100 to 120 people here just to get this race meet underway. Absolutely, yeah. We, we rely on the officials and volunteers to make these events happen once again. Uh, Auto Action, we had a feature on that a couple of weeks ago. So uh, if you want to read about that as well, and that goes through all the different jobs and everything from, yeah, in the uh, race control and all that sort of thing. So, yeah, we, that was a previous feature. So if you want to purchase that one, get in touch with the Auto Action office and we can send you a copy of that as well. But, yeah, very much rely on the team here, the volunteers and the officials. We are looking forward to this one. Here we are. This is what we wanted to see. The Formula Vs rolling out for their final 10-lap encounter. That's it. Here they come. So the uh, crews down at uh, Dandenong Road are pretty happy with the state of the track there. And out onto the circuit come the, uh, well, what has been a 26-strong uh, field of Formula Vs for the weekend. There's a couple of uh, ones that are missing this particular race due to the, uh, an incident in race two earlier this morning. Quick roll through the grid. So Jake Rowe was given the win in race number two this morning, having just been judged ahead of a Reef McCarthy by the time they got to the safety car being called. So he's on the pole for this one in the 66 for GR Motorsport Electrics. Reef McCarthy for Beecham Racing, position two. Heath Collinson and John Casamati on the second row of the grid. Heathy managed to stay with Jake Rowe and uh, Reef McCarthy for a good portion of that race this morning. And John Casamati had Lee Partridge for company, and Ash Clifford, who had a little bit of a tardy start, uh, recovered to finish that one in position six. Phil Gardner has been having a great weekend in the BC Formula V in car 73, and has been in the top 10 all weekend long so far. Lucas Kawam in position number eight. He's the first of the Acura Motorsports cars, one of five here this weekend in that stable. Adam Nicholson, stable mate in the Acura team alongside him. Isaac Woodhouse on debut this weekend, position 10. Brian Budigig and Andre Curran, another one of the debutants for the weekend, position 12. Rob Vile in the Sanctum Skin Car, which has now changed into the uh, the Golf uh, Porsche livery for this year, position 13. Nick Kerr's made his way through the field after an off in the first race yesterday, starting out at 14. Russell Saunders in his last race here in Victoria. He's actually moving up to Queensland uh, in the next couple of uh, weeks. So we wish him all the very best for his new ventures up there in the Sunshine State. Next to Darren Power, Claudia Lennox and uh, Ed and Felipe off of 17 and 18. Josh Munro's had a little bit of a trying weekend with some brake dramas out of P19 and uh, alongside Kelly Egan again out of the Acuris Motorsport Stable. Charlie Tracy Richardson also on debut this weekend. Pretty solid uh, and uh, pretty consistent and clean racing. Uh, aboard the Jaser out of position 21 then David Stewart in the 77 uh, Summa Rudrapatna is uh, in position number 23 and Damien Spinello is probably going to move up to P24 because Mick Fisher and Nick Grigg who came together in that first uh, race of the morning for the V's which was race 2 for the weekend uh, they've both got uh, terminal damage and uh, they were taking no further part in this one Yeah shame that earlier incident as you say but Fortunately, uh, both drivers got out okay, but their cars not looking quite so good. So we're just seeing the cars at the back of the field taking their places, and we're about to see the green flag wave to commence the final Formula V encounter of the weekend. There you can see it. Officials right on the scene, right on cue. Thank you, Dan. And five-second board goes up in the tower, and we look towards the front row. McCarthy is on the outside this time bit of non accustomed to where he's been for majority of the time and away we go and it seems that that position two grid spot seems to be the one that has a little bit more grip because it is sort of the traditional racing line gets a very very good reaction but side by side rose with him lockstep of the way here comes partridge down the inside uh, of john casamati 
four position. Moves up one spot in the MPC number 28. That's a good start from him. Ash Clifford just sort of tucks in behind Casamati for turn one and probably going to let him go here and just slot back into P6. So all very, very neat and tidy. Good start from Partridge up one. Good start from Lucas Kawam. He's up one as well ahead of Phil Gardner. There he goes in the 23 out of turn four. Good moment there for Casamati on the exit of turn number four. He'll be vulnerable up the back straight to Clifford now. As we can see, those two cars there side by side, the white and black car and the yellow and black car. So that's Clifford moving up the inside. As we look further forwards, there's a move for the lead here. So McCarthy going defensive. Rowe's going to try and swing it around the outside. They're going to be side by side. That's awkward. Rowe will have to slot back in, and he does so. As we see them running over that dust, they're trying to get it stopped. The oil down, all the spillage. It's going to be really hard to get the thing stopped. Look at that. That's quite a unique shot, that one. It's, a very, it's, like, it's like coming through a fog haze at the moment. You just don't know where the uh, the track is. There's so much of it down there. It looked like Adam Nicholson was having a bit of a look up the inside of Phil Gardner as well, and he's got that position done. Nick Kerr's also gone through on Phil Gardner as well. So plenty of spots changing hands on the opening lap here. It was like a venture into the unknown going down into turn 7, 8, and 9. They just didn't know where the oil was, and uh, everybody ahead of them was the pioneer. And you can hear the tyres protesting as uh, they all scrambled for a little bit of track. And this is good to see. It's a group of four this time, not a group of three. Partridge doing a really good job to hang on to the lead. Three pairs, row locks up the outside front, goes a little bit wide at one. Managed to keep it on the road, though, and I don't think he'll lose the position to Collinson. So just ground there that he lost. As you said, down at Dandenong Road, they seem to be sticking a lot more to the left-hand side than you traditionally see, not using all the road on the outside where all the cement dust was because that stuff, you never know quite how much grip it has. At, at Sandown, we saw James Golden get on the cement dust after an earlier incident in a former or a race prior, and he went off the road down at the hairpin in the final race. So certainly can affect the, uh, the braking points on these cars. Casamati going backwards here with Ash Clifford now having cleared him. He's actually got quite a good margin. So he'll start to be, become a bit vulnerable to Nick Kerr, who's got a good turn of speed. Dragging along two of the Acura cars in Kawam and Nicholson. Phil Gardner just recovering here. Stuck between Nicholson and the, uh, the number 12 of Isaac Woodhouse. With Andre Curie behind him at the number 5. So from JRD, stable mates, stay together. A spin a, sure. I reckon there's a spin down there towards turn number nine. If you hear the tyres protesting, yes it is. Brian Buttigieg, well called Dan McCarthy. So that looks like he's just gassed it up a little bit too much on the exit of turn nine. Yeah, you could hear, couldn't you, the tyres. You could hear that somebody had spun tyres complaining enough and around he went number 85. So fortunately no damage play on but he's got a lot of work to catch back up to where he was that's a bit sad too because he was sort of on the back door of the top 10 there as we get the Acura cars starting to mix it up here Nick Kerr and Lucas Kwan that's an ambitious move sort of going toward the first corner and pulled out of late almost contact there between the number 95 of Nicholson and the 73 of Gardner and two debutants in Woodhouse and Kieran just doing a nice job just to stay lockstep with the cars ahead of them here, not pulling anything silly. And then Rob Vile in the, the beautiful number seven golf coloured car. He's trying to tack onto the back of that group of six as well. Different uh, variety of Formula E, uh, Formula V, Formula e. That's safety, Ooh, safety cars car. No, different, uh, different style of Formula V cars. Certainly uh, the 73 machine a bit older, but it's good to see that, you know, there's different Formula V cars, some faster than, uh, sorry, some older than others. So, so we've got a bit of work coming through that there is a car that's come to a halt at the exit of the final corner looking through the timing screen just to see who that might be. Possibly Joshua Munro in the number 76 Logic Carlos car, which has had some brake dramas throughout the weekend. And wondering if they've had a recurrence of that. A little bit of a difficult line of sight for uh, us in the commentary box to try and find it. That's uh, looking across the circuit. And there he is there, he's in the gravel trap. So that's actually on the inside of, it's actually after the exit of a turn 12, it's on the inside circuit. You can actually see the grid boxes that normally stretch around the final corner here at Sandem when we have some of them big 50 uh, car XL races that sort of go right around the last couple of corners. He's off the track, thankfully. So really out of the, the major firing line, but it is a spot where a number of cars pull up when they uh, need to wipe off some speed. 
Not sure if he's done it all on his own. Doesn't look like he's uh, he's pulled off due to some sort of gremlin. Looks like he might have had a spin. So yeah, under safety car conditions now, it's uh, McCarthy from Rowe, as we say. So it's, it's winner takes it all with these two. Whoever finishes higher in this one will take the round. So it's McCarthy, Rowe, Collinson in third position, Partridge fourth, Casamardi in fifth position, Clifford in sixth, Kerr. We saw Kerr have a crash in the opening race of the weekend. He was in the top five at that point in time. Uh, unfortunately, uh, crashing on the run down into Dandenong Road uh, in race two, made a great recovery and has continued to do so. Now sits in P7. Just a quick note there. You can see on the bottom of the screen for viewers on Facebook, if you want to uh, watch the HQ Holdens and the Porsche 944 Challenge, which are not after this race. They are after the improved production race, which is after the Formula V. Uh, please tune in for a, a later stream. So follow for uninterrupted coverage. Please watch the Blendline TV on YouTube. Obviously, there's a few dramas going on uh, in recent times with the, the Facebook page. So just so you uh, don't miss out on the last couple of races of the weekend, please uh, keep a look out for the, uh, the YouTube link or the updated YouTube link. That'll be posted in the, uh, the next few uh, moments or so. Great coverage again this weekend from, from Blendline TV. It's been great since they've jumped on board with the Big State Series, obviously. A couple of rounds in 2020, three rounds in 2021, but hopefully we will get all five rounds live on Blendline TV this week, uh, this year. So. Yeah, definitely hoping that that uh, is the case. We've uh, obviously had a disrupted couple of years uh, with Blendline getting on board last year to uh, start the process. It was looking fairly good for a while. Mm. And, uh, of course, then we all ended up back into isolation again. But, uh, with everything opening up, we do pray that we're going to be able to get the full five rounds in this year. Two trips to Sandown. Another one to come in August. I believe, sorry, July, I believe. Uh, two trips to Phillip Island, May and September. And Winton in a another month or so from now. It's already looking very, very good. So Winton is the 26th, 27th of March. Phillip Island, 14th and 15th of May. Sandown back here again, the, uh, the hot dog round, as it's affectionately known, put together by the Sports Sedan Association of Victoria, August the, 2nd, the 12th to the 14th. And Phillip Island, which is the 23rd to the 25th of September, which is across the grand final long weekend uh, for the uneducated. <laughs> Indeed. As, Ar as Darren said yesterday, we, uh, we ignore all the aerial ping pong <laughs> that uh, goes on in the at that particular time of the year uh, for those that want to go motor racing. Indeed. So it looks like we'll be having at least one more lap under safety car. Just look into the final corner. The recovery team are down there now and I can see the machine being towed away. So... Hopefully, at the end of this one, we might be going green. Here is the machine. Doesn't look like it's got any damage. So, I'm not quite sure why that didn't just uh, restart and uh, take back to the track. So, I'm not entirely sure on that one. But as we can see, it doesn't look too badly damaged at all. No, it looks like he just became beached and couldn't get himself out if the car's towing itself along freewheeling without a problem. Probably not a, uh, a brake gremlin like they've had a couple of times so far this weekend. Just looks like it's uh, gone and had a little bit of a spin or something and been caught in the, the gravel trap there. So we are going to, looks like it's going to go back to green flag running this time around. So a quick recap of the order. You can see on the left hand side of your screen there, McCarthy, Rowe and Collinson. So the, the top three, although a bit with a little bit of a change at the front there, is uh, pretty much the, the group of three that have been together for the whole entire weekend so far. Partridge will have to be on his game to make sure that he stays with them at the safety car restart here, as will everyone else behind. Casamardi uh, was fifth. Uh, he had then gained that position back over Ash Clifford. He is uh, in front of him there on the track. There he is. Nick Kerr's had a good, solid start. He has moved up from uh, 14th place on the grid all the way up to 7th. So he's the big mover and shaker of this race before the yellow flag came out, which is great to see for Nick Kerr. Kawam, Nicholson and Phil Gardner, who's lost a couple spots, is uh, the last man inside the 10 in the uh, the green car, just there about halfway along the uh, the train. Then comes Isaac Woodhouse in the number 12, and Andre Kieran behind him. Rob Vile, Russell Saunders, Darren Power, Ed Philippe's moved up to 16th place ahead of Claudia Lennox, and Sumer Rudra Patna, 18th. Egan 
Tracy Richardson, Buddha Gig and David Stewart are uh, the cars in order as we go back to green. Great restart. Look at them all. Nice tight formation, all in single file. There are a couple of cars that uh, pulled out for an overlap there. Looks like Phil Gardner was a bit slow away, maybe in the wrong gear there because he has been gazumped. Look at them all. They're all over the place. Either side, he's almost like he's in the sucker hole back there and just losing spots as Collinson moves up to P2 behind McCarthy and Partridge doing a good job to stay with them and behind them, it's Casamati and the number what was that one back there? The uh, the number 17 at Clifford, who was uh, getting together again and uh, resuming their battle. McCarthy left the restart to the final possible moment. He didn't put his foot down until he got to the start-finish line. And that meant that uh, the guy behind Rowe was unable to get a slipstream and slingshot his way by before they got to turn one. And in fact, it allowed Collinson, who got a good run on the both, slipstreamed the pair and allowed Rowe, uh, allowed him to get Rowe. But Rowe is fighting back right here, right now. Into turn six, retakes second position as he tries to catch back up to McCarthy. Good smart driving there by Heath Collinson as well. Realizes it is. There goes Casamati, exit stage right, and there's the fence. So. Safety car restart, and well, they always say safety cars breed safety cars, and I think we're about to get another one, sadly. Looked like there was a lock-up there for Casamati coming down the hill through turn seven and eight, and he's definitely okay there. Maybe a little bit shaken up, not as shaken up as Nick Grigg was uh, in the race two this morning. For the moment, pressing on, but I fear the uh, safety car boards and flags might be going out again for this one. For the minute, we are under green and there's a car slowing in the back. That's Nicholson. That's Adam Nicholson in the 95. He's slow coming out of the corner there. And still green flag running. So Kawam looking down the inside of Rob Vile and gets that pass done. Likewise, I think it's, it looks like it's Woodhouse and Kieran back there exchanging positions. And we're about to take a look at what happened down here at turn nine. So Casamati, you can see that, missed the apex at turn six. And yep. Lock both fronts, pinch the brake, and straight on. That was on the cement dust we were referring to earlier on. He was that little bit wider, and I think he just outbroached himself on that cement dust, and it skid out wide. Lost his bearings there probably as well, all the way back at turn six, getting uh, having to gather it up pretty quickly and make his move. So maybe they're just going to run with the double-waved yellows down here, or single-waved yellows at turn nine. So officials feel that that car's in a good enough spot they can continue racing, so it's good to see. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Good call from the officials. We want to see this race finish under green flags. A few drivers putting their hands up to acknowledge the double wave yellow flags. That's very good scene then, as we can see after Dandenong Road. Back to green flags under the Pemrite Bridge. So it's just that turn that's under yellows. We are very much still green up the inside, car number 85. Big lunch from Brian Buttigieg there, and that exposed Phil Gardner to Ed and Felipe behind as well. He's run a little bit wide at the final corner, so this is a really good scrap here further down the order. You've got uh, Kelly Egan there in the battle as well. Looks like some Rudra Patna might be uh, in there as well in car 60, and he is. So two by two, just like Noah's Ark coming down the front straight here. And somebody's got to give. Sorry, no, that's Darren uh, Darren Power in the 44. I do apologise, not Kelly, uh, not Samibur and Patner. It's uh, Darren Power there in the 44. Certainly being contact on the number 73 machine. We can see at the front of this pack with a little bit of nose damage as 85 once again. As a look up the inside. But yeah, you can see the nose. It's flapping around probably. a bit there, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, a little bit sideways for Felipe out of the uh, out of turn four as well. Looks like, oh, just looking at the angle of that car as it left, there might be a little bit of a, uh, I'm not sure if it's damage on the right, uh, sorry, left rear wheel. It just looked, the angle I was looking at, it just looked like it might have been a little bit cambered in slightly. So not sure if he's made a little bit of contact with something there, but he's a little bit exposed now coming up the back straight. Darren Power's gone through uh, pretty easily there. Power's yeah. passed. You can see. Power's passed, yes, very good. And down the hill they come here. Down into Danning on Road for one more time. So as the leaders cross the line, there is two laps to go. Reef McCarthy just set the fastest lap of the race, one tenth of a second faster than Rowe. Those two still very much line astern, though. Only six tenths between them. They've certainly gapped Heath Collinson, though, since the restart. It's very much a two horse race now up front. It certainly is. We keep looking at this battle here for further down the order. This is for. Uh, oh, and a spinner, and Heath Collinson. That is rare. 
That's either that's a failure. He's lost the right lead. rear wheel. And that's in a fairly dangerous spot, I would say. And I think we're probably going to call a halt to proceedings here because that car definitely can't move under its own power and is in the firing line at a quite high speed part of the circuit. I can see yellow flags getting, or well, they're in hand there at uh, turn five. As I was just saying, he's, he was by himself six tenths behind these two ahead and a good three or four seconds behind. So I reckon a, a, a mechanical failure. There. I think so too. That that looks quite nasty as well. It looks like it's a definitely a mechanical failure. Heath is quite a smooth driver and red flag. So that will call this race with the what was uh, one and a half laps remaining when it comes out. So that will be, unfortunately, your finishing order as they sit right now for this one. So it'll be Reef McCarthy from Jake Rowe and Heath Collinson, who was in third, is uh, going to fall out of that place and give third place overall in the uh, third and final race to Lee Partridge. Well, it depends if it goes back a lap under well, red flag. Or it might flags. go back a lap under red flag too. So that's the, uh, that's as it looks the way that it is right now, they might go back one lap too. You're absolutely spot on there. So we'll wait to see how that is judged. Then behind Partridge came uh, Ash Clifford, Nick Kerr, who'd had a fantastic start from 14th, moved up to 6th. And here's the thing. Oh, there, that's gone. That's, uh, that wheel is parted company. And I, given that is the right rear on that car, you, know, you can't say he's probably hit the inside kerb there and uh, done anything. That's just gone in and completely let go. So that would have been a uh, quite a high-speed incident for Heathy. And... Probably not something he's experienced for quite some time. Very much the loaded side of the car, that back right under acceleration out of turn number one, very much the loaded wheel there. So certainly let go at that point and we saw it bouncing off into the grass on the outside of turn number one. So red flag, the right call there, either it's safety car or red flag, but with a wheel loose, I think the uh, right decision was made with two laps to go. Yeah, I think so too. They are lining up in the pit lane like uh, they are supposed to under the regulations here for a red flag and if they elect not to continue which I dare say is going to be the case the uh, car controller there holding the stop sign at the top of pit lane will uh, change that to a go and he will direct them to the right or in, right on your screen right for the driver as well uh, and they will turn around and go back into the uh, the pit paddock area good to see uh, a crowd at the top on top of the uh, pit garages there uh, down on pit straight we've had a good crowd of people here this weekend uh, many in the uh, pit grandstand which is always good to see and also over on the hill down near uh, the Penrite bridge so always good to see a crowd out here um, and we are looking forward to hopefully delivering some green flag action but I'm not sure we'll see it in the V's I think this may conclude the weekend yeah no I think and there's a uh, I think the system officials there basically uh, waving their hands saying look this is uh, it's done and dusted and there's going to be the uh, the top three getting out of their cars you can see uh, Reef McCarthy and Jake Rowe jumping out there and around the back goes Lee Partridge and there goes Ash Clifford so I dare say there'll be a handful of drivers that will be going around to come into their boxes. A couple will probably exit uh, stage right before they get there. I know Ed Felipe, who's a bit further down the order, is uh, just there in garage 46. So he'll probably just turn straight in there rather than go around the back. Well, they may just direct them all the way around, I think, and then make them come back down the pit lane again. Nope, there goes Felipe, stage right before then. Uh, and a number are out the back and a number are a bit further up the order in pit lane towards the uh, the pit entrance. So they're going to have to sadly go the long way around and uh, come back into the garages. So just judging by the fact that you've got McCarthy and Rowe at the head of the queue there, they're going to do the other uh, podium presentations just in that general area. I'd say that uh, Heath Collinson will probably be backdated as the uh, third place overall. So coming back to uh, your corrected statement before, that they will go back one lap and uh, they will call it based on there. Just a reminder, HQ and uh, Porsche 944s will be on a, a later stream uh, on the Facebook page. Uh, they will post the new link, and uh, you can tune in for your coverage coming up 
on Blendline TV on YouTube. Let's uh, have a little bit of a short break, catch our breath here while the officials clean up a couple of cars out there on the circuit for Formula V with thanks to Australian VW Performance Centre. We'll uh, be back with the improved production cars with thanks to Prestige Hino in a very, very short amount of time. Facebook isn't the only place that you can support Australian grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. To see more real race cars, more live events and more of the racing you love, subscribe to the Blendline TV YouTube channel, sign up to our mailing list or bookmark and subscribe to our website at blendline.tv. Thanks for continuing to support grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. Bosch Motorsport provides technology for racing. Worldwide experience from all major categories of motorsport is in your race car when you use Bosch Motorsport components, ignition system, sensors, fuel delivery and high-end electronics. Bosch Motorsport brings race-proven quality and performance to your motorsport machine. Search for Bosch Motorsport Australia or find us at boschmotorsport.com.au. There's good, there's better and then there's Bosch. Bosch Motorsport when quality and performance matter. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan McCarthy and Steve DeVries here continuing on from a, uh, a chaotic Formula V third race of the weekend. And now comes the improved production cars with thanks to Prestige Hino, Melbourne's most awarded Hino dealer. Actually, Australia's most awarded Hino dealer, I should say. They are just a few minutes down the road here from Sandown Motor Raceway. And along with uh, DLL Photography and Design, Pro Cut Tree Services, and of course, Yokohama and Traction Tire Centre and uh, a long, long list of uh, improved production cars coming through uh, on your screen here. Adam Poole, who's uh, dominated the, the weekend so far, despite the off in the last race. He uh, retains the pole from Luke Gretsch Combo, Jared Tonks in third place and Craig Pierre Gross in the XC Falcon in position four. And he's sort of been toward the pointy end of the field for most of the race weekend so far. As we look a little bit further down the order, there's been uh, a little bit of moving and shaking as the uh, as the races have panned out. We've got uh, Cade Lehman in fifth place, who's uh, having a birthday this weekend. Danny Timewell's recovered fairly well after the uh, poor start that he had to race number one yesterday. Worked his way from almost rear of grid, essentially, up to 12th, and 12th up to 6th in race two this morning. Ian McLennan in position seven after a little coming together on the opening lap. And Michael Hart loves this place in the, uh, the VS Commodore in position eight. Mark DeFarnas, who's battled several uh, power steering and other gremlins this weekend. He's on a good recovery drive up to ninth uh, for the weekend so far. Peter Dixon's having one of his best rounds as well in position 10. Adrian Torrento's got the little four-wheel drive Audi S3 into 11th for this one. John Dawson's been having a, uh, a race-long battle in race two and a little bit of a battle in race one with David Bone and the little Datsun who is uh, right behind him. There he is on the uh, seventh row of the grid with Grant Ogle in the XR5. Wayne Twist and uh, Dallas Brooks who have been around the category for quite some time in there as well. Anthony Johnson in his BMW. Steve Zorkus and Callum Jensen you saw at the back end of that last race had quite a uh, humdinger of a battle and uh, a late pass by Steve Zorkus at the final corner to uh, secure the over two, sorry the under two uh, race win uh, earlier this morning. 
Just looking further down the field, the final cars just beginning to line up. There's a couple of vacant spots, so a couple of cars not made it out for this final encounter. So that's a bit of a shame, but in a field this big, it's it's what you expect, isn't it? Absolutely. It's uh, There's been 36 cars were registered for the event, and a couple have unfortunately got their own fair share of gremlins and are not in this one. But here we go for Prestige Hino. Race three for improved production. The light's on. And out they go. And off the start line, Jared Tonks absolutely missed the start completely. He's been swallowed up. He's gone back to about 10th place, I would say, to start. Peter Dixon, the same thing. Peter Dixon stalled on the grid. So all that good talk, we were talking him up, and he's stalled it there. Luke Rich Cumbo's under fire from the Falcon at Craig Piergross. Little bit of rubbing, little bit of contact going through turn number one. Not the same sort of contact we had in race one this morning between the Falcon and a Commodore. Or actually, Falcon and the Monaro, I should say. But for the moment, Pierre Gross up into P2. Here comes Cade Lehman down the inside of, the, of LGC in the GC electrical HSV Senator at turn four. He won't have the straight, le or the, the, uh, straight line speed to get past the Senator here. And Gretsch Cumbo will hold on to P3 for the moment. Frantic stuff on those opening couple of turns, and as we see on the pit straight, they're trying to clear the number 21 machine before the cars come back around. Hopefully we can keep it under green flag, but look at that lead from Paul. As the battling occurred behind, he's managed to pull out quite a significant margin from Pierre Gross. There's another spot for Danny Timewell, moves up ahead of the uh, Pro Cut Tree Services Monaro of Ian McLennan, and it's Bryce Peter Budge. So we're going to, at uh, turn three, and uh, yeah, it's a very uh, awkward point. Oh, it looks like he's tried to turn the wheel left there. They're both pointing the same direction, but the, uh, the BMW has ground to a halt, and all that effort to try and clear the stricken 21 of Peter Dixon from the grid, which the Pike Recovery crew, they were, they were hustling. They were hauling that car down the front straight as fast as they could. They've unfortunately uh, probably had a little bit more time on their hands to do it, because there's another recovery truck on its way to turn three. Tonks, who we saw start from the second row, make a really poor start. Fell back a lot further back than P7, but yeah, clearly made a bit of a recovery in those first few turns before the safety car was deployed. So yeah, sits position seven. Certainly uh, the safety car neutralising things will benefit him even more. Absolutely, it'll just push that pack a little bit closer together. There is Jared Tonks just coming around the first corner. He's uh, sandwiched in there between Ian McLennan's Monaro and uh, Michael Hart's VS Commodore. As the order just wants to take a little bit of a detour away from the what we call the optimal line here at turn three. And you can see there, Poole in the TRP Duckwork Monaro is uh, at the head of the queue. Craig Piergross, then back to Luke Gretsch Cumbo. Kate Lehman with a very good start from position five, gaining a spot with the uh, unfortunate demise of Jared Tonks. Danny Timewell picked up one. And uh, Ian McLennan also has picked up another one because of uh, the off-track excursion there. Uh, or the incident he had at the start of the race and just doing the right thing here, pulling that car as far as they can and as quickly as they can off the circuit. Very much a uh, Holden circuit this one, or has been this weekend anyway. The V8 power, uh, eight of the top nine machines made by the General, the other one being Pierre Gross in the Ford. And what a machine that is, a really distinct looking car, isn't it, compared to all the other ones around it? And to think that this time last year when they rolled that uh, car out of, the, uh, out of the transporter, it actually didn't have a rear boot lid on it as well. So it's actually now got a proper deck lid boot spoiler like you could have bought from the car in the, uh, the, from the manufacturer actually in the day. So it makes a little bit more uh, rear downforce, it just settles the car a little bit. Actually, speaking of rear wings, there was a, uh, a bit of a chat that I had with Paul Vollerman in the, uh, the EA Falcon number 71. There he is, the, uh, the orange and white machine coming over the rise there. Uh, the car actually missing the rear wing. The mounts are there, the rear wing's not. He actually told me he took it off in uh, qualifying or before qualifying yesterday to try and get a little bit more straight line speed because it really wasn't impacting uh, anything dr too drastic here. It's not like Phillip Island where you get a little bit of a benefit in the high speed corners. This place is uh, a lot about point and squirt, so no benefit of having the rear wing attached to it. He hasn't really got a major uh, handle on it just yet as to whether it's actually better or worse, but for the moment it seems to be working. So there yeah. you go. Safety car in, so only the one lap under safety car. Great work by the recovery crews down there at turn number three. And away we go, green flag in the air, and Poole leads them away again.
Great restart, nice and clean. Good portion of the field, line of stern there. I don't think Pierre Gross is going to be close enough for a move, but further back, we see, is that McClellan up the inside? Yep, that is Ian McClellan back up the inside of Danny Timewell. A little bit of curb use there at turn number one, which is okay. It's just nice and smooth, nice and slow. And here we go, Jared Tonks now back down the inside of Danny Timewell as well. The recovering Jared Tonks after that really, really odd, odd restart, I should say. And here we go, John Dawson and uh, here we go, David Bone getting their battle resumed from race two this morning. Adrian Taranto in the S3 wants to buy into that one as well. Yeah, time well losing two spots early this lap. Hopefully there's uh, no issue there. I expected that momentum to continue forwards, but not on this restart anyway. It's unfortunately looking more behind than in front as we see two unique cars here heading into turn six. Here comes Bowen, gets back up the inside of John Dawson on the run to turn six. And this is, you could not get any two more distinct cars in IP in the same category going toe to toe and uh, enjoying it the way that these two have all weekend long. In fact, three cars with the Audi, I mean. Include the Audi in there too, yes. Very, very different cars achieve their speed in such different ways as well. We see the Audi closing in under brakes and around the corner, but that won't last long as we hit the pit straight. Absolutely, so we expect that uh, John Dawson will just pull out couple of meters here every so often you can see it visually the gap just erodes itself uh or actually grows rather to adrian taranto and then back up under brakes john's got to pull that car up a little bit earlier adrian go a little bit deeper here comes brad wyatt through the field and they've battled a fair few gremlins over the course of the weekend including the uh the really really unusual high speed suspension failure yesterday afternoon going down into turn one so they've got that car smartened up and uh, fixed up back on the track, which is great to see. He's charging through the field, trying to close down on the uh, the Nissan Sylvia of Jamie Augustine just up the road. Ogle in that uh, Ford Focus is another one of the uh, slow starting cars at the start of the race. He's now trying to also make a bit of headway, make his way back through the field. Uh, just a reminder that there'll be a, a separate stream at the end of this race going to a separate, separate stream for the final two races, HQs and Porsche 944s. Great action in both of those categories throughout the weekend, and I'm sure that'll continue. So, yes, just remember to change the stream at the end of this one. Challenge on here for second place. Greg Piergross having to play some defence against Luke French Combo out of the final corner. That Ford's got some legs in a straight line, hasn't it? He's uh, managed to stretch away there after being much, much closer up at the uh, beginning of the main straight. Look at the difference in braking performance as well. Luke just closes up a little bit under brakes into the high speed approaches, but just so much more power in a straight line. He's gonna have to be get creative. I was about to say, he's gonna have to get creative and send it down the inside here. Although Craig's a little bit squirrely off there, a bit too happy on the loud pedal coming out of four. McClellan with a uh, mistake there as well. I think he was a bit too happy on the uh, throttle. So now he's coming under pressure from Tonks once again. Those two change positions multiple times in this race already. As we look further forwards, I mean, that's why that's why Luke Gretsch Combo really wanted to make the move at turn number four because of the amount of time he loses down the back straight. But again, already he's caught that up. In fact, he's going for a move up the inside down at Dandenong Road. I used all the curb on the inside, sideways on the way out. Fantastic battle between these two. Yeah, late close down there. I think he had to actually use a bit more of the curb than he ideally wanted to make sure he didn't run into the Falcon there. He got a little bit crossed up coming through six and had to shortcut turn seven a little bit. And oy, very sideways is LGC, the number 25, onto the main straight. Can't say he's not trying, can you? But that sideways moment is allowed Lehman up the inside now. So he might, instead of gaining one position, lose one position. As you head right. down to turn number one once again. No, Luke Gretsch combo showing his superiority under the brakes and into turn one holds position. He absolutely threw the kitchen sink at it then out of the last corner, realising that if he gets a good run out of the corner, that's an interesting line for me. Rally McLennan. cross. Very much rally cross through the turn two and three chicane and a little bit exposed here to Jared Tonks but I'm interested to see that no one's really able to make a, a pass stick at the moment there's sort of some half-hearted lunges and uh, a couple of different uh, trade-offs here with speed and with different uh, cornering attitudes and you see oh, a little bit of there was a little bit of a squeeze job going on back there with uh, McLennan and I think it was Lehman who has to go the other way around resumes back in front 
and just throws the defensive anchor out and just parks it straight down the middle of the road at nine. That looked like it was very close to some contact there. Here goes Gretsch Combo. A little bit creative around the long way at turn 11 and 12 and nails it. The number 640 machine to turn uh, Pierre Gross, they will be looking for a good exit, although he doesn't appear to have it with the straight line speed. I thought he might be able to repass straight away, but that's not going to be the case. He's nowhere near as they come down pit straight just behind. Change for position once again. Here comes McLennan down the inside in the Pro Cup 3 Services Monaro. And that is a very, very clean pass. Just got the stops right on now. I can hear some tyres protesting ahead as well. I hope there isn't a spin here on the uh, the approach to turns two, three, and four. But definitely here on the audio, there was a, somebody's tyres weren't happy. And I think that uh, might be the reason why there's a couple of cars that are just find themselves being lapped here. Scott Appledore in the XL. Malcolm Smith, I think, in the Suzuki Swift having a, to just be negotiated here. Here's the battle for under twos, though. Callum Jensen and Stephen Zorkas. We saw these two have a great battle in the uh, second race earlier on today, and that's clearly continuing in this one. The uh, Peugeot against the little Honda Civic, really good to see. Absolutely. I'm wondering if Callum Jensen's got his rear bumper back from the officials after uh, a little bit of time where it came off here. Just looking, and the answer no. to that is no. Has we come back yet? No, indeed. It might have come back, but uh, maybe no spares uh, or you know, too much repairs to do, so better off leaving it off than putting a damaged uh, rear bumper that'll fall off once again. Back not on not the important part of the car, though, is it? The air goes over the front, not over Correct. the back. Correct, indeed. Absolutely. We see, is that the Sloan Datsun? Uh, yeah, that's David Bone back there. So uh, looks like he's ceded position to Adrian Taranto there. And maybe a little bit slow coming out of turn four and five, which is a shame because he's probably had one of his best race weekends in a long time at this particular track, David Bone. He's one of the uh, leading uh, non holdens Correct. He was uh, right there on the back door of the top ten for a, uh, both, both of the races so far this weekend. And he was uh, in position to do it again. And unfortunately, it looks like he's at falling down the order there. Yeah, he's actually out, well outside the top ten now as the Zorkas and Jensen battle continues just behind the EA Falcon of Paul Vullerman. Really good to see battles up and down the field. We showed you the battle earlier on up the point, yeah, and this is towards the rear, uh, towards the rear, as you say, the under two litre battle. So this really good little hot hatchback fight, I suppose. These cars would have been in uh, what is now TCR Australia several years ago if that was around back then. Yeah, you're not wrong there. And on top of that, too, to think that there's still uh, a couple of under two litre cars that uh, haven't been able to get out on track this weekend. There was one of them that we lost uh, on Friday practice, which is Paul Javotz, uh, with some engine dramas. And Mark Baldwin not uh, here this weekend either from the looks of it. So there's definitely a few still more to come out. Uh, Veltomic, I know, has been actively watching uh, on the, the YouTube page for Blendline TV. Uh, that'll be good to see you out here again and uh, make it a nice little uh, five or six car battle for under twos. Hopefully that'll uh, we'll see those guys get their cars out for winter in a couple of weeks' time. Here's a little BMW battle with the uh, number 19 of Wayne Twist and the number 51 of uh, Villawood's own Anthony Johnson mixing it up down the straight. Again, different uh, types of cars here. The, uh, the V8 power under the bonnet of the number 51 and a different type of power plant and a different looking machine, much older machine for Wayne Twist down the inside, but down the inside of turn one goes Twisty, gets that job done very, very nicely. A yeah, twist of positions there, 19 now ahead in the BMW battle, but they've got a Commodore right on the rear as we have just started the final lap of the race. Paul with a near 14 second margin, but the battle for second. Well, that's well and truly on as they cross the line. Actually, second is uh, Luke Gretsch Combo, who's just up the road. Oh, their, sorry, third, yes. their third's what we're looking at. Third, fourth, fifth, and sixth right there on your screen. Pierre Gross, McLennan, Tonks, and Cade Lehman. Little pop of smoke there from Pierre Gross going into turn one. Down the inside, Tonks was looking, 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 and he wasn't quite far enough up, but McLennan left him a little bit of room here. And for the moment, Maka is going to hang on to position four, but all this fighting and squabbling is allowing the number 640 to get away here. This has been a really great scrap 
for a good part of this race. Certainly has. All four of these guys have been in the mix fighting for that podium position. And just at the moment, it's that Falcon number 640 that is holding on. As we see around the final couple of corners, the reigning improved production champion throws it sideways. He's delighted. Maximum points, round number one in 2022. Adam Paul takes a dominant victory. And he's going to be the man to beat in improved production this year without a doubt as he crosses the line in celebration. So Luke Gretsch come will get home for second overall. The battle here for third, fourth, fifth and sixth has sort of been a little bit disrupted here as uh, Brett Harris gets it sideways off the final corner. Tonks has compromised. Has he got the legs to get back past no. Lehman? No. No for Jared Tonks. So the poor start he couldn't quite recover from and he comes home in sixth. So as we see the leaders cross the line, still very much some battling and some action further down as we see the focus get another position. That's Ogle number 30. Over Dallas Brooks there. And uh, Wayne Swiss looks like he's given up that spot again to Anthony Johnson. So Johnson will look like he's going to come home around about uh, position number 14 as it stands on our screens right now. And then the uh, couple of XLs a bit further down the order. So you've got the number 32 of Scott Appledore here. And there he's actually going to... Uh, he won't get lapped by the under twos. Here, look at this. Steve Zorkas just gnawing away on what's left of the rear bumper of Callum Jensen here as he gets to the line. But Jensen's going to hold this one. And he's going to take on as in under twos. So that's been a really, really humdinger of a fight all weekend long between those two. It's actually a pretty commendable effort from... Uh, Stevie Zorkas, considering it's not the, uh, the the race motor in that car, just sort of scrapped it together. So there's confirmation of your order. Well, it's so nice that his name's up top there twice. <laughs> Adam Poole in the Monaro gets the uh, the chocolates and he gets maximum points from the weekend. To Luke Gretschkumbo and Craig Pierre Gross, uh, third overall in that race. Ian McLennan, Cade Lehman, Jared Tonks, fourth through to sixth. Danny Timewell lost a spot down to seventh. Michael Hart was eighth. Mark Defanis ninth. And then the man who got tenth in that one was Adrian Taranto in the Audi S3, a little four-wheel drive Audi S3, which goes great in the wet. But uh, sadly, the predictions of a possible thunderstorm here this afternoon uh, haven't come about. So he's going to be looking forward to uh, all the rain that came down in Winton in a very brief shower last time out uh, last year and see if that repeats in a month's time. Don't forget, guys, if you're about to uh, tune in for the HQ Holdens and the Porsche 944 Challenge, please jump over to Blendline TV on YouTube and pick that up. There will be a, a new live stream link to cover those races. The, uh, everyone's favourite, the HQ Holdens, will be out in a few moments. Facebook isn't the only place that you can support Australian grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. To see more real race cars, more live events and more of the racing you love, subscribe to the Blendline TV YouTube channel, sign up to our mailing list or bookmark and subscribe to our website at blendline.tv. 
Thanks for continuing to support Grassroots Motorsport with Blendline TV. Bosch Motorsport provides technology for racing. Worldwide experience from all major categories of motorsport is in your race car when you use Bosch Motorsport components. Ignition system, sensors, fuel delivery and high-end electronics. Bosch Motorsport brings race-proven quality and performance to your motorsport machine. Search for Bosch Motorsport Australia or find us at boschmotorsport.com.au. There's good, there's better and then there's Bosch. Bosch Motorsport when quality and performance matter. Big reminder to anyone left on the streaming, change over to Blendline TV on YouTube for the last two races for the day. The HQ Holdens Race 3, 10 lapper, and of course the Triple Eight Home Loans 944 Challenge still to come your way. Darren Smith and Dan McCartney in the booth here to bring it home for these last two races. A fantastic opening weekend for the 2022 Victorian State Series. We couldn't ask for better weather. We certainly could have asked for better uh, strength in numbers within the fields as well. They've been very, very strong. Here is the grid for the last race for the weekend for the HQs. A big day to everyone down there in the HQ pit lane. And we look forward to setting the tyre power. HQs out over 10 laps in a, just a couple of moments. Perry Beckers will lead them away after a great drive in race two. It was one of those typical HQ races that was never going to be over until it was over and it got to the line there. Andrew McLeod out of P2. Andrew Magilton right next to Ray Jardin. Gavin Ross on his return in P5. Steve Banks to Ken Wright and Glenn McDonald in the ready race number 87. Tony Maloney looking for big stuff out of the number 99. He's been up and down and thereabouts in the, uh, in the field out of nine. Graham Francis the next there. Then it'll be Eric Hill and Mick Magilton. Ben Richards, James Henner, Michael Ling, Andrew Lawton and Andrew Lordley. So looking forward to seeing how this one goes. Ray Jardin up a row. Uh, Perry Becker's also up a row. Gavin Ross up a row. So just looking really forward to seeing how the next ten laps play out. Let's hope we have no harm, no foul and we get ten clean laps of racing which HQ have been providing us for Oh, the best part of 20 years in the state series. Look into the front row of the grid. We see uh, McLeod just that about quarter, quarter of a uh, car width ahead of Beckers. It's hard to see from your screen, but I can assure you McLeod is a little bit further ahead. And he, of course, is on the racing line, the outside line used around the final corner. So he's got that racing line. He'll have a little bit more traction. He really is, actually. That Someone's got it. should be calling Perry Beckers forward about a metre. So he's giving that away before they even uh, set the light off. We're right above the... Uh, or opposite the start line and the number 82 has got the best part of a bonnet there but Beckers gets the power down nicely didn't waste it, made it up in the first metre as he goes, the 76 gets away beautifully there so Steve Banks ranging right up the outside draws alongside the number 8 of Ray Jardin and I'm going to say the twin headlight front car Ray Jardin he's now had uh, Andrew Magilton come across him, down one side is Gavin Ross and the other side does is Banks so three wide Perry Beckers, two wheels up on the ripple strip. Nicely done. The HQs are the only cars you can do that with. Pretty compliant as they go over that inside turn one ripple strip. We saw how that ended up for a young lady in the XLs yesterday. Ended over, over end over end. So uh, she's okay, but uh, certainly a HQ is the only one you can get up on those big turn one ripple strips. Gavin Ross up to P4 on his return to HQ Racing. I'm going to say, uh, I'm not going to say that many years, but 10-ish years, it's more than that. But um, Oh, no, the 99 into, that's a turn three. We didn't see that live, but the 99 just backing off the wall. Now there's another one definitely wedged up there. It's a twin headlight front car there as well, and it looked to be a green car, so it could be Eric Hill in the number 16. So... Uh, no, Eric.
Derek Hill's not playing any part in this one. Anyway, the race continues. We hope that uh, that car does get moving out there because the last thing we want to do is see another safety car here today. As we see them coming to the final sequence of turners, Beck is after losing the lead, started from pole, lost the lead to McLeod. He's uh, unfortunately for him looking in the mirrors a little bit more at Magilton over that back section of track more than ahead. Fortunately, we've stayed green. That car has clearly moved out of the way down at turn three, which is great. That's what we wanted. Ten clean laps as we see the first possible change of position. Lap number two, turn number one. And up the inside comes Beckers, but McLeod's broken a bit later. He's trying to keep it around the outside. He'll use all the curb, which he does, and he'll have the inside once again for turn number two. Magilton's in there just behind. He's looking at potentially taking second, but they all slot back into position as they were when they crossed the line. So I'm going to say it was Ling that was down in the wall there because that's uh, who's come across the line last. I will, be, I will stand corrected. We do have... Uh, we do have some footage of that, I'm just being told. There's the 91 going through, so that's Hill. Watch the top corner of the screen. Here we go. There it is. Oh, yeah, that's not nice to get mixed up in someone else's uh, trying to launch themselves over the ripple strips. So uh, Eric Hill and uh, was it Michael Ling, I think, so the 91 and the 70, I'm going to say at the moment. Hill is, uh, yeah, that's a long one for those two around there. Thanks, Dan. And uh, thanks, guys, in the van for that replay, straightening that out. But, uh, no harm, no foul on this top of uh, seven or eight cars. They uh, continue on with uh, now nine, well, nearly eight laps remaining in this race. But tyre power, the HQs running on their HQ Racing Special Kenda tyres. And uh, tyre power, the uh, tyre retailer of choice around HQ land. Great organisation, fiercely independent. And uh, we wish Chris Lewis-Williams all the very best opening his brand new tyre power in Benalla this week. And, of course, uh, Kevin Stoopman down in sale. who ran HQs for so many years. As we see, two by two, the front two nose to tail, second two nose to tail, although as they take turn one, that's no longer the case. They're all evenly distributed. That's the thing with HQs. You often call something and it immediately turns out to no longer be, be the incorrect. case. incorrect, yes, that's right, yeah. Fact checked and done. Yes. <laughs> Banks there, that car there on screen with GMG green logo across its back window. Fastest car on track. Steve Banks getting around, uh, you know, 137... Five, six, the only one. Actually, no, it's him and Gavin Ross that are operating in the 37s, as is Kenny Wright. So uh, the front three cars obviously holding each other up a bit because in the next four, there's three of them that are into the 37s. They're, they're breaking the uh, barrier, aren't they, through the air, and the guys behind are able to get in the toe and just gain a couple of tenths each lap. That's what that's all about. These front guys are just yeah, in the wind, just being held up. And it is getting a little bit breezier this afternoon. It is. I love the rev matching on the heel toe on these cars. They come down a big blip of the throttle and back down to the second cog and through Dandenong Road. Not a busy gearbox, the three-speed, just uh, up and down between second and third throughout the race. It's all about uh, hands on the wheel and uh, applying the throttle pedal. I mean, these it's actually all about applying the throttle pedal. It's like bearing it to the ground and then 10 laps later releasing it. Well, that was very much the case at the Thunderdome, wasn't it, all those well, years yeah. ago? Yeah, shame that, uh, you know, there's no racing out there anymore, but there's certainly still some HQ racing here at the historic Sandown International Circuit. So we are now three laps into this race. As we can see, the top six cars still very much together in a group. Is, uh, for the first time in quite a while, Becker's had a little bit of a look there at turn number two. That's cost him a little bit of momentum through that chicane. That's always the case. In If you can't make a move in these cars, you often become vulnerable to the car behind part you. Of the, you. You become part of the landscape pretty quickly because yes. the car behind you will uh, certainly gazump you. That's it. Interestingly enough, these HQs these days have become quite precious metal that some 20 years ago you just grab another one, grab another one, grab another one. But uh, these days, these are precious bits of metal, these race cars now, and uh, these guys don't think so. They're out there tearing it up in HQ tyre power. Ten lapper, the final race for the weekend for them. It was about a decade ago, wasn't it, that it appeared that HQs were almost done and dusted. You know, the Commodore Cup was around then. It appeared that, yeah, HQs would be no more, but here we are in 
2022, and they're still going strong. And if anything, Commodore Cup is very much the one. It's not gone. Yeah, strongly. that's absolutely gone. It's interesting. A couple of classes, Formula V and HQ, uh, there was a white paper 15, 18 years ago, whatever it was, with cams as it was back then, and they said these categories are going to be demise. And uh, no, no way. In fact, what it was, it was a red flag to the entrance associations, and they just went out and grew and grew and grew. And uh, HQs, I reckon this is a ripping field. We've got uh, uh, 17, 18 cars here this weekend. Um, you go to a, the odd race meeting here and there, there's, there's 25 cars. I believe these guys are on a Bathurst program coming up. There'll be 60 of them mm -hmm. at Mount Panorama. You can guarantee that everyone will be dusting off whatever they've got to take to Mount Panorama. But uh, this is a testament. This is, this is HQ racing, and this is how it should be in uh, state level one make racing. Andrew McLeod, chased down by Beck, is chased down by Andrew McGilton. Then it's Gavin Ross, Ray Jardin and Banks just rounding out the back of this group and being chased now by Kenny Wright, who's just dropped off the back of that group. Must have had a, a bit of an issue, Kenny. He's uh, not being able to stay with them. He'll work very hard to get back onto the back of this group. We've got six, uh, five and a half laps remaining. As we see Hill going down the straight, Tony Maloney has gone to the pit lane. What a shame. The number 99 really hasn't shone brightly here this weekend. It's a, it's a real shame. Look forward to seeing what he can come back with at Winton in the last week of March. Of course, involved in that lap one incident that we saw earlier on, got crossed up over the kerb and ended up planting the wall on the exit of turn number three. You said about Wright dropping off the back. He, he did, in fact, lose one and a half seconds on that last lap, so I reckon a mistake that we didn't see because I think he's closing back up as this lap evolves. If we look behind, he is there or thereabouts. So I think, yeah, just a mistake on the last lap. Looking, this is the closest that Beckers has been for quite some time. I reckon he might have a run down into turn number one. And here he goes, pulling to the inside in the yellow machine. Number 90, that's Beckers. McLeod on the outside. Number 82, the white and red machine. Into turn number one they go. Beckers has got to try and get it slowed down. Doesn't want to run wide and allow McLeod straight back through. And he hasn't. A very nice, clean pass for the lead. This is very interesting at the moment here. Perry Beckers trying to get through on McLeod and McLeod all but yeah, just saying have it we've still got half a race to go here uh, it will be about positioning now and Gavin Ross is all starting the memory starting to flood back to him as we see Kenny Wright now doing the fastest lap of the race in P7 trying to get back onto the front of the six in front of him but this is uh, this could work out for Andrew McLeod at the moment even Magilton and Ross uh, it's about positioning yourself for that last lap run the run up the back straight, the run into Dandenong Road, the run into turn uh, turn one, two, three, and four to see who can sneak up the inside. Perry Beckers has the lead at the moment, and Andrew McLeod into P2. Jilton, Ross, Jardin, Banks, and Kenny Wright all in this group. But uh, it's not over yet by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, I'll go so far as to say, throw a blanket over these seven and pick a winner. Absolutely. I mean, what you can say is on the last lap, unless mayhem ensues, it will, the winner will come from one of the top two, three or four cars. So they'll be vying for a position trying to be in that top four come the last lap of the race. So there is still four laps to go, so plenty to play out in this one. But as we can see, Beckers with the lead has pulled out a nice little margin, eight-tenths of a second. As we look behind this leading group, this is a battle for eighth position between uh, McDonald and Francis. These two have been battling uh, all weekend long, and here we go, a move for position. Uh, Francis overtook McDonald on that last lap. McDonald's not too pleased about that. He's <laughs> back up the inside, retaliating. And this is what I'm talking about. These guys are not in contention. They've thrown it out, and they said, we're not going to work together. We're just going to try and drag points off each other. And we're, we're sitting here looking for the last spots in the top ten at the moment. I'm going to suggest the uh, the leaders on this lap will the last time we'll see them all line up third of each other. We'll start to see them start to feel each other out, pull out of the draft, see where their car goes in the straight run down into turn one and just see where that they can position themselves for those last two laps. Albeit that Perry Beckers has now got the biggest lead in the HQ race all weekend long now. It's sort of three, four car lengths now and uh, it seems strange to say that that's the biggest lead all weekend but that's the honest truth. Perry Beckers has uh, got a clean set of wheels under him Kenny Wright set now the two fastest laps of the race. A 135.94 is his fastest lap of the race. And uh, it's interesting enough, Rob Rogers has had some lots of success here over the last few years, but hasn't joined us here this weekend. 
big rocket rod, Andrew McLeod as well, has had some, some good results, and Ray Jardin going back in time as well, has had some podiums as well as we just watch these two. This is definitely for the miners in, so just inside the top 10. And the 85 ranging right up on the back, Graham Francis now of Glenn McDonald. There he is, the ready roast, number 87. You can hear the uh, iconic, well-known HQ sound as they pass the camera there on pit straight. As we look forward, uh, right again, the previous lap said another quick one. He was right on the pack he'd caught up. He was there. But again, a mistake on the last lap dropped 2.3 seconds. Uh, costly. Clearly got the speed, but not the consistency in this final race. I agree with you there, Dan. That's exactly what's happening. Now the gap between Gavin Ross and Ray Jardine is just starting to ease out as well as Banks is on the back of him. The quickest car is the one in the back of shot. They're just coming in there now. The white single headlight front car. 135.94 and in fact the only one dipped into the 35s everyone else has not managed to go that fast but he just uh, trips himself up looks at the inside the 76 and that's banks on Ray Jardin Jardin gets pushed around the outside nice use of the ripple strips there doesn't disturb either car Ray Jardin coming under massive pressure now from the 76 driver of Steve Banks back up the front of the field there'll be two laps to go once they come around this time last lap through the top four all set their personal best lap times these two were too busy fighting each other and that's continued this lap so they've been dropped it appears now to be a four horse race up the pointy end so Jardine fifth and just behind him Banks in sixth but yeah I, I'm calling this now as a four horse race yeah, I think we might be right there. Two laps left to go. No one's really fanning out yet. I really started to think that they might start to look, look each other out or they might have done all the, uh, the surmising they can possibly do. It's now just a matter of staying in touch with Perry Beckers as he goes over the back of the ripple strip. Gavin Ross joins them and says, Oh, yeah, I remember. HQs are faster off the back of the ripple strip than they are staying on the, uh, the right side of the ripple strip. Tears the bottom of your car apart, but that's all right. It's fast way round. All about keeping the momentum up so if you can, sure you can is. use all the road. You should use all the road because you just you don't lose that mid-corner speed. You gain that momentum all the way down the next The road, road. ends at the uh, the yellow line. The racetrack ends at the wall. Correct, yes. <laughs> yes, very much so. Here we go for the lead. Once again, these top two, McLeod and Beckers, side by side. McLeod's trying to cram. The Jilton weighs in too. McLeod gets through, still got a lap and a half to go, so McLeod has shown his nose up the back straight, yeah, I can bring it to you Perry, I've got to sit in your slipstream until about 600 metres out of turn 6, and then I'll come on by, so he's shown his card there, what's McLeod got now, what has Gavin Ross got, I'm getting the feeling that Gavin Ross with his green headlights back there in P4 might just be out of contention now, so... Last lap round, Dan, your uh, word was it's a racing four. It probably still is, but there's three that have got better odds on them right here, right now. As when Gavin Ross just tends to drop off. They're shaking them off one, one each lap, just giving themselves a bit of an extra gap, gap to these front three. McLeod, Beckers and Magilton going at it. The last lap of the weekend for the HQs. And we have really enjoyed the tyre power HQs here this weekend. Also brought to us by... GMG Automotive in Box Hill for road and race servicing and repairs and the Division 2 from Rylock Windows and Doors. We look forward to welcoming on more sponsors at each and every round. BW Plumbing and B&B Blasters out of Sandblasting at Round 2. And there'll be plenty more announcements coming along in the Tire Power HQs as each round rolls by for the state championship. The number 70 into the sand pit there. That's uh, Michael Ling. And uh, was sort of towards the rear of the field anyway, but ended up in the Dandenong Road. Here it is. This is the uh, Sheep Stations. Perry Beckers right alongside McLeod, but Jilton watching on there. Beckers, McLeod side by side through turn six and seven and eight down into Dandenong Road. It's going to be McLeod on the inside line, but Beckers goes out over the back there, and that's going to give Magilton the drive on by, as Ross does too. Beckers loses three spots there. Two side by side, Magilton, McLeod. Who's going to take the win here? Side by side, 
the 82 and the 14. McLeod runs wide. Gavin Ross even wider. Oh, Perry Beggars could come through for the bacon here, but it's going to be a three-in-one race. I'm putting the screen away. It's Beckers. Beckers gets it to McLeod, Magilton and Jardin and they are all covered. And then Gavin Ross covered by 0.6 of a second. Your first six places, 0.6 of a second. Jeez, David Amel, we needed you here for that one. That was phenomenal, wasn't it? At the end, the gap between second and third, two hundredths of a second. I tell you what, we're going to have to note that one down when someone comes up and says, what was your best moment out of uh, 2022? That finish, six cars, 0.6 of a second. Talking about Thunderdome heritage, that's how they used to do it there. Absolutely. As we see a replay of Ling, who just locked up, ran wide, and on the curb, loops the machine around. Bit of a shame, but he was able to get back facing the right way. Didn't get it bogged, which is fantastic. And it allowed us to see that fantastic end. It did, and uh, I like the way he gave it a bit of a... Don't argue and gave it a big rev as well. Yes. But, you know, he gave up on my car. Now I'm going to give you a big punishing rev there as well. Is that uh, McLeod who's just stopped there over at Pertec? There's definitely been some contact with the wall, I think. It has. No, uh, Magilton, maybe. Yep, OK. Right, so uh, we think that might be Magilton. We'll try and uh, we'll try and confirm that. Certainly, uh, the 944s, the next cars out on track. A terrific race there. There's Perry Beckers, won the race by 0.1 of a second to Andrew McLeod. Andrew Magilton, 0.14. Then we go to Ray Jardin, 0.2. Gavin Ross, 0.3. Steve Banks, 0.6. Kenny Wright, 1.1. What a finish! The top seven cars there in under 1.2 seconds. Now, that is HQ racing. That's why people love watching the Kiwis. They lined up coming out four wide coming onto the straight. This is oh, a fantastic battle, wasn't it? I thought it was all lost for Beckers down at Dandenong Road when he was out wide, two wheels through the gravel, sliding out sideways. He dropped down to at least third, possibly even fourth. But then the top two battling away into the final sequence of corners, and that allowed... Beckers to come back through and take the win in the final encounter. As we see, we reckon it's Magilton down there. So this has happened uh, on the last lap. This is the uh, other Magilton. Mick Magilton. Yes, there's a couple of Magiltons out there. So yeah, this is Mick Magilton. Uh, has not made it back to uh, the to greet the chequered flag. So the recovery team down there at turn number four trying to clean up that one before the final race of the weekend, the 944s. A massive congratulations to all involved with the Tire Power HQs this weekend. Entertaining racing is what this class is all about. There's a fair bit of camaraderie in the pit and paddock area as well. So congratulations to all involved with the, uh, the HQs. Ray Jardin doing a tremendous job to uh, summons the troops and get them uh, all going very, very well. Just looking for where Ray actually ended up finishing in that race. The screen has changed on me, so I've lost where that was. But uh, certainly congratulations to everyone in the HQs. We're going to take a quick break here in the commentary booth before we launch into the 944 Challenge, brought to us by Triple Eight Home Loans, our last race for the day. Back in a moment. Facebook isn't the only place that you can support Australian grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. To see more real race cars, more live events and more of the racing you love, subscribe to the Blendline TV YouTube channel, sign up to our mailing list or bookmark and subscribe to our website at blendline.tv. Thanks for continuing to support Grassroots Motorsport with Blendline TV. Bosch Motorsport provides technology for racing. Worldwide experience from all major categories of motorsport is in your race car when you use Bosch Motorsport components, ignition system, sensors, fuel delivery and high-end electronics. Bosch Motorsport brings race-proven quality and performance to your motorsport machine. Search for Bosch Motorsport Australia or find us at boschmotorsport.com.au. There's good, there's better and then there's Bosch. Bosch Motorsport when quality and performance matter.
Facebook isn't the only place that you can support Australian grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. To see more real race cars, more live events and more of the racing you love, subscribe to the Blendline TV YouTube channel, sign up to our mailing list or bookmark and subscribe to our website at blendline.tv. Thanks for continuing to support Grassroots Motorsport with Blendline TV. Bosch Motorsport provides technology for racing. Worldwide experience from all major categories of motorsport is in your race car when you use Bosch Motorsport components, ignition system, sensors, fuel delivery and high-end electronics. Bosch Motorsport brings race-proven quality and performance to your motorsport machine. Search for Bosch Motorsport Australia or find us at boschmotorsport.com.au. There's good, there's better and then there's Bosch. Bosch Motorsport when quality and performance matter. Here we go, great recovery there. Gee, the Pike recovery crew have had some uh, air time today, haven't they? One of the hardest working uh, crews around trackside. And before we finish this weekend's racing, a big thanks to everybody that has made their way to the track here, from uh, race drivers to mechanics to families and friends, officials, fans. It's been great to be back at the track where we've been able to have fans watching the racing as well. And those that have joined us online, we send out a massive thanks to the V8 Sloop organisation to Aaron Noonan and all his great people in that growing uh, media company for all of their help this weekend with putting the stream on Facebook for us. A big thanks. Really, really appreciate that. Um, of course, Dan McCarthy staying, McCarthy staying alongside me here. Auto action coming out uh, all the time. Every every time you need, a look, you need something good on print, auto action is there. Indeed, yeah. Just come out with a, uh, another issue couple of days ago so that's got all your supercars preview and interview with Garth Tander uh, talking about uh, yeah, his thoughts ahead of the 2022 supercar season final season with the uh, Gen 2 machines final season with the Commodores and the Mustangs for we uh, move to Gen 3 next year in, in the Camaros so plenty to talk about there grab your next uh, copy of auto action don't walk past it pick it up and take one home with you, absolutely well worth the read. And Dan, who works very, very hard in this commentary group, this series is, uh, well, more, more than integral in getting that out every single time. James Westaway will start the Triple Eight Home Loans Porsche 944 Challenge out of pole position. Good spot to be if you want to try and take it up to Cameron Bella. All it really means from our perspective is that the, the aqua car is now closer to the pit lane and the, uh, the bronze car is further away. So Adam Brewer will start out at three. Richard Howe, good, good to see Richard Howe on the second row of the grid there. Anthony Westaway or Tony to his mates in car three out of P5. Mark Torbett's I guess the fact that Richard Howe's in P4 is because Mark Torbett's is in position six, and we never want to wish that on Mark. He works very hard with this uh, category, and uh, part of the success of this going forward is due to the hard work that Mark puts into it. Back to Andrew Jackman, Mark Fadino, Andrew Jones, Keith Mariner, Jack Attlee out of position number 11 in the number 35 pit lane clothing car. Check that out. Pit Lane Clothing doing all the good stuff. Put one of them on your back. Great T-shirts and uh, regalia, merchandise, etc. Check it out and uh, tell them Jack sent you. James Mitchell, John Benoris, Vlad Kennedy, Carter Fox and Josh Brisbane rounding out our field. There it is. Great shot. Showing the grid here. We can hear what they're talking about on the starters stand. So we might be able to get just that nanosecond more when they go, go and uh, hit that light there. So, fantastic looking field. They always look good, and why wouldn't you keep your Porsche looking good? So all the cars are back 
We're about to see the green flag just behind. We're seeing the uh, there it is. See the HQ of Magilton be brought back into the lane if you see a tow truck behind. But here we go. We're getting ready for the start of the 944s. Just holding, waiting for that tow truck to come in. And then there the lights is. will go on. Here we are. Oh, lights perfect on. Perfect timing by race control. Beautiful work there. And away they go. Bella gets the best start there. The Osfield Oils car of Jamie Westaway just goes, no way. How did he do that? Grabs second gear. Jamie tries to range back up alongside. Holds it on the rev limiter. They draw alongside. Westaway just crowding over into Bella's piece of track there. Nice strategy. I like that out of car one. That's how you get the number one sticker on the side of your car. You just slowly but surely chip away at it. The rest of the field streaming on through for triple eight home loans. All cars on the Yokohama tyres. And they are such a durable race tyre. And fast. There's no... There's really no compromise here. They're fast, they're durable, and often those two things don't go together in a uh, in a race tyre. There's the Keyway Boot Car number 41 of Vlad Kennedy, and uh, Fox rounding out the uh, back of the field there for Carter Fox in the number seven. We saw some good speed from Fox in the last one, but just a couple of mistakes means that he uh, starts at the back from this one. As we look to the front, Bella having a little bit of a look into turn number six, but can't make a half-hearted move there it's got to be fully committed or else as we've seen in the past some big accidents can occur there oh number 20 uh, that's jackman getting it all crossed up over the turn seven curbs and down into standing on the road it's leaving him a little bit vulnerable to anthony westaway who's dropped back a little bit from his starting position as we see these front two in fact three that's what we like to see brewer going with these too early on in this final 944 race it's been very much a two horse race this weekend with brewer just a little bit behind but he wants to stick with them this time further back how remains in position number four head of Torbitz, Vedino, Jackman and as I say Westaway dropping down to position number 8 as Bella had another look into turn 1 oh, a bit wide there from Westaway our race leader Jane Westaway using all the road at turn number 1 but just about holds on to the lead so we've got a lap down nearly two laps down for the field here they wiggle, actually it is two laps down, they wiggle their way through turns 3 and 4, one, one and a half sorry next down End of a long, uh, long day. Long return, actually, after being out of commentary booth since May last year yes. when uh, all these shutdowns and things have kept us away from the track. But have a look at this now. Jamie Westaway. Bella's not going to follow. He's just going to leave the nose out there and say, I might actually have a look down the inside here of car one, the Osfield Oil Distribution Entry, Triple Eight Home Loans car. And brakes down in turn, down in on road. And weighing in very nicely indeed is Adam Brewer. He has gone with this leading duo hasn't gone with them in the previous races this weekend and staying with them at the moment so this is good for the number 31 i wonder if there was some sort of demon tweak he's been able to pick up he's actually having a really good line on the straight there as well so let's hope he stays with them for the whole race long and if there's any issues with these two lead protagonists which i doubt there will be history says no but uh, you never know you've got to be there to capitalize on it mark torbert's and Richard Howe now coming in, screaming down the middle of the straight. The 74 looming big in Richard Howe's number eight mirrors. And uh, down through the gearbox they go. Torbett's under brakes. Very big in the mirrors now. Richard Howe, good drive out of turn one. The 74 looks to go around the outside. He's setting himself up as a good drive on the back straight here, Mark Torbett. So we'll see if he can flow it nicely. They both go up on the ribbon strip, not over the back, but just up to the side. And power down now. Let's see uh, what Tony Westaway has got, whether he can stay with these two. There it is, Jamie Westaway trying to shake the draft. That's what Campbella wanted to see. He's like, ah, I got him running scared now. He's looking in the mirrors more than he's looking out the front. Yeah, in the first two races, we saw Bella lead early, and it was Westaway trying to retake the lead. This one already has a bit of a different feel. It's Westaway leading early, and it's Bella the one who's trying to take the lead. So a bit of a different sort of scenario playing out in this final. Slightly longer 10-lap affair. Seven laps yesterday, eight laps this morning, a couple more laps, 10 to complete the weekend. And the racing throughout the weekend in the 944 has been absolutely fantastic. Vedino and Jackman, that's what we're looking at here. The two blue cars, the 44 of Vedino. Jackman in the Poolmaster number 20 car there. They're having a good run. This is for position 7 and 8 on the road. Andrew Jones just in the back of shot. There he is. 
coming around now in that, uh, I guess, golf livery to type of Porsche, then it's back to Mitchell, then it's Jack Attlee in the pit lane clothing red car with the big white dot on the front and on the sides. That's where it says pit lane clothing. Picked that up earlier on in the weekend. Really stood out on one of the side shots. It just disappears through screen there. Here comes the 32 now. This is Benoris and Carter Fox in the number 7. Cleverly done that uh, Channel 7 logo on the side of the, uh, of the car there. Not sure how legal that is in a Motorsport Australia perspective, but uh, we'll leave it there for the moment. It certainly looks good, doesn't it? That iconic number seven is the crew of Glenline doing a magnificent job to show us. There it is on the side of the car. Fox uh, making, uh, with a P on the back, showing a relative novice to the series. Just Let's really test them out, see if they can pick up the sticker on the side of the... Uh, the number 35 Jack Atley car. Here he is coming into shot, the number 35. Triple Eight Home Loans disappears out bottom of shot. There's the number 32. We're having a good look at it. It's Benoris. They uh, drive the long shot down. There he is now, the number 35. Hit lane clothing right on the side there. Thank you very much. Getting the message out there. Great to have them on board with Jack and uh, certainly helping him out with his uh, motor racing. And uh, letting, well, us letting everybody know about that great brand. And I uh, actually jumped on their website last night. They really do have some cool stuff. So uh, well worth checking it out during the week, that one there. Pit Lane Clothing with Jack Atley. Giving the cameramen and women a bit more work to do, Darren. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Late in the day, nothing like focusing them on the job. This is what we want. This is the shot. Thank you very much, everybody, part of the production team. Mark Torbett's now. Just losing a little bit of uh, space there to Richard Howe, and he's also uh, handing it a little bit to Tony Westaway. Richard Howe's driven away, so Mark Torbett's trying very, very hard to not let Richard Howe drive away from him at this point in time. There's the two blue cars of Bedino and Jackman again, glued together as they have been all weekend long. Torbett's now, his biggest worry is Westaway, looming up in the number three. This is the closest battle on track, and uh, Torbett's lost a bit of ground, bit of a moment exiting turn number four onto the long back straight. So this is the closest that Westaway has been for quite some time on the last lap, although Torbett set his fastest lap of the race. He was six tenths of a second slower than the man behind him. Obviously, but Westaway was a bit further up the field at the start of the race, made a poor start, so he's recovering through the field. All of the 944s carry the Porsche window banner. It's not because they're Porsche enthusiasts. Partly it is. They love their Porsches, and who wouldn't? Uh, Porsche Cars Australia have a commercial tie-up with this category. They see it as part of their competition pyramid. So your, your club level, your, your Porsche car clubs and club sprints and rallies and different uh, social occasions. Then into the racing with the, the uh, entry level here of the 944s, just as we say that. Torbett finds some speed on the straight there and ranges alongside Richard Howe again. And he's going to bring Tony Westaway with him as well. Torbett looks to the inside. There it is, the big throw down the inside. Richard Howe saw that coming and he said, yeah, right, oh, young fella. Back, back. Back it up a bit, stay behind me. And what that's done is Mark Torbett's good on him for throwing that at him. He had to really give it a shot. So Porsche Cars Australia, we thank them for all their involvement there as Mark Torbett's now has Tony Westaway charging up beside him. Torbett's got the inside run, and yeah, he did. That, that dive up the inside gave him lost momentum trying to get onto the back straight. You've got to hand it to Mark, though. He had to, do, he had to give it a go. You certainly did. Sorry, you often see that at turn four. If you make a half-hearted move, it doesn't come off. You leave yourself compromised on the massive long run, the one kilometre back straight, and that's exactly what happened. An unsuccessful move, compromised line, and it allows Westaway to breeze past into the top five. Yeah, so it's really cool that Porsche Cars Australia see the relevance and see the value in the, uh, the 944 challenge and uh, throwing some weight behind it, and there's certainly well and truly uh, put a fair bit of effort into helping promote this series for the 944s as well. Triple Eight Home Loans, you sponsor, naming rights sponsor this round. Advanced Fitness, Pool Master, Bayside, Seat Time, Race Solutions and Simulator High, ABI Technology and Smith's TMP. And uh, they're doing a uh, tremendous job presenting this category and they all work very well. It's actually quite a, a strong club. They they love racing and don't, uh, don't get it wrong, this is not a social affair. They do get right into it. Speaking of somebody who loves racing, car number 46, Mitchell. You mentioned the golf livery before, number 46, very much a martini livery. 
I mean, a brand that's been associated most of all, you know, going back, going back into the 80s for me, Valencia rallying. Yeah, that's absolutely what it, it was, wasn't it? Great Italian brand, great Italian rally car, absolutely. Indeed. So, yeah, good to see some you know, iconic liveries. You say the Golf livery, made famous by Porsche at Le Mans all those years ago. And uh, more recently, for many young people, there is the uh, orange and blue machine coming towards us now with that Golf livery. More recently, it got thrown back into the limelight last year, Lando Norris finishing on the podium in Monaco. Many people hadn't seen that prior to then. Many youngsters, many of the uh, elder people, of course, will remember seeing that on their TVs. Certainly do. This is a good run. In fact, this is um, just down the field. Carter Fox, Keith Mariner and Mitchell in reverse order. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's Mitchell to Mariner and Fox out there and it's Atley just in the background off into the dirt for the 46 there so it threw up a whole lot of uh, dirt to cars behind so uh, gave a good face full to Keith and the Fox and Atley arrived on the scene there as well down the inside looks the number 7 Carter Fox here he's been up and down the mid pack all weekend long Jack Atley coming to the line there and then it is a Kennedy and uh, Venoris hasn't scored a lap since lap number six we're on three laps to go for our race leaders and by the way they are down into Dandenong Road so a oh, big run wide there for the 46 that's a shame for Mitchell gets yeah. back on and doesn't actually lose a spot yeah came under pressure just made a little bit of a mistake ran wide but yeah as you say regained his composure got back on the track and retains position number 10 so this is the fight the back end of the top 10 Fox as he was in the last race just trying to get back into the top 10 ah here we are further up the field good battle for position number four so this is Richard Howe in position four ahead of Anthony Westaway and Torbitz just behind as they round the final corner two laps to go the front three are well and truly in the distance but this battle for P4 well and truly alive so Mark Torbett's now just languishing a little bit to these two. Richard Howe driving very, very nicely. Indeed he is under brakes into turn number one. In fact, Howe set the, uh, his personal best lap on the last lap, but he was still two hundredths of a second slower than the man behind him, so nothing separating these two on pace at the moment. And that's why we see them still lying a stern great battle for position number four. A bit of a, a lock-up I heard there on, on the headset. And, oh, by the way, the good thing is here, uh, the race out the front, 1.2 seconds is currently the gap, but the, oh, it's a spin. spin. It wasn't a lock-up that I heard. It was a spin for Jackman. Jackman getting away in the Poolmaster Bayside uh, car. Got to say nice things. They're one of the sponsors, Poolmaster Bayside. Unfortunately, their car going around. Jamie Westerway has done the fastest lap of the race with a 125.22. And the uh, lap record is a 124.01 Cambella. It's uh, seven years old now, set on the 19th of July 2015. Would have been a cool day that that one was done in July here at uh, Sandown. Indeed. Uh, like we saw in the last one, a couple of Magiltons. This field has a couple of Westerways here. Jamie Westerway, as you say, fastest lap of the race leader out at the head of the field but right in the thick of this battle in the yellow machine is Anthony Westaway trying to get past the experience Richard Howe with Torbitz just behind he's been there or thereabouts all weekend hasn't he Torbitz a good weekend from him but we are now on the final lap so moves have to be made you can't be patient now Anthony Westaway has to make his move within the next two kilometers certainly does everyone's getting pretty toe in this race now as well the final race for the round been a ripping start to the year as it has been for the last three or four years in a row here particularly the last couple of years because it's one of the only race meetings we've got away we're going to finish this year's championship car number one for westfield doing a nice job here it's a decent old gap two to cameron Baller. it's been a long time since cameron's had a car what four or five car links and 1.2 seconds further up the road than him as uh, Jamie Westaway points it up, he won last year's title. There is the chequered flag driving very, very well is Jamie Westaway. And ought to be congratulated after this weekend. The guy behind him is a very hard guy to beat. And Jamie Bella comes home in P2. A ripping driver is, uh, sorry, Cameron Bella. 
a tremendous bloke, and those two really have turned it on. Here we go now. Richard Howe bringing... Uh, we've got Adam Brewer into P2. Now Richard Howe leads into P4. And then uh, Tony Westaway gets through with Mark Torbett's close behind. Some uh, of the guys just out of the top five making their way around down into Dandenong Road. A lockup, a, a big lockup there for the gentleman. It was Fox again. He made that mistake earlier on in race number two, relate on, and once again, costly lockup, ran wide, loses two positions on the final lap of the race. So that demotes him from 10th to 12th. As a result, number 46. Oh, actually, it will be close here. Who's it going to be, Mitchell or Mariner? They're going to be side by side across the line. Mitchell just holds on one tenth of a second there, the margin. So tenth for Mitchell, eleventh for Mariner, and Fox in twelfth. Few changes of position there on the final lap, and I think we're going to see a replay of that mistake on the final lap for Fox. A late lockup, miss the apex through the gravel. And that, oh, Mitchell nearly actually collected him. He used all the road as well. So well great weird. to see him on debut in circuit racing. There's been some a lot to take away for Carter Fox out of the Triple uh, Eight Home Loans 944 races from this weekend. Can't wait to see how he goes at the next round. So Jamie Westaway takes the win over Cameron Bella, and Jamie Westaway takes 98 points from the round. Cameron Bella, 94. Brewer home on 85, and that was how they finished this race. Then Richard Howe came through. Tony Westaway, Mark Torberts, Mark Medino, Andrew Jackman, Andrew Jones, James Mitchell rounding out our top 10. Torbert 67 points, Jackman 54, Bedino 52, Jones 44, and Mitchell 31 points. Jack Atley takes 30 points away from this weekend. Keith Mariner 24 Kennedy 23 and Carter Fox 20. Love to send a very big thank you to everyone around the property here today from upstairs in Race Control who have done a brilliant job on a massive program. Everyone that has made everything happen here today from trackside, from the garages to drivers, teams, mechanics, wives, friends, sons and daughters of everybody involved here this weekend. Dan McCarthy, thank you very much for your company. Of course, we uh, like to thank Steve DeVries and uh, our other commentators, Donovan, Mullenhagen, as well as Brett Dickey that's joined us up here this weekend. A very big thank you to all of those guys. And we'll throw now down to Callum Bradigan and we'll catch you at the next rodeo, which will be at Winton on March 26, 27. Thank you, Darren. And with that, I guess that draws to a close the opening round of the VSRS, the Vic State Race Series. It's been a massive weekend of activity. 33 competitive races. There's been thrills, there's been spills, and the best part is we get to do it all again in just a few weeks' time. Round two is the 26th to the 27th of March at the Benella Auto Club run Winton Motor Raceway, well and truly buried in the middle of Ned Kelly country. And I should say that entries have opened as well as you can also get information on where to purchase tickets as well. So competitors watching this and fans alike, we encourage you to visit vsrs.com.au for all the information and up-to-date news and events leading up to round two of the VSRS again at Winton Motor Raceway. We've got three more rounds coming up after that as well. You can catch up more information about the calendar on vsrs.com.au. I've been Callum Brannigan, and on behalf of the entire team at Blendline TV and the VSRS executive, we have to say a massive thank you to you for tuning in today. It's been a massive day. We've had a huge amount of fun bringing all of the action to you. We hope you've had just as much fun tuning in from home and watching all of the action. Bye for now. Facebook isn't the only place that you can support Australian grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. 
To see more real race cars, more live events, and more of the racing you love, subscribe to the Blendline TV YouTube channel, sign up to our mailing list, or bookmark and subscribe to our website at blendline.tv. Thanks for continuing to support Grassroots Motorsport with Blendline TV. Bosch Motorsport provides technology for racing. Worldwide experience from all major categories of motorsport is in your race car. When you use Bosch Motorsport components, ignition system, sensors, fuel delivery and high-end electronics, Bosch Motorsport brings race-proven quality and performance to your motorsport machine. Search for Bosch Motorsport Australia or find us at boschmotorsport.com.au. There's good, there's better and then there's Bosch. Bosch Motorsport when quality and performance matter. Facebook isn't the only place that you can support Australian grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. To see more real race cars, more live events and more of the racing you love, subscribe to the Blendline TV YouTube channel, sign up to our mailing list or bookmark and subscribe to our website at blendline.tv.